Chapter 350 A Creation of a First Level Civilization? Lu Yongchang stared blankly at the robot in front of him. After a short reaction time, his expression suddenly changed. His already pale face looked even more ugly. His breathing became rapid. Something happened to the two-dimensional core? For the first time, this idea came to Lu Yongchang's mind. As he spoke, he struggled to stand up from the deep sea cabin. The robot in front of it shook its head anthropomorphically. It's not a two-dimensional core. It's a creation of an alien civilization. A Type 1 emergency plan has been activated. Lu Yongchan couldn't help but froze on the spot, muttering to himself. Created by an alien civilization? A holographic projection quietly unfolded in front of him. In the center of the array of dozens of spherical detectors is a dilapidated, ancient detector. Yes, it's the ancient detector. The arrangement of exposed wires, as well as the circuit board structure and various sensors inside, reminded Lu Yongchang of his time on Earth. I vaguely remember that hundreds of years ago, humans also relied on this kind of old detector to explore the universe. A sigh flashed in his eyes, and his tense body relaxed a little. Lu Yongchang forced himself to climb out of the deep sea cabin. Are the others awake? The awakening procedure is in progress. Currently, the people who have awakened are looking at the long list in front of him. Lu Yongchang nodded with satisfaction. Tell everyone to gather at the command center as soon as you recover. By the way, send a Zun 2 to conduct a close inspection of the detector. Zero didn't hesitate at all. Copy that. At the same time, a thrilling scene is taking place in the universe 10 away. The unidentified square detector relies on the hall thruster at the tail to move. But the hall thrusters it is equipped with are obviously not comparable to human hall thrusters. Compared with spherical detectors, Square detectors travel extremely slowly. But even so, because the two are moving in the opposite direction, the relative speed of the two parties still reaches an extremely high level. This adds a lot of difficulty to the interception mission. A detector changed its course, flew to the side of the square detector, and used its own body to attack the hall thruster at the tail of the square detector. Under Zero's precise control, a visual feast like an air scalpel slowly unfolds. The spherical detector constantly touches the body of the square detector from the side. Once, twice, three times. In the end, the dilapidated square detector, unbearable. The hall thruster, strike. After ensuring that their propulsion units were shut down, three more spherical probes changed course. These three spherical detectors tightly clamped the body of the square detector and began to slow down slowly. Gradually, under the influence of the spherical detector, the speed of the square detector slowly decreased. Half an hour later, Lu Yongchang's relaxed voice came from the command center. You should all be clear about things. No more nonsense. Now that everyone is here, let's start the exploration work. Seeing that no one objected, Lu Yongchang changed the topic and said to Ling. Zero, prepare to capture the detector. 1-0 oh outside. With the joint efforts of the three spherical detectors, the square detector successfully changed its driving direction and was accelerated to a high speed that did not belong to it. At this moment, the square detector and the human fleet remained relatively stationary. This also provides good conditions for the next close exploration. Zuan number 2 waved its mechanical arm and slowly approached. Under everyone's gaze, it firmly grasped the square detector. The robotic arm retracted into the cabin and brought the detector into the cabin. The electromagnetic wave signals constantly emitted by the square detector are also completely shielded. As soon as they entered the cabin, several robots carried the detector which was full of stories. To the anatomy table, several laser beams flashed across. The detectors tattered SH. I was completely shattered, revealing the carefully designed circuit boards and sensors inside. Looking at the picture in the holographic projection, the caution in Lu Yongchang's eyes dissipated again. The reason is simple. Although the shape and wiring were different, he could still tell that it belonged to a first-level civilization detector. Lu Yongchang frowned, with some doubts in his eyes. How did the detector of the first level civilization get here? There shouldn't be any star systems near here. Right. Zero responded quickly. Yes. The nearest star system is five light years away. Maybe. He Bilan's voice came from the side. It's the same as the Voyager probe sent by humans before? Lu Yongchang pondered for a moment and nodded silently. At present, this is the only possibility. Fong Su looked at the flashing red work indicator light and suddenly asked. Has the other party responded to our message? At this time, no information has been received. Lu Yongchang glanced at the detection data and found that the detector was still emitting electromagnetic waves. He said nonchalantly, This is normal. 
The other party probably hasn't mastered the long-distance communication technology yet, and is still using electromagnetic wave communication. Zero. Are you sure these electromagnetic waves are not transmitted? For safety's sake, Lu Yongchan confirmed it again. Currently, no abnormal electromagnetic wave signals have been detected outside Zuim 2. Lu Yongchan nodded with satisfaction. Continue to dismantle it. Be as careful as possible. This is an old thing. Perhaps because he confirmed that the other party was not as strong as himself. Lu Yongchang's mood became lighter, and he even made a little joke. A laser with appropriate power draws across the surface of the detector, slowly cutting the detector open. Hall thruster. Small fusion reactor. It's somewhat similar to the second generation Hall thruster. Lu Yongchang just glanced at it and lost interest. Too backward. Just as he was about to turn around and sit down, a strange device caught his attention. A small black box is quietly embedded in the cutout casing of the detector. With just one glance, he noticed something unusual. Compared to the surrounding components, the black box looks out of place. Its workmanship is completely different from that of the detector. Lu Yongchang paused and his expression suddenly became serious. Zero. Focus on checking that black box. The laser of the same power streaked across. There is nothing unusual about the black box. Lu Yongchang's expression changed drastically. Broken. This is definitely not a creation of a first-level civilization. Chapter 351 Pretender Number 17034 Zero. Increase laser power. Looking at the intact black box in the holographic projection, Lu Yongchang's expression changed drastically, and he shouted urgently. After the order was issued, the power of the cutting laser inside Zuan 2 instantly increased. The surface of the black box gradually showed signs of melting. As the power of the cutting laser continues to increase, the outer SH. L of the black box is successfully cut. It is completely different from the rough workmanship of the square detector. The equipment inside the black box is extremely delicate. And at first glance, it even looks like a work of art. Lu Yongchang's heart sank. Let's not talk about the functions of these internal devices. The extremely exquisite workmanship alone is enough to trigger an alarm in everyone's hearts. This means that this first level civilization detector has been transformed by an advanced civilization. Without having time to think about it, he directly reached out and dragged the holographic image beside him and took over the control of a robot under the control of Li Yongchang. The robot far away in Zuan 2 quickly extended its finger into the black box. On the way to extend the finger, the fingertip part of the robot quietly opened, revealing the high-precision camera inside. Under the inspection of high-precision cameras, circuits as fine as hair are clearly presented to everyone. This is Single Photon Excitation and Control Device Looking at the familiar equipment structure in the holographic projection, Lu Yongchang's heart skipped a beat, and he murmured to himself. Now, something really happened. There are many places where single photon excitation and control devices are used. However, the device architecture inside the black box is destined to have one and only one role. Extra distance communication device. Human shielding devices can only shield the electromagnetic wave communication emitted by the detector. And the ultra distance communication device that relies on quantum ultra-distance effect to work. Human beings currently have no way to shield. At this moment, Lu Yongchan felt a chill rising from behind. Gone! I met Lao Lu. What kind of civilization can have such evil taste? Put a first-level civilization detector SH. L on the ultra-distance communication device? Are you crazy about this TMD? At this moment, Lu Yongchan even cursed in his heart. There was deathly silence in the Earth Command Center. The original relaxed atmosphere was gone. Every researcher stared blankly at the dimensional data marked in the holographic projection. Lu Yongchang is naturally no exception. He swallowed hard, his pupils trembling slightly. The opponent's technological level is definitely higher than that of humans. At least, the size of humans' long-distance communication device is much larger than the black box in front of us. Thinking that all human behaviors are clearly displayed under the eyes of that unknown advanced civilization, the chill behind Li Yongchang becomes even deeper. Zero. The fleet has entered the first level of combat readiness. Li Yongchang shouted loudly. Start the wake-up procedure immediately. Professor. Please define the scope of people to be awakened. All military personnel. Wake up. Li Yongchang said with a stern look in his eyes. Next. There may be a tough battle. One light year away. A fleet sailed quietly in the dark and cold space of the universe. Different from the sense of harmony that the human fleet has. This fleet is a bit weird. The camera gradually zooms in. And the weirdness becomes more intense. The dilapidated SH. L of the starship reflects the rich experience of this fleet. 
But the surprising thing is that almost every starship in this fleet has an independent style. It looks like a pod of hodgepodge. In the flagship located in the center of the fleet, a number of short humanoid creatures were shuttled among them. Under the dim red light, the environment inside the starship looked particularly gloomy. Humanoids have gray skin, an extremely smooth skin with no hair on the surface, perhaps because of living in a zero-gravity environment for a long time. These little grays have extremely weak limbs. Their heads are extremely large compared to their thin bodies. This extremely incongruous picture added a bit of weirdness to the already gloomy atmosphere. But these little greys seem to be very accustomed to this kind of living environment. They talk to each other and work. It looks like a busy and fulfilling scene. Suddenly, a piercing alarm sounded inside the flagship. The sudden alarm, instead of causing fear and panic in the little grey men, actually made them excited. Under the guidance of the broadcast, these little grey men walked quickly toward the command center along the passage in the starship. The weak and uncoordinated limbs swing rapidly, adding a strange sense of joy to the picture. The scene changes. Inside the Gray Man flagship command center, a movie is being played on the huge monitor. In the video, several silver-white robots with thick limbs are controlling laser beams to cut objects below the camera. The object was cut open. The robot's movements also stopped. After pausing for a few seconds, perhaps discovering the existence of the lens, the robot quickly raised its hand and adjusted the position of the laser beam. A dazzling light came from directly in front of the camera. The film is over. A strange and obscure voice came from the surrounding speakers. Everyone, just now, the pretender number 17034 we sent successfully encountered a technological civilization and was successfully captured by the other party. According to the data sent back by the pretender, the opponent's fleet is sailing at 25% of the speed of light, and its propulsion method is hall propulsion. You also saw the picture just now. The other party has mastered high-power laser weapons. After multiple assessments, the opponent's strength should be between level 2 and level 3 civilizations. What this means, I believe, you should know better than anyone else. As the words fell, a burst of cheers rang out in the command center. The strange and obscure intonations gradually coalesced into a simple word. Plunder! 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 Seemingly satisfied with the reaction of the little greys, the voice from the loudspeaker gradually became louder. A just course! Full speed ahead. Activate the shield defense system. Prepare to attack. The huge and disorganized fleet slowly turned, facing the direction of the human fleet. All the starships in the fleet began to accelerate. Because of the uneven quality of starships, the originally neat fleet quickly became disorganized. The starship with powerful acceleration performance rushed straight towards the human fleet a light year away. Small starships with poor performance gathered into a sub-fleet and sailed towards their destination. What is surprising is that the flagship, which is the largest in size and has the most glamorous appearance, is left at the very back by a group of starships. Chapter 352 Current Speed, 1.1 times the speed of light. When all the starships were gone, changes suddenly occurred. The head and tail of the flagship lit up with a dazzling light at the same time. Even the giant hall thruster at its tail looked eclipsed in front of these two rays of light. At the same time, a strange toned announcement sounded inside the flagship. The gravitational field generator is ready. A space curvature bubble is forming. Prepare to enter warp sail. The next moment, this behemoth disappeared from sight out of thin air. Successfully entered warp navigation. Current speed, 1.1 times the speed of light. Human fleet. Lu Yongchang stood on the command podium with a solemn expression, looking at the holographic image in front of him. Although he had no idea what was happening a light year away. However, combined with the camouflage detector and long distance communication device in front of him, as well as the other party's delay in responding to his communication request. He already had the answer in his heart. War is coming. Compared with previous Proxima Centauri Wars. This time, human civilization has become more passive. The knowledge of the enemy is limited to the detector in front of it. Even, they don't even know the other party's location. Lu Yongchang frowned and looked at the long-distance communication device that was still working normally in the holographic projection. The high-energy laser just destroyed the camera on the detector. But under his command, the high-energy laser beam deliberately avoided the long-distance communication device in the black box. The reason is also very simple. The technology contained in this miniature ultra-distance communication device far exceeds that of humans. And humans also need exactly this kind of technology. The huge size of ultra-distance communication devices greatly limits the performance of human civilization detectors. If you master this technology, 
the soft power of the human fleet will once again rise to a new level. But this is undoubtedly a matter of picking chestnuts from the fire and licking blood with the tip of the knife. It is precisely because of this that Li Yongchang is caught in all kinds of entanglements at this moment. In the end, what should be done? It is necessary to immediately destroy the detector and the long-distance communication device and escape. Or, facing war? Zhao Zijia on the side saw Lu Yongchang's confusion. He took a step forward and said in a deep voice, Professor, this communication device cannot be destroyed. Lu Yongchang's expression moved slightly, and he turned to look at Zhao Zijia beside him. Why do you say that? Zhao Zijia straightened his expression and quickly explained, Professor, if I guess correctly, you probably want to use it to master a more advanced long-distance communication device. Right. Lu Yongchang nodded slightly. Zhao Zijia's expression became more serious. This is the only enemy civilization communication equipment we have. Based on the current situation, the importance of this communication equipment is extraordinary. If the other side has no desire for war, it can serve as a medium of communication between the two civilizations. On the contrary, if the other party shows a tendency to war. Speaking of this, Zhao Zijie glanced at the holographic projection and subconsciously lowered his voice. We can use it to make some small arrangements. Lu Yongchang suddenly realized. He pondered for a moment, nodded and said, You are responsible for the war. What do you think we should do now? Zhao Zijie's eyes flashed. Currently we know nothing about the enemy. The only thing we know clearly is that the opponent's technological level exceeds ours. Therefore, I suggest... Lu Yongchang nodded thoughtfully. This method is good. However, there are still areas for improvement. As he spoke, he turned his head and focused his gaze on the holographic projection directly in front of him. Zhao Zijia was stunned and followed Lu Yongchang's gaze. In the holographic projection, there is a detector with a red working indicator light flashing. A few hours later, inside Zuin number 2, under Zero's control, several robots moved forward again and surrounded the black box. The red work indicator light flashed slowly seeming to indicate what was going to happen next. A robot used tools made by a 3D printing device to carefully disassemble the long-distance communication device and connected several newly made cables to several interfaces. The next moment, the holographic projection unfolded and lines of dense codes flashed through it. Professor, the crack is successful. Zero's voice sounded in the command center. I have successfully invaded the control system of the communication device. Hearing this, Lu Yongchang's face flashed with joy. Good. Did the other party notice anything unusual? Zero quickly replied. There are currently no abnormal instructions sent, and the possibility of being discovered can basically be ruled out. Lu Yongchang's eyes were filled with excitement. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Back then, there was no such opportunity when we fought against the Proxima Centauri civilization. He took a deep breath and suppressed the excitement in his heart. Zero, try to see if you can invade the other party's central computer through the long-distance communication device. After a few seconds, a line of Chinese characters flashed across the holographic projection. Intrusion failed. Zero's voice also sounded. Professor, you can't invade. This set of ultra-long distance communication devices is in a state of physical isolation and is not connected to the central computer. Lu Yongchang's expression changed slightly. Is that so thoughtful? It seemed that the other party was prepared. As a result, the possibility of war has increased a lot. Forget it. It's not a big deal. After learning that he could not invade the opponent's central computer system, most of the excitement in Li Yongcheng's eyes immediately dissipated. He waved his hand and continued to ask, You can control this long-distance communication device now. Right. Yes. Professor. Zero responded. Currently, I have obtained full control authority. Very good. Li Yongcheng's eyes lit up slightly. Start executing the second phase of the plan. The earth port gate slowly opened. A dozen modified Zuin-2 boats filed out of it. After pausing in the universe for a moment, the hall thrusters at the tail of these dozen Zuin-2 ships shined brightly, pushing them to rush in more than a dozen different directions. Zuin-2, which was equipped with a long-distance communication device, was still moving in the original direction. As for the human fleet, it slowly turned around and headed in a completely different direction. Zero, prepare to modify the position parameters. The smile on Li Yongcheng's lips became even wider and he ordered softly, Change it to the position of Zuin number 1. Turn on number 1 Zuin's full band active detection equipment. After a short wait, Zero's voice sounded again. Modification successful. Start the third phase of the plan. At this point, 
Lu Yongchan looked a little more serious. Prepare for war with all your strength. Engineering ships give priority to manufacturing weapons, ammunition and repair nanorobots. All pilots and captains, after completing the gravity chamber training, immediately return to their starships and are always ready to fight. Chapter 353, Interstellar Alliance. Still, inside the Gray Man flagship, a crisp reminder sounded in the dark red cabin. Oh, change the driving direction? A uh, little gray man looked at the monitor in front of him and sneered. Is this the same old trick again? It raised its weak arm and swiped a few times on the screen. The first group of detectors were divided into two groups. The first group maintained the original direction of travel. The second group headed towards the direction where the signal came from. Lu Yongchang sat in the command center, looking at the unchanged holographic image, and frowned slightly. It has been a year since the detector was captured. During this year, everything was calm. Not only was there no unknown advanced civilization coming, even the detector captured in Zuan 2 did not send any abnormal signals. To be honest, if it weren't for the over-distance communication device and the zero-certainty detector that was still in working condition, Lu Yongchang even suspected that he had been fighting against the air this year. Looking at the Glee's 555 star system in the star map that was getting farther and farther away from the fleet, he sighed deeply. I don't know where the other party is now. A trace of worry flashed in Lu Yongchang's eyes. At first, Lu Yongchang wanted to use the captured detector to detect the location of the other party's civilization. Unfortunately, it didn't work out. The other party's level of caution far exceeded his imagination. Even if the invasion takes full control of the pro, Zero is still unable to obtain any intel on the enemy fleet. This year, mankind has been fully prepared for battle. But, until now, Lu Yongchang couldn't be sure where the first attack would come from. He couldn't even be sure when the attack would come. This faint sense of panic that lingers in my heart is undoubtedly the most tormenting. It will continuously wear down the soldier's mentality and fighting will. In addition, there is a more important issue. Energy. The entire fleet consumes an extremely large amount of energy every time it accelerates, decelerates, and turns. Although the human fleet's interstar system navigation technology is relatively mature, its energy reserves are relatively abundant. But procrastinating like this is not an option. Lu Yongchang glanced at Zhao Zijia, who had a gloomy face on the side, and shook his head lightly. Zijia, you have to adapt to this situation. The time span of interstellar war must be far beyond your imagination. As the strategic commander of the fleet, you cannot show such impatience. Hearing this, Zhao Zijia's expression changed slightly. Thinking of the possible negative consequences, Zhao Zijia couldn't help but break out in a cold sweat. He quickly adjusted his sitting posture and adjusted the gloomy look on his face. Then, he said solemnly, Professor, I understand. Lu Yongchang glanced at Zhao Zijia's sitting posture and expression and nodded with satisfaction. Before he could speak, a piercing alarm sounded. Lu Yongchang's expression moved slightly and he quickly turned to look at the holographic projection. When he saw the holographic image with red light flashing around it, instead of panic, his face was filled with relief and relief finally come. Attention everyone! Lu Yongchang reached out to open the microphone in front of him and shouted in a deep voice. Get ready for the first contact. Gray Man Fleet. Having experienced countless interstellar wars, large and small, the little greys have an extremely deep understanding of the role of flagships. A gentleman should never stand behind a dangerous wall. This saying also applies to flagships. But correspondingly, every time the flagship goes into battle, it means that the battle situation has entered a critical node, either about to win or face defeat. Under the control of the Little Greys, the huge flagship had already broken away from the curvature navigation state. At this moment, they are less than 0.01 light years away from the signal source. What they need to do is wait quietly for the reports from the two sets of detectors. Once the location of the opposing civilization starship is confirmed, the Grey fleet will swarm in. As for the role of the flagship, in the eyes of these, Little gray men, it is just an insurance to protect against unexpected situations. After all, how can a mere second-level civilization resist their fleet? Thinking of this, the little gray man, headed by the command center, showed an extremely twisted smile on his face. Earth, command center. In the holographic projection with red light flashing, there is Zuan number one. Zuan number one does not contain any detectors captured by humans. On the contrary, it is only loaded with complete full-band detection equipment and a huge number of plasma bombs. Under Zero's operation, 
the detector that continuously sent signals successfully transmitted false information to the other civilization. Logically speaking, if the plan is successful, you should be happy. But looking at the data returned by the full band detection equipment, Liu Yongchang's expression was particularly solemn. His brows were furrowed. And there wasn't even a trace of a smile on his face. The maximum sailing speed is 35% of the speed of light, he murmured to himself. It's troublesome. Such a high sailing speed not only means that human civilization cannot escape in front of it, but also means that the technology of the other civilization is far more advanced than human beings. And the pictures in the holographic projection confirm the former. In Zuin number one's camera, hundreds of detectors with a size of only a few meters caught up with it easily. Lu Yongchang moved his finger slightly and wrote down several key pieces of information. All propulsion device, 35% of the speed of light. As the detector continued to approach, he suddenly froze. This? How so? Lu Yongchang's eyes were full of doubts, and he murmured to himself. Not only Lu Yongchang, but everyone in the command center also let out several exclamations. There is no other reason. These high-speed detectors have different styles. Spherical, square, and even butterfly-shaped. It can be called the scene of the Interstellar Vehicle Appearance Design Awards. However, these detectors with different shapes have one thing in common the surface of all detectors look shabby. He even discovered that there was a huge black pit on the surface of a butterfly detector. It's just like... It was like being bombarded by kinetic energy weapons. They just finished the war! Lu Yongchang swallowed and murmured in a low voice. There is a certain possibility. Fang Su took over Lu Yongchang's words. Maybe the other party belongs to an interstellar alliance organization. Lu Yongchang silently looked at the detector getting closer and closer to Zoom number one. And the doubts in his eyes were so thick that they seemed to overflow. Interstellar alliance? Although, painting, one said, the dark forest is not the only way for civilizations to get along in the universe. But, even if he saw this hodgepodge of scenes with his own eyes, he still couldn't believe it. From what he saw alone, there were no less than 20 styles. When did alliances between multiple civilizations become so simple? Chapter 354 Self-Explosion Bait Call! Lu Yongchang breathed a long sigh of relief, suppressed his doubts in his heart, and issued the order. Zero! Let Zuin number one blow herself up. At the same time, transfer the position signal to Zuin number two. Receive! After hearing Zero's response, Lu Yongchang slowly closed his eyes. Before closing his eyes, a dazzling white light flashed through the holographic projection. Zuin number one was reduced to ashes in the extremely powerful plasma bomb. Several detectors that had just approached were affected by the aftermath of the explosion, and their armor was instantly penetrated by high temperature plasma flow. Inside the Gray Man flagship, a shrill alarm sounded. The little gray man at the head glanced at the screen in front of him indifferently. It's indeed a bait. Forget it. It's just a few worthless detectors. Just destroy them if they are destroyed. As he spoke, the little gray man turned his gaze to the holographic projection aside. Over there is the picture returned by another set of detectors traveling along the original path. In the picture, the square Zun 2 is driving quietly in the empty universe. But the strange thing is that there is no starship next to Zuin 2. The little gray man's face was a little ugly. But his expression was still calm. It is still a smart civilization. Prepare to release all detectors. They can't run away. Before he finished speaking, another alarm sounded. Hearing this familiar alarm sound, the little gray man was stunned. It turned its head sharply to look at the screen on the side. When it saw the new signal source, it finally couldn't hold it any longer. What happened? Why is there still a signal? Technician! Come on! Bring me the technician! The gray's commanding voice sounded in the flagship. A few minutes later, a little gray man whose limbs were getting weaker and weaker came to the commander with humorous steps. Technician! Tell me! Why are there two signal sources? The gray man commanded angrily and asked the technician in front of him. How do you do maintenance work? It subconsciously believed that the overdistance communication device in the detector had malfunctioned. The reason is also very simple. After so many interstellar wars, probes have been captured from time to time. But whether it was facing a third level civilization or the incomplete fourth level civilization, it had never encountered such a situation. How evil! A detector actually sent out signals from two different locations. The technician responded tremblingly. Commander. I. I need a moment. Hurry up. The little gray man commanded with an increasingly impatient tone. I'll give you ten minutes. If you can't find the reason, prepare to become a piece of space junk. The technician's body trembled suddenly, and he responded repeatedly. 
I, I will try my best. I will try my best. After saying that, it turned around and ran towards the outside of the command hall. At this moment, it already had a terrifying guess in its mind. But this guess needs to be confirmed in the isolation room. Gray's flagship. Physical isolation room. It hurriedly found the mother. Long distance communication device of the captured detector according to the number. Then, it squatted down. Knelt in front of the control device. Reached out and opened the protective SH. L of the control device. The technician's hands were trembling slightly as he connected the maintenance terminal placed aside to the control device. Like the long distance communication equipment, the maintenance terminal is also physically isolated, eliminating any possibility of outside intrusion. It tapped its weak fingers quickly, trying to find the reason for the disorder in the signal source. But, after trying in every possible way, deep doubts appeared in its eyes. Everything is normal. A drop of cold sweat slowly slid down his forehead. At this time, the biggest abnormality is when everything is normal. Thinking of the conjecture that just emerged in his mind, a thin layer of cold sweat suddenly broke out on the gray technician's forehead. Just when it was at a loss, the command shout came from the loudspeaker outside the isolation room. Technician. Technician. Come here. Inside the command center. Not long after the technician left, another alarm sounded. The gray man commander glanced at the screen, his face looking a little ugly. Another self-destructing bait. This explosion destroyed five detectors. Although the detector is not very valuable, such behavior is tantamount to dancing on its nerve endings. This damn bug. It clenched its thin fists and said viciously. The technician once again walked humorously to the command center. The extensive exercise, combined with the extremely frightened mood, caused a faint pale color to appear on its gray skin. Technician. The conductor's sharp voice sounded again. Have you found the reason? When questioned, the technician's facial skin looked extremely pale. It hurriedly shook its head. Not yet. Seeing the cold light in the conductor's eyes getting stronger, the technician hurriedly shouted again. But, I have a guess. Explain. The technician hesitated for a moment and then slowly said, I, I suspect that our long-distance communication device has been invaded by the enemy. There was silence in the command center. The technician subconsciously looked up. When it saw the conductor's eyes that looked like looking at inorganic objects, it shuddered suddenly. Invasion? Are you kidding me? Let me ask you. Have you found any evidence? The technician was silent. The conductor got the answer from the technician's reaction. A ferocious sneer appeared on its face. Is this the answer you gave me? Without any evidence. Just for lying on your mouth? Leaving aside the evidence. Do you think it is possible for a mere second-level civilization to do such a thing? Don't forget. The fourth-level civilization didn't successfully crack our long-distance communication device. Faced with doubts and ridicule, the technician remained silent. Oh, you can prepare to become a space junk. The conductor decided it's life and death without expression. Facing a life-and-death crisis, the technician's body was shaking like chaff. Suddenly, a flash of inspiration flashed in its mind. Command, please send some detectors to the location of the signal source to investigate. There must be a similar starship over there. This is evidence that the long-distance communication device has been hacked. The little gray man sitting at the head stared straight at the pale technician in front of him and nodded slowly. Good. Send the nearest set of detectors to the signal source to see what's going on. If not, you should know your fate. Chapter 355 Defense Formation Hearing what the conductor said, the technician's body trembled again. He raised his head, looked at the screen in front of him with panic eyes, and silently prayed in his heart for the results of the next investigation. At the top of the screen, a countdown to the arrival of the detector is displayed. Ten days. This meant that he had to spend ten long days in the shadow of death. You go first. Perhaps because he failed to find the location of human civilization. Or because of an unexpected situation with the long-distance communication device. A look of impatience flashed across the commander's face. In these ten days, I hope you can find sufficient evidence. Hearing this, a hint of surprise flashed in the technician's eyes. It nodded repeatedly, stood up and ran quickly towards the door. The ultra-distance communication device is in an isolated room. The technician's face was full of confusion and confusion. A full ten days passed. From its perspective, there is still nothing strange about this long-distance communication device. Not only that, it also found a lot of colleagues of its own. But no one can detect the problem. The technician sat on the cold ground feeling the weak gravity from the simulated gravity device. 
with deep despair in his eyes. He turned his head and glanced at the time. The time is almost up. It still found no so-called evidence. If there are no enemy ships near the signal source. It stood up with a bitter look on its face, disconnected the maintenance terminal, and staggered towards the door of the isolation room. According to the order issued by the commander, it now needs to go to the command center to face the final trial. The moment it walked out of the isolation room door, a piercing alarm sounded in the flagship. This extremely sharp sound not only did not panic it, on the contrary, after being stunned for a few seconds, it showed a relieved and relaxed smile. Finally, the bet was right. When the technician walked slowly to the command center, it was already a mess. It glanced casually at the screen directly in front of it. As expected, in addition to the explosion of fire, a new signal source appeared in front of everyone. Technician! The originally calm commander was now in a state of panic. It shouted, What the H? Hell is going on? Why was our long-distance communication device invaded by a second-level civilization? At this moment, the stubborn and arrogant commander finally admitted this incredible conclusion. As for the reason, the sirens just now are the best evidence. The same starship. The same self-destruction. Although this self-destruction did not cause any damage to the detector, it was like a slap in the face. While feeling embarrassed and ashamed, uncontrollable rage arose in its heart. In its heart, its anger towards human civilization has reached its peak. Damn bugs. Command. The gray technician looked as usual and bowed respectfully to the fleet commander. Technician, have you found the reason? The conductor gasped and asked in a deep voice. Hearing this question, the gray technician's expression changed slightly, but he still said calmly, At the moment, not yet. You? Before the fleet commander's scolding could be heard, it spoke again. To be precise, we haven't found the reason yet. You? The conductor's expression changed slightly, suppressing the anger in his heart. Although the status of these technicians in civilization is not high, it is not enough to do such stupid things that offend the entire technician group. Yes. The technician lowered his stance. Dear fleet commander, in the past 10 days, no technician has discovered any problems. This only shows that in the field of computer software, the other party far surpasses us. This is normal. After all, you also know that we do not belong to a normally developing civilization. The conductor didn't speak just sat quietly in his seat. It was filled with shock. This, how can it be? A level 2 civilization actually surpasses a quasi-level 4 civilization in the field of computer software? It gritted its teeth fiercely, and a cold light shone in its eyes. Snapped. It raised its hand, and slapped the console in front of it hard. If that's the case, then I can't let them go. Release all detectors. Prepare to enter the warp navigation state again. Even if I turn this one light your area upside down, I still want to find this small second level civilization. Human fleet. Professor. Zuib number two has been discovered. Zero's voice sounded in the command center. Li Yongchang slowly opened his eyes and murmured in a low voice. Ten days. After pondering for a moment, he untied the electromagnetic adsorption device on the chair. Stood up and said, Zero, tell everyone. From now on, always be prepared to deal with enemy attacks. All fleets, maintain radio silence. At the same time, activate the defensive formation. Hearing this, Zhao Zijia's face flashed with surprise. From now on, don't we still have 15 baits? Not bad. Lu Yongchang nodded vigorously and repeated again. From now on, otherwise, it might be too late. Sensing the confusion in Zhao Zijia's eyes, he smiled and explained. Have you not noticed that the fleet has been sailing in a straight line since the last change of course? Zhao Zijia nodded. I have noticed this. Professor, you probably want to save some energy. Right. Lu Yongchang nodded and shook his head. That's half the answer right. The fleet turns and consumes a lot of energy. This is part of the reason. The most important reason is that we currently do not have the other party's location information. When the other party has a higher sailing speed, Turning blindly is likely to collide with the surrounding network of the other party's detectors. Speaking of this, Lu Yongchang sighed and sat on his chair again. And bait is our tool to lead the other party to other areas. But the problem lies precisely here. Although these Zuan 2s have turned several times, they are heading away from us no matter what. More than 10 samples are enough for them to calculate and deduce the possible direction of the human fleet. Therefore, war has become a high probability event. It just depends on when the other party reacts. While the two were talking, the human fleet was quietly changing its formation. 
One by one, home ship is approaching Earth under Zero's control. The distance between each home ship quickly narrowed until it remained on a cordon. The distance between the Golden Crow battleships expanded rapidly. They take Earth and home ship as the center of the sphere and slowly spread outward. During the formation change, the fleet was in radio silence. All information is transmitted by long-distance communication devices. Chapter 356 A Battle of Wits and Courage Dazzling lights once again lit up at both ends of the flagship. The gravitational field generator is ready. A space curvature bubble is forming. A waveless electronic synthesized sound sounded inside the flagship. Etc. In the command center, technicians shouted. War voyage countdown, 60. 59. The electronic synthesized sound is still counting down in an orderly manner. Technician! The gray man commander looked at the technician in front of him dissatisfied. What do you want to do? The technician raised his head and looked at the fleet commander for two seconds. Commander, I have a proposal. This could significantly reduce our search effort. The conductor remained silent, staring intently at the technician in front of him. Ten, nine. The cold electronic synthesized sound still echoed in the cabin. Stop warp sailing. The conductor reached out and pressed a button and said in a deep voice. The warp navigation is confirmed to have stopped. The gravitational field is stable. The technician subconsciously glanced at the side window. Outside the porthole, the originally distorted starlight gradually returned to normal as the electronic synthesizer sounded. The dazzling light at the front and rear of the flagship also gradually dimmed. Just before entering the curvature voyage, the gray flagship broke away from the space curvature bubble. Technician! When the conductor saw the technician's actions, he became increasingly dissatisfied, and his tone became a little more irritable. What are you looking at? Upon hearing the commander scolding, the technician quickly retracted his gaze towards the porthole and responded respectfully. Commander, I suggest that we use the strategy to our advantage. What do you mean? The skin on the conductor's face wrinkled. The other party hacked into our long-distance communication device and used it to send us false and incorrect location information. A glint flashed in the technician's eyes. And this is where our opportunity lies. Since the other party's civilization is only a second-level civilization, they must want to escape as soon as possible. And those baits must be moving in a direction away from the other party's civilization. As long as we get enough samples, we can rule out most of the wrong options. As for the possibility of the fleet turning around midway. Commander, I believe that for a second-level civilization, the energy is not abundant enough to change the course at will. The wrinkles on the fleet commander's face gradually disappeared. Instead, there was a strong sense of excitement. Good. Just do as you say. If you successfully find the other side's civilization, you will have a share of the credit for this battle. Two months later, human fleet. Professor, this is the last bait ship. Lu Yongchang shook his head helplessly. The opponent is getting faster and faster. Forget it. Now that you've been discovered, let's blow ourselves up. Receive. The Grace flagship. As a white light flashed, the bait ship on the screen exploded violently. The conductor looked at the scene in front of him expressionlessly. This is already the 15th time it has seen the same scene. After the explosion, it subconsciously turned to look at the screen aside and began to wait for the alarm that was about to sound. One second. Two seconds. Nothing happens. The siren didn't sound. The new signal source did not appear either. After the little gray commander was stunned for two seconds, excitement suddenly appeared in his eyes. There is none left. Finally no more bait. Damn bugs. If you have the ability, put out more than 10 or 20 baits. He stood up from his chair excitedly. Technician! Now we can start the calculation and derivation. The technician pondered for a moment and nodded slowly. Currently, we have obtained a total of 18 sample data. Although it is a little less, it should be able to carry out simple simulation calculations. As he spoke, he entered the location information of 18 decoy ships into his personal termo. On the big screen directly in front, a profound star map appeared. In the star map, bright white dots appear one after another. Then, a dotted line extends from each white dot. This is the direction the decoy ship was traveling when it was spotted. 18 white dotted lines intersect in the star chart. The calculation data flashed rapidly. Soon, several areas were highlighted on the star map. Command. The technician's mouth raised slightly. And he said with some pride. Because the number of samples is small. I can only determine these directions at the moment. Next. Please send detectors to these areas to search carefully. If nothing else, 
This little bug must be hiding in a corner of these areas. The human fleet and defensive formation sailed quietly in the endless dark universe. In order to pursue concealment, the human fleet did not activate any active detection equipment. Even after reaching the maximum speed of 25%, Lu Yongchang directly ordered the starship engines to be shut down, allowing the entire fleet to rely on inertia to slide in the universe. Although this will cause a slight attenuation of the starship's speed, it greatly increases the safety of the fleet. Inside the Earth Command Center, every scientific researcher sat in a seat with a serious expression. Their attention was all focused on the holographic projection in front of them. In the projection, except for some images observed by optical telescopes, most of them are various signals from passive detection equipment. If advanced civilization strikes, these signals will be the first warning for human civilization. Click! In the quiet command center, the sound of the electromagnetic adsorption device unlocking was particularly noticeable. Lu Yongchang raised his head and looked in the direction of the sound. Fong Su was seen rubbing his eyes, yawning and standing up from his seat. Seeing Lu Yongchang's confused look, he pointed to the door and made a mouth gesture. Bathroom? After understanding Fong Su's lip language, Lu Yongchang laughed dumbly, waved his hand casually, and turned his attention to the holographic projection in front of him again. Seeing Lu Yongchang's actions, Fong Su shrugged and walked gently toward the command center door. Suddenly, the curves in the holographic projection that were originally as steady as an old dog fluctuated crazily. The piercing alarm sounded. Fong Su was stunned, and the expression on his face was slightly distorted. Then, he turned around hurriedly and ran back to his seat. But at this moment, no one noticed his micro-expression. Everyone's attention is on the holographic projection in front of him. It's a detector sent by the other party. Lu Yongchan quickly swiped the holographic projection in front of him and called up several key data. Chapter 357 Type 2 Laser Weapon In holographic projection, the signals detected by passive detection equipment are extremely obvious. Lu Yongchan was almost certain that these detectors came directly with full band active detection radars on and swaggering over. How dare they do this? Beside him, Fong Su muttered to himself in disbelief. Didn't this tell us clearly that they are coming? Lu Yongchang's expression turned slightly gloomy. Perhaps the technological level of the other party's civilization is higher than I thought. At least, they are extremely confident in this roundup operation. He took a deep breath, calmed down the complicated emotions in his heart, and said in a deep voice, But let's put it in another direction. This is our opportunity as well. Zero, have you determined the location of the other party's detector? Lu Yongchang changed the topic and asked, It has been successfully located. Zero replied while casting the positioning data on the holographic projection directly in front. Currently, the optical telescope is being used to search. In the holographic projection, a star map unfolded. A dozen bright white dots appeared in the corner of the star map, looking at the direction in which these small dots were moving. Lu Yongchang was stunned. The other party hasn't discovered us yet? Before Zero could answer, he asked himself and answered, Yes! It is indeed difficult to find a fleet with all its engines stalled in such an empty and dark universe. However, since the other party has found this area, it is only a matter of time before it is discovered or not. Professor, Zhao Zijia's voice came from the side. Lu Yongchan naturally knew what he wanted to say. So he slowly shook his head and said, Don't do anything yet. Wait until the other party gets closer. If you can, try to capture some of the probe debris. I need to use this to obtain some information about the opponent's fleet. Zhao Zijia looked stern and nodded slightly. In the holographic projection, dozens of bright white light spots dispersed instantly. They conducted a blanket search around the area. One of the bright white light spots flew directly towards the human fleet. Professor, the optical image of the enemy detector has been successfully obtained. As the distance got closer, the high-precision optical telescopes set up in the fleet also successfully photographed the enemy civilization's detectors. When he saw the image presented in the holographic projection, Lu Yongchang was stunned again. Another new type of detector. It is completely different from the detector photographed by the Zuan Dikui ship. This detector has an ellipsoidal shape. Although the appearance is different, its surface is still full of strong battle damage style. Dented craters, laser burn marks, and exposed circuit boards. It's like he just came off the front line. Lu Yongchang shook his head and said helplessly. I really don't know what kind of civilization we are fighting. It has developed to this extent. Is it possible that we can't even find the resources to repair the detector? Or, is this their aesthetic? As he said that, he winked at Zhao Zijia. You can prepare for action. Under Zhao Zijia's order, the tail of a 
Golden Crow, battleship suddenly lit up with the faint blue light of the hall thruster. It slowly broke away from the formation and silently headed towards the direction of the ellipsoid detector. On the holographic projection in the command center, the ellipsoid detector emits a large amount of electromagnetic waves to the surroundings, traveling in interstellar space and scrupulously and flamboyantly. Suddenly, it seemed to have discovered something. The speed dropped suddenly. Discovered! Attack! Zhao Zijia's urgent voice sounded in the command center. At the same time, a beam of faint blue light shot out from the main laser transmitter on the head of the Golden Crow battleship and shot straight towards the ellipsoid detector. One second later, the faint blue laser accurately illuminated a recess in the armor of the ellipsoid detector. Under the observation of the optical telescope, the power of the Type II laser weapon was clearly displayed in front of everyone. Almost at the same time, the ellipsoidal detector automatically made evasive actions. For most sustained laser weapons, emergency evasive maneuvers can effectively avoid most damage. The principle is also very simple. As long as the laser beam is not irradiated on the same piece of armor, the power of the laser weapon will be greatly reduced. But obviously, this low-level evasion scheme will not work for Zero. Under Zero's control, the faint blue laser beam bited the detector, burning the recesses of the armor continuously. When the detector made evasive actions, the intensity of the electromagnetic wave signal it emitted instantly increased several times. Obviously, this detector is calling its companions and sending information about the attack to the main civilization. But this does not affect the outcome of this detector. Perhaps it's because the armor strength in the irradiated area is much lower than normal. In just an instant, a big hole was burned out on the surface of the dilapidated ellipsoid detector. Unlike Type 1 laser weapons, the duration of Type 2 laser weapons has been increased a lot. Therefore, after burning through the armor of the ellipsoid detector, the faint blue beam rushed straight into its interior. Under the high temperature brought by the laser, the light of the hall thruster at the tail of the ellipsoid slowly extinguished after flickering for a few times. But as the laser weapon blasted into the inside of the detector, various complex equipment inside melted and suddenly produced a thick black smoke. Black smoke spurted out from the breached hole. This greatly reduces the lethality of laser weapons. At this time, the working time of the Type 2 laser weapon has also reached its limit. It needs some time to cool down and recharge before it can launch its next attack. The faint blue beam that spanned one light second slowly dissipated, leaving only the ellipsoid detector with billowing smoke and sliding forward by relying on inertia. After gliding for a while, perhaps because its energy device was damaged, a violent burst of fire suddenly spewed out from its interior. Explode? A flash of fire illuminated a small area of darkness surrounding the universe. But soon, the fire was swallowed up by a thicker darkness. Earth, command center. Lu Yongchang shook his head with regret. Pity! Zhao Zijia was stunned for a moment, then subconsciously comforted him. Professor, there are other detectors. We still have a chance. He still remembered that Professor Lu wanted to capture a detector of the enemy civilization and use it to make a simple assessment of the enemy civilization's strength. But? Lu Yongchang sighed again when he heard Zhao Zijia's comforting words. He shook his head and said, The thick smoke caused by the internal combustion of the detector greatly reduces the lethality of laser weapons. The next generation of laser weapons may have to consider solving this problem. Zhao Zijia, Professor, it has been detected that the remaining 17 detectors are changing course. Zero's voice relieved Zhao Zijia's embarrassment in time. Cough! Zhao Zijia coughed slightly, picked up the microphone on the side, and issued several orders to the fleet in an orderly manner. This time, it is bound to successfully capture a high inversion of the detector, rather than the original fake and shoddy product wrapped in a garbage SH. L. Chapter 358 Is there a possibility that the problem lies with zero? The Gray's flagship. When the faint blue laser pierced the defense of the ellipsoid detector, an alarm sounded inside the flagship. Alarm! Detector number 371163 is under unknown attack. The attack type is high-energy laser beam. The sirens did not cause any panic. Instead, every gray in the command center became abnormal. Excited? Found! The gloomy look on the gray technician's face suddenly brightened. It pointed to the big screen in front and shouted in a slightly sharp voice. Command! Command! We have discovered the opponent's fleet. The signal is gone. Electronic audio coverage without any fluctuations. The conductor sitting at the head took a deep breath and stood up from his seat. How many detectors are there in this area? The technician quickly stretched out his finger and tapped a few times on the personal terminal in front of him. Report. 
There are currently 17 detectors left. The skin on the conductor's face wrinkled slightly. He shook his head slowly and said, Too little. Let these 17 detectors go over to confirm the situation first. First of all, we have to confirm that this is the opponent's fleet, not a small decoy ship. Secondly, mobilize all detectors in the nearby area. Carry out a thorough investigation for me. I want this little bug to have nowhere to hide. Human fleet. Seeing the 17 bright spots in the star map rushing towards the fleet, the atmosphere in the command center suddenly became solemn. Everyone knows what happens next. War is about to break out. Fleet periphery. The tail of another, golden crow, battleship lit up with the light of the hall thruster and left the original formation. Although the ellipsoid detector just now seemed vulnerable to the Type 2 laser weapon. But for the sake of safety, Zhao Zijia ordered an additional, golden crow, battleship to be dispatched for escort. After all, no one knows what cards higher level civilizations have in their hands. For example, no one knows that a mere second level civilization actually possesses the means of attack of a seventh level civilization. Just as Zhao Zijia was thinking wildly, the second detector quietly approached. This time, the Golden Crow battleship did not use Type 2 laser weapons. Instead, a Type 2 coil gun was used. Compared with a Type 2 coil gun, the Type 2 coil gun is larger and has a faster muzzle speed. The micronuclear bombs loaded inside the projectiles were also replaced with small plasma bombs. There is no doubt that the lethality of Type 2 coil gun is much higher than that of Type 1 coil gun. As the second detector got closer, the captain of the Golden Crow battleship issued an order. Fire! Flashes of fire flashed across the muzzles of the battleship's secondary guns. As if it found itself locked, the probe quickly changed its course and launched evasive maneuvers. However, it is obvious that this method does not work well for humans. Aim assist is on! Zero's voice sounded inside the Golden Crow battleship. At the same time, dozens of white dotted lines appeared in the holographic projection inside the battleship. The secondary gun barrel also began to swing slightly at this time. Every time the angle is adjusted, dozens to hundreds of SH. LS are shot out of the barrel. Tens of seconds later, a flash of plasma bomb explosion appeared in the dark depths of space. This means that a SH L successfully hit the small detector. Where there is one there are two. The second way. The third way. The detector was instantly submerged in a series of explosions of fire. The fire gradually dissipated. The dilapidated detector had turned into a piece of space junk, floating quietly in the void. Seeing this, the captain of the Golden Crow battleship nodded with satisfaction and turned his attention to the next batch of detectors. Captain number 746. Zhao Zijia's faint voice suddenly came from the communication channel. Do you remember what I just said? Professor Lu needs an advanced detector that is as complete as possible. Are you taking this as far? Do you know how wasteful it is to fire so many SH? LS. Captain number 740 SIXS expression froze. I, I know. Be sure to pay attention next time. The Gray's flagship. The conductor looked at the scene in front of him with an ugly expression. Another detector was lost. The loss of the detector did not bother it. They have a lot of low-quality detectors like this in their fleet. What makes it feel embarrassed is that the destruction of this detector did not bring any valuable intelligence to civilization. Turn off the active detection device. Let these detectors stay away from each other first. Circle a few times, and then find an opportunity to get closer. At the moment, this detector was destroyed. The remaining 16 detectors suddenly turned off their active detection devices. They disappeared from the passive detection equipment of the human fleet. Perhaps, for other civilizations, this is extremely fatal. Trying to find a few pixel-sized detectors in the vast background of the universe is as difficult as finding a needle in a haystack. But for human civilization, especially for zero, this difficulty is not too high. Since these detectors were observed by optical telescopes, Zero has always controlled the optical telescope array in the fleet to track and observe these detectors. Therefore, these detectors moved away from the fleet and began to circle, giving a clear view to Lu Yongchang and others. Lu Yongchang looked at the star map in front of him with a strange expression. This is... Want to confuse us? Fang Su also looked confused. It doesn't make sense. What's so easy about this? Tao Yuda's voice came from a distance. Professor. Is there a possibility that the other party thinks that after turning off the active radar, we won't be able to see them? Lu Yongchang. Fang Su. His. Lu Yongchang scratched his head in surprise. Isn't that true? It's a level 3 or level 4 civilization after all. Could it be that their optical telescopes can't do this? 
When Tao Yuda in the distance heard this, his expression suddenly froze. Professor, let's just say, is it possible that the problem lies with zero? Lu Yongchang, painting, the words at that time resurfaced in his mind again. Could it be? Is there really a problem with zero? Lu Yongchang's face looked a little weird, and he waved his hand and changed the subject. Don't worry about this for now. When these detectors get close, shoot them all down. Remember to leave one intact for me as much as possible. Chapter 359 Misunderstanding Inside the Earth Command Center In the holographic projection, the remaining 16 detectors circled in a large circle and launched an attack against the human fleet again. The results can be imagined. Blocked by the Golden Crow, battleships one after another. These detectors successfully turned into pieces of space junk. Except for one detector. Fortunately, it escaped. The fate of turning into space debris and was successfully captured. This detector, which looks full of technology, stays quietly in the Zuin 2 cabin with the cooperation of several robots. The communication equipment in the detector was quickly dismantled. Inside Earth, Lu Yongchang concentrated on issuing orders to Zero. As for Zero, he controls the robot to perfectly execute Lu Yongchang's orders. The detector was dismantled bit by bit, and the various equipment inside were exposed to everyone. This, Lu Yongchang looked at the scene in front of him and was a little speechless for a moment. How so? The internal structure of the detector is not complicated, and even a bit crude. The technological content of most of these devices is not even comparable to detectors made by humans. This high-tech appearance and extremely powerful mobility. Couldn't this be an advanced detector made by the other civilization? But why is there such a shabby thing underneath the glamorous appearance? Lu Yongchang sat on the chair with a livid face and took a deep breath. Although he felt like he was being played by advanced civilization. When he thought about it, his depressed mood suddenly felt much better. At least, there is something worth learning in this detector. Power. Like human civilization. This technologically advanced detector also uses a Hall propulsion device and a fusion reactor. Unlike human civilization, their Hall propulsion device adopts a new architecture, plus more energy-efficient fusion reactors. With these two technologies alone, human civilization has made a lot of money. However, this also brought new doubts to Lu Yongchang. Could it be that the other party has just entered the third level of civilization? Otherwise, he would not be able to find the reason why the other party did this. Only fleets that have just entered the third level of civilization will use some old facilities as consumables. Lu Yongchang's eyes were full of confusion. After thinking about it for a long time without any solution, he shook his head helplessly. Forget it. Instead of thinking about whether these things exist or not, it is better to prepare for the battle as soon as possible. The Grey's flagship. The sirens kept coming and going. The little gray man commander sitting at the head had already stood up from his chair. It was breathing rapidly, and its pupils were trembling slightly as it looked at the big screen in front of it. What happened? Why can the other party discover our detector? Aren't they a second-level civilization? The commander's slightly shrill voice echoed in the flagship. At the same time, its sinister gaze slowly swept across the crowd. The technicians who were responsible for assessing the opponent's civilization level all lowered their heads. Embarrassment and confusion flashed across every little gray man's face. Technician number 126. Tell me, what is going on? Seeing that no one answered, the conductor couldn't help but feel a little annoyed and directly called his name. A trace of hesitation visible to the naked eye flashed across the face of the technician who was called upon. It raised its head helplessly and met the commander's cold eyes. Technician number 126 trembled suddenly. But, maybe our assessment was wrong. It considered its words and carefully explained. The data samples we obtained are too few, so errors will inevitably occur. Then what level of civilization do you think the other party belongs to? The commander's face became increasingly gloomy. It doesn't matter how much the technician's incorrect assessment cost them. If the other party belongs to a true level 4 civilization, then their early actions are tantamount to seeking death. Technician number 126 did not immediately answer the command's question. After thinking for a long time, he gritted his teeth and said decisively, Level 3. Only level 3 at most. They can never be a level 4 civilization. Otherwise, we should have been caught long ago. I believe that no civilization can tolerate this level of provocation. The conductor did not express his position. He just sat quietly on the chair and stared blankly at the big screen in front of him. On the screen, the signal of the last detector also disappeared. A long time, thinking of the current state of the fleet, 
a ruthless look flashed in the commander's eyes. Except for the detectors. All starships are heading to the target star field. Our incomplete technological system will be improved. Prepare to enter the warp navigation state. Let's get in front of each other. One month later. Human fleet. During this month, everyone's nerves were stretched to the extreme. In fact, in order to discover the enemy one second earlier, the human fleet completely gave up hiding and directly turned on the most powerful active detection equipment. What? A full month of detection and scanning. Not a single enemy was found. Not even a detector was found. Sitting in the command center, Liu Yongchang's eyes were full of exhaustion. He habitually raised his head and glanced at the holographic projection directly in front of him. As usual, the universe is extremely empty. On the star map on one side, the distance between the human fleet and the Glee's 555 star system is even further away. I really don't know what they are doing. Isn't it just that a few detectors were destroyed and they were scared away? He murmured to himself, the confusion and fatigue in his eyes getting stronger. Fortunately, this month's time is not nothing. After a month of explosion, the next generation of fusion reactors and hall thrusters have also gained some insights. Once there is a stable development environment, the interstellar navigation capabilities of the human fleet will reach a higher level. By then, protective shield technology should also be put on the research and development agenda. Human civilization will also enter the threshold of level 3 civilization. Biff! Blop! Blop! Just as Liu Yongchang's thoughts were gradually drifting away, a piercing alarm sound accompanied by a flashing warning light brought his thoughts back. He subconsciously raised his head and looked at the star map directly in front of him. Dense white highlights. Liu Yongchang's expression changed drastically, and he subconsciously held his breath. How come? Why are there so many starships? Five Australian dollars away from the human fleet. Countless starships with dilapidated surfaces and different styles slowed down and slowly sailed towards the target. When all the starships arrived at the target location, an order from the flagship appeared in front of all the greys. Attack! The moment the order came out, long flames of light erupted from the tail of each starship. They were like pirates, accelerating crazily and rushing towards the human fleet that was five Australian dollars away. Chapter 360 Mobile Laser Array A long and persistent siren sounded in every starship of the human fleet. In just ten minutes, everyone got into their own deep-sea cabin. The human fleet, at this moment, has truly entered a state of war. Two hours later, it was beyond Liu Yongchang's expectation. The starships of the opposing civilization did not launch a direct attack. Instead, it relied on its own speed and numerical advantages to wrap up the entire human fleet. Liu Yongchang frowned and looked at the star map in the holographic projection and asked, Zijia, can you break out from one point? Xiao Zijia on the side. A trace of worry flashed in his eyes, shook his head slowly, and responded with a brainwave reading device. The opponent's starship's maneuverability far exceeds ours. I just tried the method of breaking the surface. They don't fight us at all. As long as we move forward, they retreat. In this way, the opponent has been sailing outside our effective range. What about the spread out sprint? Lu Yongchai frowned. According to the active detection information, the opponent does not have many starships left. No. Zhao Zijie directly rejected Lu Yongchang's proposal. Too dangerous. Currently we are surrounded by the opponent's network. Once the defensive formation is divided, our situation will only get worse. Lu Yongchang thought for a moment and realized that this plan was extremely risky. He shook his head helplessly. They surrounded us from afar. I really don't know what they are planning. Are you ready to boil the frog in warm water and let us surrender? Seeing Lu Yongchang sigh, Zhao Zijie couldn't help but be stunned. He breathed slightly and stretched out his hand to enlarge the holographic projection in front of him. Zero. Model the arrangement of the opponent's starships. Ling immediately executed Zhao Zijia's order. Almost at the same time, models formed by bright white light spots appeared in front of him. A quasi-spherical body with an uneven surface and yet to be formed. With just one glance, Zhao Zijia's expression changed drastically. Laser array. They want to burn us in a circle with laser arrays. Lu Yongchang was stunned for a moment, and then understood what Zhao Zijia meant. He quickly stretched out his hand and drew it through the air, and a similar holographic model composed of bright white light spots appeared in front of his eyes. Rows and rows of light points are staggered, forming an uneven sphere-like sphere. Zero. Simulate. Lu Yongchang's face was extremely gloomy. As soon as the words fell, the interior of the sphere suddenly flashed with its dazzling beams of light, along with the movement of the opponent's starship. 
These laser beams also moved. Lu Yongchan shuddered slightly as he looked at the sphere-like surrounding net that turned into a laser meat grinder. Attention all units. Prepare giant smoke bombs immediately. The fleet-wide broadcast sent by Zhao Zijia appeared on the holographic projection in front. Repeat it again. Prepare giant smoke bombs immediately. The more the better. Once you are attacked by a laser weapon, throw it away immediately. Just after the broadcast was sent, a dazzling high-energy laser beam was already shining on Earth. No, not just Earth. Almost every Golden Crow battleship has been attacked by more or less high-energy laser beams. The alarm sounds. Without any pause, Zero quickly activated the emergency plan. Under the influence of the vector nozzles, all starships began to slowly spin. The laser beam swept across the surface of the starship's armor, leaving a long trail. Even so, several Golden Crow battleships that were taken care of by several laser beams at the same time exploded. There was almost no reaction time. The moment the starship began to spin, the opponent's starship also began to move regularly. The long-lasting laser beam suddenly turned into a moving laser fence. The laser fence moves up and down, left and right, or forward and backward. The human starship surrounded by the net seemed to have turned into pieces of meat in a meat grinder, being shot back and forth by laser beams. Armor damage, 15%. Bright red words jumped out in front of Li Yongchang. Smoke bomb. Fire the giant smoke bomb quickly. Zhao Zijie issued an order. The gun ports on the sides of every Golden Crow battleship suddenly opened. The muzzle of the gun was not aimed at the enemy starship. Instead, he aimed at his own camp. Bang! 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 Under the power of the nuclear bomb, the yellow dust instantly dispersed and floated aimlessly in the universe. In just 10 seconds, the human fleet disappeared into the thick dust. The power of the laser is greatly reduced and its lethality to starships is also much smaller. It seemed that the killing effect was not significant enough. After more than 10 seconds, the laser beam array also slowly extinguished. All starships. Turn off active detection equipment. Xiao Zijie's order continued. Don't stop the smoke bombs. Keep firing. The first, third, and fifth teams. Break out towards the target location. As he spoke, Zhao Zijie waved his fingers in the deep sea liquid and sent information about the breakout location to the first, third, and fifth teams. Teams two, four, and six break through in the opposite direction. Before we fly out of the smoke bomb range, seize the time and break out quickly. The Gray's flagship that has not yet appeared. Watching the encirclement network gradually take shape, a cruel smile appeared on the commander's face. They're finished, it whispered. This tactic is particularly useful when facing fleets with insufficient mobility. The reason is also very simple. I want to escape. But I can't. If I want to fight, I won't fight you at all. It can be said that as long as the encirclement network is completely formed, the moment the laser fence appears, the opponent's civilization will be destroyed. It looked at the human fleet that had not yet reacted and pressed a button on the side with a grin. Turn on laser radiation. As soon as the words fell, hundreds of red, blue and purple mixed light beams suddenly appeared in the spherical space. A few scattered explosions appeared on the big screen in front. Huh? There was some confusion in the little gray commander's eyes. Is this the only result? It took a quick look. Soon, it discovered Zero's emergency response. The response was pretty quick. Unfortunately, it's all in vain. All starships, start moving. It issued the order again. The laser fence was successfully formed. Moving grids rushed towards the starships surrounding the grid. Before it could be happy, a thick yellow smoke appeared in the center of the surrounding net. The next moment, as if a horn was blown, dense smoke, flowers, bloomed in various areas within the surrounding net. Damn! The gray man's commander's face darkened. After understanding the other party's civilized intentions, he couldn't help but become furious. Interstellar voyages also carry this kind of equipment. What are they thinking in their heads? Chapter 361 Breakout Battle The next moment, the doubts in its heart were broken, by the increasingly shrill and piercing sirens. Without any warning, the originally extremely strong signal from the enemy ship suddenly disappeared in the thick yellow smoke. Alarm! The enemy ship's signal has disappeared! At the same time, an electronically synthesized sound without tone fluctuation sounded in the command center. The Grey Commander, who has experienced countless battles large and small, realized the problem the moment he saw the enemy ship's signal was lost. Alert! All starships! Retreat at full speed and widen the encirclement net. Fire giant flares. 
The other side wants to break out. The order was given. Huge illumination bombs were emitted from the muzzles of these starships. They drag a bright and perfect curve through the universe. Finally, a powerful light emitted from inside the encirclement. Thanks to the smoke bombs emitted by the human fleet. The light from the illumination bombs successfully lit up the star field after countless diffuse reflections in the endless dust. In the extremely dark universe, a ball of stardust glowing yellow suddenly appeared. At the same time, the tails of the gray starships that had stopped firing laser weapons and were flying on the prescribed orbit also lit up with dazzling lights. Ultra-powerful hull thrusters, coupled with vector nozzles, allow these starships to quickly change course. But no matter how powerful the thrusters are, it will take a lot of time to complete such a large-scale turn and retreat. Will the human fleet give up this perfect opportunity? The answer is obviously no. Just when these starships had just turned around and were preparing to retreat, a fleet with a few burn marks on its armor pierced the yellow smoke. If you observe carefully, you can find that the burn marks on these starships are slowly fading. Although it doesn't fade very quickly, it all means one thing. They can repair themselves to a certain extent. The Grace flagship, the big screen in front of the command center, displayed this magical scene. Extremely fine yellow dust particles linger around the human starship. The hall thruster nozzle at the rear of the starship emits an extremely powerful light. The combination of the two forms an extremely sharp contrast with the dark cosmic background. The gray fleet commander suddenly held his breath. A look of disbelief flashed in his eyes. What kind of technology is this? He exclaimed. But the next moment, it hurriedly pressed the fleet broadcast button on the side. Open the protective shield. Prepare for impact. Human fleet. As the front row fleet broke through the thick yellow smoke, under the illumination of countless flares. The appearance of the enemy fleet completely appeared in front of Lu Yongchang's eyes. Looking at the images returned by the optical telescope array, the doubts and confusion in Lu Yongchang's eyes became more intense. Suddenly, Lu Yongchang had an incredible guess in his heart. His eyes widened slightly, and his breathing became rapid. Streams of cool deep-sea liquid flowed into the lungs along the lung ducts, and were discharged out of the body along the lung ducts. The large amount of oxygen contained in the deep sea liquid made Lu Yongchang's thinking become clearer. Zero. Let's count. How many starships are there with different design styles? He quickly gave the order to zero. The holographic projection screen in front of him instantly enlarged. Boxes of different colors gradually appear in the star map. Each color box represents a design style of enemy ship. More than 10 seconds later, Lu Yongchang fell into silence as he looked at the colorful sphere like network in front of him. Professor, According to the observations of the optical telescope array, 147 types of starships with different design styles have been discovered so far. Zero's voice entered his ears along the deep sea liquid. Among them, 113 types are small starships. Lu Yongchang's eye showed a bit of surprise. Sure enough, Zijia, the other party is not an alliance formed by multiple civilizations. Lu Yongchang quickly sent a message to Zhao Zijia. Zhao Zijia, who was in the deep sea cabin, was about to issue an attack order when he saw an urgent message from Lu Yongchang. He was stunned, a trace of doubt flashing in his eyes. Before he could send out the inquiry message, the second message had already appeared in the holographic projection in front of him. They're pirates? No. To be precise, it should be the Star Thief Civilization. Appearing together with this message was a statistical report made by Zero. Looking at the 147 starship design styles in the report, Zhao Zijia felt his scalp numb. Judging from the known types of starships in front of us, the opponent has won at least 147 interstellar wars. Looking back at human civilization, since leaving the Earth, it has only experienced one interstellar war. No, that's not even a real interstellar war. After all, Proxima Centauri civilization, like human civilization, is a novice when it comes to interstellar warfare. What is this? The first ranked game. Facing a king? Zhao Zijia swallowed hard his pupils trembling slightly. The first fleet has arrived at the target area. The opponent's starship enters our attack range. Two lines of text flashed in the holographic projection in front of him. He quickly came to his senses. The enemy is currently strong. Thinking about these will only affect the speed of drawing his sword. When we meet on a narrow road, the brave one wins. Even if the opponent is a battle-hardened victorious general, he may not be able to defeat today's human civilization. He gritted his teeth. A trace of ruthlessness flashed in his eyes and gave the order to attack. First, attack. In five minutes, finish the ammunition for me. The third fleet, prepare to take over from the first fleet. We must break out of this siege. 
front. The moment the command comes, the Golden Crow, battleship belonging to the First Fleet issued its own, Roar. Type 2 electromagnetic gun and Type 2 high-energy laser cannon take the lead. Secondly, as the main gun of the comic class, Golden Crow, battleship, the muzzle of the plasma cannon also began to flash with a faint blue and golden light. As usual, the flashing blue laser beam hit the enemy ship first. To capture the thief, capture the king first. This is an unchanging iron law. Whether it is an interstellar war or a ground war. Therefore, those relatively large starships receive the focus of high energy laser beams. But, everyone has overlooked one thing. The armor material technology of the opponent's starship is higher than that of humans. Not only that, the opponent obviously has its own, special, response to laser weapon attacks. With the assistance of Zero, these laser beams are precisely irradiated on the corresponding weak areas. The blue laser beam successfully melted a layer of armor on the surface. But the next moment, a clear burst of white smoke spurted out from the damaged armor. This white smoke significantly reduces the power of the laser beam. The ablation speed of the opponent's starship armor rapidly decreased. Chapter 362 Passive Laser Defense Technology and Shield Technology Inside Earth Lu Yongchan looked at this scene with a gloomy expression. Zero. Do a spectral analysis of the white smoke. Soon, the analysis results were presented in front of Lu Yongchan. Nitrogen. And some fine dust. Lu Yongchan looked at the analysis report in the holographic projection thoughtfully. It has the same effect as human giant smoke bombs. However, this technology of the opponent's fleet is a passive skill. It will only be triggered when the surface armor is damaged by an attack. As for its principle of action, it is easy to deduce. It is nothing more than using liquid nitrogen to quickly cool the area under attack, and at the same time using haze to weaken the power of the laser weapon. Lu Yongchang silently recorded this incident in the memo. You can refer to this method to upgrade the fleet in the future. At least, at present, compared with interstellar smoke bombs, this passive skill works faster and has relatively higher flexibility. While the human fleet launched the attack, the other party was not idle either. A high-energy laser beam attack was launched against the human fleet again. For a time, the huge interstellar battlefield was filled with dangerous high-energy lasers. It is different from the other starship. The human fleet's means of resisting these lasers includes, in addition to maintaining the starship's spin state, starship adaptive repair technology that relies on a large number of nanorobots. In simple words, the opponent's resistance to laser attacks mainly relies on stacked armor and shields. The main means of resistance for human starships are movement and breathing to restore blood. Time passed by minute by minute. The Type 2 electromagnetic guns and Plasma Plasma Artillery SH. LS launched by the human fleet also successfully crossed the long distance and reached the Gray Fleet. An unexpected scene appeared. Neither the electromagnetic cannon projectiles nor the blue plasma projectiles with golden electric light on their surface successfully hit the enemy's medium and large starships. When they were about to hit the enemy ship, they exploded. The high-temperature plasma produced drew a beautiful arc and slid toward the side of the enemy ship. The large amount of plasma spewing out outlines and ellipsoid around these medium and large enemy ships. As for the chaotic small enemy ships, they were completely reduced to powder under the bombardment of electromagnetic guns and plasma cannons. Inside Earth, Lu Yongchang's eyes suddenly widened when he saw this scene. Shield technology. For words flashed in his mind instantly. Damn it! The opponent is indeed a civilization above level 3. Professor. Faced with this weird scene, Zhao Zijia decisively chose to seek help from Lu Yongchang. Of course, this is also the responsibility of Lu Yongchang. A technology commander. It should be shield technology. A trace of anxiety flashed across Lu Yongchang's face. And he quickly conveyed the message to Zhao Zijia. Let the fleet attack with laser weapons first. Don't waste ammunition blindly. Then, he quickly issued instructions to Zero. Zero. Show me the scene in slow motion of the enemy starship being attacked. The reason for this is also very simple. He didn't believe that this so-called shield could unlimitedly block these attacks that contained a lot of energy. The holographic image expanded and enlarged again. A medium-sized starship was, luckily, selected as a sample and presented to Lu Yongchang. A holographic video slowed down hundreds of times begins to play. In slow motion, the electric light dancing on the plasma cannon appears particularly clear. Less than a thousand meters away from the enemy ship, the plasma cannonball seemed to hit something, and its speed instantly decreased. This instantaneous change in speed directly detonated the already unstable plasma cannon. Stop! 
Lu Yongchang's eyes lit up. And he issued an order through the brainwave reading device. Go back a little further and return the video to when the plasma cannonball just touched the opponent's shield. The holographic image changes rapidly. Right. Lu Yongchang looked at the picture in front of him. A flash of light flashed in his eyes. That's it. In the picture. In addition to the distorted plasma cannonballs, there are also enemy ships flashing with lights on their hulls. Zero. Retrieve the entire video and mark all locations on the surface of the enemy ship that emit no bright light. Four zero. This isn't a lot of work. As soon as he finished speaking, an enemy ship model with white highlights all over its body appeared in front of Lu Yongchang. Lu Yongchang looked thoughtfully at the enemy ship model in front of him and gave the order again. Integrate all the attack pictures. Let's see if there is any relationship between these bright lights and the power of the attack. The holographic image changes again. A chart slowly emerged. A flash of surprise flashed in Lu Yongchang's eyes. Really? As the power of the attack increases, the flashing light on the surface of the enemy ship gradually increases. This simple picture means that the so-called shield also has an endurance limit. Once they are attacked by two intensive and powerful attacks, these shield-generating devices are bound to have some malfunctions or accidents. Lu Yongchang quickly integrated the data and sent it to Zhao Zijia. As a strategic commander, Zhao Zijia slowly closed his eyes after reading all the data. He took a deep breath of the pale yellow deep sea fluid. My thoughts gradually became clearer. He opened his eyes suddenly and used his authority to initiate a fleet-wide broadcast. Attention all units. The enemy's medium and large starships have shield technology. Electromagnetic guns and plasma weapons attack small starships first. Laser weapons contain medium and large starships. This order was a fatal blow to the small fleet in the Gray Fleet. With just one salvo, most of these small starships without shield protection disappeared. Sounds like a great success. But the fact is that most of these small starships that disappeared are products of first-level civilization. But even so, the originally extremely dense encirclement network has a weakness. The demise of a large number of small starships makes the encirclement network on this side appear particularly weak. Seeing that the attack was effective, the morale of the frontline troops responsible for tearing through the encirclement net increased even more. The breakout battle also entered a fierce stage at this moment. Each of these, Golden Crow, battleships seemed to be desperate. Relying on the starship's adaptive repair system and exquisite movement, they rushed forward against the dense laser beams. Under Zero's precise control, lasers accurately bombarded the shield-generating devices of medium and large starships. For a time, the fire and debris of the starship explosion filled the small star field. Among them, there are the wreckage of the Golden Crow, battleship and fragments of the enemy's small starship. As for the enemy's medium and large starships, none have crashed yet. Chapter 363, Fraud? Inside, Earth, Zhao Zijia, who was in the deep sea cabin, stared at the holographic projection in front of him. In the holographic star map, two different colors of light points flashed. The white light spots represent enemy starships. The blue light spots represent the human fleet. From this star map, we can clearly see the development of the war situation. Under the smoke ceiling and silent and breakout tactics of the human fleet, a small gap appeared in the encirclement network composed of white light spots. Although the opposing civilization continues to mobilize troops from nearby areas, under the saturation attack of the human fleet, there is no way for those huge first-class civilization starships to survive. The number of white light spots decreases rapidly. Soon, in the star map, only dozens of slightly bright white light spots remained in the direction of the human fleet. They are the medium and large starships of the enemy civilization. Zhao Zijia took a solemn look at the data analysis report from Lu Yongchang and issued the last order. The first, third, and fifth fleets terminate the mission of containing medium and large starships. Use plasma weapons to carry out saturation attacks on enemy medium and large starships. At the same time, Use high-energy laser weapons to accurately strike the shield-generating device on the surface of the enemy ship. At the same time, a line of Chinese characters jumped out in the holographic projection. Shield generation device distribution map has been transferred successfully. The order had just been issued, and before Zhao Zijia could take a breath, a bright red alarm appeared in front of him. Alarm. Our fleet was attacked by plasma weapons. And the number of battleships lost so far is 6. The alarm flashes rapidly and the number displayed on it refreshes rapidly. Our fleet was attacked by plasma weapons. And the number of battleships lost so far is 11. Front. The situation of the war is changing rapidly. 
before the other party could react. The human fleet launched a saturation attack on those small starships with relatively weak technological levels at lightning speed. Under Zero's control, the hit rate of the electromagnetic gun and plasma cannon increased several times. Then, from the explosion of the first small starship to the completion of clearing the screen, it only took tens of seconds. But the other party, as a battle-hardened star thief civilization, responded extremely quickly. The dozens of surviving medium and large warships immediately changed their combat plans. They no longer use lavender high-energy laser weapons, but choose more powerful high-temperature plasma weapons. Compared with the plasma weapons mastered by humans, the opponent's plasma cannonballs fly faster, have shorter energy storage time, and have a longer range. But in any case, their flight speed does not reach the speed of light. This also gives the opportunity for zero manipulation. Under Zero's control, each Golden Crow battleship quickly adjusted its course and tried its best to avoid the powerful plasma cannonballs. But, no matter how good your position is, you are still afraid of barges. Even Zero appears to be powerless in the face of the enemy's crossfire. There is no other reason. Zero can indeed calculate every trajectory of the opponent in real time. But given the performance of a human battleship, it is impossible for it to control a tractor to run as fast as a Ferrari. So, after persisting for a few seconds, explosions of fire flashed across the human fleet. Unlike laser weapons, the opponent's plasma weapons can even directly penetrate the armor of human battleships. Even the starship's adaptive repair system is helpless against such penetrating injuries. Inside the Grace flagship, the skin on the fleet commander's face wrinkled into a ball. Can't read? I really can't understand it. According to the latest evaluation results of the evaluators, the other party should belong to a third-level civilization. But, performance on the battlefield falsified this assessment. Just now, he asked those medium and large starships to test launch plasma cannonballs at each other. Originally, in his expectation, these plasma cannonballs would not cause much damage to the enemy starships. After all, the standard configuration of level 3 civilization is shield technology. The shield formed by the magnetic field is enough to block these high-temperature plasmas from the periphery of the starship. But, the reality was not what he expected. The resistance of enemy ships to plasma weapons approaches zero. Then, just a small test. The plasma cannonballs, luckily, destroyed several enemy warships. This time, I can't just give it to the commander. According to the intelligence, the other party should belong to a third-level civilization. But when it actually arrived on the battlefield, it suddenly discovered that the opponent was actually a small second-level civilization. The Grey Commander, who had experienced hundreds of battles, had an idea flash through his mind for the first time. It's a scam. Absolutely a scam. Therefore, it stared at the screen in front of it, trying to find out the intentions of the other party's civilization from the behavior of the enemy starship. At this glance, we can see the problem. The Grey Commander was surprised to find that the opposing warship could quickly predict the trajectory of his own artillery SH. LS. It is precisely because of this that a large number of plasma cannonballs they fired fell into the air. This scene once sounded the alarm in its heart. After all, this bug level ability can play a decisive role in interstellar wars. But soon, it discovered the mystery. The opponent's starship has insufficient mobility. Although it is unclear why the battleships of the other civilization only have the combat power of the second level civilization. As a fleet commander, it does not need to figure out the reason. After carefully considering it and confirming that there was no hidden conspiracy, a light flashed in its eyes. Fleetwide broadcast is on again. Battleship number 17413-17437. Attack with all strength. Since the other party is unwilling to activate the shield, then take this opportunity to eat these battleships. After pondering for a moment, it added again. The rest of the starships remain motionless to prevent fraud. As it spoke, it looked towards the cloud of yellow smoke. The smoke was thick, completely blocking its searching gaze, thinking that the other party could easily invade one's own communication network. The great commander's eyes showed a bit of fear. There must be a scam. At this moment, it believed the suspicion in its heart. As the gray man commanded the order, the firepower of these dozens of medium and large warships suddenly rose to a new level. Main gun. Secondary gun. Almost all the muzzles are spitting out plasma cannonballs with blue light. And the number of battle losses of the human fleet also skyrocketed at this moment. Like Zhao Zijia, Lu Yongchang also saw the battle damage figures in the holographic projection. But there was nothing he could do. Unlike laser weapons, 
Humans currently do not have any means of defense or treatment for plasma weapons. Professor, do you need to use two-dimensional fragments? The holographic projection interface flashed, and Zhao Zijia sent an inquiry. Chapter 3640 Real War Potential 2D Fragments Lu Yongchan looked at the words in the holographic projection, with a flash of hesitation in his eyes. It is true that the power of two-dimensional fragments is enough to turn the starships of these third-level civilizations into a picture scroll. However, considering that humans currently only have 52-dimensional fragments, Lu Yongchan couldn't help but hesitate before mastering dimensional technology. Unless you are extremely lucky and encounter a talkative dying two-dimensional creature again. Otherwise, this thing is a non-renewable resource. The kind that uses one piece less. It is really a waste of resources to use such a powerful weapon only to deal with these warships that are not even secondary flagships. Hold on. Lu Yongchan carefully observed the star map and found that except for the starships on the gap in the encirclement network, the other medium and large warships did not make excessive movements. He responded to Zhao Zijie's inquiry with a solemn expression. The opponent's flagship has not yet appeared. The two-dimensional fragments are strategic weapons and cannot be used lightly. Not to mention, the opponent's warship has obviously experienced a big battle. Our Golden Crow battleship is still capable of fighting. As soon as the news was sent out, good news came from the front line. Under the joint siege of ten Golden Crow battleships, a medium-sized enemy ship crashed. Good! Liu Yongchan looked at the Chinese characters in the holographic projection, clenched his fists hard, and shouted loudly in his heart, If there is one, there are two. Golden Crow, if the battleship can destroy the first medium-sized enemy ship, it will definitely destroy the next medium-sized enemy ship. This is the first enemy medium-sized warship to crash on the battlefield. Its crash process can provide humans with a lot of intelligence. Zero. Extract the complete destruction record. Liu Yongchan's eyes moved slightly and he quickly issued an order. The holographic image quietly enlarged. Images of 11 battleships slowly appeared in it. Ten of them are the Golden Crow, battleships of human civilization. The long interstellar journey caused most of the coating on the surface of the Golden Crow, battleship to peel off, coupled with the baptism of fire not long ago. At this moment, the Golden Crow is filled with the smell of war. But compared to the opponent's battleships, the Golden Crow, battleship is just like brand new from the factory. Enemy warships without starship adaptive repair technology have pitted surfaces at this moment. Even if there are shield generating devices protected by various protective measures, many of them are melted into a ball of iron by high energy lasers. The hologram begins to play. The muzzles of the tin, golden crow, battleships flashed with faint blue light. And they all fired plasma cannons at the target. After a salvo ended, the gun muzzle of the golden crow, battleship entered the charging state again after a short cooling period. During this gap period, high-energy laser beams continue to shoot towards the shield-generating device on the surface of the enemy ship. At the same time, these Golden Crow battleships continue to maneuver under Zero's control, dodging plasma cannonballs from enemy ships. With accelerated playback, the plasma cannon emitted by the battleship quickly arrived in front of the enemy ship and slammed into the magnetic field shield generated by the opponent. For a moment, the plasma cannonballs emitting blue light exploded and outline the outline of the magnetic field shield. The scene is extremely gorgeous. Even Liu Yongchang subconsciously held his breath when he saw this scene. Very beautiful. But it's also dangerous. As the plasma cannon exploded, the shield generating device on the enemy ship's armor instantly emitted a burst of bright light. This burst of light is more powerful than what has been observed before. Obviously, laser weapons are responsible for this. The damage to part of the shield generating device has greatly increased the burden on other shield-generating devices. The brilliant plasma hasn't dissipated yet. And the second salvo has arrived again. Round 3. Round 4. Until the fifth salvo. After a burst of bright light, the shield-generating device on the surface of the enemy ship completely misfired. At the same time, some plasma bombs fell on the surface of the enemy ship. Laugh. The high-temperature plasma instantly burned through the scarred armor of the enemy ship. The sixth salvo. This time, no more miracles happened. Under the attack of several groups of plasma glowing with faint blue light, the battered battleship finally turned into a group of brilliant fireworks, briefly lighting up the surrounding starry sky. And only half of the original ten Golden Crow battleships remained. The hologram ends. Lines of data slowly appeared in front of Liu Yongchang's eyes. Zero. Conduct modeling analysis on these data. 
he gave the order directly without any hesitation. The attack frequency and attack habits of enemy ships. The brightness changes of the shield generating device. The attack frequency and power of human plasma bombs. All data is integrated into a huge model. With a huge computing power provided by the ternary optical quantum computer. Zero starts to analyze the enemy starship's attack pattern bit by bit and transmits the calculation results to the battlefield in real time. At the same time, we will continue to modify this huge model based on feedback from the battlefield. Zero's true war potential was finally fully revealed at this moment. Models are constantly being improved, and battlefield situations are changing rapidly. The crash speed of medium and large battleships is getting faster and faster. The battle damage figures of the human fleet also began to decrease rapidly. The balance of victory is gradually tilting towards the human fleet. Finally, when the last medium and large battleship was destroyed, the human fleet broke out of the encirclement net. Looking at the battleship that was still motionless in the star map, a trace of doubt flashed in the eyes of Li Yongchang and Zhao Zijia. Why would the other party let them leave? Could it be fraud? At this moment, as time passed, the originally dense yellow smoke gradually dispersed. The complete appearance of the human fleet, illuminated by giant flares, was clearly presented in front of the enemy civilization. What happened? Inside the Gray's flagship, the commander's face was full of surprise and confusion. At the beginning, it took an average of five Golden Crow battleships to replace one of our own battleships. In the end, the opponent's civilization can basically resolve the battle without any damage. The progress in this can be seen by anyone who is not blind. As the thick yellow smoke gradually dissipated, the enemy civilization's fleet slowly appeared in front of it. When looking at those main fleets that looked exactly the same, the skin on the Grey Commander's face quickly became distorted. Originally, he thought there was some secret weapon hidden in the thick yellow smoke. But now, he roared with a ferocious expression. Damn it! Be cheated? The other party is not a third-level civilization at all. They are just an ordinary second-level civilization. Attack! All starships! Attack immediately! Flagship! Prepare to enter warp navigation state! The Grey Commander's expression was extremely ugly. He swore that these damn bugs would definitely pay the price for this. Chapter 365 Flagship Admission With a command from the commander, the atmosphere in the flagship suddenly became solemn. A series of electronic synthesized sounds sounded in the command center. The gravitational field generators placed at both ends of the flagship also started operating again. The increasing gravity caused the starlight around the battleship to be distorted to a certain extent. Gradually, a soap bubble appeared around the battleship. This is the key to entering a state of warp sailing. Space curvature bubble. The next second, the huge battleship wrapped in the curvature bubble disappeared. Earth. Lu Yongchan looked at the holographic image in front of him with confusion. It shouldn't be. The opponent's warships are much faster than human warships. And there is no reason for the opponent to let humans leave. Like Lu Yongchan. Zhao Zijia in the deep sea cabin also frowned. He put himself into the perspective of the other party's commander and tried to find out the reason why the other party did this. But, no matter how much he thought, he couldn't figure it out. Why did the other side stop the reinforcement operation and let them break through this thin encirclement network? Fortunately, before the two commanders could figure out the reason behind it, the battlefield situation changed again. In the command center, piercing alarms sounded one after another. In the star map, the white light spot symbolizing the enemy ships finally started to move without realizing it. Zhao Zijia, who was in the deep sea cabin, breathed a sigh of relief. That's right. This is a normal reaction. But the next moment, his slightly relaxed expression froze again. The reason is simple. Whether it's the surrounding area or enemy ships further away, they decisively gave up the huge encirclement network that had formed and relied on extremely high sailing speed to rush towards the human fleet without any plan. Blanche, what kind of play is this? Is there a wave of mad dogs? While mentally cursing the opponent's fleet command, Zhao Zijia issued one order after another to the human fleet. The Golden Crow, battleships that originally broke away from the defensive formation in order to break through the encirclement slowed down again and returned to the main force. In the breakout battle just now, humanity lost a total of 36 Golden Crow battleships. Because of this, the originally tight defensive formation also showed some flaws. Under Zero's control, each Golden Crow battleship quickly adjusted its position. The Taotai, Material storage ship located at the rear also took advantage of this rare free moment to replenish them with various ammunition and supplies. Among them, the most important are the billions of nanorobots. In the battle just now, 
almost all the nanorobots stored in the Golden Crow battleship were destroyed, while the Golden Crow battleship was adjusting its status. Enemy ships in the surrounding area had already arrived on the battlefield first, and the human fleet's response plan, still so simple and crude. Attention all units. Release giant smoke bombs. Enter radio silence. Free all small drones. Prioritize attacking enemy small warships. After the battle just now, Jalazija has figured out how to deal with enemy warships. Those small battleships with low performance are the opponent's fatal flaw. As long as these annoying small starships are dealt with, those medium and large starships cannot withstand the siege of the human fleet. Front. The moment the order was issued, the belly hatch of each Golden Crow battleship quietly opened. One after another. Petite drones came out. Under Zero's control, the drones quickly split into two groups. One of them circled around the Golden Crow battleship. The other one speeds up and heads straight towards the enemy starship. Because of their small size, their maneuverability is far greater than that of ordinary battleships. Thanks to this, these small drones carrying several plasma bombs can easily dodge high-energy lasers and approach the enemy fleet. Then, get close to one or two of the starships and explode. As for the drones circling around the Golden Crow battleship, they acted as bodyguards. There is nothing we can do. The opponent has too many low-level warships. As the saying goes, an elephant in large numbers can be killed by ants. Once the two starships come into close combat, the cumbersome, Golden Crow, battleship will inevitably be entangled to death by these small starships. At this time, it is time for the drone swarm to play its role. Not only can they block the main ship's sword, they can even take the initiative to deal with enemy warships approaching the main ship. Clouds of thick yellow smoke erupted in interstellar space. On the periphery of the smoke were groups of continuous explosions of fire. There is no doubt that those are the explosions of fire from the Grey's small battleships. The little grey commander on the flagship looked at the screen in front of him with an extremely ugly expression. Although their fleets have an absolute advantage in terms of numbers, the balance of victory has already tilted towards the other side. It racked its brains and couldn't figure out the reason. It doesn't understand. Why did the opponent's warships completely master their movement patterns in just one breakout battle? Why are the opponent's warships progressing so quickly? Yes. As a commander, it has discovered the reasons for their failure. No matter what order it issues, the other party can always make corresponding prejudgments. This greatly reduces the attack hit rate of your own fleet. At this moment, an extremely distant memory appeared in the conductor's mind. I vaguely remember that when I was playing games as a child. It also felt this sense of powerlessness. However, what it faced at that time was a weak artificial intelligence. The gray man commander shuddered slightly. It quickly shook its head and shook the thought out of its head. Impossible. Absolutely impossible. This kind of technology is absolutely impossible to appear in the hands of a second-level civilization. Not to mention the second-level civilization. Even the fourth-level civilization that they successfully attacked not long ago has not mastered this terrifying technology. Command. From the side, the voice of a colleague came. We need to change our tactics. The Grey Commander came to his senses, looking at the rapidly decreasing number of small battleships on the screen. It nodded solemnly. After calming down, it realized that it had made a big mistake. Fueling tactics. Looking at the human fleet that kept breaking out of the encirclement. It gritted its teeth and asked in a deep voice. How long does it take for us to reach our target location? Commander, it only takes 10 minutes. After hearing this, the conductor hesitated for a moment and then made up his mind. It is not prepared to waste time with this second level civilization. The other party's extremely powerful learning ability gave it a kind of heartfelt fear. So, it launched fleet broadcast again. All battleships. Stop attacking. Keep a certain distance from the enemy fleet. Drive them towards the target location and prepare the flagship for entry. Chapter 366. Faster light sailing. Human fleet. Jalousy Jeff frowned. Professor. The other party seems to have changed their strategy. He sent a message to Lu Yongchang through a brainwave reading device. Soon, Lu Yongchang's response appeared on the holographic projection in front of him. Good. According to the data provided by Zero, the opponent's attack frequency has been greatly reduced. And it also maintains a long distance from our starship. It looks like it is. The same as driving us away. Zhao Zijia's eyes flashed. Well said. Exactly the drive. Moreover, it is driven with purpose. As his thoughts moved, the holographic projection in front of him quickly enlarged. On the star map, 
the white light spots have blocked all the blue light spots' escape routes, leaving only a smooth road forward. It seems that the other party has prepared an ambush in front. Zijia, what are you going to do? Lu Yongchang sent the message again. Zhao Zijia frowned and checked the star map. According to the information on the star chart, there is nothing abnormal in the direction of the fleet. Neither the active detection equipment nor the optical telescope array found any trace of the enemy ship. After thinking about it for a long time, a ruthless look flashed in his eyes. Use the plan and kill the chicken to scare the monkeys. In just eight words, he perfectly expressed his plan. But the risks involved are immeasurable. Lu Yongchang frowned as he looked at the eight Chinese characters in front of him. He deliberately opposed it. But as the commander of science and technology, he knew that he could not interfere too much with the other party's decision. Therefore, after struggling for a moment, he sent a message to Zhao Zijia. Can you tell me the reason? Seeing that Li Yongcha did not directly oppose his plan, Zhao Zijia relaxed a little. He cheered up and quickly conveyed the message to Li Yongcha. First of all, we can briefly guess the reason why the other party did this. It's nothing more than a more advanced fleet waiting for us. Among them, there is a high possibility that it is the flagship of the other party's civilization. Faced with this approach, the more prudent approach is naturally to choose to change course and fight with these warships in front of us. But, no matter what, we will eventually meet each other's flagship. If we use two-dimensional fragments to directly deal with the opponent's flagship, Lu Yongchan's frown gradually eased. After thinking for a moment, he nodded. Just do as you say. The order was given. The human fleet began to accelerate, rushing towards the only way to survive. A few minutes later, Lu Yongchang stared at the holographic image in front of him. His pupils shrank violently, and his breathing became rapid. Zhao Zijia in the other deep-sea cabin also had a similar expression. There is no other reason. In the holographic projection, what is shown is the picture from the optical telescope. In the picture, there is a huge starship with a dilapidated surface. The starship is very large, roughly measured, reaching a length of 10,000 meters. Compared with it, even Earth seems extremely small. But? This is not the point. The starships of advanced civilizations cannot make Li Yongchang lose his temper like this. The point is, the way this starship appears, a few minutes ago, because he was on guard, Li Yongchang specially called up the real-time image of the optical telescope and observed the space in front of the human fleet with his naked eyes. The universe is incredibly deep. He found no sign of a starship except for the faint glow of stars in the distance. For a moment, he even doubted whether he and Zhao Zijia were overthinking. Could it be that the opposing civilization chose to retreat after discovering that the combat effectiveness of its own fleet exceeded expectations? This suspicion lasted until 10 seconds ago. 10 seconds ago, before Lu Yongcheng's eyes was the vast universe of endless darkness. But the next moment, a huge ship suddenly appeared in this vast universe. And it happened to be blocking the direction of the human fleet. The way the starship appears is extremely strange. It's just like the invisibility was cancelled and it was as if he suddenly appeared in front of humans. And the identity of this 10,000-meter-level battleship. Don't think too much. It must be the flagship of the other party's civilization. At the same time, Bip! Blop! Blop! The piercing sirens rang through the command center again. Alarm! Enemy ship radar signal detected. Signal strength, extremely high. Current distance, 10 light seconds. As optical telescopes picked up the image of the enemy's flagship, Active detection equipment picked up the opponent's radar signature. Something strange happened. Enemy ship radar signal detected. Distance, 11.1 light seconds. Mistake! Enemy ship radar signal detected. Distance, 9.99 light seconds. Mistake! A series of bright red alerts flashed across the screen in front of Lu Yongchang. Lu Yongchang couldn't help but froze on the spot. This, what's the situation? He glanced at the holographic image in front of him again. The opponent's warship still stayed in place, without any movement. And at the same time, it sent out extremely powerful full-band detection signals to the surroundings to show its existence to humans. In the observation data of the optical telescope, the distance between the human fleet and the enemy ships is constantly shrinking. The second distance data of 9.99 light seconds is obviously consistent with this observation. So, what happened to the first signal? The opponent only had one flagship, and it didn't make any movements. But two radar signals with different distances appeared before and after it? What is this? Suddenly, a horrifying idea merged in Lu Yongchang's mind. Zero. Set the opponent's movement speed to super light speed and perform the calculation again. 
as Liu Yongchang's order was issued. The error messages that kept refreshing the screen disappeared instantly. Professor, the calculation results show that the opponent's flagship is moving at a speed of 1.1 times the speed of light. Although he had been prepared in his heart, the moment he saw the result, he still took a deep breath. Deep sea fluid. Faster than light navigation technology. It turns out to be super light navigation technology. Liu Yongcheng's eyes suddenly became complicated when he looked at the holographic image. Fear and panic are mixed with a little fanaticism and greed. If so, this battleship can be captured. Unknown communication request detected. Signal source, 9.98 light seconds ahead. Zero's voice interrupted Liu Yongcheng's thoughts. Do you accept it? Liu Yongcheng pondered for a moment and nodded vigorously. Accept it. Unknown technological civilization. Stop. Hand over 80% of the supplies and all scientific and technological information. And you can leave safely, since the communication message came with dictionary information. Zero quickly completed the interpretation of the message. The moment the information was interpreted, the enemy fleets following the human fleet also accelerated to the scene and tightly surrounded the human fleet. Chapter 367 Gravitational Lensing Effect Inside the Grace Flagship The fleet commander at the forefront looked at the decelerating human fleet with a hint of pride in his eyes. Command! Never let down your guard! Noisy shouts came from a corner of the command hall. The little gray man's interest in conducting was disturbed. His face darkened, and he quickly turned his head to look in the direction of the sound. It is easy to tell from their clothing that they belong to lower status technicians. The fleet commander did not speak, but turned his questioning eyes to the little gray men next to the technicians. Command! They are responsible for the assessment of the strength of this hostile civilization. Facing the command's questioning gaze, the gray man replied respectfully. Upon hearing this, a cold light flashed in the conductor's eyes. In his opinion, it was these evaluators who gave, wrong, information that caused the gray fleet to suffer unnecessary losses. Command! Don't act rashly! Other side! A technician saw the fleet commander looking towards him and said urgently. It snorted coldly, interrupted the technician's words, and said in an extremely stern tone. Open your eyes wide and give me a good look. The other party is a second-level civilization. But, but, the technician who just spoke quickly glanced at the big screen in front of him. On the big screen, the human fleet has been completely surrounded by the gray fleet. The only way out was blocked by their flagship. At this moment, the human fleet's sailing speed is constantly decreasing. There is no doubt that this second-level civilization fleet has become a turtle in the urn. But what? Hearing the technician's rebuttal, the fleet commander's face darkened, and he shouted sternly. Technician number 1771. Watch your attitude. Because of the wrong intelligence provided by your team, the fleet suffered a lot of unnecessary losses. According to Article 113 of the Supreme Civilization Act, you and your accomplices will be sentenced to death. Do you still want to defend yourself? The technician raised his head with a gray face, looked at the serious-looking fleet commander, and slowly shook his head. I, I don't want to defend but I still want to remind you. This time, the conductor did not interrupt his words, but looked at him silently and gestured with his eyes to continue speaking. The technician calmed down and said again, The current performance of the opponent's civilization is indeed a second-level civilization. There is no doubt about it. But don't forget, they can easily break into our computer systems. You should have even seen their performance on the battlefield just now. Therefore, I suggest... Okay, okay. Dot! The fleet commander waved his hand with a look of boredom, interrupting the technician's words. Of course I know what you said, but a second-level civilization is a second-level civilization. Even if it masters some incredible computer technology, it is still a second-level civilization. Facing the starships of the fourth-level civilization, they have no choice but to surrender. After speaking, he winked at the little gray man aside. The next moment, these technicians were dragged away from the command center by the greys. The originally noisy command center became quiet again. The fleet commander glanced at the big screen in front of him impatiently. Is there any movement from the other party? Report. No response message has been received at this time. The commander snorted coldly. The second level civilization is the second level civilization. I guess they don't understand how big the gap is with us. This fourth level civilization battleship was just obtained not long ago. Thinking of the shock of its own civilization at that time, a bit of malice suddenly appeared in its eyes. Be prepared. After 60 seconds, the flagship will enter curvature navigation. Show these little bugs a show. Let them know what the technology of a fourth level civilization is. 
inside Earth. Liu Yongchang's expression changed again and again as he looked at the information in the holographic projection. Really? The opponent is an interstellar pirate civilization that lives by robbery. Unlike the pirates on Earth, these star thieves not only rob various material resources, but also scientific research materials from different civilizations. Professor Zhao Zijie's communication came again, use the two-dimensional fragments. I don't believe they can withstand attacks from two-dimensional fragments. This time, Liu Yongchang slowly shook his head and rejected Zhao Zijie's proposal. Don't rush it yet. The other party is very likely to have mastered the technology of super light navigation. And its maximum sailing speed and maneuverability far exceed our warships. Using two-dimensional fragments directly. The success rate is too low. That we do now. Zhao Zijie looked at the increasingly dense encirclement network in the holographic projection with some confusion. The longer the time drags on, the worse it will be for us. Lu Yongchang took a deep breath of the cool deep sea liquid to clear his head. You're right. Therefore, we need a one-hit chance. Only a shocking blow can suppress this group of interstellar pirates. As for now, all we have to do is wait. As soon as he finished speaking, Zero's voice sounded in the command center. Professor, an abnormality has been detected. The holographic projection screen changes rapidly. The enemy's flagship directly in front of the human fleet suddenly emitted extremely strong light from both ends. This is... Liu Yongchang looked at the holographic projection blankly. What is this? Weapon system? No. It shouldn't be a weapon system. What the other party wants should be supplies and scientific research materials. Direct use of weapons of mass destruction is not in the interests of the other party. Just when Li Yongchang was confused. Zero's voice sounded again. Professor. Gravitational lensing detected. After hearing this, Liu Yongchang's expression changed instantly. Gravitational lensing effect. This is a phenomenon that only occurs near massive celestial bodies. The strong gravity of massive celestial bodies will cause certain distortions in space-time. This leads to a magical phenomenon. When light passes through these massive celestial bodies, it will bend to a certain extent. As for the specific manifestation of this phenomenon, very simple. When there is a massive celestial body in the straight line between the observer and the light source, the observer will observe one or more images due to the bending of light caused by the gravitational lensing effect and these images deviate from their original directions. As Zero's words fell, more than 10 star maps instantly appeared in the holographic projection in front of him. These star maps are arranged in chronological order. By comparing more than 10 star maps, Liu Yongchang easily discovered the problem. The degree of distortion of the starlight around the enemy ship is increasing as time goes by. Chapter 368 The Flagship Enters Dimensional Strike Ship Combined with various detection data on the side. It's not hard to come to a conclusion. An extremely powerful gravitational force is appearing around the enemy starship. Gravity control technology. Liu Yongchang's eyes widened and he stared at the holographic projection in front of him, trying to analyze its internal principles from its external appearance. Obviously, this is impossible to do. At least, for the current Li Yongchang and human civilization, this is nothing short of a fantasy. Like, a primitive man who has just learned to use tools sees a car speeding on a smooth road. No way to start. No way to understand. Zero. Give it a try and use the phenomenon of gravitational lensing to inversely model the gravity around a starship. Liu Yongchan quickly gave up visual observation and directly issued orders to Ling. Unlike ordinary tasks, this task requires an extremely large amount of calculation. Even if it is zero, it will take a lot of time. In the star map, a 3D model is presented bit by bit from scratch. A strangely shaped bubble. Professor. According to real-time observations, the abnormal gravity is mainly concentrated in this area. Liu Yongchang did not speak, but silently stared at the holographic projection in front of him. In the projection, the light on the surface of the enemy ship became increasingly dazzling. Suddenly, it disappears. Liu Yongchang's pupil shrank suddenly. Zero. Why did the enemy ship disappear? Searching. Enemy ship radar signal detected. The enemy ship signal is moving away rapidly. Away speed. 1.1 times the speed of light. Strings of Chinese characters popped up in front of Li Yongchang one after another, constantly shocking Li Yongchang's heart, thinking of the huge, bubble-shaped, gravity source that appeared in front of him. A thought flashed in Li Yongchang's mind. Warp sail. Definitely warp sailing. Only, after all, why did the other party choose to leave? Before he could figure out the problem, the enemy ship appeared again in the holographic projection. It. Did you go shopping and come back? 
Zero's announcement also sounded belatedly. Alarm! Enemy ship signal approaching is detected. Liu Yongchan looked at the behemoth in front of him. And an incredible thought suddenly came to his mind. Could it be? Is the other party showing off his muscles? A message from the other party's flagship has been detected. Do you want to receive it? Liu Yongchan looked at the holographic image in front of him with a strange expression. After a long silence, he gave the order. Take over. Unknown technological civilization. I believe you should realize the technological gap between us. Once again, hand over 80% of the reserve supplies and all research materials, including computer technology, and you can leave safely. We will leave you enough fuel and supplies to reach the nearest star system. The Gray Fleet Commander looked at the human fleet on the big screen with contempt. Now, the other party should clearly realize the strength gap between the two sides. Right? Thinking that it would soon be able to obtain the other party's magical computer technology. A trace of passion suddenly rose in its eyes. If only their fleets could have this assistive technology. It even dares to cause trouble for the entire fourth level civilization. Did the other party respond? It asked nonchalantly. Not yet. The voice of a subordinate reported from the side. No. Something is wrong. Command. The formation of the opposing fleet is changing. They are not ready to surrender. The gray man's commander's face darkened. Damn bugs. Turn on the gravitational shield and magnetic field shield. Remember? Don't attack at will. The other party's computer technology has a great impact on our civilization. Got it! A little worry flashed in the subordinate's eyes. But he still responded. Unknown technological civilization. We advise you not to challenge our patience. Hand it over immediately. Lines of information continued to appear in the holographic projection in the command center. Zhao Zijia took a deep breath of the deep sea liquid and licked his lips subconsciously. A bitter mouthful. Professor. Direct attack? Lu Yongchang nodded and sent a message with a sneer. Direct attack. If nothing else, the other party should have discovered Zero's existence. They want to capture us, and this is our chance. Wait until the other party relaxes their vigilance. Then, Zhao Zijia's eyes flashed with excitement. Received. Finally, you can use this big killer. Under Zhao Zijia's order, the formation of the human fleet slowly changed. A wide opening gradually opened in the center of the spherical defensive formation. Surrounded by a group of small starships, the Earth was slowly sailing out towards the enemy flagship. Flagship entry. As for the small starships around Earth, they have a unique name. Dimension Strike Ship. In this counterattack, Earth fired the first shot. A faint blue laser shot straight towards the enemy flagship in front. Following closely behind are countless electromagnetic cannon projectiles and plasma cannonballs. Liu Yongchang, who was inside Earth, stared directly at the holographic projection in front of him. Gravitational lensing detected. Zero's reminder sounded. At the same time, the straight blue laser drew a beautiful arc not far from the enemy's flagship and bypassed the enemy ship. Liu Yongchang's heart sank. Gravity shield. Following closely behind are rail guns and plasma cannons. There is no doubt that they are all blocked by magnetic field shields. Although he had already expected it. When he saw the scene, a trace of despair still rose in his heart. At this point, human weapons cannot even touch the opponent's flagship. As for the original solution, even if thousands of ships fired their guns, the shield generating device on the surface of the enemy's flagship did not show any ripples. Unknown civilization. Stop doing useless work. Another message from the enemy appeared in the holographic projection. With this message, the enemy's encirclement network began to shrink, and the enemy's flagship slowly advanced against the fire of thousands of Golden Crow battleships. When no one noticed, a small, dimension strike ship broke away from the team and rushed forward quickly. After rushing out for a certain distance, the gun port in front of the dimension strike ship slowly opened. Under the action of the two-dimensional fragment control device, a small two-dimensional fragment shot out from the muzzle. The Gray Fleet also noticed this miniature starship that rushed out of the line at this moment. What's this? The fleet commander frowned and subconsciously asked the technician on the side. No response. It raised its hand and tapped its head. Come to think of it, those technicians were ordered to be dragged away. Destroy it! It didn't think much and gave the order directly. Chapter 369 Gravity Bomb Unstoppable Earth The two-dimensional fragments were launched successfully. Zero's voice sounded bringing good news to the human fleet. Liu Yongchang exhaled the deep sea fluid in his lungs heavily, with a somewhat relaxed look in his eyes. The battle plan was successful, although the two-dimensional fragments have not yet reached their destination. 
He, who understands the power of the two-dimensional fragments, knows that the enemy's flagship's life has already entered a countdown the moment the two-dimensional fragments are successfully launched. Warn! The piercing alarm sounded again. The enemy radar has locked onto our dimension strike ship. As soon as he finished speaking, a thick beam of deep purple light shot out from the side of the flagship. It is slightly different from the laser weapons equipped by other enemy ships. The laser weapon on the flagship has a diameter of dozens of meters. It can be said to be a laser column in the true sense. Through its exaggerated caliber, you can get a glimpse of its huge energy. At the same time, the enemy's flagship's dazzling light flickered for a moment. Under Liu Yongchang's gaze, this purple laser beam seemed not to be affected by the surrounding gravitational field and shot straight towards the dimensional strike ship that had completed its mission. Boom! Under the attack of such a powerful laser weapon, the dimension strike ship was like paper and was shot through in an instant. Then, a violent explosion lit up in the distance. Witnessing the destruction of the dimension strike ship with his own eyes, Liu Yongchang didn't feel any heartache in his eyes. There are two reasons. First, the launch mission of the Dimension Strike ship has been completed. And the Dimension Strike ship without two-dimensional fragments is just a slightly more advanced small starship. Perhaps the two-dimensional debris control device has some value. But in a war of this level, this loss is not worth the heartache. Secondly, it was naturally the abnormal situation just now that attracted all his attention. According to Zero's simulation, there is a complete gravitational shield around the opponent's flagship. There is no reason why laser weapons coming from enemy ships should not be affected by the gravity shield. As for temporarily turning off the gravity shield, do not make jokes. The laser weapons of the human fleet have not stopped. But until now, no laser weapon has hit the enemy ship. Even when the opponent launches laser weapons. Zero. Lu Yongchang asked urgently, Why is the high energy laser beam emitted by the other party not affected by the gravity shield? What just happened? Human eyes can no longer observe the changes at that moment. He urgently needs data from various high-precision observation equipment. Professor, a momentary change in gravity was observed. As Zero's voice sounded, the 3D model in the holographic image changed slightly. The moment the enemy ship's head and tail flashed, the gravity shield that was originally integrated and wrapped around the enemy ship suddenly cracked a gap, and that deep purple laser passed right through the gap in the gravitational shield. Subsequently, the gap quickly closed, and the complete gravity shield was formed again. The whole process lasted only one thousandth of a second. Liu Yongchang looked at the string of data in front of him, with deep shock and horror in his eyes. Is this the method of level 4 civilization? Being able to control gravity so precisely. Incredible. Zero. Where did the two-dimensional fragment go? He took a deep breath of deep sea liquid and drew his attention back from the battleship ahead. The holographic projection that shrank to the side quickly enlarged. That's a picture from an optical telescope. A gray picture with an area of only 5 square meters slided silently towards the enemy ship directly ahead. Looking at the inconspicuous picture, Lu Yongchan couldn't help but sweat. I don't know whether these two-dimensional fragments can pass through the gravitational and magnetic shields of enemy ships. Target successfully destroyed. The electronic sound without any fluctuation sounded in the flagship. The gray commander nodded with satisfaction. Look! Even with outstanding computer technology, the opponent is just a second-level civilization. At best, it's just a bigger ant. A high-frequency piercing alarm interrupted his words. Alarm. The optical detection equipment detected an unknown object. Warning. Unidentified objects are approaching the flagship. The screen in front of the command center changed rapidly. Images from the optical detection equipment appeared in front of a group of grays. It was a gray picture. With just one glance. A strong sense of violation arose in the mind of the fleet commander. It feels like this thing shouldn't appear in the three-dimensional universe. Dense data is displayed on a screen nearby. When he saw the string of error codes following the thickness data, the conductor's breathing became rapid in an instant. Although he didn't know exactly what it was and what effect it could have. But he knows. This creation from an enemy civilization is definitely not a good thing. Destroy it. Quick. Looking at the shrinking distance on the screen. The conductor's voice became sharp and high-pitched. The deep purple high-energy laser beam takes the lead. The light at the front and rear of the flagship flickered again. And the complete gravity shield suddenly opened a gap for the laser beam to pass through. The laser column, with a diameter of tens of meters, directly swallowed up the small gray picture. After a few seconds, the deep purple laser beam slowly dissipated. Something jaw-dropping happened. There is no damage on the surface of the gray picture. In fact, 
it still maintains its original route and approaches the flagship at an extremely fast speed. His! The conductor gasped suddenly, his high-pitched and sharp voice mixed with a bit of trembling. The picture in front of him quickly made him realize how extraordinary this humble little picture was. What the H, L is this? Quick! Keep attacking! The commander hurriedly pressed several buttons in front of him. We must not let it get close to us! All of a sudden, artillery fire was fired. Deep purple laser beams, arcing plasma cannons. These unparalleled ammunition rushed towards the great picture that was only five square meters in size, as if it was free of charge. But, to no avail. Amidst the rounds of vigorous explosions, this great picture flew unswervingly towards the direction of the flagship. The gray on the fleet commander's body gradually faded, and his gray-white body trembled slightly. A trace of cruelty flashed in its eyes, and it issued an order sternly. Launch a gravity bomb! Gravity bombs are the most important weapon of their civilization. When they captured this fourth-level civilization battleship, they were lucky enough to find ten gravity bombs in the battleship's warehouse. One was consumed while testing the weapon. Now there are only the last nine left. Chapter 372 Dimensional Flagship The Second Two-Dimensional Fragment The belly hatch of the flagship opened quickly. It is said to be a bomb. But in fact its shape is more like an ancient electromagnetic gun SH. L. Under the operation of automated equipment, the gravity bomb was put into a dedicated launcher. After a brief acceleration, it was thrown towards the great picture in the distance. The fleet commander clenched his weak fists and looked at the screen in front of him while breathing heavily. The distance between the two is quickly approaching. Buzz! The gravity bomb was detonated. An inexplicable fluctuation came from inside the bomb. In just an instant, the gravity bomb with a round surface was compressed by the strong gravity into a solid ball. The overall volume has been reduced by more than a hundred times. Even the gray warships in the distance were more or less affected. Some small warships were forcibly dragged away from their original positions by this sudden strong gravitational force. Naturally, the human fleet cannot avoid this gravitational force. Under the influence of the gravity bomb, the fleet that had originally stopped was dragged hundreds of kilometers. Fortunately, this extremely powerful gravitational force came and went away quickly. It didn't take long for it to quickly decay to zero. Now, it should be okay. Right. There was a trace of expectation in the eyes of the gray fleet commander, and he turned his gaze to the screen ahead. When he saw the picture clearly, his expression suddenly changed. That gray picture has not been affected in any way and is still going its own way and following its original track. The commander subconsciously held his breath, and the color of his gray skin quickly became lighter. Not only him, but all the grays in the flagship have the same appearance. Escape! Run away! The fleet commander's trembling and sharp shouts rang out in the command center. Enter warp navigation immediately. Command, the gravity generator needs 30 seconds to start. How much time do we have left? The conductor asked with horror on his face as his body trembled violently. 10 seconds. The moment the words fell, the great picture on the screen quietly passed through the two layers of shields. Neither the magnetic field shield nor the gravitational shield can stop it. It's like, this is just a projection, not an entity. Fall back. Speed up and retreat. For a moment, the gray man's commander felt his scalp numb. Who knows what will happen if this thing hits our own flagship? Who knows how a small second-level civilization can possess weapons of this level? He didn't have time to think, and directly pressed a few buttons on the console in front of him. The light of the hull thruster increases rapidly. The 10,000-meter-long starship began to move slowly, but obviously, facing the high-speed moving two-dimensional debris. This behemoth has missed the best time to escape. The gravitational field generator started successfully. Curvature bubble is being generated. Warning! Level 1 contact alert! The sound of electronic announcements filled the entire command center. And that gray two-dimensional fragment, which symbolizes death, is approaching the flagship of the gray fleet firmly and quickly. For a moment, the eyes of everyone in both civilizations were attracted by this small gray fragment. Under everyone's gaze, it quietly sank into the huge flagship. Next moment, a burst of extremely dazzling light was emitted from the position where the two came into contact. Like a star rising slowly in the dark universe. The endless light it emits does not bring any warmth to people, but is filled with endless cold murderous intent. The familiar scene appeared again. Lu Yongchang knew that the two-dimensional fragments had successfully hit the enemy warship. He forcefully exhaled a mouthful of deep sea liquid and silently sighed, It's over. In the picture returned by the optical telescope, accompanied by extremely strong light and heat, 
a thin picture appeared in front of everyone. To be precise, this scroll has no concept of thickness. In the scroll, every detail of the enemy's flagship is clearly presented. If a human's astronomical telescope is powerful enough, he can even see the tiniest screw inside. This magical scene did not last long. In just a few seconds, this unparalleled bright light quickly extinguished, and the surrounding high temperature also quickly cooled down under the erosion of the three-dimensional universe. The two-dimensional flagship once again restored the third dimension. But after experiencing the two-dimensional flagship, various internal materials and structures have been completely destroyed. This majestic starship, which was 10,000 meters long, gradually turned into a piece of loose interstellar dust under everyone's gaze. Professor, the message from Zhao Zijia flashed in front of Li Yongchang's eyes. The war is not over yet. I need to fire another 2D fragment. Lu Yongchang instantly understood Zhao Zijia's thoughts. He nodded, sending a message of agreement. Just as the enemy fleet was stunned in place, the second dimension strike ship quietly sailed away from the place. One minute later, the Grey Fleet gradually recovered from this sudden blow. Under the independent control of a famous captain, the originally tight and orderly encirclement network quickly became loose. Some Grey warships tried to move forward and attack the human fleet. The other part of the Grey warship slowly evacuated backwards. Obviously, the sudden death of the flagship is a fatal blow to the morale of the entire fleet. Several secondary flagships with a size of more than 5,000 meters sailed away from the place at this time. With the movements of these secondary flagships, the originally scattered fleet became orderly again. It seems that the commanders in the secondary flagship are taking over the authority of the flagship and organizing the fleet to attack again. Obviously, they believe that this level of attack cannot be replicated by a second level civilization. Just when these star thieves were preparing to attack again, another extremely strong light appeared in the fleet. Just a few seconds later, an extremely beautiful picture is once again presented in front of everyone. Only this time, what turned into a picture scroll was a sub-flagship with a length of 5,500 meters. Faced with the attack of two-dimensional debris, the secondary flagship obviously ended up with the same fate its final fate was scattered interstellar dust. The attack of the second two-dimensional fragment completely shattered the little morale of the Grey Fleet. No matter how hard they think about it, they can't imagine that a mere second-level civilization can master such a powerful weapon. When they saw the human fleet dispatching the third-dimensional strike ship, they could no longer withstand the overwhelming pressure. When the hull thruster at the tail of the secondary flagship lit up, the entire fleet fell into chaos. For a time, countless small starships in the encirclement network turned around activated their hall thrusters, and fled in all directions. Chapter 371 Counter Plunder Looking at the enemy fleet scattered like birds and beasts in the holographic projection, Lu Yongchan couldn't help but be stunned. What's the situation? Isn't this military morale too loose? He was even ready to launch the third two-dimensional fragment. The result of it? The opponent's secondary flagship actually escaped? The decisive battle is approaching. And the enemy ship turns around and runs away. Although it seems a bit outrageous. When I think of bandits and pirates in the Earth Age, everything suddenly makes sense again. Countless thoughts flash through Lu Yongchang's mind. But in the end, it all comes together into one simple command. Pursuit. We must capture several enemy medium and large warships. The hope for mankind to enter a third-level civilization lies with them. Thinking of the magnetic field shield technology displayed by medium and large starships, Lu Yongchang's eyes suddenly burst into light. As for Zhao Zijia, after being stunned for a moment, he also reacted. He immediately turned on the fleet-wide broadcast function and issued the order. Everyone obeys the order. Attack at will. No matter what you do. Stop those medium and large star ships. The ready-made shield technology is right in front of you. Whether you can get it or not depends on your ability. Boom. The moment the order was issued, the human fleet was boiling. It can be said that everyone's eyes are red. Shield technology. That shield technology. In the previous war. Almost every captain hated this turtle sh. L-like shield. There is no way. Except for high-energy laser beams and two-dimensional fragments. Almost every weapon currently in human hands will be affected by magnetic shields. Needless to say, two-dimensional fragments are strategic weapons and cannot be used indiscriminately. And high-energy laser beam. For large starships that can easily reach hundreds or thousands of meters. The power is too weak. In order to win the breakout battle just now, these captains can be said to have tried their best. It is precisely because of this that they have an extremely deep understanding of the importance of shield technology. Putting this turtle SH L on an enemy ship would be a huge headache. 
But if it is placed on one's own worship, that is an artifact. Let me ask you, who doesn't want to put some shields on themselves and get some buffs before fighting? Although there is no buff, the opportunity to put a shield on your body is right in front of you. Then, hit me hard. Have you seen those biggest warships? Pour all the ammunition over there. Don't save it for me. This war is over. If I find that there is another artillery SH. L. You all will go to the gravity chamber to train. Don't even think about running away from these secondary flagships. The internal communication channels of almost every Golden Crow battleship are filled with similar information. Under the orders of these red-eyed captains, every Golden Crow battleship, as if on stimulants, frantically spit out the ammunition in the warehouse. High-energy laser beams, electromagnetic guns, plasma cannons, and plasma torpedoes. Some Golden Crow Battleships even moved out the super-large yield hydrogen bombs that had been stored for a long time, regardless of whether it's useful or not. Let's launch it first. For a time, the narrow space in the universe was filled with all kinds of weapons, and the targets of these weapons are all pointed at the largest secondary flagships. Gray Fleet. Sub-flagship number one. Are they crazy? A gray captain's eyes widened suddenly, looking at the warning messages flashing on the screen. He felt his scalp numb when it discovered that the targets of almost all attacks were several secondary flagships. As a star thief civilization that lives by plundering, it immediately realized what the other party wanted to do. His gray skin suddenly turned gray. His body began to shake violently. And a strong chill rose from behind. Shivering. This damn second level bug actually wants to. counter rob Them. Seeing that the first round of attacks was about to come, the gray captain gritted his teeth and shouted sternly. Stop! No more escaping. Contact the remaining secondary flagships. We need cooperation. The other three secondary flagships, without exception, were also in danger of being besieged. They immediately received a request for cooperation from the number one sub-flagship, the captain of the number three sub-flagship. After seeing the warning information on the screen, did not hesitate and decisively chose to join forces. Under the captain's order, the number three sub-flagship quickly changed its course while increasing the operating power of the shield generation device, while speeding towards the number one sub-flagship. As for the second and fourth sub-flagships, they still maintain their original routes. As for the reason, a very simple truth. When you and your companions are being chased by a bear, you don't need to run very fast. Just go faster than your companions. It's cruel, but also very realistic. But these two captains obviously ignored one thing. Is human civilization really a bear? The sky full of artillery fire engulfed four secondary flagships. The dim starry sky was once again illuminated by this brief but brilliant fire. Before the saturation strike arrived, sub-flagships number one and number three quickly reached a cooperation agreement. In order to save time, the two flagships moved towards each other while using laser weapons to intercept the cannonballs fired at each other as much as possible. I have to say, this coping strategy is quite good. At least, after dealing with some of each other's SH. LS. Their shield generating devices could barely withstand this round of saturation strikes. As for the second and fourth sub flagships, when they chose their own escape paths, their endings were already doomed. The blue plasma continuously exploded near the two secondary flagships, and then slided to both sides under the influence of the magnetic field shield. The continuous saturation strikes quickly overloaded the shield generating device. As two bright lights flashed by, the magnetic shields around the two secondary flagships slowly dissipated. Balls of high-temperature blue plasma directly hit the armor of the two battleships. Boom! Boom! Two extremely brilliant fire lights appeared in the corner of the battlefield. But The atmosphere in the human fleet was extremely strange. Not a shred of joy. On the contrary. Regret mixed with a bit of heartache. TMD! Which little brat set the plasma bomb? Are you blind? Didn't you see that their magnetic shields were broken? Two ships. These are two secondary flagships. T and N D. Cheer up your labor and management. If you blow up another one, it's up to you. Facing the reprimands of the captains. The faces of the starship pilots below were filled with bitterness. It was clearly promised that all the cannonballs would be fired. Why is there such a thing as a change of heart? Disaster. Too difficult. Chapter 372 Dear Advanced Technological Civilization. We surrender. The other side. Grays 1 and 3 sub-flagships. Seeing the flames of the friendly secondary flagship exploding, the two captains' faces were filled with horror. It is foreseeable that if you only have two secondary flagships in hand, what awaits them will only be the same ending. 
They tried to issue orders to the fleet and unite to fight against the enemy. But the defeat was devastating. The destruction of one flagship and three sub-flagships completely destroyed the confidence of the entire fleet. Almost no one paid attention to the roars of the two captains in the communication channel. Fortunately, after the explosion of secondary flagships number two and number four, the human fleet's offensive slowed down a lot. Even so, this continuous intensive offensive is not something ordinary warships can withstand. Even if it is a secondary flagship, it cannot escape at full speed under such an offensive. The battleships of human civilization were divided into two groups at this moment. One group is still carrying out its original fire suppression mission. The other group was speeding towards the two secondary flagships. On the way, countless small drones flew out from the belly of the Golden Crow battleship and slowly circled around the huge Golden Crow battleship. These drones and battleships gradually formed a slowly shrinking spherical surrounding network. Looking at the increasingly familiar formation, the two captains turned pale. Damn bugs! The captain of the number one sub-flagship roared angrily. They actually used our tactics? Another captain's bitter voice came from the communication channel. Never mind these irrelevant questions. What we need to consider now is how to solve this damn siege. When they used encirclement tactics against other civilizations, they never thought that one day they would fall into the enemy's counter-encirclement network. Or, after hesitating for a moment, Captain 3 hesitantly spoke again. Shall we surrender? No. Captain 3's proposal received strong opposition. Since we left our home planet, our later civilization has no history of surrender. Captain Number 1 roared in a low voice. They are just a small second-level civilization. I will never allow a bug to crawl above our heads and show off its power. But? Captain Number 3's tone became more intense. The weapons they fired at the flagship. Captain Number 1's voice suddenly stopped when he spoke. Thinking of that magical and terrifying weapon. There was a bit of fear in its eyes. But soon, it shook its head vigorously. No, I cannot. This kind of weapon is definitely not a technology that a second-level civilization can possess. Maybe like us. They got lucky and got these weapons from somewhere. I'm sure they no longer have such a powerful weapon. Captain Number One's tone became more and more certain. Even a little excited. Yes, definitely not. Otherwise, they wouldn't fire two weapons at once. Cutting bugs. They want to scare us. There was silence in the communication channel for a while. And then the voice came again. Hope so. But the enemy's encirclement network is about to take shape. What else can we do? The captain of the number one sub-flagship did not speak, but glanced at the big screen in front of him. His expression relaxed a lot. Thanks to this gradually shrinking encirclement network, those warships that had not had time to escape were forced to approach the two secondary flagships. Perhaps we have to thank this bug. It murmured to itself facing the urgent inquiry in the communication channel. It pondered for a moment and raised the corners of its mouth slightly. Didn't the other party already tell us what to do? But we don't have those giant smoke bombs. Captain number three immediately thought of the human fleet's response. But when he thought about it, his face turned ugly again. Look around, Captain number one said in a cold tone. Can't these battleships be used as smoke bombs? Hearing this, Captain number three was startled. Its expression changed several times. And finally it gritted its teeth and said harshly. Okay. Time passes slowly. A dense encirclement network composed of golden crow, battleships, and small drones finally took shape. Looking at the enemy ships huddled inside the encirclement net, Lu Yongchang raised the corners of his mouth slightly and took the initiative to send out the first message of human civilization. Surrender. Or perish. Just four words. But it brought endless humiliation to the enemy ships in the encirclement net. In the number one sub-flagship, the captain's gray-white body trembled slightly and let out a low roar. It suppressed the anger in its heart and edited a few messages. Later civilization will never surrender. Damn bugs. You can't fool us. You no longer have that magical weapon in your hands. Let the war begin. Let's see if we tear down your encirclement network. Or if we are strangled by your warships. The moment it clicks in, it roared into the fleet communication channel. All battleships. Prepare to break out. Before the words could even be finished, a gap suddenly opened in the tight surrounding net in front of them. This sudden abnormal phenomenon made the two captains stunned. Soon, their doubts were answered. Because, a line of text appeared on the screen in front of them. As you wish. Next moment. A total of 48 small starships sailed along this gap into the encirclement net. Although the starships are small, no grade dares to despise them. There is no other reason. Their flagship was destroyed by this inconspicuous small starship. 
That paper-like weapon still scares these greys. No. Impossible. The captain of the number one sub-flagship's eyes widened, and he let out a shrill and sharp wail. Why are there so many? Fake. It's all fake. I do not believe. They are just a second-level civilization. I don't believe it. It shook its head repeatedly and muttered to itself as if madly. Suddenly, it pressed the fleet-wide broadcast button in front of it with a ferocious expression. All battleships. Launch an attack. The roar echoed in the command center. But, no response. The next second, a message came from the number three sub-flagship. Dear Advanced Technological Civilization, We are willing to surrender. Obviously, this message was not sent to the captain. Captain number one looked at the side window in disbelief. Outside the porthole is the hull of the number three sub-flagship. It rushed to the console frantically and roared. Why? That's fake. That's just an MPSH. L? Before he finished speaking, a dazzling light came from the side. A large battleship has turned into a picture without thickness. Its lips trembled violently several times. Then, it lowered its shoulders and silently sent a message. Dear Advanced Technological Civilization, We Surrender, Chapter 373 Supreme Control Authority, Earth, Looking at the words presented in the holographic projection, Lu Yongchang showed a faint smile on his lips. It worked, relying on the two-dimensional fragments given by painting. They successfully frightened a third-level civilization, thinking of the various advanced technologies that humans can obtain from them. Lu Yongchang's eyes suddenly became hot. In the star map, the mangled light of the muzzle of the incomplete fleet headed by two secondary flagships gradually dimmed. It seemed that the other party was sincerely surrendering. Even so, Lu Yongchang still did not let down his vigilance. He pondered for a moment, edited a message, and sent it publicly to all enemy warships. Open all network ports immediately and hand over control of all battleships. The captain of the number one sub-flagship looked at the words on the screen and felt a rush of blood rushing to his brain. No! Absolutely not! It roared in an extremely strong tone. Once control of the network port and battleship is released, our life and death will be completely in the hands of the other party. I disagree. It is all too familiar with this approach of human civilization. In the past, when facing those weak civilizations, the later civilization usually used various excuses to gain control of the opponent's warships. Then, forcibly shut down the life support system. It can be said to be an excellent way to eliminate the root of the problem without losing any blood. It is precisely for this reason that it seems particularly excited and frightened by this request from human civilization. The next moment, Captain Three's sight came from the communication channel. Look around us. We have no choice. Captain Number One subconsciously raised his head and looked at the portholes around the command center again. Outside the portholes, there were densely packed enemy warships. The muzzles of each enemy ship emitted a faint blue light. It knows that this is a sign that the plasma weapon is accumulating energy. These are nothing. What really made his hands and feet feel cold and his mind went blank were the 48 small starships right in front of him. It can be clearly seen through optical observation equipment. Among the 48 small starships, two starships had a long gun barrel protruding from the head. The direction of the gun barrel is clearly the number one and number three sub-flagships. At the same time, perhaps because the waiting time was too long, a line of text appeared on the screen in front again. Repeat. Immediately open all network ports and hand over control of all battleships. Otherwise, die. Just two lines of text made it feel cold all over. But, but, its lips trembled a few times. And it muttered to itself with despair in its eyes. You also know how we did it before. Give up. After a moment of silence, the voice of Captain Three came again. This time, Captain Number Three's voice sounded particularly low. There is no chance. And, there's even worse news. What? Captain Number One turned to look at the communication device beside him blankly. It can't imagine that in this situation, there is any news that can be called worse. We don't have the highest authority. Captain Number Three's voice sounded again. Don't forget. These battleships were stolen from other civilizations. At that time, in order to crack the control authority of the fourth level flagship, those technicians stopped the cracking work of all secondary flagships. What? No supreme control? In the deep sea cabin, Lu Yongchang's face was full of astonishment. Are you kidding me? Zero. Are you sure there's nothing wrong with the translation? The first time he saw the translation, this idea flashed through Lu Yongchang's mind. There must be a translation error. Professor, if the dictionary given by the other party is correct, then the translation will not be wrong. 
Zero responded to Liu Yongcheng's question with absolute certainty. Even after receiving an extremely positive answer from Zero, Liu Yongcheng was still extremely surprised by this situation. For an interstellar civilization, this situation is simply impossible. What about the network port? Liu Yongcheng calmed down and asked again. The other party has released all network ports. Zero responded immediately. That'll do. Liu Yongcheng breathed a sigh of relief. The next step is up to you. I need to gain the highest control authority over all the opponent's starships. Receive. Zero still looked calm. Captain Number One looked at the unchanged screen and frowned. Then, it looked at the scene outside the porthole. Just like the screen. Nothing changes. Perhaps it was a psychological effect. It even felt that the light from the muzzles of those battleships was getting brighter. As if, those plasma cannonballs will be emitted from the muzzle in the next second and directly hit the battleship where it is located. It swallowed hard turned its head sharply, and glared at the technician on the side. Are you sure the port is open? Yes. Captain, the technician said tremblingly. Five minutes ago, the network ports of all battleships were completely unrestricted. Then why is there no response at all? Captain number one waved his hand and directly interrupted the technician's words. Look at those battleships outside. Did you do anything? Faced with the captain's pressing inquiries, a few drops of sweat suddenly appeared on the technician's forehead and the gray skin on his body quickly faded to grayish-white. I... I don't know. The technician's brain was spinning rapidly, thinking about possible causes. Suddenly, it seemed to have thought of something and said excitedly, Maybe, maybe the opponent's computer technology is relatively backward. Even if we open the port, they will not be able to analyze the battleship's computer system for a while. Because the flagship was destroyed so suddenly, countless important information did not have time to communicate with the secondary flagship. Coupled with the low status of technicians themselves, these technicians have very little say in the current war. As a result, an extremely strange phenomenon occurred. No one, whether it was the captain of the secondary flagship or the low status technicians, knew about the quantum communication system intrusion that occurred on the flagship not long ago. As for other battleships, not to mention that, in the eyes of the fleet commander who has become a paper man, these cannon fodder warships, large or small, only need to execute its orders perfectly. Hearing the technician's words, Captain Number One was stunned. Immediately, a look of enlightenment appeared in its eyes. It feels like it makes sense. After all, the opponent is only a second-level civilization. Facing the creations of a third-level civilization, it is normal to be helpless for a short time. Perhaps this will be an opportunity for a comeback? Captain Number One frowned slightly and quickly thought about the corresponding countermeasures. Chapter 370 for the Rothor Civilization Disposal Plan. Just when it was about to speak again, the lights in the command center suddenly dimmed. As the lights dimmed, it was the huge screen in front of the command center. No, not just that screen. All the screens in the entire command center dimmed. Even similar scenes appeared in the command center of the entire fleet. Captain Number One stared blankly at the scene in front of him and swallowed the words that came to his lips. What? What's going on? In the chaos. It pulled the technician next to it over and yelled. Didn't you say that the other party can't analyze our computer system? The technician ignored the captain in front of him. It stared blankly at the big screen in front of the command center. On the screen, I don't know when, lines of strange codes flashed across the screen. What's this? Captain number one asked with a confused look on his face. The code on the screen flashes faster and faster. It's like mercury pouring down the ground. Zero showed off his power to these little greys with great arrogance. Finally, the technician's thinking could no longer keep up with the speed of code refresh. It reluctantly withdrew its gaze. This is the process of cracking the highest control authority of a battleship. The first half of the code. Almost all technicians at that time had seen it. Captain number one quickly captured the hidden meaning of this sentence. What about the second half? The technician shook his head and lowered his head. I don't know. We haven't gotten that far yet. Upon hearing this, Captain Number One's expression changed instantly. In just a few dozen seconds, the other party's cracking progress surpassed them. You know, the technicians spent nearly a year on these sub-flagships. There is no need to say more about what this means. Suddenly, the dim light returned to normal, and the screen flashing with countless codes has returned to its familiar appearance. It. Did they succeed? Captain Number One's pupils trembled slightly, swallowed, and spoke cautiously. The technician shook his head blankly. I... I don't know. Captain Number One's eyes stayed on the communication equipment nearby. There was no hesitation. 
It directly pressed the button on the communication device. Nothing happens. It reluctantly pressed the button again. At the same time, a line of text flashed on the screen in front. Captain of the number one sub-flagship. Savian, stop your behavior. Otherwise, this behavior will be regarded as a provocation to human civilization. It suddenly stopped its movements. Because of fear, its body trembled violently. And its gray skin almost faded to white. It's over. There was only one thought left in its mind. Their lives were completely in each other's hands. The highest control authority has been successfully obtained. Zero's report sounded in Earth. Currently, all enemy warships are under control. Lu Yongchang walked out of the deep sea cabin and said in surprise. So fast? His eyes moved slightly. And he asked again. Is there an artificial intelligence similar to yours in the opponent's battleship? Strong artificial intelligence has not been discovered yet. Zero responded simply and clearly without any hesitation. There is a weak artificial intelligence program in the secondary flagship memory. Lu Yongchang nodded thoughtfully. From this point of view, even the third level civilization has not mastered the so-called strong artificial intelligence technology. Thinking of the mysterious code given by the system, the doubts in Lu Yongchang's eyes became a little more intense again. Where does the technology tree system come from? Such a powerful zero. And what level of civilization can it possess? Lu Yongchang did not delve into these questions that were destined to have no answers. Instead, he directly issued the order. Zero, inform everyone and prepare to convene a meeting of the Academy of Sciences. After pondering for a moment, he said again, In addition to the Academy of Sciences, wake up the members of the parliament. They also need to participate in this meeting. Earth, conference room. Lu Yongchang sat in a seat, frowning slightly, as if he was thinking about something. Yongchang! Ahem. We meet again. Ahem. A familiar voice came from the direction of the door. Lu Yongchang turned his head and looked in the direction of the sound. Seeing the visitor, he quickly untied the electromagnetic adsorption device on his chair, stood up and greeted him. President Hong. Long time no see. While coughing, Hong Chiming walked quickly to Lu Yongchang, stretched out his hand and patted his shoulder. Yongchang, why are you shouting like this? Perhaps because he saw an old acquaintance. Lu Yongchang's expression became more lively. He chuckled and changed the subject. Did you just come out of the hibernation cabin? Hong Chiming coughed hard again, nodded and said, That's right. I really like the taste of this deep sea liquid. As he spoke, he shook his head and said half-jokingly, Whenever you are free, you can improve its taste. Lu Yongchang naturally accepted the request with a smile. Okay, I will solve this problem when things calm down. Hearing this, Hong Chiming smiled bitterly and shook his head. Stable and stable. I don't know if I'll ever see this day again. When I woke up, I thought I had arrived in the Glee's 555 star system. But, Hong Chiming smiled bitterly. It's another war. Fortunately, the result is good. When I just woke up, Zero told me that you captured a group of battleships from the third level civilization. You don't know. I was completely confused at that time. Seeing Hong Chiming's amazed look, Lu Yongchang had a gentle smile on his face. This is also thanks to the two-dimensional fragments of the painting. Otherwise, the flagship that can sail at superlight speeds would be enough for us. It's time for a drink. Hong Chiming. Sail at faster than light speed? Seeing some of the surrounding members of Congress casting doubtful glances at him, he quickly lowered his voice and said, Is there such a thing? Lu Yongchang nodded and explained softly. It's unbelievable. Hong Chiming's eyes showed a bit of fear. Professor. Chairman of the Council. And all participants are here. Zero interrupted Hong Chiming's words. Hearing this, Hong Chiming nodded slightly, straightened his expression, and sat in his seat. In just a short moment, he seemed to be a different person. The way he was laughing and joking when chatting with Li Yong Chong was completely different. At this time, Hong Chiming exuded a calm and solemn aura. In my impression, the old council president also has the same temperament. Thinking of the old council president buried in Proxima B, Lu Yongchang couldn't help but feel a little dazed in his eyes. Professor? Fang Su's voice came from the side. Lu Yongchang calmed down and spoke slowly. Everyone, this meeting will mainly discuss one issue. The holographic projection unfolds. Later Civilization Solution. Chapter 375 Affiliated Civilization? I believe you already have a certain understanding of this incident. Lu Yongchang didn't say any nonsense and went straight to the topic. In your opinion, what should we do with the surrendered Rothor? The moment the question was raised, 
There was a burst of discussion in the conference room. Almost everyone showed hesitation and confusion on their faces. That's normal. Unlike the Battle of Proxima Centauri. In order to save time and avoid future troubles, there were no prisoners of war at all after the war ended humans adopted a genocide plan. Therefore, this kind of intercivilizational treatment of prisoners of war occurred for the first time in human history. Seeing the tangled and hesitant looks on everyone's faces, Lu Yongchang didn't show the slightest hint of impatience on his face. He just sat quietly in his seat, his eyes slowly scanning the people around him. Apparently, the gaze of the chief scientist was not so easy to bear, whether they were academicians of the Academy of Sciences or members of the parliament. Most people subconsciously lowered their heads and avoided sight the moment they came into contact with Lu Yongchang's eyes. On the one hand, it is because over the past few hundred years, as a figure who single-handedly led the entire human civilization out of the earth and into the universe. Lu Yongchang's status in the hearts of everyone has been deified. On the other hand, it was also because this meeting was a hot potato, although it was said to be a discussion of how to deal with the Rathor prisoners of war. In fact, the core of this meeting was related to mankind's future attitude towards alien civilizations. Contact and handling of alien civilizations have always been an extremely sensitive issue. Once handled improperly, it can easily cause extremely bad effects. Then, not only the congressmen, but also the academicians of the Academy of Sciences. No one dared to take the lead in expressing their opinions. Only some, old fritters, not only dared to look at Li Yongchang, but even dared to make a few micro-expressions expressing helplessness and confusion. Yes, it was Fang Su he was talking about. Seeing Fang Su's extremely coherent movements of shrugging, shaking his head, and spreading his hands, Lu Yongchang was also a little helpless. Cough! Fang Su! How about you tell me your opinion first? The meeting must continue after all. Since no one is willing to be the first to express their opinions, he can only find a strong man among them. Facing Lu Yongchang's roll call, Fang Su performed a peaking opera face changing in just a short moment. From the helplessness of shrugging, shaking his head and spreading hands at the beginning, to the shock of being called out. Finally, when he found that, the world was focused on him. The shock quickly dissipated and was replaced by incomparable solemnity and solemnity. Ahem! Fong Su coughed lightly, cleared his throat and said, I think the Proxima Centauri civilization can be used as a reference for how to deal with later prisoners of war. The moment the words fell, there was a burst of noisy discussion in the conference room. The meaning of Fong Su's words was obvious. Genocide program. Leave no one alive. Such a radical solution instantly sparked numerous debates. Among them, the reaction of MPs was particularly violent. Unlike those shocked congressmen, Lu Yongchang did not show any strange look on his face. To be honest, what Fang Su said was actually the answer in his heart. As for Chairman Hong Chiming, like Lu Yongchang, he remained silent and did not show the slightest expression on his face. Everyone who is not of my race must have a different heart. I believe everyone knows this. Seeing that the discussion had subsided slightly, Fang Su spoke again. Human beings have not come into contact with many civilizations, but we can still see the survival laws of this universe. Natural selection. Survival of the fittest. Sooner or later, kindness towards foreigners will become a knife-stabbing humanity itself. Having said this, Fang Su stopped speaking and turned to look at Lu Yongchang. Professor, this is my point of view. Lu Yongchang nodded noncommittally, glanced at everyone again, and asked softly, Are there any different opinions? I object. A congressman sitting in the corner suddenly said, It is different from the Proxima Centauri civilization. At that time, for the continuation of human civilization, it was understandable to resort to genocide. But right now, human civilization doesn't have such urgent needs. The current level of science and technology is enough to support us in arbitrarily selecting resource-rich star systems within 20 light years. As he said that, the congressman glanced at Lu Yongchang cautiously, seeing that Lu Yongchang didn't show any objection. He calmed down and spoke again. In my opinion, retaining these Rothor people has the following advantages. On the one hand, we can have a deep understanding of the survival laws of interstellar civilization through these Rothor people. We cannot look at the universe based on one side of the painting. On the other hand, dialogue and exchanges between different civilizations can greatly promote our cultural and technological development. We can even learn some experiences and lessons from their social systems. What's more, Preferential treatment of prisoners of war is a principle that humans have always followed. The truth behind it must be clear to everyone. In a way, we can turn them into adjunct civilizations to humans. I believe that in possible future wars, 
these subsidiary civilizations can significantly reduce the casualties of human soldiers. Lu Yongchang's expression moved slightly. He didn't care about the congressman's first two points. But the last point, I have to say, touched his heart. Every interstellar war is accompanied by the death of a large number of soldiers and generals. Once there are affiliated civilizations participating in the war, he can push these affiliated civilizations onto the battlefield and serve as so-called cannon fodder. This can greatly reduce the casualty rate of the human fleet. Even the advantages of subordinate civilization are not limited to war. When there is no interstellar war, these subsidiary civilizations can continuously provide blood to the parent civilization. This so-called blood is a variety of resources. Undoubtedly, this can greatly speed up the development of the mother civilization. No. Just as Lu Yongchan was thinking about the advantages of subordinate civilization, a loud shout came from the side. Subordinate civilization will not work. He raised his head and looked in the direction of the sound. It's Zhao Zijia. The military, as part of the Academy of Sciences, is naturally qualified to participate in this meeting. As the tactical commander-in-chief of the human fleet, Zhao Zijia is one of the representatives of the military. Perhaps sensing Lu Yongchang's gaze, Zhao Zijia turned his head and cast a questioning look at Lu Yongchang. Lu Yongchang nodded slightly and gave him an encouraging look. Zhao Zijia, tell me what you think. Why do you oppose the proposal of subsidiary civilization? Chapter 376 Extermination Plan After hearing Lu Yongchang's words, Zhao Zijia calmed down and spoke slowly. Member Wan, this so-called subsidiary civilization hides great risks. The congressman who proposed the subsidiary civilization plan changed his face slightly. Commander Zhao, I would like to hear the details. Zhao Zijia reached out and unlocked the electromagnetic adsorption device on the seat. Stood up and said, Admittedly, there are many advantages to satellite civilization. Provide various resources to the mother civilization and serve as cannon fodder in wars. But these advantages are all based on the same foundation. Speaking of this, Zhao Zijia's voice paused. The strength of the mother civilization has an absolute advantage. Obviously, current human civilization does not have such conditions. The Rathor civilization is a third-level civilization, and its technological level is even higher than that of humans. In this case, I don't think these Rathors can be used by humans. They may even become a hindrance in a war. Think about Atoka in the Proxima Centauri civilization. Zhao Zijia looked extremely solemn. In a war, if this situation occurs, the consequences will be unimaginable. In my opinion, at least, the current human civilization must not develop subsidiary civilizations. Zhao Zijia said categorically, we cannot take such a huge risk. For a moment, the debate in the conference room started again. Both parties insisted on their opinions and refused to give in at all. Yong Chong, what do you think? On the side, Chairman Hong leaned over and asked in a low voice. Lu Yong Chong was silent for a moment and slowly shook his head. I haven't thought about it either. He slowly closed his eyes, frowned, and carefully considered the views of the two parties. His, listening to the arguments coming from around him. He took a breath and murmured to himself, this is going to be difficult. Hong Chiming on the side was obviously constantly listening to the arguments of the people around him. Suddenly, his frown eased slightly. Yong Chong, how about a compromise? How about keeping them in the home ship? Lu Yongchang pondered for a moment and shook his head again. That's inappropriate. Human civilization has not yet reached such a level of luxury. Until a truly livable planet is found, the living environment of human civilization will not be adequately guaranteed. At this time, a lot of resources are being spent on raising these aliens in the home ship. Lu Yongchang shook his head repeatedly. Don't say I can't accept it. Even ordinary people probably can't accept this situation. Hong Chiming looked solemn, obviously aware of the problem. He sighed softly, and his soothing brows wrinkled again, while everyone was arguing. Zero's voice sounded in Lu Yongchang's ears. Professor, the data collection work has been completed. Hearing this, Lu Yongchang suddenly opened his eyes. He whispered, Show me the catalog. As he finished speaking, a small holographic image appeared in front of him. In the holographic projection, various information is presented in categories. This is, Lu Yongchang's movements attracted the attention of Hong Chiming beside him. He leaned over and glanced curiously at the holographic projection in front of Lu Yongchang. Maintenance Procedure of Ring Battleship Magnetic Shield Type 3 Laser Weapon Operation Guide The dense fonts are also mixed with various complicated illustrations. Just one glance made Hong Chiming feel dizzy. 
This is the various information in those Rothor warships. Lu Yongchan quickly flipped through the holographic projection in front of him and replied without raising his head. Although their flagship has been completely destroyed, there are still many of the information remains in the databases of secondary flagships and ordinary battleships. Before the meeting, I asked Zero to do a simple data collection. I didn't expect it to be sorted out so quickly. It seems that there is very little information in the opponent's warship. Lu Yongchan quickly flipped through the information in front of him. Suddenly, the movements of his hands suddenly stopped. No wonder. No wonder? Looking at the conference room, where the atmosphere of debate was thick, Hong Chiming once again focused his attention on Lu Yongchang. No wonder the other party does not have the highest control authority of the secondary flagship. Lu Yongchang reached out and extracted some documents and placed them in front of Hong Chiming. In their civilization system, there is no such thing as a scientist. Instead, there are beings called technicians. Contrary to normal interstellar civilization, these technicians who exist in place of scientists have a very low status and basically have no say. Lu Yongchang said in wonder, but it is understandable. As a star pirate civilization, if you want any weapons or technology, you can just grab them directly. There's no need to work hard on research and development. After hearing this, Hong Chiming's eyes flashed with surprise, and he quickly browsed the documents in front of him. After a few glances, he let out an exclamation. Huh? This Rothor civilization has actually plundered as many as 174 different interstellar civilizations. Lu Yongchang nodded and said nonchalantly. Most of them are just first-level civilizations and have little value. Then how do they deal with these civilizations? Hong Chiming suddenly asked. Lu Yongchang was suddenly startled. Zero. Do you have any information on this? He asked urgently. What else is there to argue about? Aren't there ready-made teaching resources in front of us? Jumping to target information. The dense directory files in front of me quickly faded away. Replaced by various civilized information. The Karkito civilization. A first-level civilization. Became extinct in the year 1347 of the Earth's calendar. Nian civilization. First-level civilization. Extinction time. 1,510 years in the Earth calendar. Looking at the shocking lines of text in front of him. Lu Yongchang suddenly shuddered. He quickly flipped through the information in front of him. As time continues to move backwards, the rate of civilization extinction accelerates rapidly, and the data becomes more detailed. They even briefly recorded the basic conditions of the extinct civilization and the overview of the war. Call. Lu Yongchang forcefully exhaled a breath of thick air. Tuck, tuck, tuck. He lightly knocked on the conference table in front of him. The noisy conference room quickly quieted down, and the original arguments dissipated completely in a very short period of time. Seeing everyone's eyes turn towards him, Lu Yongchang said solemnly, I think an extermination plan should be implemented for the later civilization that chooses to surrender. Chapter 377 Two Thirds Voting Rights There was dead silence in the conference room. The expressions on the faces of the scientists at the Academy of Sciences were quite normal, but the faces of those congressmen had become strange. In particular, Counselor Wan, who was the first to propose the subsidiary civilization plan, had a look of anxiety on his face. His lips moved, but considering Li Yongcheng's identity, his tone had already weakened before the questioning words were spoken. Lu, Professor Lu, can you tell me your reasons? Lu Yongcheng stared deeply at Counselor Wan in front of him. Facing Lu Yongcheng's gaze, Counselor Wan felt on pins and needles. The originally perfectly ergonomic seat seemed to have grown countless spikes at this moment. He subconsciously lowered his eyes, withdrew his gaze from Lu Yongcheng, and muttered, Professor Lu, there are many members of the parliament who agree with the approach of subordinate civilization. Lu Yongchang didn't speak. He just turned his head and glanced around slowly, just like before. Almost all the members avoided his sight. Councilman Wan, on the other hand, still mustered up the courage to say, Professor Lu, do you still remember the scene when humans encountered paintings? According to the painting, there are exchanges and alliances between civilizations in the universe. You must also understand that two fists are difficult to defeat with four hands, since we have the opportunity to form an alliance led by human civilization. Why should we reject this great opportunity? Senator Wan's words obviously resonated with many members. As members of parliament, these politically biased methods are naturally their favorite. On the one hand, it can enhance the strength of human civilization without losing any blood. And on the other hand, it can create a good image of civilization. Why not do it? seeing the congressmen whispering to each other and nodding in agreement. Lu Yongchang shook his head helplessly. Of course I know the benefits. 
but I still stand by my opinion. Professor Liu, why are you? Counselor Wan asked anxiously. Counselor Wan did not say the second half of the sentence, but Liu Yongchang could foresee that it was nothing more than stubborn words. He did not reply, but stretched out his hand and swiped a few times on the holographic image in front of him. Since both sides insist on their choices, the only way to decide how to deal with the Rothor civilization is through voting. Still the same, based on two-thirds of the voting power. But, Liu Yongcha paused. Before voting, I have a piece of information that I just got. He added in a serious tone. This is information from the battleship of the Rothor civilization. Human civilization does not have experience in this area. So we might as well learn from the Rothor civilization's approach to other civilizations. As soon as the words fell, Representative Wan's eyelids jumped suddenly. He took a quick glance at the holographic projection that appeared in front of him at some point. Lines of text that were like chronicles made him feel a little uneasy. Could it be? Did this Rothor civilization do anything extraordinary? In the conference room, everyone frowned and flipped through the materials in front of him. Shocking lines of text caught their eyes. The entire history of the extinction of 174 civilizations has created this, deformed, Latour civilization in front of us. Incredible. This Rothor civilization is simply an executioner. Outrageous. For a moment, waves of low curses sounded in the conference room. Tuck, tuck, tuck. Liu Yongchang's index finger knuckle gently tapped on the conference table in front of him, making a crisp sound. The noise quickly disappeared. I believe you have all read the information. The vote will begin now. Liu Yongchang didn't say any nonsense and directly started the final voting session. A huge holographic projection quickly unfolded directly above the conference table. Plan for disposal of prisoners of war of later civilization. Below the huge Chinese characters are two conspicuous options. For one, the color is bright red, which means genocide. The second one, blue, means using gentle means to transform the Rothor civilization into a subsidiary civilization of human beings. At the same time, a small holographic voting interface appeared in front of each participant. Voting begins. In just a few seconds, a large area of bright red appeared on the conference table. Almost everyone voted for the genocide option without hesitation. Time passed by minute by minute. As the last person cast his vote, the entire voting session ended. Liu Yongchang glanced at the holographic image above the conference table. The statistical results appeared just right in front of everyone's eyes. The extermination plan captured 98.1% of the votes. There was no trace of surprise on Liu Yongchang's face. After reading that information, I guess normal people would choose the extermination plan. On the one hand, everyone knows that the Rothor civilization that exterminated 174 civilizations is definitely not a good thing. Not to mention using it for your own use. Just don't turn around and stab human civilization on the battlefield then. Just think about it. On the other hand, this information about the Rothor civilization gave these congressmen a deep understanding of the cruelty of the universe. At least, the universe that humans currently see is extremely cruel. The fantasy, the painting, brought them was mostly shattered at this moment. Of course, in the background data in front of Li Yongchang, all members of the Academy of Sciences chose the extinction plan. As for those congressmen who chose moderate means, Li Yongchang didn't pay much attention. Very normal. No matter when, there will always be, gentle, people within human civilization, as long as it does not affect the normal development of human civilization. In Li Yongchang's view, the existence of these people is beneficial to human civilization. The voting results are in. I announce that the extermination plan will begin in one hour. Liu Yongchang solemnly announced the end of the Latour civilization. After saying that, he gave Hong Chiming a hidden look next to him. Cough. Let me just say a few words. Hong Chiming coughed slightly and said softly. Some members don't need to be too disappointed. The Rothor civilization is an exception after all. Human civilization cannot take such a big risk and form an alliance with a murderous civilization. This is irresponsible behavior for billions of humans. Of course, Hong Chiming changed the subject. We cannot kill them all with one blow and completely rule out the possibility of forming an alliance of civilizations headed by human civilization. In the future, when human civilization is strong enough, there may be an opportunity to form an alliance with some like-minded civilizations. Hong Chiming's words relieved the expressions on the faces of many congressmen. Chapter 378 Order Confirmed End of the meeting Liu Yongchan unlocked the electromagnetic adsorption device on his seat and stood silently, watching everyone from the Academy of Sciences leave. As the chairman of the parliament, Hong Chiming naturally does the same. After everyone left, Hong Chiming suddenly spoke. 
Yong Chang, you don't need to take the words of these congressmen to heart. That Senator One was born on Proxima B. He has never experienced those hard days before. It is normal to have such thoughts. You? Seeing the worried look in Hong Chiming's eyes, Lu Yongcha chuckled. Rest assured, I'm not so petty. Moreover, the presence of these people is also needed in a full parliament. Hearing this, the worry on Hong Chiming's face quickly dissipated. He breathed a sigh of relief. As long as you understand this. If you hadn't come up with that information, I really don't know what the outcome of this meeting would have been. After the older generation left, most of the newly promoted members of the parliament have not been baptized by war and have illusions about the universe. Liu Yongchang straightened his expression and said softly, Don't worry. Even if the vote goes the other way, I will keep those Rathors under control. Don't forget that the Academy of Sciences has absolute leadership in this regard. Hong Chiming was stunned for a moment. Then he clapped his hands and laughed. It makes sense. It makes sense. Looks like I'm overly worried. Earth, Command Center. In the holographic projection in front, the bright red countdown has reached the last five minutes. Looking at the jumping numbers, Liu Yongchang's eyes showed no signs of confusion. Zero. Are you sure you can shut down the life support systems of all enemy warships? In order to ensure the safe implementation of the extermination plan, Liu Yongchang asked again. System recheck completed. The life support system can be shut down at any time. Liu Yongchang nodded slightly and turned to look at the side window again. Outside the porthole window, hundreds of Golden Crow, battleships, and countless small drones formed an extremely dense encirclement network. Within the encirclement net, later warships of different shapes and styles floated quietly in this dark universe. The Earth slowly drifted away from the surrounding net. It's like a great white shark standing between the railings, exuding the evil spirit of choosing and devouring others. Inside the number one sub-flagship, the great captain Saviavan sat slumped in his captain's seat with a gray body. It stared blankly at the universe outside the porthole. There were no stars to be seen. Some are just starships with the same shape. Although there was no light flashing from the plasma cannons in those huge muzzles, there was still deep fear in its eyes. Why? Why haven't these warships evacuated yet? Its pale lips trembled slightly, and it uttered a weak and sharp question. No response. In the command center, every little gray man looked like a defeated rooster, with their bodies looking gray and white, and their weak limbs hanging down on their seats. The big screen in front was dark. Since the enemy gained the highest control authority, this battleship has become an extremely strong prison, locking them tightly inside. Suddenly, a bad idea flashed through his mind. Could it be that? In an instant, its already gray skin turned completely pale. Under the astonished and numb gazes of the other grays, it frantically slapped the communication buttons in front of the console. Almost at the same time, a familiar line of text appeared on the big black screen. Captain of the number one sub-flagship. Savian, stop your provocative behavior. Otherwise, you will pay the price. Text with a strong warning meaning kept flashing, stimulating its fragile nerves. I need to communicate with your leader. Savievan stopped flapping and shouted in an extremely sharp voice. No respond. We have surrendered. Even handed over all permissions. Why didn't you respond at all? Savievan became more and more excited. What on earth do you want to do? After the words fell, the faces of the little gray people around them also showed a little wavering. Obviously, these little grays are also aware of the problem. Please be patient. We are discussing our treatment plan for you. Without any concealment, Zero responded bluntly. Savivan's chest heaved violently, obviously angry at such rude words. It let out meaningless roars and banged the console in front of it hard. However, this time, the dark screen never lit up again. Zero oh one. Midnight. The beating bright red countdown finally reaches zero. Is the extermination plan implemented? A line of text appeared in the holographic projection directly in front. Liu Yongchan nodded expressionlessly and said in a calm tone. Confirm execution. Order confirmed. Ceiling work in progress. Click. 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 Familiar sounds came from outside the command center. Having exhausted all his strength, Savivan's eyes moved and he raised his big head with difficulty. Under its surprised gaze, the open door of the command center quickly closed and locked automatically. Click. Click. Familiar sounds came from all directions, quickly winding around it. Before it could react, the seat belt on the seat quickly tightened, pressing it firmly to the seat. You? What are you going to do? Sogevin roared in an extremely shrill voice. Although it already had the answer in its heart, it still screamed in embarrassment. No, no. 
Do not kill me. I surrender. I can do anything. Please, don't kill me. Like it. The rest of the greys basically had the same reaction. But, there was still no response on the big black screen. In comparison, the number two sub flagship appears much quieter. The captain sat silently in his seat, feeling the tightening of the seat belt, and sighed softly. Did we still meet this ending? There was a bit of unwillingness in its eyes. The series of follow-up plans it had in mind turned into a pile of rubbish as the seat belt continued to tighten. Breathing becomes increasingly difficult. A bitter smile appeared on its lips. This shuts down the life support system. Next, all Rothors will die from the suffocating fear. The methods commonly used by the Rothor civilization in the past finally came to them. Consciousness gradually blurred. It used all its strength to open its eyes and look at the universe outside the porthole. There isn't any starlight. There were only icy battleships slowly moving around them. Chapter 379 Proxima Centauri B The Vanishing Ross 154 The extermination plan has been implemented. The moment the last Latorian's vital signs disappeared, a line of text appeared in the holographic projection in front of Lu Yongchan. Lu Yongchan was silent for a moment, then turned to look at the porthole again. Outside the portholes, those Rothor battleships were still quietly surrounded by a network of Golden Crow, battleships, and small drones. You can vaguely see some light coming from the battleship's windows. Everything seemed so normal. The extermination plan that just happened was like an illusion. Lu Yongchan withdrew his gaze and looked at the holographic projection in front of him again. Execute the second phase of the mission, he said solemnly. Copy that. Zero's response was as short and effective as ever. Around Earth, the belly hatches of the Taotai supply storage ship slowly opened. Tens of thousands of Zuan-2 starships filed out under Zero's control, like a swarm of locusts, flying straight towards the encirclement net. At the same time, the complete spherical surrounding net slowly opened a hole to allow the Zuan number 2 to pass through. After passing through the encirclement net, the uniform Zuan number 2 fleet suddenly dispersed and headed towards their respective goals. In a Zuan 2, driven by the Hall Thruster, drew a beautiful arc and sailed towards the center of the Rothor battleship group. The Zuan 2 deftly bypassed several small starships blocking the way and quickly closed the distance to the target warship. Its target is the number one sub flagship. As the distance between the two became closer and closer, the hatch of the number one sub flagship quietly opened. It looks like we are welcoming the arrival of Zuan number 2. Under Zero's precise control, Zuan 2 slowly decelerated. When its speed dropped to zero, it happened to enter the interior of the number one sub flagship. The abdominal hatch of Zuan 2 quickly opened. A tall robot floated out of it. With the help of jet packs, they quickly rushed towards the target cabin along the passages. Ten minutes later, these robots returned to the open hatch of the number one sub flagship again. Only, this time, they have something extra. The camera zooms in. The extra object was actually the corpse of a Rothor. The bodies were stuffed into a special spherical container. Then, being thrown into the vastness of space. This weird scene happens near every Rothor battleship. Inside Earth, Lu Yongchan looked at the slowly advancing progress bar and let out a long sigh of relief. Zero, after the second phase is completed, a full range of cleanup work will be started immediately. At the same time, adjust the fleet's course. Target, Gliese 555. Take our loot and wait until we reach the destination to analyze it. The awakened personnel enter hibernation in order. Just as Lu Yongchan was issuing orders one after another in an orderly manner, an overdistance communication device placed in the Earth Optical Quantum Supercomputing Center suddenly lit up the indicator light. Professor. Zero interrupted Lu Yongchan's words. There is a message from the direction of Proxima Centauri. Do you want to receive it? Proxima B. Ren Feng sat in his office, frowning slightly, handling government affairs in an orderly manner. Because there is no zero, many tasks seem much more cumbersome, just like these trivial government affairs. Before, many unimportant little things were left to zero to solve. But not now. Everything needs to be done manually. At first, it was really difficult to adapt. But after 25 years of adapting and learning, dealing with these tedious matters is as easy as breathing and drinking water for Renfong. Suddenly, a slightly harsh ringtone sounded from the speaker next to the desk. At the same time, the red indicator light flashed on the holographic projection generator. Rinfong moved his finger slightly. After approving the document in front of him, he reached out and pressed the button on the holographic projection generator. A holographic image quickly unfolded in front of the desk. Rinfong! Problem occurs! 
Zhang Xingqing's panicked voice came from the loudspeaker on the side. Ren Feng suddenly raised his head and looked at the holographic projection in front of him. In the holographic projection, Zhang Zhengqing was wearing a white coat, and his immature face was full of anxiety. During his 25-year career as a parliamentarian, Ren Feng developed a calm mentality that would remain unchanged despite the collapse of the mountain. What happened? He sat on the chair and asked in a calm tone. Ross 154. There's something wrong with Ross 154. Zhang Jingqing's sharp voice came from the speaker. What? Ren Feng's expression changed slightly. But he still maintained his original sitting posture. He took a deep breath, calmed down, and asked again. Zhang Qing, calm down and speak slowly. What happened to Ross 154? Ross 154. Zhang Jingqing's eyes were full of panic. He swallowed hard and murmured in a low voice. It, it disappeared. We can't find Ross 154. At this moment, Ren Feng's expression changed drastically. He stood up from the chair suddenly, reached out, and slapped the desk in front of him. What? This is impossible. How could such a huge star disappear out of thin air? He had maintained a calm state of mind for a long time. But this moment was completely shattered. There is no other reason. The Ross 154 star system is where the human fleet is located. But it's true. Zhang Zhengqing shook his head repeatedly. I know this sounds outrageous. But we searched all nearby areas. The other stars are no different. Only Ross 154. It's like, it suddenly disappeared into the universe. At this time, Ren Feng had recovered from his shock. He thought for a moment and asked in a low voice. When did you discover it? Zhang Zhengqing responded quickly. A week ago. At first, we thought there was some abnormal astronomical phenomenon that blocked the light of Ross 154. But as time went on, we realized there was a problem. Ren Feng frowned. You mean? Ross 154 suddenly disappeared a week ago. No. Zhang Zhengqing shook his head and denied Ren Feng's words. The exact time of disappearance is not clear. But our first observation of Ross 154 happened a week ago. Hearing this, Ren Feng frowned even deeper. From the year 2275 of the Earth's calendar to now, the Proxima of the Academy of Sciences has been established for 25 years. Why didn't you observe Ross 154 until now? Obviously, Ren Feng was somewhat dissatisfied with Zhang Jingqing's words. Chapter 380, I suspect that the human fleet has been destroyed. No, no, no. Zhang Jingqing shook his head repeatedly. It's not that we don't observe Ross 154. But it's only now that we have the ability to conduct high-precision observations of Ross 154. Ren Feng was stunned. Zhang Jingqing's words were somewhat beyond his expectations. Seeing Ren Feng's doubts, Zhang Jingqing explained in a hurry. 20 years ago, in the year 2272 of the Earth's calendar, Proxima Centauri B was attacked by electromagnetic artillery projectiles coming from the direction of the Earth. These electromagnetic gun projectiles wrapped with micronuclear bombs not only destroyed the number one city at the time, but also destroyed many satellites. It includes two orbiting telescopes. When the human fleet left, in order to save resources, it took away almost all the observation equipment. And those two orbiting telescopes are our only two high-precision optical telescopes. It wasn't until a week ago that the Academy of Sciences fully grasped the relevant knowledge and successfully repaired one. Zhang Zhengqing shrugged and said helplessly, As for the radio telescope array, they are located near City 1 and are still under repair. The corner of Ren Feng's mouth twitched slightly. It has been 25 years. And there is still only this little progress. Zhang Zhengqing smiled bitterly and nodded. It's already very good to have this progress. 25 years ago, Proxima B had only 2 million people left. Even now, it's only 3 million. Without Zero's help, work efficiency would have dropped several times. However, Zhang Zhengqing changed the topic. Despite the difficulties, the Academy of Sciences has recently achieved a brand new scientific research result. Ren Feng's eyes lit up. But the next moment, Zhang Zhengqing blocked the questioning words. It is still in the experimental stage. Let's wait until it is completely successful. The focus now is still on Ross 154. Ren Feng pondered for a moment, stretched out his hand, and pushed aside the several matters piled up in front of him. I'm going to the Academy of Sciences now. Proxima B. City 4. Academy of Sciences. Authentication successful. Welcome. President of the Council. A mechanical electronic female voice sounded at the door. At the same time, the door made of transparent aluminum quietly opened. Ren Feng walked into the Academy of Sciences anxiously. Senior Counselor, 
Third floor. Zhang Xingqing's voice sounded in the hall. Ren Feng calmed down and quickly walked into the elevator set aside. On the third floor of the Academy of Sciences, Proxima Centauri Central Astronomy Laboratory, Ren Feng quickly walked into the laboratory with the door open. What came into view were hundreds of scientific researchers wearing white coats and looking anxious. The huge holographic projection directly in front showed a clear image of the starry sky. President, this way. Zhang Jingqing's voice came from the side. Ren Feng turned his head and walked quickly in the direction of Zhang Jiangqing. How's it going? Ross 154. Before he finished speaking, Zhang Jiangqing shook his head helplessly. No progress. Until now, we have found no evidence of the existence of Ross 154. While talking, the two walked into an office. Click. As the office door closed, the noisy discussion outside instantly dropped a lot. What? Ren Feng looked at Zhang Jingqing's appearance as if he was facing a formidable enemy. His eyebrows jumped, and he asked in a deep voice. A trace of hesitation flashed in Zhang Jingqing's eyes. After struggling for a moment, he gritted his teeth, lowered his voice, and said softly, Ren Feng, I doubt. The human fleet has perished. Ren Feng's pupil shrank suddenly. He took a deep breath and suppressed the shock in his heart. Why do you say that? Zhang Zhengqing reached out and turned on the holographic projector on the side. Come! Sit down. Let me show you something. The holographic image quickly unfolded, showing a timeline. Look! Zhang Zhengqing stretched out his hand and clicked on the left side of the timeline. In the year 2270 of the Earth's calendar, the human fleet arrived at Ross 154. Two years later, in 2272, Proxima B encountered that crisis. At the same time, according to Professor Liu's explanation, the human fleet encountered a level 7 two-dimensional creature painting at that time, which caused them to have no time to take care of us. Fortunately, the crisis was finally resolved and the painting was not malicious to humans. Then, starting from 2273, for 27 years, we had no communication. Part of the reason for this is that we are busy digesting the technological system sent by the human fleet. Until a week ago, we discovered something strange about Ross 154. Ren Feng looked at the time points that appeared on the timeline in front of him. And a frightening guess suddenly appeared in his heart. His nose trembled slightly. He swallowed hard and murmured to himself. You mean? Zhang Zhengqing nodded vigorously. Good. We have reason to suspect that the level 7 two-dimensional creatures encountered by the human fleet are malicious civilizations. For a 7th level civilization, it shouldn't be difficult to completely destroy a star. Rin Feng stood up from his chair and paced back and forth in the office with a solemn expression. As the chairman of the Senate, the first thought that came to his mind was, Would human civilization on Proxima Centauri be in danger? Everyone understands the principle of dying lips and cold teeth. The human fleets whose strength far exceeds theirs have disappeared into this vast universe. And the human civilization of Proxima Centauri cannot go very far even if you think about it. Then, he suddenly realized a problem. Where is the long-distance communication device? Have you contacted the human fleet? Rinfone said excitedly. Maybe. They. No. Zhang Zhengqing directly rejected Rinfeng's words without any hesitation. If the other party captures the human fleet, then sending the message rashly is tantamount to seeking death. The excited look in Rinfeng's eyes slowly dissipated. Yes. That's right. He sat back in his chair with some disappointment and looked at the timeline in the holographic projection with a blank look on his face. The atmosphere in the office became tense. For a long time. I think we should still give it a try. Ren Feng said with a somewhat hoarse voice. I don't think a dignified 7th level civilization would have such complicated thoughts about a 2nd level civilization. On one hand, we are all human. On the other hand, the human fleet is our only current source of information. Whether it is for the survival of the race or for future development. We should try it. Zhang Zhengqing sighed softly. Then, he lowered his eyes and nodded silently. I don't know much about this aspect, but since you say so, I agree to give it a try. Chapter 381 Public Support System The office door opened again. Ren Feng and Zhang Zhengqing walked out of the office one after another. Academician Zhang! There were shouts from the side. Zhang Zhengqing and Ren Feng stopped their hurried steps at the same time and turned their heads to look in the direction of the sound. The person who spoke was a scientific researcher with a slightly green face and wearing a white coat. Perhaps because of Ren Feng. This young researcher seemed extremely nervous. Zhang! Academician Zhang! He stammered. Target! The results of the third exploration 
and comparison of the target star field are out. Huh? Zhang Zhengqin raised his eyebrows and asked softly, Did you find anything? No. The young researcher's voice became smoother. We compared the data in the database in detail. Other than Ross 154, we didn't find anything out of the ordinary. Although he had expected this result, Zhang Zhengqin still felt his heart sinking. He nodded, waved his hand slightly and said, Okay, I understand. With that said, he turned around and walked towards the elevator. The ultra-long distance communication device is placed on the fourth floor of the Academy of Sciences. Academician Zhang. Then, do we still need to continue the search? The young researcher's voice sounded again. The repair progress of the radio telescope is just over halfway. Searching solely by optical telescopes is prone to misjudgment. Zhang Zhengqin took a deep breath and nodded vigorously. Keep searching. Always pay attention to the direction of Ross 154. If there is any abnormality, report it immediately. Looking at the back of the young researcher leaving, Rin Feng nodded thoughtfully. Is this a newcomer who has just entered the Academy of Sciences? Zhang Zhengqin was stunned, then smiled and nodded. Yes. Did you see it? Ren Feng shrugged. Of course. He just had the word. Novice. Engraved on his forehead. As he spoke, Ren Feng stepped forward. Speaking of which, there seem to be a lot of new faces in the Academy of Sciences recently. Zhang Zhengqin hurriedly followed Ren Feng's footsteps and said with a hint of excitement, There are indeed many new people. Professionalism varies. But it's always a good thing. In the past 25 years, our scientific research work has become increasingly smooth. The progress of analyzing the original technology system has also increased significantly. Perhaps it won't be long before we can build our first starship. These words fell into Ren Feng's ears. But they did not bring him any joy. He sighed softly, stretched out his hand, and pressed the button of the elevator in front of him. What a pity. Ding! A crisp sound sounded, and the elevator door opened. The two of them stepped into the elevator together. Pity? Watching the elevator door slowly closing, the smile on Zhang Jingqing's face gradually disappeared. He frowned and asked in a low voice. What's the pity? Call. Ren Feng took out a deep breath and said in a deep voice. Compared with 25 years ago, the birth rate is declining. As of the latest statistics, the birth rate within civilization has dropped by 25% in the past 25 years. This is extremely bad news for our fragile civilization. Zhang Jingqing's face changed slightly. And he said in a somewhat urgent tone, Why didn't you tell me about this earlier? Didn't Parliament do anything? Ren Feng shook his head bitterly. Basically all available measures have been used. But it's basically ineffective. The concept of family is gradually weakening. And the fertility rate is declining. For 25 years, these conditions have been getting worse. Perhaps this is the last glory of human civilization on Proxima Centauri. Ding! A clear voice came. The elevator door opened. The spacious venue on the fourth floor of the Academy of Sciences appeared in front of him. Let's go! Ren Feng took a deep breath, cheered up, and said, Let's solve the Ross 154 matter first. With that said, he took the lead and walked out of the elevator. He didn't see Zhang Zhengqing in the elevator with a gloomy expression, as if he was thinking about some important issue. More than ten minutes later, Zhang Zhengqing skillfully operated the long-distance communication device in front of him. Suddenly, the movement of his hand suddenly stopped. Okay. Ren Feng's eyes lit up, and he quickly asked. Not yet. Zhang Zhengqing shook his head. I just thought of one thing. It's difficult to increase the fertility rate. Have you ever thought of using other methods to solve it? Ren Feng frowned. For example? Program after program to stimulate the birth of young people has been passed. But none of them has made much difference. Don't talk about the fertility rate. In the past two years, the number of people getting married has dropped a lot. I can't force these young people to get married and have children. Right. Speaking of this, Ren Feng's face became increasingly anxious. He thought of the document he had read this morning. That is the latest plan to stimulate fertility. Although it has not yet been implemented, Ren Feng knows that this stimulus plan may not have any effect. Even so, he still chose to pass the plan. There is no other reason. Human civilization on Proxima Centauri has no better choice. No. 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 Zhang Zhengqin shook his head slowly, raising the corners of his mouth, revealing a somewhat mysterious smile. What I'm talking about is not these stimulus packages that address the symptoms but not the root cause. What do you mean? A trace of surprise flashed in Ren Feng's eyes, and he subconsciously asked in a lowered voice. Social public support system. 
Zhang Zhengqing responded briefly but forcefully. The moment the words fell, Ren Feng subconsciously held his breath. Public raising. Public education. You should know this theory. Currently, we have mastered the relevant technology. As long as the parliament passes the bill, the population problem that has troubled us for so long will be solved immediately. Zhang Zhengqing's voice kept coming from the side. You're crazy! Ren Feng looked straight at Zhang Zhengqing, who was talking endlessly. Do you know how many ethical issues there are in the public care system? This will destroy our entire civilization. Zhang Zhengqing looked at Ren Feng in front of him with a half smile. Is there any difference? Ren Feng suddenly woke up. Yes. If the fertility rate continues to decline, there seems to be no difference between the two for human civilization on Proxima Centauri. He took a few deep breaths and reached out to rub his cheek vigorously. After calming down a little, he said in a deep voice, I will hold a meeting to discuss this matter. When the Ross 154 matter is resolved, you can give me a detailed feasibility plan. Remember, try to avoid ethical issues. Zhang Zhengqing smiled. For the continuation of human civilization, I believe that any problems that arise are just minor pains. Chapter 382 Oolong Ren Feng twitched the corners of his mouth and showed a weak and tired smile. He is not as optimistic as Zhang Zhengqing. The social welfare system is simple to say. But if it is really implemented, it will encounter extremely huge resistance. This resistance comes from all aspects. The reason is simple. Artificial womb technology and the social public care system will completely destroy the family relationship that human civilization has maintained for thousands of years. There are three kinds of unfilial piety, the greatest of which is to have no descendants. This concept is deeply imprinted in everyone's heart. Even the humans of Proxima Centauri, who were born on Proxima B, and whose family values are already very weak may not be able to accept such, deviant, things for a while. Certainly, pros and cons are always relative. The public welfare system has such great disadvantages. But naturally it also has great advantages. Liberate human beings from the shackles of family. Allowing them to spend more time and energy pursuing the progress of civilization. Significantly reduce the negative effects of class differentiation. And make education more standardized. The most important thing. Once the social public support system is implemented. The human civilization of Proxima Centauri will have extremely powerful means of population control. It was precisely this that made Ren Feng's heart beat. All right. Zhang Jingqing's voice came from the side, interrupting Ren Feng's thoughts. Ren Feng suddenly came back to his senses, raised his head, and looked at the long-distance communication device ahead. The work indicator light flashes slightly. Ren Feng asked solemnly, Can we contact the human fleet? I mean, are their long-distance communication devices still working? Zhang Jingqing shook his head. I don't know. To be precise, the entanglement effect of light quanta still exists. But the working status of the long-distance communication device, there is no way to know. Hearing this, Ren Feng's eyes dimmed slightly. That's good news. At least the quantum entanglement effect hasn't disappeared yet. He comforted himself softly. What message are you going to send? Zhang Zhengqing sat in front of the console and said solemnly. I promised in advance that it cannot contain any information about the human civilization of Proxima Centauri. Ren Feng composed himself and said the answer he had been thinking about for a long time. Hello. Zhang Zhengqing couldn't help but froze on the spot. Is that all? Ren Feng nodded and affirmed. That's all. However, the message was sent in Morse code. Earth. Lu Yongcheng's face was filled with astonishment. Proxima B? What did they post? Hello. Zero's response directly made Lu Yongcheng confused. Hello? That's all they said? Lu Yongcheng looked at the holographic projection aside in disbelief. Zero's avatar nodded. Yes, only these two words. However, the message was encrypted in Morse code. Morse code? Now, Li Yongchan became more and more confused. It's so good. Why do you think it's like being connected to the underground staff? Forget it. Li Yongchan shook his head. I don't know what tricks Proxima B is doing. You should also reply to a message in Morse code. Information. He stretched out his hand and quickly slid it through the holographic projection and a line of text gradually appeared. Proxima B. Time passed by minute by minute. Looking at the long-distance communication device that showed no response at all, Zhang Zhengqing shook his head silently and withdrew his gaze. Give up. The human fleet has probably encountered something unexpected. Ren Feng stared at the holographic projection in front of him and murmured to himself. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Zhang Zhengqing was silent for a moment and turned his attention to the holographic projection again. Sudden. 
A crisp message sound sounded in their ears. In the holographic projection, a line of text appeared. Earth Humanity United Destiny Community Fleet. H. Low to you. Ha 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 ha. The moment he saw this line of text, Rinfone laughed loudly and said, Zhang Qing, did you see it? Did you see it? Let me just say, nothing will happen to the human fleet. Zhang Zhang Qing said nothing and carefully checked the message. Standard Morse code encryption. Standard Chinese grammar. At least, he couldn't find any flaws. Could it be that it was really an accident? There was a trace of confusion in his eyes. And he said to himself, What about Ross 154? As he spoke, he entered a line of text. They want us to provide location information? Lu Yongchang frowned immediately. Perhaps because he encountered too many malicious civilizations, Lu Yongchang subconsciously increased his vigilance. Could it be? Something happened to the Proxima Centauri civilization? Zero. Send a communication request to the other party. Lu Yongchang directly issued the order without any hesitation. After a few seconds, Professor, the other party rejected the communication request. Hearing this, Lu Yongchang's face suddenly sank. He quickly moved his fingers and edited a line of text again. No matter what civilization you are, you will pay the price for your actions. Zero. Invade the other party's network immediately and force open the communication screen for me. As he spoke, Lu Yongchang's eyes revealed a bit of evil spirit. Although the human civilization of Proxima Centauri and the human fleet have been separated for a long time, it can even be said that they have become two different civilizations. But that is their only compatriot in the vast universe. Order confirmed. Zero's calm voice sounded again. The defense system is being built. Prepare for invasion. Seeing the progress bar in the holographic projection advancing rapidly, Lu Yongchang's brain started spinning rapidly. It can quickly annihilate the human civilization of Proxima Centauri, preventing them from sending any distress messages. Thinking about it, the other party should be a level 3 civilization. As for why it's not level 4, it's level 5. Very simple. He didn't think that a normal level 4 civilization would be so poor that it would attack Proxima B. Unless... It is a star pirate civilization similar to the Rothor civilization. Thinking of this, Lu Yongchang's eyes became even more sinister. The human fleet holding two-dimensional fragments is not afraid of any third or fourth level civilization. Start the invasion! Zero's announcement sounded in the command center. There was almost no pause before the second announcement sounded. The intrusion was successful. The camera is being turned on. Lu Yongchang? So fast? At this moment, he couldn't help but doubt his previous speculation. Is the other party really a level 3 civilization? How does it feel? Is it as easy as zeroing in on your own door? Before he could react, the enemy camera image appeared in the holographic projection. Looking at the two extremely familiar faces in the camera, Lu Yongchang's eyes suddenly twitched. You two, what kind of plane are you doing? Chapter 383 Cooperation Lu Yongchang's voice followed the microphone and the long-distance communication device and instantly spanned a distance of several light years ringing in the ears of Ren Feng and Zhang Zhangqing like thunder. Then, in the holographic image in front of Lu Yongchang, the two of them trembled violently, and then jumped up as if their buttocks were burned by fire. Hack asterisk too, Ren Feng and Zhang Zhangqing said in unison. After the brief shock, Ren Feng quickly regained his composure. Wait! Wait! Ren Feng grabbed the frightened Zhang Zhangqing beside him, and said in an uncertain tone, It seems to be Professor Lu's voice? Ren Feng's words gradually calmed down Zhang Jingqing's mood. With some confusion in his eyes, he turned to look at the camera on the side. Under his gaze, the camera panned left and right. It seems, it's like saying H, low. At the same time, a holographic image slowly appeared. Lu Yongchan appeared in front of the two people with helplessness and doubts written on his face. Lu! Professor Lu! Zhang Jingqing was greatly shocked and exclaimed. Really? Is it really you? After hearing this, several black lines slid down Lu Yongchang's forehead again. Nonsense! If it's not me, who else could it be? What are you two doing? I thought you were wiped out by some passing civilization. Hearing this, Ren Feng and Zhang Zhangqing looked at each other, laughed and said, Ahem, Professor Lu, I thought something happened to you. Us? Lu Yongchang was obviously stunned. What happened to us? A few days ago, we suddenly discovered that Ross 154 disappeared from the universe. So, Zhang Zhengqing hurriedly explained. Lu Yongchang's expression gradually became weird. He scratched his head slightly embarrassed. Ahem, 
This matter is actually my negligence. The situation was complicated at the time. So I didn't contact you. This whole thing has been forgotten. As he spoke, he briefly explained Ross 154 and what happened after that. After the death of painting, two-dimensional fragments were obtained. Ross 154 was extinguished. The fleet set sail and encountered the Rothor Star Pirate Civilization. Zhang Zhengqin was breathing rapidly, staring at the holographic image in front of him with his eyes wide open, for fear of missing some key information. When he learned that the human fleet had captured a group of third-level star ships, not only Zhang Zhengqing, but even Ren Feng couldn't help but exclaimed, God! Zhang Zhengqing's eyes were stunned, and he murmured to himself, This, this is too. While the Proxima Centauri civilization is still busy repairing various high-tech equipment, the human fleet is already sprinting towards the third-level civilization. Although I know that there must be a gap between the two civilizations, but such a huge gap is still difficult for Zhang Zhengqin to accept. What about you? Lu Yongchang's voice came from the holographic projection. How has human civilization developed in Proxima Centauri in the past 25 years? Although he knew the answer to this question in his heart, there was still a hint of expectation in the depths of Lu Yongchang's eyes as he spoke. Ren Feng said nothing, pursed his lips hard, and then lowered his head. Zhang Zhengqing sighed softly and said truthfully, I encountered many difficulties, big and small. Lu Yongchang did not express his position. It's normal to encounter difficulties. Not to mention the human civilization of Proxima Centauri. Even the human fleet has encountered many difficulties. In terms of science and technology, the progress is quite smooth, and 40% of the science and technology system has been digested so far. Zhang Zhengqing said softly, The number of academicians in the Academy of Sciences is also increasing. Lu Yongchang raised his eyebrows slightly. It sounds like it's going pretty well. Without Zero's help, a group of ordinary people started from scratch and achieved this result, which was beyond Lu Yongchang's expectation. It's just... Zhang Zhengqing sighed again, shook his head and said, The fertility rate is constantly declining. Lu Yongchang's face instantly became serious. Fertility rate drops. For interstellar civilization. This is a top priority. Is there any solution? Lu Yongchang asked bluntly. Ren Feng raised his head and looked at Zhang Zhengqing. Both of them saw the hesitation in the other's eyes. Zhang Zhengqing gritted his teeth and said in a deep voice, Yes, we are ready to try the social welfare system. There was silence in the communication channel. In the holographic projection, Lu Yongchang frowned slightly and stared at the two people quietly. As for Zhang Zhengqing and Ren Feng, they naturally gritted their teeth and looked at Lu Yongchang to express their persistence. Call. In the holographic projection, Lu Yongchang took a deep breath. Social welfare system. Are you sure you want to adopt such an extreme plan? This time, before Zhang Zhengqing could speak, Ren Feng took the initiative to step forward, nodded and said, Professor Lu, we have no way out. Lu Yongchang fell into silence again. He kept thinking about the feasibility of the plan in his mind. The so-called social public support system is actually a disguised form of depriving humans of their reproductive rights and custody rights. On the one hand, a sperm bank and an egg bank are established, and computers and artificial intelligence are used to perform analysis and calculations to match suitable sperm and eggs. The paired fertilized eggs are then fertilized in an artificial uterus. After 10 months of pregnancy, the newborn can be born smoothly. There is no parental involvement in this. Even the parents who contributed sperm and eggs didn't know the existence of this child. On the other hand, newborns born will be raised by robots. There is also no parental involvement in the upbringing process. Until adulthood, after completing all basic education, they will enter the society and complete their own work. All expenses in this process are borne by the entire civilization. It sounds ideal and perfect, but the problems involved are extremely complex. Corresponding to the complicated problems are its extremely huge advantages. In a sense, the establishment of a public welfare system is a sign that a civilization has entered the interstellar era. However, such deviant behavior is destined to usher in countless criticisms, debates, and resistance. Lu Yongchang could even foresee how big a storm the implementation of this plan would cause in Proxima Centauri B, which is several light years away. He opened his mouth, intending to dissuade. Before the words could be spoken, he gave up his thoughts. On the one hand, he is not the leader of human civilization on Proxima Centauri and is not qualified to give pointers. On the other hand, he also had some selfish motives. Sooner or later, human fleets will also encounter such problems. 
perhaps, by that time, the human civilization of Proxima Centauri can become there. Mentor. Thinking of this, Lu Yongchang straightened his expression and said seriously, Now that you are ready, let's do it. Zero can provide you with computing support. Chapter 384 Everyone takes what they need and arrives at Glee's 555. Zhang Jingqing's eyes suddenly burst into ecstasy. Zero computing support. Undoubtedly, this can significantly reduce their workload. Lu Yongchang's voice came again. In exchange, I need you to provide all the information about the public welfare system in the next 300 years, including specific implementation measures for the public welfare system and changes in social systems. Zhang Zhengqing suddenly realized and understood Lu Yongchang's plan. It's nothing more than letting the human civilization of Proxima Centauri come forward to explore the way. He thought for a moment. There is no reason to refuse. Zero computing power support can save them many detours. And they only need to pay a little information. So, he nodded in agreement. Okay, I agree. A smile appeared on Lu Yongcheng's face. A pleasure to work with. Zhang Zhengqing also smiled and nodded. Happy cooperation. In addition, there is one more thing. He looked much more solemn. In order to prevent such an incident from happening again, I hope that the two civilizations can communicate regularly. For such a trivial matter, Lu Yongchang naturally smiled and nodded in agreement. Also, I hope to use some new technologies for information exchange. Lu Yongchang looked at Zhang Zhengqing in the projection in surprise. New technology? He couldn't believe his ears. In just 25 years, when humans on Proxima Centauri have only mastered 40% of the technology, can they still develop any new technologies? A biotechnology? Zhang Zhengqing explained softly. In an extremely accidental situation, we discovered life in the deep frozen soil of Proxima Centauri B. After research, we found a solution to improve Changsheng enzyme. Ren Feng turned his head suddenly and looked at Zhang Zhengqing next to him in bewilderment. Facing Ren Feng's eyes, Zhang Zhengqing shrugged. It's the research results that I just told you are still in the experimental stage. In the holographic projection, Lu Yongchak had already sat up straight. After the improvement, how effective is the longevity enzyme? Based on the current experimental data, the effect of the improved longevity enzyme can increase the average lifespan of humans to 1,000 years. Zhang Zhengqing lowered his eyes slightly and replied softly. His! Lu Yongchang took a breath. A thousand years. This is still the average lifespan. He was moved. He never expected that the human civilization of Proxima Centauri that he had left behind could bring him such a big surprise. It's another pilot project for the public welfare system. And it's another longevity enzyme improvement plan. Of course, these are all extrapolated data. And we have not conducted human experiments yet. Zhang Zhengqing hurriedly added, as if he was afraid that the final experimental data would not meet the standards. Lu Yongchang didn't pay much attention. He waved his hand. And the expression on his face became much more vivid. What information do you want to exchange? The technological system of a third level civilization? With all due respect, this thing is still too advanced for you. Zhang Zhengqing nodded in agreement. I still understand the principle of biting off more than you can chew. We want all the information related to extraterrestrial civilizations that the human fleet will obtain in the next 300 years. There was a bit of amusement in Lu Yongchang's eyes. It seems that he underestimated the chief scientist of Proxima Centauri some time ago. This is preparing to let the human fleet explore the path for them. Compared with various advanced technological systems, the information about alien civilizations is the most important. When the human civilization of Proxima Centauri prepares to take a step out of the planet, this information can save them many detours. Good. I agree. Lu Yongchang responded directly without any hesitation. Painting and information related to the Latour civilization will be sent to you soon. More than an hour later, after Lu Yongchang and Zhang Zhengqing agreed on the next communication time, they turned off the holographic projection in front of them. Professor, please enter the hibernation cabin immediately. Zero's reminder sounded at the same time. The fleet is about to accelerate. Lu Yongchang reached out to unlock the electromagnetic absorption device on the seat and walked towards the hibernation cabin. Watching the light yellow deep sea liquid gradually filling his eyes, a glimmer of expectation arose in his heart. He didn't know what surprise Zhang Zhengqing would bring him next time. Can the public welfare system be successful? With a touch of expectation, he slowly closed his eyes. While Proxima Centauri B was trying to promote the social welfare system, the human fleet quickly adjusted its course and headed towards Glee's 555 again. Because of the Rothor civilization, the estimated sailing time has been extended from 90 years to 105 years. 
Time flies. Eighty years pass by in a flash. July 1st, 2380 in the Earth calendar. A small point of light appeared in front of the human fleet. That was the goal of the human fleet. Gliese 555. Drop! A clear reminder sounded in the Earth Optical Quantum Supercomputing Center. A holographic projection gradually unfolded. And lines of text appeared in it. Discovered radiation particles from Gliese 555. Current distance, 5 Australian dollars and 23 cents. Confirmed again. We have successfully reached the edge of the Gliese 555 star system. Starting wake-up routine. A familiar set of testing procedures. After confirming that he was conscious and conscious, Lu Yongchang climbed out of the hibernation cabin with difficulty. Zero. Are we there yet? Thinking of the last time he was awakened, Lu Yongchang quickly asked. Yes. As Zero's voice sounded, a holographic projection appeared beside him. Currently, we have successfully crossed the border of Gliese 555. Lu Yongchang did not speak, but stared blankly at the star in the holographic projection that was constantly emitting light and heat. Lu Yongchang, who had just recovered from a long period of hibernation, stood by the porthole of the command center and looked at the scenery outside the porthole. This is the outermost planet in the Gliese 555 star system. Under the faint light of Gliese 555, this yellow-brown planet reflects faint light. Finally reached, Lu Yongchang murmured to himself. Gliese 555 is a red dwarf star. And its sphere of influence is far less than that of the solar system. Even the planet in front of us is only 4 Australian dollars and 30 cents away from Gliese 555. Has the detector arrived? Lu Yongchang said directly without turning his head. Zero's response immediately sounded. We are close to the target planet. Transfer the picture. Lu Yongchang's eyes showed a bit of anticipation. Let me see what the future home of mankind will look like. The holographic image changes instantly. A planet with a bare surface and a reddish-brown color appeared in front of him. Not far from the planet. There is a smaller moon. It looks like a low inversion of the Earth-Moon system. Chapter 385 Super Earth and Super Moon The moment he saw the picture in the holographic projection, Lu Yongchang's eyes flashed with obvious disappointment. So desolate. Compared with planets such as the Earth and Proxima Centauri b. The planet in front of us is too desolate. Perhaps. What is worthy of praise is the satellite accompanying it. Next to the holographic projection. Lines of small characters appeared. Gliese 555 Planet 6. Equatorial diameter. 17,347 kilometers. Mass. 3.5 M circle plus. M circle plus is the mass of the Earth. Rotation period. 24 hours. 59 minutes. 41 seconds. Equatorial gravity. 18.614 N slash kg. Looking at the data in front of him, Lu Yongchang put away his disappointment and looked at it carefully. As the data continued to improve, the surprise in his eyes became more and more intense. 3.5 times the mass of Earth. The diameter reaches 1.3 times the diameter of the Earth. This scale has reached the standard of a super Earth. Only the gravity, which is nearly 1.9 times that of the Earth, is not so easy to adapt to. Zero. Ask all awakened personnel to go to the corresponding gravity chamber immediately for adaptive training. After pondering for a moment, he added again. Let Mao Jingji come to the command center. Copy that. Zero's voice sounded from the side. After the order was issued, Lu Yongchang once again turned his attention to the super earth in front of him. This time, he looked more carefully. Scattered white clouds float on its surface. And the reddish-brown planet's surface is also mixed with a few scattered black round spots through the high-precision optical telescope carried on the detector. Lu Yongchang can clearly see the composition of black circular spots. Those are active volcanoes with gurgling lava. Looking at the picture in the holographic projection, Lu Yongchang's eye showed a bit of excitement. Clouds. Volcanoes. Such a scene means that this planet not only has an atmosphere, but also an active core. The magnetic field it forms is enough to provide a perfect shelter for humans. Lu Yongchang did not hesitate and gave the order directly. Zero. Conduct a spectral analysis of the atmospheric components. After a short wait, brand new data appeared in the holographic projection in front of him. Nitrogen, 98.4%. Carbon dioxide, 1.14%. Water, 0.4%. Lu Yongchang shook his head helplessly. Unfortunately, there is no oxygen. Carbon dioxide concentrations are also high. It seems that humans can still only live in closed cities. He turned his attention to the satellite beside him. Corresponding to Super Earth. Of course it's a super moon. 
The satellite in front of me is far larger than the moon. Equatorial diameter, 6,186.98 kilometers. Quality, 0.13 M circle plus. Equatorial gravity, 5.48 N slash kg. Looking at the data in front of him. Li Yongchan sighed a little in his eyes. The information, Hua, gave them really didn't lie to them. This star system is desolate and remote. But it is indeed the best choice for mankind at present. Perhaps, in this super earth moon system, human civilization can really enjoy temporary tranquility and develop its own technology with peace of mind. Lu Yongchang stared at the gradually enlarged planet in the picture and fell into deep thought for a while. The plans for these two planets slowly emerged in his mind. Professor, Academician Mao Jingji is here. Zero's reminder interrupted Lu Yongchang's contemplation. Professor, are you looking for me? Mao Jingji walked to the porthole and looked at the holographic projection in front of Li Yongchang. When he saw the two desolate planets, he frowned subconsciously. Is this the future home of mankind? Obviously. Super Earth and Super Moon did not meet his psychological expectations. After coming back to his senses, Lu Yongchang chuckled and reached out to call up the detection data that was being continuously improved. Don't be so disappointed. It seems to me that these two planets are just right for humans today. The planet is large enough to easily accommodate all humans living on the surface. It has a magnetic field and an atmosphere. The only drawback is that there is no oxygen in its atmospheric composition. The resources are not very abundant, but they are more than enough to maintain the development of a third-level civilization. The remote location and the small number of resources mean that it is just a speck of dust in the universe and will not attract the prying eyes of other civilizations. Mao Jingji nodded slowly. Suddenly, his eyes stopped on a line of data. 1.9 times the Earth's gravity. Mao Jingji frowned. I'm afraid this is not suitable for human habitation. Right. This is why I came to you. Lu Yongchang said softly. Can acquired training allow humans to survive normally in this environment? Mao Jingji thought for a moment. Then shook his head and said. If you only rely on acquired training, professor. This will be difficult to achieve. Before Lu Yongchang could speak. He explained directly. After certain training. Human muscles can easily adapt to such an environment. But the joints, internal organs, especially the heart and brain, may have difficulty adapting. Short-term life is fine, but long-term life. Mao Jingji sighed and shook his head repeatedly. This action made Lu Yongchang's heart sink. Actually, in my opinion, the best choice should be its satellite. Mao Jingji turned to look at the corner of the holographic projection and continued. With 0.56 times the Earth's gravity, it only requires a short period of adaptive training. All humans migrated to the surface to survive. Lu Yongchang frowned slightly. Is there no other way? This satellite is too small for a level 3 civilization. Once it is determined to settle in this star system, I will order the lifting of all birth restrictions and encourage births as much as possible. By then, the scale of humanity will expand rapidly. And this small satellite may not be able to meet the needs of human civilization. Speaking of this, Lu Yongchang hesitated for a moment and said in a lower voice, What's more? In the plan, it will be transformed into a planet-level fortress integrating factories, ports, and military facilities. His, Mao Jingji's expression suddenly became serious. As a senior member of the Academy of Sciences, he naturally understands the importance of this plan. It can be said that once an alien civilization attacks, this modified natural satellite will be mankind's strongest counterattack weapon. If that's the case, Mao Jingji frowned even deeper. Can mechanical exoskeletons work? Lu Yongchang suddenly asked. Mao Jingji nodded cautiously, then shook his head. It has some effect, but not much. It can reduce stress on muscles, bones and joints to a certain extent. But for the internal organs, I'm afraid it won't do much. Unless you make the exoskeleton into a mechanical bed that can move freely. Only in this way can the burden on the internal organs be greatly reduced. Lu Yongchang couldn't help but smile bitterly. Are you kidding me? If it really becomes like this, human civilization might as well live on a starship. Chapter 386 Glorious Evolution Perhaps, Mao Jingji's face was full of hesitation, and he murmured to himself. What? Lu Yongchang's ears twitched slightly, and he quickly asked. Can you solve this problem? Looking at the look on Mao Jingji's face, Lu Yongchang had a guess in his mind, and he quickly lowered his voice. Don't worry. Just tell me. Facing Lu Yongchang's questioning, Mao Jingji sighed softly and uttered a few Chinese characters with a complicated expression. Genetic modification. Finished speaking. There was silence. 
next to the porthole. The only sound left was the sound of two people breathing. Liu Yongchang's eyes were full of struggle. Genetic modification. This kind of technology has been strictly prohibited from being used on humans since the moment it appeared. On the one hand, there will be many ethical issues. On the other hand, in the past, when biotechnology was not developed enough, genetic modification often caused some unforeseen problems. As humans have entered the second level civilization and obtained a large amount of biotechnology from the Proxima Centauri civilization, the possibility of this problem has been greatly reduced. But the human body is mysterious after all. Genes can also produce mutations. Even level 3 and level 4 civilizations cannot guarantee that there will be no unexpected situations. Otherwise, let's forget it. Mao Jingji breathed a long sigh of relief and whispered, No! Lu Yong Chan gritted his teeth with a hint of cruelty in his eyes. We can't just let it go! Not to mention the present. In the future, humans will go to more distant galaxies. We will encounter more and more extreme and harsh environments. That's it this time. What about next time? Since we walked out of the Earth, humans are no longer humans. Embracing evolution and joining evolution will allow us to go further. Mao Jingji stared blankly at Lu Yong Chang in front of him and swallowed subconsciously. Then, let's because the shock he received was so strong. He didn't even notice that there was a trace of vibrato in his voice. Facing the inquiry, Lu Yongchang slowly closed his eyes. Just for a moment, his consciousness came to the familiar space of the technology tree again. The technology tree of the second level civilization is almost complete. Looking at the technology tree in front of him, Lu Yongchang's mind moved slightly. A bright white thin line stretched out from near the branch representing biotechnology. Extending straight upward, then lines extend very quickly. In the blink of an eye, this bright white thin line came to the junction of the second level civilization and the third level civilization. A hidden cursor slowly appears. Add glorious evolution, primary genetic modification technology. The hidden cursor style is different from the normal cursor. The normal cursor background is a conspicuous bright white. The background that hides the cursor is a bright green with complex patterns. Just like the background color of the technology tree space. At the beginning, Human cloning technology, which was classified as a dangerous technology, was filled with blood. Obviously, according to the system's evaluation criteria, genetic modification technology is not considered a dangerous technology. On the contrary, in Liu Yongchang's opinion, genetic modification technology is like a hidden mission in the technology tree system. He regained consciousness and opened his eyes suddenly. Start relevant research. A flash of light flashed in Liu Yongchang's eyes. And he said decisively, Professor, the probe has entered orbit and is about to begin landing. Zero's voice sounded from the side, attracting their attention. Liu Yongchang waved and pulled the holographic projection on the side over. Come, let's take a look at this planet together. In the future, it will be our new home. Mao Xingji nodded with a wry smile and sat on a chair nearby. Compared with the Earth, the barren planet in front of him really couldn't attract his interest. However, this is Lu Yongchang's request after all. He could only cheer up, raise his head, and look at the holographic projection in front of him. The projection screen is shaking violently. It is obvious that the probe at this time is entering the atmosphere of this super-Earth. Lu Yongchang on the side frowned tightly as he looked at the various data flashing rapidly on the screen. Is the atmosphere so dense? He murmured to himself. Hearing this, Mao Jingji glanced at the increasingly violent scene with some concern. Fortunately, as time goes by, the jitter amplitude gradually reduces and the picture becomes clearer. Liu Yongchang beside him also breathed a sigh of relief. The landing point was chosen at the equator near the dusk line. The camera slowly moves down. A large body of water composed of countless small lakes appeared in front of them. Each lake is separated by large and small reefs. The water area is not large. At best, it is equivalent to the size of the Mediterranean Sea. The camera zooms out quickly. In the distance, you can vaguely see several bodies of water of different sizes and shapes. Seeing this scene, Liu Yongchang's eyes showed a bit of joy. Liquid water has always played a large role in the process of humans choosing where to settle. The height of the detector continued to decrease, and pieces of data slowly emerged. Atmospheric pressure, 21.1 standard atmosphere. Average surface temperature, 28.14 degrees Celsius. Mao Jingji raised his eyebrows. The atmospheric pressure is so strong. It seems that humans are destined not to live in the outside world. Li Yongchang didn't quite agree with Mao Jingji's statement. He shook his head and said softly, That's not necessarily the case. In the future, 
Maybe we will have enough technology to transform this planet. Mao Jingji smiled and nodded. I hope so. If this day comes, I hope to recreate the scenery on Earth. Lu Yongchan glanced at Mao Jingji beside him. It can be seen that Mao Jingji does not believe this statement. However, he didn't want to explain more. When they were on Earth at that time, who would have thought that human beings could live for hundreds of years? And even bring thousands of starships to star systems dozens of light years away to establish their homes? Under the watchful eyes of Li Yongchang and Mao Jingji, the detector landed steadily on a reef next to the water. The camera gradually moves up. A beautiful scene appeared in front of them. There are many rocks in the clear lake water. The sky at dusk is a bit blue-purple. In the upper right corner of the camera, a huge supermoon reflects the light from Gliese 555. At the same time, the holographic screen split into two. Another probe heading to the crater also landed successfully and sent image data. In the blue-purple sky on the left, there is also a huge supermoon. On the right side of the camera, a tall mountain peak rises from the flat land. At the top of the mountain, you can vaguely see the rolling lava glowing red. Chapter 387 Prehistoric Mars Such a sight. Don't talk about Lu Yongchang. Even Mao Xingji, who looked disgusted at first, was looking at the holographic projection in front of him in ecstasy. How's it going? Didn't I disappoint you? Lu Yongchang asked softly with a smile. Mao Xingji stared blankly at the holographic image in front of him and muttered to himself. No. No. Professor. Zero's report sounded again. The probe heading for the satellite is about to land. Hearing this, Lu Yongchang glanced at Mao Xingji beside him with a half smile and joked softly. Academician Mao. How about you go back and think about the details of the research? Academician Mao's expression suddenly collapsed. And he smiled bitterly. Professor, please stop teasing me. Now that we're here, who doesn't want to see what the satellite looks like? Lu Yongchang laughed loudly and waved his hand in the air. Zero, please send the detector image over. The moment the words fell, the holographic images in front of the two people switched instantly. A planet with a bright yellow surface appeared in front of them. Huh? With just one glance, Lu Yongchang let out a soft cry of surprise. River? Mao Jingji on the side expressed Lu Yongchang's doubts. There are traces of rivers on this satellite? Lu Yongchang's eyes were full of surprise. It's not just a river. Look carefully. There are even active volcanoes beside those dry rivers. The core of this planet has not even completely cooled down. Mao Jingji looked carefully in the direction of Lu Yongchang's finger. Really? There are a few scattered little red dots scattered on the huge planet. Satellites whose core has not yet cooled down. Pity! Lu Yongchang suddenly shook his head and sighed softly. Huh? What a pity! Mao Jingji turned his head and cast a surprised look at Lu Yongchang beside him. What's so pity about this? The core of the Earth has not cooled yet. Which means that the planet may have a weak magnetic field. No matter what. It should be a good thing for mankind. Lu Yongchang gestured to the data next to him with his eyes and said softly. Perhaps because of the mass of the planet. This planet does not retain much atmosphere. Spectral analysis shows that it has an extremely thin atmosphere on its surface. Similar to Super Earths, the main components of the atmosphere are nitrogen and carbon dioxide. Liquid water has probably completely disappeared. As he spoke, Lu Yongchang's voice suddenly paused for a moment. Isn't this Mars from prehistoric times? Before its core cooled completely. Just when Mao Xingqi was wondering, Lu Yongchang's exclamation came from the side. According to the original simulation results, as the core gradually cools, the liquid water and atmosphere on the surface of Mars gradually escape into the vast universe. In the end, it gradually transformed from a planet with primitive life into that extremely desolate planet. Isn't the supermoon in front of us at this stage? The difference with Mars is that its core has not completely cooled down. The diameters are similar. The body shapes are similar. And even the ground structure is surprisingly similar. However, Mars is a planet belonging to the solar system. The supermoon in front of us is a satellite of the super-Earth. After being stunned for a short time, Mao Jinji also reacted. His eyes suddenly burst out with a touch of deep joy. This desolate star system has become much more pleasing to the eye in just a few seconds. Lu Yongchang's mood was also agitated. Although this discovery cannot bring any substantial benefits to mankind. But there is no doubt that, living on an alien planet, this Mars-like satellite above our head can bring some hope to countless people. In the vast universe, it is this hope that supports human civilization and runs forward with all its strength. Land. Land quickly. Lu Yongchang couldn't wait to give the landing order. Perhaps sensing the urgency in Lu Yongchang's words, 
Zero didn't waste any time and directly controlled the detector to dive toward the surface. The picture gradually becomes clearer. Craters, plains, hills, mountains. The distance to the surface is getting closer and closer, and the images in the holographic projection are getting clearer and clearer. Irregular reddish-brown patterns are distributed on the dim yellow ground. According to various data returned by the detector, the main component of these reddish-brown patterns is iron oxide. Just like Mars, the probe slowly landed on the top of a mountain range. Before the camera could adjust its angle, the atmospheric composition data appeared in front of Liu Yongchang's eyes. His eyes quickly skipped over the first two major components and came to an extremely small piece of data. Oxygen, 0.03%. That's it. The presence of iron oxide minerals, coupled with the extremely rare content of oxygen. Liu Yongchang even suspected that this supermoon was imitation of Mars. The camera angle calibration is completed. Clear image data appeared in front of Liu Yongchang and Mao Jingji through the long-distance communication device with almost no delay. Light brown soil. Blue-black sky. Undulating ground. Bright main star light. I'm going to recreate a Mars base on this. Liu Yongchang stared at the holographic projection in front of him and said softly, All the drawings are in the database. It won't take long for us to build another Mars city. Mao Jingji took a deep breath. Then, he nodded excitedly. Good. When the construction is completed, I want to go up there and rest for two days. The preliminary detection has ended. Next, these detectors will release a large number of small detection drones to conduct preliminary exploration and modeling of the two planets. It was a long and boring time. Therefore, after Mao Jingji said H, low to Liu Yongchang, he turned and left the command center. Next, he has a heavy task. Whether humans can live on this super-Earth for a long time mainly depends on the progress of his scientific research projects. After seeing Mao Jingji off, Liu Yongchang waved his hand to close the holographic image in front of him and turned to look out the window. At this time, the human fleet has passed the outermost planet of Gliese 555 and headed straight towards the super-Earth. Soon, he will see with his own eyes the satellite that looks like Mars and the plus version of super-Earth. He took a deep breath, suppressed the excitement in his heart and said in a deep voice, Zero, ask Chu Zipping to wait for me in laboratory number one. Receive. Liu Yongchang took a deep look at the endless dark starry sky outside the porthole window, then turned and walked towards the gate of the command center. In addition to genetic modification, humans need a second leg to walk. Chapter 388 Mechanical Exoskeleton Earth Shipborne Laboratory Number 1 The door slowly opened. Before Liu Yongchang entered the laboratory, Zhu Ziwen's voice came from inside. Professor, are you looking for me? Looking at the young man in front of him, Li Yongchan sighed a little in his eyes. The new generation from Proxima Centauri has finally begun to step into the upper echelons of the Academy of Sciences. He knows the temper of these new generations. Born in a closed city, I lack the experience of living under blue sky and white clouds. Therefore, compared with the older generation, they are naturally less humane. It may seem a bit boring in daily life. But this kind of temperament is undoubtedly more suitable for scientific research. Especially scientific research under the endless starry sky. Liu Yongchang didn't say any nonsense and asked directly. Mechanical exoskeleton. How much do you know about this thing? Zhu Ziwen's eyes burst out with joy. Professor. Humanity is going to launch an individual armor project? Liu Yongchang rolled his eyes angrily. Stop your thoughts. Individual armor. At present, it does not have much effect on interstellar warfare. It is impossible for the Academy of Sciences to devote its limited resources to such irrelevant projects. Hearing this, Zhu Ziwen's bright eyes suddenly dimmed a bit. He lowered his shoulders and said with some frustration, I understand. But why are you suddenly bringing up robotic exoskeletons? This project has long since been consigned to the trash can since there were zero control robots. Liu Yongchang chuckled and reached out to pat Zhu Ziwen on the shoulder. Now is your chance. The Academy of Sciences is preparing to restart the Mechanical Exoskeleton Research Project. Seeing the confusion in Zhu Ziwen's eyes, Liu Yongchang briefly explained the situation of the Super-Earth. How about it? Is it possible? Zhu Ziwen's eyes showed a thoughtful look. After thinking briefly, he nodded vigorously. Okay, we can make the Mechanical Exoskeleton into semi-encircled armor. On the basis of ergonomics, these semi-enclosed armors can greatly reduce the burden on the human body. As he spoke, he stretched out his hand to display a holographic projection and began to draw on it. In just a few strokes, 
a human-shaped armor appeared in front of Lu Yongchun's eyes. We can even integrate various individual weapons. Type 2 Gauss rifles, small laser cannons, and individual nuclear torpedoes on these armors. As he talked, Zhu Ziwen's expression gradually became excited. Stop! We'll talk about these things later. Lu Yongchan directly interrupted Zhu Ziwen's. Self-pleasure, time is very tight. You and I are jointly responsible for this project. Within a week, the first generation product must be produced. Don't worry about the production line. I will let Zero synchronize the transformation. This? So fast? Zhu Ziwen looked at Lu Yongchan dumbfounded. Isn't one week too short? Not short. Lu Yongchang said in a deep voice. In five days, the human fleet will arrive at Super Earth. At the same time, the fleet will launch the landing plan and simultaneously start the surface city construction project. Until then, I hope to see the first generation of mechanical exoskeletons on the first landing cruise. Zhu Ziwen swallowed lightly and nodded with difficulty. Good. I try my best. Ten minutes later, scientific researchers walked out of various areas of Earth one after another in a hurry and rushed towards laboratory number one. On the way, these scientific researchers also unfolded small holographic projections in front of them. In the holographic projection, there is an introduction to this scientific research project. Qingtian Exoskeleton Armor Shipborne Laboratory Number 1 Zhu Ziwen stood in front of a huge holographic projection, waving his hands in the air, and the picture on the holographic projection also kept changing with Zhu Ziwen's movements. According to database information, as early as the Earth era, we have conducted certain research on mechanical exoskeletons. It's just that with the rise of zero-sum robots, this technology was completely abandoned. Professor, it's not me who said that restarting this research project now is simply a dimensionality reduction attack. Zhu Ziwen complained softly. Later, Zhu Ziwen pulled out several design drawings from the database. Human-computer interaction systems were a difficult issue at the time. However, with current technology, this is the simplest job. The brainwave reading device can easily achieve precise control of the mechanical exoskeleton. In addition, energy and power systems. Zhu Ziwen shrugged. This is not a problem. Small fusion batteries, without weapons systems, are enough to maintain normal operations for years or even decades. Motor aspect. It's not difficult for current humans. Lu Yongchang narrowed his eyes slightly and carefully checked the rows of parameters in the holographic projection. It is indeed as Zhu Ziwen said. Studying mechanical exoskeletons with a strength close to that of a third-level civilization is simply a dimensionality reduction attack. These simple tasks can be left to those researchers. The most difficult point at present is how to improve the flexibility and comfort of the mechanical exoskeleton device. Lu Yongchang nodded silently. Understandable. On the one hand, it is necessary to ensure the strength and power of the mechanical exoskeleton. On the other hand, the mechanical exoskeleton must be as close to the curves of the human body as possible, and even be made into an existence similar to clothing. While ensuring the above two points, these exoskeleton armors must be flexible enough. At least, it cannot affect normal human life. If you want to meet these requirements at the same time, the difficulty of manufacturing exoskeleton armor will rise instantly. Lu Yongchang pondered for a moment and then said, Let's do this. I am responsible for the drawing design of the entire exoskeleton armor. You saw the exoskeleton's flexibility problem. As for whether the intensity and power can meet people's needs, Lu Yongchang thought for a moment and his eyes lit up. Zero. Let those awakened personnel wear motion collection equipment. I want to collect all motion samples in their daily lives. After the data collection is completed, unified modeling and analysis will be carried out. Five days later, thanks to everyone's efforts, the first set of mechanical exoskeleton armor was successfully born in the number one shipboard laboratory. The entire set of exoskeleton armor presents a semi-enveloping structure. It consists of several key parts. Head and neck protection. The carbine armor, which is densely distributed with breathable holes on its surface, perfectly covers the back of the human head and neck and provides certain support for the most important human organs. Carapace. The back armor covers a large area and is mainly composed of a spine-like armor that can move freely, and a plate armor that covers the entire back. All energy components are integrated on the back armor, which not only provides the strongest support for the human body, but also provides abundant energy for various components of the exoskeleton. Limb-assisted devices, extending from the carapace. It covers the outside of the human body's limbs, providing strong support for the human body. A large number of micro-motors can provide sufficient power for humans, 
while ensuring flexibility. Chapter 389 I asked you to make crutches, but you made me a set of interstellar armor? Lu Yongchang stood quietly next to the exoskeleton armor, with a hint of brilliance in his eyes. Let me ask, which man doesn't like this kind of mechanical equipment? He raised his arm and carefully tapped the exoskeleton armor in front of him. The armor SH. L made entirely of carbine made a slightly dull sound. Although the sound is dull, it brings an extremely solid sense of security. What were the test results? Lu Yongchang turned to look at Zhu Ziwen beside him and asked softly, Does it meet the expected standards? Zhu Ziwen nodded quickly and reached out to drag the holographic projection on the side to Lu Yongchang. Professor, we have conducted many unmanned testing experiments. The flexibility of this exoskeleton armor far exceeds that of humans. Under Zero's control, it can even do many actions that humans cannot do. The instructions correspond to speed and strength control. And there are no problems. Lu Yongchang didn't speak. He just stretched out his hand and swiped gently, carefully checking various test data. When he saw that its weight-bearing capacity reached an astonishing 500 kilograms, the corners of his eyes twitched sharply. This data far exceeded his expectations. Afterwards, a series of abnormal and outrageous data impacted his brain. Maximum jump distance, 7.1 meters. Jump height, 5.4 meters. Lu Yongchang's eyes gradually became weird. By the way, these data are test results under the gravity of the Earth. If it were on a super-Earth, the effect should not be so significant, as if he was afraid that he would misunderstand. Zhu Ziwen hurriedly explained. This explanation coupled with these amazing data made Li Yongchang's look even weirder. In his vision, the biggest role of this mechanical exoskeleton device is to provide sufficient support for the human body. It is equivalent to a pair of crutches that fit the whole body and are self-powered. But now, I asked you to make crutches, but you made me a set of interstellar armor? Are you okay? His. Lu Yongchang took a breath of cold air and pointed at the data in front of him. Here, these functions were added by you. Zhu Ziwen leaned over, glanced at the place where Lu Yongchang pointed, and said excitedly, Right. Professor, you can rest assured that Zero has conducted a comprehensive simulation. The added motors and other equipment will not affect the strength of the overall structure of the mechanical exoskeleton. Lu Yongchang was silent for a moment, then slowly uttered a word. Well done! Zhu Ziwen's epic enhancement of the mechanical exoskeleton armor greatly exceeded his expectations. Therefore, he temporarily changed the original test plan. At first, he planned to find several researchers from the Academy of Sciences to test the exoskeleton armor. The reason is also very simple. Currently, all ordinary people are still in hibernation. For this experiment, it is obviously unnecessary to wake up a few ordinary people alone. Therefore, the selection of experimental subjects naturally fell on those scientific researchers. After all, the physiques of most scientific researchers are similar to those of ordinary people. But now, exoskeleton armor of this strength, even with complete power limitation measures, is still quite dangerous for ordinary people. Then, Lu Yongchang turned his attention to the military. Zero, let Bai Xuan and the others come to the laboratory. As they are older, they can no longer charge at the forefront of the war. As senior captains who have participated in the war all the way from Earth, they successfully entered the headquarters of the First Fleet by virtue of their rich combat experience. It is precisely because of this that Lu Yongchang focused on Bai Xuan and others. Because of their age, their physical fitness is better than that of ordinary people. But in the military, it is only below average. And, whether they are fighting on the surface or in space, Bai Xuan and the others have sufficient practical experience. More than 10 minutes later, the door to the number one shipboard laboratory slowly opened. Professor Lu, do you have anything to ask us about? Bai Xuan's gentle voice came from the door. Hey, Team White, what are you talking about? Hong Fan's careless voice sounded at the same time. Professor, can't you chat with us if you have nothing to do? You are a person who can't even wake up when you see him. Lu Yongchang, we haven't seen each other for many years. But Hong Fan still looks the same. He turned his head and cast his gaze in the direction of the door. Sure enough, I saw that familiar scene again. Under the glares of Bai Ishuan and Xiao Wani, Hong Fan sneered and made a gesture of shutting up. Seemingly seeing Professor Lu's gaze, Hong Fan's eyes lit up, and he raised his hand and waved to him. Lu Yongchan naturally had a gentle smile on his face. As time went by, these old people, who came from the earth and were familiar to him, had become much less numerous without realizing it. Therefore, in his daily life, he does not act like a chief scientist. 
On the other hand, human lifespan has been greatly extended. No matter how tough your nerves are, they will break if they are strained for hundreds of years. Therefore, when faced with these funny jokes, most of the time, his choice is to participate. Yes, Yixuan, Hong Fan is right. Lu Yongchang joked with a smile. Can't I come to you if nothing happens? Bai Xuan's eyes suddenly flashed with astonishment. Obviously, he didn't expect Lu Yongchang to say this. Looking at the circle of scientific researchers surrounding Lu Yongchang in the laboratory, Bai Yixuan smiled bitterly and shook his head. You? Call this small talk? Naturally, Lu Yongchang did not dwell on this topic for too long. He waved to the three of them. Come! I'm mainly looking for you to test a new piece of equipment. The moment they heard about the new equipment, the eyes of Bai Xuan and the others suddenly lit up. For them, the most attractive thing is nothing more than all kinds of new equipment. Hong Fan quickened his pace and jogged to Lu Yongchang's side. Just a glance, his eyes were fixed on the exoskeleton armor in front of him. Hack! Hong Fan uttered the quintessence of wonder in his mouth. Professor, is the Academy of Science preparing to build individual armor? Faced with the same question as Zhu Ziwen, Lu Yongchang naturally shook his head with black lines in his head. After some explanation, with disappointment written all over his face, Hong Fan turned around and walked towards the nearest gravity chamber dejectedly. This test will be conducted in a gravity chamber because they have not mastered artificial gravity technology. The gravity cabins of the human fleet mainly rely on centrifugal force to achieve equivalent gravity. The entire gravity chamber is a huge roulette structure connected to the starship under the action of powerful motors. This huge wheel can rotate at different speeds under zero control thereby creating an equivalent gravity of 0.1 g to 1.5 g. Chapter 390, Are You Serious About Taking a Half Step Back? Although this test will be conducted in a gravity chamber, but the entire test actually starts in the laboratory. With the help of several scientific researchers, Baishwan carefully stepped on the exoskeleton armor that was raised about 10 centimeters. Those are the shoes that the exoskeleton armor comes with, in addition to electromagnetic adsorption devices. There are countless sensors and shoes. Bai Xuan turned around and leaned against the exoskeleton armor with an anxious look on his face. A sense of panic about the unknown situation arises from the bottom of my heart. Zero. Start the experiment. Lu Yongchan gave the order softly. Turn on the power limitation function of the exoskeleton armor. In order to avoid unexpected situations, he added again. The moment the words fell, under Zero's control, the semi-enveloping exoskeleton armor quickly tightened. With the help of precision mechanical structures, the entire suit of armor tightly fits by Yixuan's body curves. Relax. Lu Yongchang glanced at the data on the holographic projection, raised his eyebrows and said, Lean your whole body against the armor. Trust it and don't resist. Bai Yixuan took a deep breath, and the tight muscles in his body slowly relaxed. The exoskeleton armor tightened again. Then, there was a clicking sound from the spine-like armor on the back. It seemed to have a life of its own slowly, squirming on the huge carapace, and followed by Yixuan's body curves to fit closely on his back. Click! The sound of buckles tightening sounded. The lights on the back and arms turned from red to green. Okay! Lu Yongchan calmly took dozens of steps back, then looked at Bai Yixuan curiously. How do you feel? Bai Yixuan, are you serious about taking a half step back? A small movement can still cause so much damage. Sensing Bai Yixuan's resentful eyes, Lu Yongchang sneered and pointed to the exoskeleton armor behind him with some embarrassment. This thing is a bit powerful. Please take it easy. Bai Yixuan stood there awkwardly. Professor, how do I operate this thing? Lu Yongchang. Ahem. I forgot to introduce you. Lu Yongchang pointed at the back of Bai Yixuan's head. There is a brainwave reading device here. The operation method is basically the same as that in the deep sea cabin. Bai Yixuan suddenly realized. Okay. Next. Let's take a step and take a look. His thoughts moved slightly. A huge force came from the right leg, driven by the exoskeleton armor. He was forced to take a step forward. Then, he lost his balance. Obviously, even if the power limit function is turned on, this exoskeleton armor is not easily controllable by ordinary people. Seeing that the distance between himself and the ground was getting closer and closer, in desperation, a thought flashed in by Ishwan's mind. Several powerful forces came from around his body, forcing him to make several movements. The world is spinning. Bang! There was a loud sound from the bottom of his feet. And the tilted, scene in front of him had returned to normal. WTF! From the side, Lu Yongchang's murmur came. 
I, what's wrong with me? Baishuan lowered his head and looked at his posture in confusion. Half kneeling on the ground, his right hand subconsciously opened and rested on the ground. It was said that it was supported on the ground. But in fact it didn't use much force. It was just a posture. All the weight is shared by the mechanical exoskeleton next to the legs. Zero. Lu Yongchang took a few steps back again. Are you sure you have turned on the power limit function? WTF? He couldn't even believe what he just saw. The exoskeleton armor that was about to fall to the ground rose into the air. Turned 360 degrees in the air. And completed this classic American comic landing posture. TMD? Do you call this turning on the power limit function? Professor? The power limit function has been confirmed to be turned on. Do you want to turn it off? Don't! Lu Yongchang was shocked and shouted repeatedly. What's going on? If you turn off the power limit function, will this exoskeleton armor go to heaven? As for Zhu Ziwen, facing Lu Yongchang's questioning gaze, he smiled and spread his hands. Professor, did you forget the action samples you asked Ling to collect? These actions are data in the database. Lu Yongchang. So, what are these awakened captains and pilots doing in the gravity chamber? At this time, under Bai Yishuan's control, the exoskeleton armor, which had just completed difficult movements, had slowly stood up. Go to the gravity chamber. Lu Yongchang was silent for a moment and squeezed out a few words through his teeth. This exoskeleton armor is so powerful in a zero-gravity environment. Outside the gravity chamber, Bai Yishuan, wearing exoskeleton armor, carefully passed through the circular airlock door and got into the slowly rotating gravity chamber. At this time, the equivalent gravity is only 0.1 g. Seen by Yishuan standing firm, Lu Yongchang raised his eyebrows and said directly, Zero! Adjust the gravity to 1 g. The rotation speed of the huge roulette wheel increased significantly. Soon, the equivalent gravity in the gravity chamber reached 1 g. That is the gravity on the Earth's surface. Bai Yishuan, give it a try. Lu Yongchang whispered the order. The test items have been sent to you. A small holographic image appeared in front of Bai Yishuan. Run, jump, lift weights. After a series of normal movements, there are adapted and difficult gymnastics movements one by one. He turned his head suddenly and looked at the holographic image to the side in disbelief. In the holographic image, Lu Yongchang smiled and nodded to him and gave a thumbs up. Zero. Have all the personnel in the gravity cabin been evacuated? Evacuation completed. Bai Yishuan, he took a deep breath and with the help of the brainwave reading device, issued instructions to the exoskeleton armor behind him. Run! Jump! With Zero's assistance, every action was executed perfectly. Even those ridiculously exaggerated gymnastics moves were perfectly presented in front of everyone. Half an hour later, Bai Yishuan's eye showed a bit of excitement. His cheeks glowed red, and he completed the last action. Cool! In just half an hour, he completely fell in love with this exoskeleton armor. In this half hour, he felt like he had become a superman, completing actions one after another that he had never dared to think of before. He could even imagine how powerful this exoskeleton armor would be once surface combat started. Bai Yishuan, how do you feel? If possible, I will increase the equivalent gravity to 1.5 G next. Lu Yongchang's voice came from the speaker. Bai Yishuan raised his eyebrows. Do you still need to ask? Add. Just add it and you're done. He nodded decisively. It feels good. You can increase gravity at any time. The moment the words fell, the rotation speed of the huge gravity chamber began to increase again. Chapter 391 Overload 1.1 G 1.2 G The numbers on the holographic projection continued to grow. And in just a few minutes, they reached the upper limit of the gravity chamber. 1.5 G As a hardcore starship pilot, adapting to this level of gravity is as easy as breathing and drinking water for Baishwan. Before the advent of deep-sea cabin technology, he even had to withstand super overloads exceeding 10G. Some people may ask, since it can withstand powerful overloads of more than 10G, why can't it survive on a super-Earth with a gravity of 1.9G? The reason is simple. That level of super overload often only lasts a few seconds. What's more, with the presence of anti-gravity suits and ergonomic seats, the negative effects of overload are minimized. But super-Earths are different. That 1.9G gravity is really pressing on people. It is obviously not an easy task to walk and move with such gravity. Lu Yongchang turned his attention to the holographic projection in front of him. In the holographic image, facing an equivalent gravity of 1.5G, Baishuan stood there without changing his expression. How does it feel? Lu Yongchang asked. 
in the gravity cabin. Baishuan closed his eyes slightly and felt it carefully. He even controlled the exoskeleton armor to raise his arms and legs and perform several standard military boxing movements. Then, Baishuan's response came from the communication channel. Professor, that feels good. With the help of the exoskeleton, it is not difficult to remain standing and move normally. There is no strange feeling in the joints or muscles, but the internal organs can still feel the swelling sensation caused by the increased gravity. Outside the gravity cabin, Lu Yongchang nodded slightly, basically in line with expectations. Exoskeleton armor mainly solves external problems such as joints and muscles. In terms of internal organs, we can only rely on the research results of Mao Xingji. Before the emergence of specific genetic modification technology, the soldiers and scientific researchers who went to the super-earth could only suffer a little injustice resting in a medical cabin filled with deep-sea fluid every night. Medical nanorobots can repair internal organ damage as much as possible under overweight conditions. The deep-sea liquid can greatly reduce the impact of the overweight state on them. Carry out the test just now! Lu Yongchan gave the order directly. After pondering for a moment, he added softly, Be careful. Under 1.5 G gravity, some movements may cause damage to your internal organs. If you feel uncomfortable, stop the test immediately. In the holographic screen, Baishuan nodded slightly. Then, he controlled the exoskeleton armor again and used it to drive his body to move. Sing and dance. Ahem. No. Run. Jump. And lift weights. Every test result appeared in front of Lu Yongchang simultaneously. He raised his eyebrows slightly. Really? As Ju Ziwen said, the theoretical data of exoskeleton armor are based on the performance of 1G gravity. In a 1.5G or 1.9G environment, the data performance will be reduced a lot. But even so, Bai Yishuan, wearing this exoskeleton armor, already belongs to the Superman in the human fleet. Maximum jumping distance, 4.5 meters. Jump height, 3 meters. Maximum load-bearing capacity, 300 kilograms. The basic test ended quickly. And next came some difficult work. Jump on the spot. Perform a 360-degree turn in the air. Balance beam. And mow somersault. When Bai Yishuan started to perform these difficult movements, Lu Yongchang's eyes became much more serious. The first set of actions. Take off on the spot and turn 360 degrees and 720 degrees in the air. With the help of the exoskeleton armor, Bai Yishuan's movements seemed extremely relaxed and comfortable. But through the high-definition camera, Lu Yongchan knew that this set of actions was not so easy to complete. At this time, Bai Yishuan looked pale and was breathing heavily. Obviously, under the gravity of 1.5G, the powerful load brought by these difficult movements has reached the limit of Bai Yishuan's endurance. Bai Yishuan, how do you feel? Lu Yongchan said sullenly. Do you need to suspend the test? Bai Yishuan didn't speak, just took a few deep breaths and waved his hand towards the camera. After his pale face returned to normal, he shook his head and walked towards the special high and low parallel bars on the side. Next, comes the Mo's flip, even under the condition of 1G gravity. This set of actions is not something ordinary people can do. Under the equivalent gravity of 1G, Baishwan also relied on Zero's auxiliary control to perfectly reproduce this difficult movement in gymnastics. Standing under the higher horizontal bar, Baishwan took a deep breath, jump up and reach out to grab the horizontal bar, do a forward somersault over the bar, and then grab the bar. When his hands came off the first horizontal bar, something unexpected happened. A warning message instantly appeared on the holographic projection in front of Lu Yongchang. Warn! Detected that the tester is unconscious. Initiate emergency measures. Before anyone could react, the exoskeleton armor in midair quickly curled up under Zero's control. After completing the posture adjustment in the air, the exoskeleton armor landed safely on the ground. Through the high-definition camera, you can see clearly, Bai Yishuan, who was wrapped in exoskeleton armor, was pale and his eyes were closed tightly. Obviously, the huge load of the previous set of movements was beyond what his body could bear. White team! From the side, Hong Fan and Xiao Wani's exclamations came. Lu Yongchang's face was a little ugly. And he said urgently, Zero! Reduce the speed of the gravity cabin! Prepare the medical bay immediately! Let Dr. Wen come over! The rotation speed of the gravity chamber decreased rapidly. The equivalent gravity inside quickly decreased from 1.5 g to 0.5 g. Perhaps because of the reduced gravity. It can be clearly seen through the camera that Baishuan's complexion has recovered a lot. Under everyone's gaze, 
He slowly opened his eyes, put one hand on the ground, and sat up straight with difficulty. Team White! Seeing Bai Yishuan wake up, Hong Fan's face showed a bit of joy. He quickly got into the circular airlock door in front and ran towards Bai Yishuan in three steps at a time. Liu Yongchang and a group of scientific researchers also followed Hong Fan and Xiao Wani into the gravity chamber. Professor, after being helped up from the ground by Hong Fan, Bai Yishuan showed a wry smile towards Liu Yongchang who came over. I disappoint you. Liu Yongchang looked solemn and asked eagerly. How is your health? It should be nothing serious. Bai Yishuan took a deep breath. It might be that his internal organs were damaged. And a look of pain suddenly appeared on his face. It's just that the overload of that set of movements was a bit powerful. A young person should be able to handle it. Lu Yongchang nodded seriously. Okay, I understand. He turned his head and glanced at the airlock door behind him and said noncommittally, You go with Dr. Wen first and take a good rest. Chapter 392 Ancient Anti-Dutch Clothes After sending Dr. Wen and Bai Yishuan away, Lu Yongchang led everyone back to the laboratory with a gloomy face. A bad start. Zhu Ziwen's face didn't look very good either. As the person in charge of the exoskeleton armor project, the test picture just now was obviously not what he wanted to see. This is only the case of 1.5G equivalent gravity. If it is on a super earth, under 1.9G gravity conditions, Zhu Ziwen couldn't imagine such a scene. For ordinary people, walking normally should be no problem. But if they perform slightly more violent movements, such as accelerating running and jumping, the huge overload generated in that moment may be enough to make them pass out. Zhu Ziwen frowned, trying to think of a solution. Or, reduce the performance of exoskeleton armor? Thinking that his hard work was finally weakened into a large power crutch, he felt that his heart was bleeding continuously. Are there any anti-Dutch suits in the starship? On the side, Lu Yongchang suddenly asked. Anti-Dutch uniform? Zhu Ziwen was stunned, with a bit of confusion in his eyes. What is that? There is no corresponding reserve in the warehouse. Zero's voice also sounded at the same time. Do I need to manufacture this material? Lu Yongchang looked helpless. After the emergence of deep-sea cabin technology, the ancient anti-German suit became an outcast of the times. What little inventory there was was probably lost in Mars City. As for Zhu Ziwen, it is normal not to know this thing. How could the new generation born from Proxima be know about the old equipment of the Earth era? He first briefly explained the anti-Dutch suit to Zhu Ziwen, and then was about to issue an order to make the anti-Dutch suit to Ling. But his train of thought was interrupted by Hong Fan's shout. Professor Liu! Yes! There are anti-Dutch uniforms! Hong Fan, who was following the crowd, walked quickly to Li Yongchang and said slightly excitedly. Li Yongchang was slightly startled. Do you have anti-German clothing? Hong Fan nodded excitedly. Yes! There is another set! Seemingly seeing the doubts in the eyes of Li Yongchang and everyone around him, Hong Fan quickly explained, Professor, do you still remember the first generation Zuan number one? Li Yongchang's eyes moved slightly, with a look of surprise on his face. Do you still have that anti-Dutch suit? Hong Fan scratched the back of his head in embarrassment and whispered, Let's keep it as a souvenir. That was, after all, the beginning of Xia's true rise. Li Yongchang was a little moved. He exhaled a long breath reached out and patted Hong Fan on the shoulder with emotion. Not bad. Go ahead and get your anti-G suit and we'll conduct another experiment. Hong Fan's expression suddenly became serious. After saluting Li Yongchang, he turned and left the laboratory. Half an hour later, the laboratory door opened again. Hong Fan, wearing anti-Dutch clothing, slowly walked into the laboratory. The anti-German suit is silvery white in color. Compared with today's tight-fitting space suits, the old anti-gravity suits from hundreds of years ago are extremely bulky. The flash of red on the shoulders and heart of the anti-German suit immediately evoked the memories of many older generation scientific researchers present. Lu Yongchang stared blankly at the bright red flag and murmured to himself. I really miss it. I vaguely remember his participation in the design of this anti-Dutch suit. For a moment, countless faded images flashed through his mind. Zuan Buen rose from the ground. The red flag fluttered above the moon and the old council leader scolded Fang Chiu at the joint meeting. Professor, Hong Fan saluted with a standard military salute again and said in a deep voice, I'm ready! Seeing the determined look on Hong Fan's face, Liu Yongchang took a deep breath and his face became serious. Has the anti-Dutch suit been inspected? All features still work. Professor, I believe in Siog was manufacturing standards. 
Hong Fan replied in a firm and powerful tone without any hesitation. After hearing this, after a brief daze, Lu Yongchang showed a bright and proud smile on his face. Let's go to the gravity cabin. Aside, Zhu Ziwen stared blankly at the scene in front of him. Although it is somewhat difficult to understand what is happening in front of me. But there was something slightly touched in his heart. Looking at the bloated Hong Fan striding towards the gravity cabin, a thought flashed in Zhu Ziwen's mind. In a few days, let's check out the historical database again. Go check out Earth Age. Human Civilization. Inside the gravity chamber. The second round of testing started again. Soon, the test progress came to Mo's flip again. Under the worried eyes of Li Yongchang and a group of scientific researchers, Hong Fan successfully completed the entire set of actions. The moment he landed on the ground, like by Yixuan, his face was slightly pale. However, with the help of anti-gravity suits, he successfully survived the sudden increase in overload. The test continues. Facing groups of difficult movements, the role of anti-gravity clothing is fully revealed. Finally, after more than 10 minutes, Hong Fan panted heavily and successfully completed all test items. With a burst of applause, he controlled the exoskeleton armor, sat down on the ground, and calmed down the discomfort in his body. Suddenly, his eyes paused, perhaps because the action just now was too intense. The red flag on the chest was full of wrinkles. His consciousness moved slightly, controlling the exoskeleton armor. He carefully raised his hand and smoothed it gently. Shipborne Laboratory Number 1 Looking at Hong Fan, who had finished changing his clothes in front of him, Lu Yongchang nodded thoughtfully. According to your point of view, even if you are wearing a Dutch-resistant suit, this exoskeleton armor is still only suitable for soldiers with good physical fitness. Ordinary people still can't stand such exaggerated acceleration. Hong Fan nodded repeatedly, thinking of the overload feeling that he had not experienced for hundreds of years. There was a bit of fear in his eyes. Even with the anti-German suit, he still felt what Bai Ishwan felt when performing one of the movements. Due to the large amount of blood flowing to the legs, the lack of oxygen in the brain causes the vision to go dark. Fortunately, the anti-GDR suit took effect in time. Otherwise, it is estimated that he will have to go to Dr. Wen's place as a guest like the white team. Lu Yongchan naturally didn't know what Hong Fan was thinking. At this time, he was talking to Zhu Ziwen. Remove all redundant functions. We need a civilian version of exoskeleton armor. Can it be done? Zhu Ziwen smiled bitterly and nodded. Sure enough, he still didn't escape the weakening attack. Don't worry. The military version will still use the original exoskeleton armor. Lu Yongchang patted Zhu Ziwen on the shoulder and comforted softly. As for the production line, Zero is already making preparations. Next, let's rest for two days and start the next project. What project? Zhu Ziwen's eyes were a little confused. Lu Yongchang looked at Zhu Ziwen in front of him with a half smile. You forgot? Those weapon modules. Zhu Ziwen's eyes suddenly lit up. Professor, don't worry. The civilian version of the exoskeleton armor will be ready soon. Chapter 393, Looking at the Stars. Exoskeleton armor testing comes to an end. Although there are still some flaws. Overall, the test was a complete success. Two days flew by. The human fleet also successfully arrived at its destination the sixth planet in the Gliese 555 star system. To distinguish it from the other planets in the star system, it was named Dawn. The implication goes without saying much. After experiencing a series of ups and downs in his escape career, on this planet, Lu Yongchang saw the dawn of human civilization resuming a life of peaceful development. We also saw the dawn of the rise of human civilization. As for its satellite, the supermoon, it is simply named Dawn 1 or Dawn for short. The landing operation was about to begin, and almost all scientists and crew members in the Academy of Sciences became busy. As the chief scientist, Lu Yongchang is naturally no exception. However, compared to other scientists, he has a more flexible schedule. After finishing his assigned work, Lu Yongchang, who took a break from his busy schedule, quietly returned to his office. There are several seats next to the porthole in the office. That's for viewing and relaxing. He sat on his usual seat and silently looked at the planet, getting bigger, out of the porthole. Da da da. Lu Yongchang's ears twitched slightly. The sound was highly identifiable. It was the unique footsteps formed by electromagnetic boots. Professor. A familiar female voice came from behind. The next moment, Su Yutong's voice came from beside him. At the same time, a familiar figure sat on the seat next to him. Click. The electromagnetic adsorption device firmly fixed Su Yutong's body on the seat. 
Have you finished your work? Lu Yongchang asked subconsciously. Si Yutong rolled her eyes at Lu Yongchang angrily. Obviously, she was not very satisfied with Lu Yongchang's opening remarks. Even so, she chuckled and nodded. Of course it's done. That's good. Lu Yongchang murmured to himself, still staring straight at the desolate dawn star outside the porthole window. Like Lu Yongchang, Su Yutong also sets his sights on the nearby planets. Su Yutong looked at the scenery outside the porthole with some confusion and murmured in a low voice, Professor, how long can we be stable this time? Hearing Su Yutong's question, Lu Yongchang pursed his lips hard. He subconsciously glanced at the porthole on the other side. In the distance, there is a maverick fleet. Forty-nine small starships sail quietly on the flank of the main fleet. Among them, forty-eight starships are dimensional strike ships loaded with two-dimensional fragments. These starships are like stars over the moon, surrounding a slightly larger starship. Inside this unique starship are core fragments from painting. Looking at the fleet, Lu Yongchang had an imperceptible hint of worry in his eyes. He withdrew his eyes, nodded firmly, and said to Su Yutong, A long time! As if to dispel the haze in his heart, Lu Yongchang emphasized again, I will definitely be stable for a long time! Su Yutong smiled and nodded gently. That's right! Lu Yongchang's eyes flashed with an extremely rare shyness. And he lowered his eyes slightly and said, If, I mean if, after the surface construction of Dawn Star is completed and everything is on track, should we want to think about our next life? At the end of the sentence, Lu Yongchang's voice even contained a bit of trembling. Su Yutong on the side suddenly widened his eyes. She reached out and gently covered her lips, looking at Lu Yongchang beside her in disbelief. Teach, professor, you are? Lu Yongchang scratched his head in embarrassment, his eyes avoiding Su Yutong's gaze. Ahem, I mean, continuing like this is not an option. When everything gets on track, I'll probably be able to live a somewhat free life. When the time comes, we can go to the surface of Dawn Star together to watch the stars. Su Yutong smiled and asked in an extremely gentle tone. Just looking at the stars? This straight ball made Lu Yongchang increasingly confused. He opened his mouth and his face turned slightly red. Dang! Of course there are others. Can! Is it okay? Looking at Lu Yongchang, who was completely different from usual, the smile in Su Yutong's eyes became more and more obvious. Click! She reached out and gently unlocked the electromagnetic adsorption device on the seat, moved her body, and came closer to Lu Yongchang. Then, he firmly stretched out his hand and held Lu Yongchang's palm. The warmth in his palms and on his side made Su Yutong's eyes flash with a hint of shyness. But she still looked directly at Lu Yongchang's face and said softly, Of course. Lu Yongchang trembled slightly and raised his head cautiously. Their eyes met exactly, feeling the weak breath coming from him and the warm softness beside him. There was a hint of confusion in his eyes. Purely instinctive. His body slowly came forward. As for Su Yutong, after noticing Li Yongchang's slight movement, his face turned red and he closed his eyes. Uh-huh. The sound of the office door opening came from behind. Yongchang. The familiar shout stopped abruptly. The two people with only the last bit of distance left quickly bounced away like a compressed spring. Su Yutong, who had already unlocked the electromagnetic adsorption device naturally stood up successfully and left his original position. But Lu Yongchang obviously did not have such good luck. The electromagnetic adsorption device fiercely pulled Lu Yongchang back when he wanted to get up. Hiss! Lu Yongchang took a breath of cold air. Ignoring the pain in his body, he suddenly turned his head and looked at the office door. Whoa! The door opened and closed again. Outside the door, a rush of footsteps gradually faded away. Lu Yongchang subconsciously glanced at Su Yutong whose face was red and covering his face like an ostrich. A trace of embarrassment flashed in his eyes. Ahem. Yutong, you go and do your work first. Su Yutong lowered his head and nodded imperceptibly. Then, where is Fong Su? The corner of Lu Yongchang's mouth twitched. Don't worry. I will solve it over there. There was a strong, evil spirit in his words. After saying that, he reached out to unlock the electromagnetic adsorption device on the seat. Stood up, and walked towards the office door. Approaching the door, he stopped and hesitated for a moment. The agreement just made should count. Right. Su Yutong. Um. She squeezed out a weak response from her nasal cavity. After receiving an affirmative answer, Lu Yongchang's lips quickly raised. He straightened his sleeves and walked towards the open office door. Chapter 394 Magna. So, why are you looking for me? Lu Yongchang's eyes were filled with the word threat. 
Fong Su, who was caught, had a wry smile on his face, clasped his hands together, and repeatedly begged for mercy. Misunderstanding. Misunderstanding. A misunderstanding? Mao Jingji's project has made some progress. I just wanted to report the good news. Looking at Liu Yongcheng's face, Fong Su directly gave half of the blame to Mao Jingji without saying a word. When he heard that it was about the biology laboratory, Liu Yongcheng's expression suddenly became much more serious. How to say? When Fong Su saw this, his eyes lit up with joy, and he quickly started to explain. After some explanation, Liu Yongcheng nodded thoughtfully. It seems that I have to go to the biology laboratory first. A hint of surprise flashed in his eyes, and he murmured to himself. I didn't expect the progress to come so fast. I thought it would take at least a few months to hear any movement. Fong Su nodded repeatedly. Yes, yes, I have to go to the biology laboratory. If you go, maybe the progress of the experiment can be accelerated. Liu Yongchan glanced at Fong Su with a half smile. What did you just see? Fong Su subconsciously said. You and Su Yutong. Suddenly, he swallowed and shook his head repeatedly. No, 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 I didn't see anything. Liu Yongchan nodded with satisfaction, reached out and patted Fong Su's shoulder gently. Very good. Make sure you remember your answer now. After saying that, he turned around and walked towards the biology laboratory. Only Fong Su was left standing there with an annoyed face. So good. Why do you want to go to Liu Yongcheng's office? If he had known this would happen, he would have just sent a message. How could something like this happen? Biological Shipboard Laboratory. Liu Yongcheng felt the brisk atmosphere in the laboratory as soon as he entered the laboratory. Obviously, the progress mentioned by Fong Su has relieved a lot of the burden on all scientific researchers. Mao Xingji, who was sitting in front of the experimental table and concentrating on operating the holographic interface, suddenly felt that the brightness of the laboratory had dimmed a bit. He frowned and raised his head to look at the light above his head. A familiar figure. Mao Xingji was stunned and said with a look of astonishment, Professor Lu, why are you here? Lu Yongchang was looking at the information in the holographic screen with relish. Hearing Mao Xingji's voice, he waved his hand and said, You go about your business first. I'll just see for myself. Mao Xingji nodded, without saying any polite words, and immersed himself in his work again. Lu Yongchang carefully moved two steps to the side, waved, and pulled the holographic projection on the side in front of him. Looking at each item of information, his eyes became brighter and brighter. In the information, one kind of creature is mainly introduced. A creature from Proxima B. Magna. This is the name given to this huge creature by the Proxima Centauri civilization. Magna. Land viviparous animal. Extremely large in size. The largest adult individual can reach 35 meters in length. It weighs enough to reach over 70 tons. It can be called a terrestrial blue whale. Due to its large size, Magna is slow in movement. According to the information left by the Proxima Centauri civilization, the last Magna died about 500 years ago. The cause of the extinction is, on the one hand, the hunting of Proxima Centauri, and on the other hand, the reduction of the habitable environment. As for why we mentioned this extremely large creature, we naturally have to start from another aspect. Proxima Centauri B has a surface gravity of 1.1 g. Normally, in such an environment, such a large animal cannot exist on land, just like the Earth. Under 1 g gravity, the largest animal on land since modern times should be the African elephant. An adult African elephant can reach a height of up to 4.1 meters. And its heaviest weight has been recorded at 13.5 tons. The only ones that are larger are creatures in the ocean. Such as blue whales. Push forward. Until the age of the dinosaurs. The largest dinosaur that humans can determine is probably Argentinosaurus. It is more than 30 meters long and weighs 73 tons. It can be said that Magna of Proxima B is equivalent to the existence of Argentinosaurus. Under 1.1 g gravity. It is almost impossible for such a creature to appear. Neither bones nor internal organs can withstand such pressure under normal circumstances. It's unbelievable. Lu Yongchang muttered to himself as he looked at the information in front of him. I don't know when. Mao Xingji completed his work and quietly came to Lu Yongchang. Yes, it's unbelievable. Mao Xingji's voice came from the side. Lu Yongchang turned his head and glanced at Mao Xingji. From the beginning, I was going to look for inspiration from the creatures on Earth. Seeing Lu Yongchang turn around, Mao Jingji continued with emotion on his face. His emotion successfully aroused Lu Yongchang's curiosity. Then what? Lu Yongchang quickly took over and asked. What else can be done? Mao Jingji shrugged, 
To solve this problem, I must check out the giant creatures in the biobank. Those terrestrial animals in modern times on Earth obviously cannot meet my needs. Lu Yongchang nodded. Indeed, to solve this problem, we can only find experience from some creatures that are beyond the ordinary. So I tried to check the database of Proxima Centauri Civilization. Mao Jingji pursed his lips. Well, this is it. To be honest, I am really grateful to the Proxima Centauri Civilization. They actually retained Magna's genetic sample. This reduces a lot of the burden on our experiments. A trace of surprise flashed in Lu Yongchang's eyes. This. We should really thank the Proxima Centauri Civilization for this. He said with a strange expression. That's right. Mao Jingji suddenly became excited. He stretched out his hand and dragged the holographic image aside. Do you know how these magna overcome the effects of gravity? According to the anatomy data left by the Proxima Centauri Civilization, the surface of these magna's internal organs is actually covered with a mesh-like membrane. Reticular menstrual membrane? Lu Yongchang frowned and repeated Mao Jingji's words. Yes. Mao Jingji quickly operated and called up the latest information. In the holographic screen, dense white grid-like substances are distributed on the surface of each huge organ. It's like a tight net, trapping the internal organs in it. These mesh-like membranes should be a magic weapon for them to resist the gravity of Proxima Centauri B. Besides that, Mao Jingji quickly flicked through the holographic images in front of him, excitedly displaying various research materials in front of Lu Yongchang. Their genes are very different from ordinary Proxima Centauri creatures. Stronger heart muscles, stronger lungs, thickened blood vessel walls, increased bone strength. Based on research during this period, we have successfully targeted more than a dozen gene fragments. Mao Jingji smiled and opened the last holographic projection. On it was a genome completely different from that of Earth creatures. Chapter 395 Excuse me. Farewell. Lu Yongchang raised his eyebrows and quickly reached out to operate. He first enlarged the holographic image in front of him. Then, he frowned and carefully observed the gene fragments in the image. Because of his previous experience in studying longevity enzymes, he had some understanding of the gene fragments of Proxima Centauri organisms. After being systematically strengthened for hundreds of years, the brain operates at a rapid speed. This, this, and this. Lu Yongchang pointed out three groups of genes with a firm expression. These three groups of genes should not be what we are looking for. Mao Jingji was stunned and glanced at Lu Yongchang beside him in surprise. Obviously, he didn't expect Lu Yongchang to say such words. Although he didn't quite believe his words, Mao Jingji still said hesitantly, Professor, these genes were screened out after several comparisons with Zero's gene library. They are all unique genetic fragments in Magna's body. You? Faced with Mao Jingji's doubts, Lu Yongchang did not say any nonsense. He said directly to the camera on the side, Zero, list the currently known genetic information of Proxima Centauri. As he finished speaking, a huge, brand new holographic projection appeared in front of him. In the holographic projection, there are densely packed genetic fragments that are completely different from the creatures on Earth. Each different arrangement of gene segments corresponds to amino acids and proteins with different functions. This is the greatest biological treasure left by the Proxima Centauri civilization, an extremely detailed genetic map. While his eyes were scanning, Lu Yongchang raised his hand and selected three gene fragments on the dense genetic map. He turned his head and waved to Mao Jingji beside him. Take a good look at these three gene fragments. Mao Jingji subconsciously took a step forward and came to Lu Yongchang's side. This is a gene fragment from a small herbivore. Lu Yongchang explained calmly. Compared with Magna's gene, the similarity between the two is more than 80%. If I remember correctly, the main function of this gene fragment is to secrete a special digestive enzyme. This digestive enzyme has a very singular role. Digestion of a highly nutritious plant called cacao. If the data from the Proxima Centauri civilization is correct, this plant disappeared on Proxima Centauri B 550 years ago. In time, it coincides with the death of Magna. Lu Yongchang shrugged. So, the function of this gene fragment is most likely to secrete this unique digestive enzyme. Mao Jingji stared blankly at Lu Yongchang in front of him. He swallowed slightly. Teach, professor, how do you know? Mao Jingji's eyes were filled with wonder. I mean, how did you remember this information? Lu Yongchang shrugged. Is this difficult? Mao Jingji. Excuse me. Farewell. Seemingly not noticing Mao Jingji's strange expression, Lu Yongchang said to himself, By the way, there are also two gene fragments, and I will tell you about them. Professor. Zero's voice interrupted Lu Yongchang's words. 
The fleet is about to arrive at the preset landing point. Lu Yongchang frowned slightly. So fast. What's the status of the manufacturing of exoskeleton armor and anti-German suits? Preliminary production has been completed, which is enough to supply the first batch of landing personnel. Zero responded quickly. Where's the Zuan number two renovation project? Some starships have been renovated. Huh? Lu Yongchang exhaled forcefully and glanced at the gene fragment data beside him with some confusion. On one side is the first landing command mission of Dawn Star. On the other side, there is the equally important genetic project. Professor, you go and command the landing mission first. Mao Jingji said with a smile. It'll be fine if I'm here. Li Yongchang frowned tightly and said nothing. Suddenly, his frown relaxed. Where is Fong Su? He asked softly with a smile in his eyes. Among the stars, the huge human fleet finally successfully arrived at its destination. Dawn Star. Under the illumination of the host star, the surface of Dawn shows a reddish-brown color similar to Mars. Inside the Earth Command Center, Fong Su stood on the podium, looking at the holographic projection directly in front of him with a depressed expression. Avenging private revenge. This is definitely avenging private revenge. Fong Su murmured to himself. Academician Fong. He Bilin's voice came from the side. What are you talking about? He Bin Lin. Let me tell you. Just when Fong Su was about to find someone to talk to about his experience, a clear cough came from the other side. Fong Su's expression froze suddenly. He heard it. That was Su Yutong's voice. Academician Fong? He Bilin's eyes were even more confused. No, it's nothing. Fong Su twitched the corner of his mouth, showed a stiff smile, and skillfully changed the subject. By the way, how far are we from the Dawn Star? He Bilin subconsciously turned his head and glanced at the holographic image in front of his seat. 370,000 kilometers. We'll arrive at the landing point soon. Fong Su nodded and reached out to grab the microphone on the podium. Attention all units. The first landing mission on Dawn Star is about to begin. Double check the accompanying supplies. Especially the exoskeleton armor and medical bay. Remember? On Dawn, the exoskeleton armor and medical cabin are the equipment you need to survive. Earth, belly cabin. The modified Zuin-2 ships were neatly arranged in the hangar. Inside one of the ships, Zuin-2, Hong Fan glanced at the deep sea cabin behind him and took a deep breath. As members of the First Fleet Command, they do not have to fight on the front line of the war, but they cannot shirk this kind of landing mission. On the one hand, a landing fleet needs several experienced navigators. On the other hand, the surface conditions are complex and the commander is accompanying them which can greatly increase the emergency response capabilities of the landing fleet. But the reason why Hong Fan sighed was definitely not because of this landing mission. Rather, as the captain, Bai Ishuan was injured during the exoskeleton armor test and was unable to perform the landing mission for a short time. Therefore, he was forced to serve as the captain of the landing team. He tried hard to imitate Bai Ishuan's accent and gave orders. All of them. Report the inspection results. Report. The exoskeleton armor is in good condition. The deep sea cabin is in normal working condition. In the communication channel, report sounded in his ears. Hong Fan looked at the holographic projection with a serious expression. After repeatedly confirming that there were no mistakes, he let out a long sigh of relief. His originally stern expression also relaxed. He raised his hand to wipe the sweat on his forehead and complained to Xiao Wei beside him. I don't know when Team White will recover. I don't want to do this captain's job for a day anymore. Chapter 396 Hormones and Gene Editing Behind him, Andrew laughed and interjected. Team Hong, I don't remember you saying that when the white team was here. Yes. Bruno also joked. Captain Hong, I still like your unruly look at that time. The two men's teasing made Hong Fan look bitter. I, I didn't expect this thing to be so troublesome. The next moment, Fong Su's voice came from the communication device. Attention all units. The fleet has arrived at the preset landing point. And the first landing mission is about to begin. Everyone, please be safe. May the glory of mankind last forever. Hong Fan looked solemn and quickly issued the order. Attention all units. Enter the deep sea chamber immediately. Repeat. Enter the deep sea chamber immediately. After the order was given, he took the lead into the deep sea cabin added behind him. Originally, Zuin 2, which was mainly used for interplanetary navigation, did not have a deep sea cabin inside. However, Due to the high gravity of Dawn Star, and considering that the overload during navigation may exceed the endurance limit of some crew members, 
Lu Yongchang ordered a batch of Zuan Tu to be modified. In the deep sea cabin, the light yellow deep sea liquid level slowly rose. Bruno's voice came from the communication channel. Team Hong, why is Academician Fong commanding the landing operation this time? Normally speaking, isn't Professor Lu commanding the first landing operation? Hong Fan replied calmly. Generally, there are only two possibilities in this situation. First, Professor Lu is temporarily busy. Second, what kind of trick did Fong Su bring out again? Bruno, the pale yellow deep sea liquid spread over his neck, stopping him from further questioning. The holographic projection lit up in front of Hong Fan's eyes. It has been detected that all personnel have entered the deep sea cabin. Do you want to start the landing operation? Hong Fan didn't hesitate at all and issued the order through the brainwave reading device. A slight tremor came from the soles of my feet. Pulled by the hook rope, Zuan number two slowly left the queue and sailed towards the port not far away. Biological shipboard laboratory. Lu Yongchang picked up the space food bag on the side and took a sip of the pure water inside. Just now, he and Mao Jingzi screened these gene fragments again. After excluding four gene fragments again, only the last five gene fragments were left in front of their eyes. Next, it's my old job, Mao Jingzi said somewhat helplessly. Just like when developing biological enzymes, in order for Earth organisms to adapt to this gene, they need to compile the gene fragments of Proxima Centauri organisms into the genes of Earth organisms. The compiled gene fragment is then inserted into the universally, coli, according to the sporadic research results left by the Proxima Centauri civilization. These magna can secrete several unique hormones. The function of these hormones is simple. Increase muscle strength throughout the body. Increase blood vessel wall thickness. And increase bone hardness. The main reason why these huge magna can withstand the gravity of Proxima Centauri B is precisely these magical hormones. Still have a question, Mao Jingji said while assigning work to the scientific researchers in the laboratory. The mesh-like membrane that protects internal organs. This thing is much riskier. And it's not something that simple hormones can fix. Lu Yongchang frowned and nodded thoughtfully. It is indeed as Mao Jingji said. In order to make this special mesh-like membrane grow on the surface of human internal organs, it is necessary to genetically edit the human body. Let's start with the guinea pig. Lu Yongchang didn't have any good method, so he could only spread his hands and said, Extract this part of Magna's genes, modify it, and use the virus to gene edit the mice. We will then fine-tune these genes appropriately based on the symptoms, so that they can adapt to the bodies of earthly organisms as much as possible. Presumably, this time it is another bloody storm of mice. After determining the direction of the next experiment, the scientific researchers in the entire biological laboratory were divided into two distinct groups. One group is composed of some scientific researchers with lower scientific research standards. They are mainly responsible for the genetic compilation of E. coli, as well as the production and testing of hormones. The other group is senior scientific researchers headed by Lu Yongchang and Mao Jingji. What they have to do is to gene edit each mouse. The purpose of the experiment is naturally to transplant Magna's visceral mesh-like membrane properties into humans. Zuan two ships streaked across the blue-purple sky, and the high-temperature plasma ejected by the Hall Propulsion Unit formed obvious flight trajectories in the sky. Successfully entered the atmosphere. The deep-sea chamber lock has been released. Cleaning up deep-sea fluids. Warm reminder, please keep your exoskeleton armor and medical base safe. The text in the holographic projection gradually faded away, and the sealed deep-sea cabin door quietly opened. Hong Fan struggled to climb out of the deep-sea cabin. He trudged to the exoskeleton armor on the side. There was no hesitation. He turned his back, stepped on the shoes of the exoskeleton armor with his feet, and then leaned his heavy body against the exoskeleton armor behind him. Almost at the same time, the back armor and head and neck protection device quickly moved towards Hong Fan's body. After being completely fitted, the spine-like armor on the limb auxiliary devices and back armor also moved quickly. In just a few seconds, the entire set of semi-enveloping armor was successfully put on Hong Fan. Call! As the work indicator light came on, and the subtle sounds of motors and mechanical devices operating came, he breathed a sigh of relief. The heaviness in various parts of the body completely dissipated at this moment. However, upon closer inspection, there was still a slight feeling of swelling in the internal organs. Click! 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 The sound of the deep sea cabin door opening came from beside me, looking at his teammates with different expressions in the deep sea cabin. Hong Fan chuckled. His consciousness moved slightly, and he controlled the exoskeleton armor and walked aside. With the assistance of the exoskeleton armor, he easily lifted several sets of exoskeleton armors to the crowd 
and signaled to them with his eyes. Tens of seconds later, Thanks, Xiaowani, who had put on the exoskeleton armor, breathed a sigh of relief and thanked Hong Fan softly. You're welcome. Hong Fan walked to his seat with heavy but brisk steps. It was heavy, naturally, because every step made a dull sound on the deck of Zuan Tu. Briskness refers to Hong Fan's movements, which appear extremely relaxed and comfortable. We are still ten minutes away from our destination, Hong Fan said in a deep voice. Be prepared. We're almost landing. Chapter 397 Landing on Dawn Star Ten minutes later, a line of Chinese characters appeared on the holographic projection on the Zuan 2 console, about to arrive at the scheduled landing point. Landing procedure is starting. There was a slight tremor on the deck under the feet, and the height of the starship also began to decrease. The landing site was chosen to be the location of the first detector of vast expanse of water lined with reefs. The reason is also very simple. When there is a choice, Building a city close to water has been the survival law of human beings since ancient times. Under the control of the onboard computer, Zuan two ships lined up in a neat formation, heading towards the land next to the water in turn. The land is not very flat, perhaps due to the influence of water erosion. It is full of uneven and rounded rocks. But this did not affect the landing of Zuan two at all. After temporary modification, several high-power laser cannons and electromagnetic cannons were installed at the bottom of Zuan two. TSK. TSK! TSK! Hong Fan sat in the main driver's seat, looking at the scene of constant explosions below, and said in wonder, It's only now that we can see such a scene. How could we have had this technology before? Bruno behind him also showed some emotion in his eyes. Yes! I remember that before Ross 154 made its first landing, the probes almost ran out of fuel in order to choose a suitable landing site. Hong Fan was stunned for a moment. And then he remembered the scene at that time and couldn't help but burst out laughing. For a time, the starship was filled with a cheerful atmosphere. The originally rugged ground became regularized under the bombardment of the Zuan 2 fleet. A slight vibration came from the soles of my feet. Successfully landed, a line of faint text appeared in front of everyone. Hong Fan took a deep breath and stood up from the chair easily with the help of the exoskeleton armor. Everyone, it's time for us to prepare for landing. As he spoke, he walked towards the corner of the cabin. Over there, everyone's space suits are neatly placed. Because of the exoskeleton armor and anti-German suit, all space suits are one size larger. Hong Fan expertly put on the enlarged version of the space suit. Looking at his bloated teammates, he smiled bitterly and shook his head. Unexpectedly, hundreds of years have passed, and the space suit has returned to its original appearance. Seeing that everyone had finished dressing, he took the lead and walked towards the airlock set up behind Zuan 2. At the same time, the belly hatch of each Zuan 2 slowly opened. In the huge cabin, there are neatly arranged robots and various engineering facilities. The next moment, these robots took steps towards the wild world outside the cabin. Under the gravity of 1.9G, these already heavy robots become more solid. Bang! A dull voice sounded. A slight puff of dust rose from the ground and fell into the smooth Zuan number 2 cabin. The first footprints on Dawn Star came from a robot. Outside Zuin number two, ripples appeared on the calm water. Yellow and reddish brown dust was flying in all directions. Got windy. The wind came very suddenly. The originally quiet and peaceful scenery was gradually submerged in the increasingly dense dust. Pressure balanced. A gentle female voice sounded in everyone's helmet. As the captain of the landing team, he naturally shoulders the heavy duty of opening the hatch. Hong Fan looked at the closed hatch in front of him and his originally gentle heart suddenly started beating violently. Although he had seen the scene outside the door in the image data sent back by the detector, when he was actually in front of him, he still felt a trace of uneasiness, and uneasiness uncontrollably in his heart. It is a strange world after all. Team Hong? Seemingly sensing something strange about Hong Fan, Andrew asked softly in the team communication channel. Hong Fan pursed his lips hard, shook his head and said, I'm fine. I'm just a little... Not used to this role. He chuckled and laughed at himself. I'm really not the material to be the captain. As he spoke, he took a deep breath and reached out to pull down the gate on the side. The vibration of the mechanical transmission device is continuously transmitted from the soles of the feet. The thick door in front of him slowly opened. A fine dust came and lightly hit Hong Fan's transparent mask, making a rustling sound. It seems beautiful. But? Is the impact of the sand and dust a little too loud? Is this the impact sound that sand can make? On Earth, this would be the sound made by small gravel placed on the windshield. 
In less than a second, Hong Fan realized the problem. He breathed slightly and shouted in a low voice. What is the wind speed outside now? Andrew also heard the rustling sound coming from the helmet visor. He quickly raised his right hand and glanced at the watch on his hand. Current wind speed, 15 kilometers per hour. Only 15 kilometers per hour. Andrew subconsciously took a step back and his tone became urgent. Level 3 breeze. Level 3 breeze. With wind speeds of 12 to 19 kilometers per hour. Can only cause slight effects of leaves swaying in the wind and flags unfurling. But now. 15 kilometers per hour? Hong Fan froze on the spot and asked in surprise. How come it's only 15 kilometers per hour? With the current lethality of the sand and dust. Hong Fan believes that wind speeds of 50 kilometers per hour are possible. Let alone 15 kilometers per hour. Laugh. Before Andrew could reply, a slight electric sound sounded in everyone's earphones. The next moment, the signal from Earth squeezed into the communication channel. Attention all units. Fong Su's extremely serious voice sounded on the communication channel. Currently, the outside wind speed is 15 kilometers per hour. Since Dawn's atmosphere is much denser than Earth's, the destructive power of the storm will be greatly increased. Based on the calculation of zero, once the wind speed exceeds 40 kilometers per hour, your lives will be in danger. Next, the first version of the Dawn Star Survival Manual and weather forecast information will be transmitted to you. Be sure to pay attention. Fong Su's voice became more solemn in the communication device. Because this is a brand new planet, our weather prediction data may be slightly biased in the absence of historical observational data. As he finished speaking, the watch on Hong Fan's wrist vibrated slightly. Dawn Star Survival Manual Version 1.0 He swallowed softly. Wind speeds of 40 kilometers per hour can be life-threatening. Whether on Earth, Mars, Proxima B or Ross 2. He has never encountered such a situation. Captain Hong, shall we leave now? Andrew asked softly in the communication channel. Should we wait until the wind calms down? Hong Fan did not respond to Andrew's inquiry immediately. He looked at his watch again and reached out to open the real-time weather forecast. Chapter 398 Mineral Exploration TSK Hong Fan's face suddenly turned ugly. He clicked his tongue lightly and said, Get ready to go. He reached out to close his watch and said in a deep voice, The first batch of robots to land are all engaged in infrastructure construction. So our mission is simple. Before the second batch of mining robots land, we need to complete on-site exploration of the suspected mineral area. Seeing his teammates nodding, he spoke again. We have been assigned a total of 10 exploration areas. I looked at the satellite map just now. These 10 exploration areas are located between two strong wind belts. According to weather forecast data, the wind speed between these two strong wind belts will remain at around 20 kilometers per hour in the next week. It's almost impossible to wait for the wind to slow down. So, Hong Fan glanced around. Hurry up and set off immediately. Yes. Within the communication device, the responses of several teammates rang out. As the captain, Hong Fan took the lead in walking toward the open hatch. As soon as he stuck his head out of the hatch, Hong Fan was deeply aware of the special thing about Dawn Star. Endless yellow sand is flying all over the sky under the influence of the level 3 breeze, covering the entire blue-purple sky. The originally peaceful and peaceful scenery completely disappeared from their sight. Listening to the constant crackling sounds coming from the glass mask, Hong Fan's face became a little ugly again because of the existence of Zun 2. Even if the airlock door is opened, what they just felt is not half as powerful as the real wind and sand. WTF. The size of Andrew and Bruno came from the communication device. When we landed just now, there was no movement. Why is there such a strong wind all of a sudden? Hong Fan responded in a faint tone. Is it big? Don't forget. It's just a breeze. Everyone in the communication channel fell silent. Finally, it was Hong Fan who broke the silent atmosphere. He walked out of the hatch with steady steps. A clearly felt push came from the side of his body, trying to push his body to fall to the other side. That is the power of nature from Dawn Star. His body swayed slightly. But in the next moment, his body stood firmly on the surface of Dawn Star, which was covered with gravel and gravel. A line of text flashed across the helmet equipped with the AR display function. Exoskeleton armor power output, 10%. Just one line of text directly emboldened Hong Fan. Where did this go? A mere level 3 breeze was not enough for him to see. Let's go! Hong Fan waved his hand, his voice full of heroism. Go and drive the planetary landing vehicle with this exoskeleton armor. There is no place in the world that we cannot go. As he spoke, 
he stepped forward and walked towards the open cabin on the side of Zuan too. Andrew and the others looked at Hong Fan standing in the wind and sand with strange expressions. For a moment, they didn't know what kind of stimulation their captain had received. How come you are so confident that you are so confident? But the next moment, after feeling the strong support provided by the exoskeleton armor and seeing that line of faint text, a relieved smile appeared on everyone's face. Huh? That's it? A few minutes later, two huge planetary landing vehicles flew out of the cabin of Zuan 2, facing the wind and sand in the sky, and headed towards the first destination, Biology Laboratory. At this time, Lu Yongchang naturally didn't know what happened on Dawn Star. All his thoughts were focused on the holographic projection in front of him. Call! Lu Yongchang breathed a long sigh of relief and reached out to rub his sore eyes. My part of the job is done! What about you? He turned to look at the experimental table aside. Over there, more than a dozen scientific researchers were operating the console in front of them, with their brows furrowed and sweating profusely. Now comes the first step of the experiment. It is also the most important step. They need to extract the gene fragment that controls the growth of reticular membranes in Magna's internal organs. Obviously, this job is not easy to accomplish. Otherwise, these researchers would not be so exhausted. Professor, Mao Jingzi raised his hand to wipe the sweat from his forehead and smiled bitterly. You are too fast! Lu Yongchang shrugged and raised his hand to wave. The next moment, the numerous holographic projection images in front of Mao Jingzi and others were instantly reduced by less than half. I'll help you complete part of it, Lu Yongchang said briefly, and buried his head in the experimental table in front of him again. Note, current wind speed, 18 kilometers per hour. The watch vibrated slightly. A message appeared simultaneously in the holographic projection above the console. Hong Fan didn't pay attention to the wind speed in front of him, and continued to concentrate on operating the planetary landing vehicle. The fully enclosed planetary landing vehicle has a complete internal circulation system. Therefore, they do not need to wear full spacesuits. A planetary landing vehicle that uses a small fusion reactor as its power source will obviously not be hindered by this. Small. Wind resistance. Under the driving of Hong Fan, the huge planetary landing vehicle crossed the rugged terrain and drove in a straight line towards the destination. Woohoo! Next to him, Bruno's excited shout came. This is the correct way to land on the planet! Hong Fan glanced to the side. I saw Bruno waving his right hand and loudly celebrating with Andrew the atmosphere of freedom that was different from that in the starship. Originally, Hong Fan should have participated in this celebration. But now, as the captain, he could only suppress the excitement in his heart and said in a deep voice, There are thousands of roads. Safety comes first. Irregular driving makes loved ones burst into tears. You too. Sit down in your seats. If you continue to act like this, I will report you to the police and I will put you in confinement for two days. Andrew, Bruno, the two of them laughed sarcastically and sat back in their seats. Ahem, Captain Hong, don't bother me. What greeted him was a glare from Hong Fan. Andrew silently corrected his sitting posture. Seeing this, Bruno could only suppress his slightly excited thoughts. Team Hong, I noticed that you look a bit like Team White now. Bruno muttered under his breath. Hong Fan shrugged and said helplessly, Maybe this is what it feels like to be a captain. Distance to destination, one kilometer. In the holographic projection, a line of small words flashed. Everyone, be serious. Hong Fan looked solemn. The first exploration area is about to arrive. Chapter 399 Hematite? Hong Fan's words made everyone stop their playful movements. The expressions on the faces of Andrew and Bruno quickly became serious. You can have some fun and relax in Zuan 2 or the planetary landing vehicle. But when they need to face this completely unfamiliar planet, no one dares to relax their vigilance. After all, no one knows what weird things will exist on this super-earth, be it living or non-living things. When you don't know the details of the other person, even a small particle of dust may lead to a person's death. As the numbers in the holographic image continue to get smaller, the scenery outside has also changed slightly. In the yellow-brown rock wall, some silver-white substances with metallic luster gradually appeared. Hong Fan, who was in the driver's seat, raised his eyebrows. These things outside should be the iron or elements detected by the detector. There is no oxygen in the atmosphere. But there are some benefits. At least it saves us the smelting process. Siawani on the side heard this. Chuckled and added. There may be elemental nickel ore. Don't forget our experience mining in the asteroid belt. Hong Fan was stunned for a moment. And a look of nostalgia suddenly appeared in his eyes. Between words. 
the speed of the planetary landing vehicle began to gradually slow down. Lines of faint text appeared in front of everyone. Arrive soon at destination. Current outside wind speed, 18 kilometers per hour. Please prepare to leave the cabin. When the vehicle stopped, Hong Fen reached out to unbuckle the seat belt and picked up the helmet hanging aside. Click! Laugh! As the helmet buckle clicked, a burst of air flow sounded in his ears. The internal circulation system of the space suit has been activated. Current oxygen remaining, 99%. Hong Fan glanced at the AR display on his helmet, and after confirming that there was nothing unusual about the spacesuit, he opened the team's communication channel. All of them are here to report their own situation. Ten minutes later, the hatches on the sides of the two planetary landing vehicles slowly opened. A bloated crew member, with the help of exoskeleton armor, walked out of it with extremely brisk steps. Exoskeleton armor power output, 15%. Faint Chinese characters appeared in front of everyone. Everyone! Hong Fan's voice came over the communication channel. Hurry up and confirm the types of surface minerals first. And then carry out deep drilling. As he spoke, he took the lead and walked to a rock wall glowing with silvery white light. After a simple test, his eyes showed a bit of joy. It is indeed elemental iron ore. I just don't know how many reserves there are. Team Hong! Andrew's hesitant voice came from the communication channel. Without oxygen, there should be no hematite. Right. Of course. Hong Fan responded directly without thinking. Then, Andrew's voice became more and more weird. You'd better come over and take a look. Hong Fan raised his eyebrows slightly. What? Don't ever tell me that you discovered a hematite vein. Andrew, if there is nothing wrong with the testing equipment, this is indeed hematite. And, Andrew's voice paused, there seems to be a lot of hematite. And there is even a small amount of hematite in the sand and dust that can be seen everywhere. Hong Fan. He suddenly raised his head and looked at the dust in the sky. The main color is still yellow. But if you look closely, you can see that there is indeed a bit of reddish brown in this strong yellow. His. Hong Fan took a breath. Took three steps and two steps at a time. And quickly ran to Andrew's side. Andrew was squatting in the corner next to the rock wall. Carefully observing the situation on the surface. Seeing Hong Fan arriving. Andrew quickly stood up. Captain Hong, take a look. You can't see much on the surface. But if you dig deeper, the reddish-brown color becomes heavier the deeper you go. Hong Fan didn't speak, but quickly squatted down and inspected a small hole dug by Andrew. The pit is not deep. The depth is probably about 20 centimeters. But it can be clearly seen that under the yellow sand cover, there are more and more reddish-brown gravels. He carefully took out a little reddish-brown substance from the small pit and released it into the detection equipment beside him. It didn't take long for the test results to appear on his watch. Fei 203. Hematite. Looking at the test results in front of him, he fell into silence. It was outrageous. But the test results were right in front of me. Suddenly, Hong Fan seemed to remember something. He quickly walked to the pile of tools aside, and picked up an engineering shovel made of high-strength alloy. He randomly picked a place, controlled the exoskeleton armor, and shoveled it down hard. The power output value of the exoskeleton armor surged instantly. The shovel sank into the ground easily. Uh-huh. He pulled out the shovel hard and brought out part of the sand from the ground. Reddish brown again. Seeing Hong Fan's unusual movements, the team members also realized the problem and picked up the engineer shovel one after another to imitate him. One place. Two places. Three places. Reddish brown. All reddish brown. Hong Fan dropped the engineering shovel in his hand and took a deep breath of the air in his helmet. Okay. As soon as the exploration work started, a problem was discovered. Hematite is common. Countless traces of hematite can be seen on the Earth, on Mars, and even in the supermoon overhead. But on this planet, on the dawn star without oxygen, hematite is absolutely impossible to exist. But now, so much hematite is in front of them. In Hong Fan's view, this can only explain one problem. Once upon a time, there was oxygen on this dawn star. What about oxygen? There is oxygen, water, suitable temperature, and magnetic field. This is simply the perfect place to give birth to life. But the current dawn star is extremely desolate. What happened in the middle? Could there be civilization relics hidden somewhere on the dawn star? Even? Alien creatures? Questions appeared in his mind like a revolving lantern. Hong Fan felt a chill on his back. Without any hesitation, he raised his wrist and pressed a button on the watch. A miniature holographic projection is projected from the watch. Perhaps because of the strong wind and sand. The holographic projection was not very clear. 
and the picture was even slightly torn. But everyone present paid no attention to this inconsequential question. They all gathered around Hong Fan and looked nervously at the miniature holographic image in front of them. Hong Fan skillfully operated a few buttons and sent a help signal to the Earth above the dawn star. Everyone, return to the planetary landing vehicle immediately. After issuing the help signal, Hong Fan issued the order in a deep voice. Chapter 400 Hematite from Luminius On an alien planet, Hong Fan, as the captain, carries the lives of all team members on his shoulders. Even if the possibility of encountering danger is only 0.01%, he must choose the most prudent approach. Under Hong Fan's order, several team members ran nervously towards the planetary landing vehicle not far away. As for Hong Fan, he followed slowly at the back of the team, holding the engineering shovel he had just thrown on the ground in his hand, and vigilantly observing the surrounding rock walls and sand. After all the team members walked into the door of the planetary landing vehicle, he controlled the mechanical exoskeleton and ran quickly towards the open door. During this period, he held the engineer's shovel tightly in his hand, for fear of any unexpected situation. After all, that's how it's done in movies and TV series. When the captain returns to the safe zone, some surprises often occur. Then, it's the classic Calabash baby saving grandpa scene. He doesn't want to encounter such a scene. Hong Fan looked at his surroundings vigilantly while thinking wildly in his mind. Fortunately, the road was smooth and there was nothing unusual except for the yellow sand all over the sky. He kicked off his right leg fiercely. And with the help of the exoskeleton armor, Hong Fan directly crossed the last three meters and entered the planetary landing vehicle. Close the hatch! The moment the words fell, the hatch of the same model, as the starship slowly fell, making a dull sound. The thick hatch gives everyone a sense of security. In the communication device, only the sound of slightly rapid breathing was left. The pressure has stabilized. A gentle female voice sounded in the helmet. Hong Fan breathed a long sigh of relief, chuckled and said, Let's go to the disinfection room. Next, let's wait for the news from the Earth. Above the dawn star, Earth, command center, Fong Su frowned and looked at the huge holographic projection with red warnings all over the screen in front of him. Hematite, he murmured to himself. How could there be hematite on Dawn Star? Yes, it's not just Hong Fan and his team. Almost every team responsible for resource exploration sent similar reports. There is a large amount of hematite distributed underground on Dawn Star. This is not in line with human cognition at all. Could it be? Did oxygen really exist before Dawn Star? Was there even life on this desolate planet? For a moment, Fong Su was confused. Before there is a definite answer, the infrastructure work that has just started on the surface of Dawn Star has been completely stopped. The exploration team scattered in various areas also returned to the relatively safe planetary landing vehicle. Waiting for instructions from Earth, Fong Su, who had not come to a conclusion after thinking for a while, turned to the scientific researchers on the side and asked, Is Fong Yuan Liang here? Coming! A hurried male voice came from the gate of the command center. The middle-aged man gasped and ran to Fong Su in a hurry. Academician Fong, are you looking for me? Fong Su nodded slightly and gestured to the holographic projection directly in front of him with his eyes. You are studying the mineral resources of the universe. Let's see what is going on. The middle-aged man didn't have time to catch his breath and quickly looked forward. Just a glance. He widened his eyes. A hematite? How can it be? Seeing Feng Yuan Liang who had the same reaction as himself, Fong Su shook his head helplessly. Academician Feng, is it possible for Hematite to appear on the current Dawn Star? Impossible. Absolutely impossible. Without any hesitation, Feng Yuan Liang directly denied it. Then, what about before? Hearing this, Feng Yuan Liang suddenly hesitated. Hiss. You mean, there was oxygen in the previous Dawn Star? Based on various current data, this possibility is not high. Unlike Mars and Pharos 1, Dawn's gravity is strong enough to retain its atmosphere. What's more, we haven't found any traces of oxygen so far. Fong Yuan Liang paused. Except for these hematites. This is strange. Fong Su reached out and rubbed his eyebrows, murmuring to himself. It can't be possible. These hematite ores must have floated here from outer space. The speaker has no intention. The listener has intention. Feng Yuanliang's confused eyes instantly brightened. He clapped his hands suddenly, looking extremely excited. Academician Fong, you are right. Fong Su, I, what did I say? It floated here from outer space. The source of these hematites is probably the lightsat one. After some explanation, 
Fong Su nodded thoughtfully. What you mean is that when the atmosphere of Pheasant 1 was relatively intact, the violent storm inside it raised countless hematite powders. And these powders traveled more than 100,000 kilometers and fell into the atmosphere of Dawn Star? Feng Yuan Yang nodded repeatedly. Yes, this is the process. Academician Fong. Look. He stretched out his hand and dragged a holographic projection. We assume that Guangzhou 1 had a relatively complete atmosphere before. Under the strong gravitational pull of Dawn Star, its atmosphere is enough to produce extremely powerful storms. Similar phenomena have been discovered in human history. Back then, humans discovered hematite on the surface of the moon. It's incredible. Right. Feng Yuan Liang sighed, with a hint of emotion in his eyes. How could hematite appear on the lunar surface without any atmosphere? The reason behind it is actually very simple. Strong solar wind blows oxygen from the Earth's surface to the moon, thus forming hematite. Fong Su moved slightly and quickly said, Zero, simulate it, and see if such a situation is possible on Dawn Star. A few minutes later, the scene described by Feng Yuan Lian appeared in the holographic projection. Then, how to prove the correctness of this speculation? Fong Su asked softly. In the absence of conclusive evidence, speculation can only be speculation. Simple. Feng Yuan Lian pondered for a moment, and a light flashed in his eyes. Let these exploratory teams do the deep drilling work. If nothing else, the hematite will be evenly distributed at a certain depth. Fong Su thought for a moment and suddenly realized. Indeed, under the influence of the powerful storm of Dawn Star, hematite powder will inevitably be evenly distributed around the world. The so-called specific depth depends on the completeness of the atmosphere of photomons. When the atmosphere of photomons is loose enough to set off a strong enough storm, these hematite powders, like sourceless water, will eventually be buried under the yellow sand. Only a small amount of hematite powder will be lifted up by powerful storms and dispersed in the atmosphere. Chapter 401 Deep Drilling Sampling Fong Su pondered for a moment, then reached out and opened the public communication channel on the console. Attention all exploration teams! Based on our comprehensive considerations, the hematite you discovered is very likely to come from photomons. However, this is just an inference based on current information. I need you to conduct a deep drilling sampling operation immediately and send the drilling sampling results to Earth. Repeat. Carry out deep drilling sampling work immediately. This task has the highest priority. After speaking, Fong Su cut off the communication, then turned to look at Feng Yuan Liang beside him. Now! Just wait patiently for the drilling results of these exploration teams. Feng Yuan Liang nodded slightly and murmured in a low voice. I hope this is the result. If the actual drilling results don't match the predictions, that's all the fun. Dawn Star. Inside the planetary landing vehicle, the atmosphere was extremely solemn. Ding dong. A crisp reminder sounded in the cabin, and a line of faint text slowly appeared in front of everyone's eyes. Current outside wind speed, 20 kilometers per hour. A flash of disappointment flashed in Hong Fan's eyes. Not the information he wanted to see. Although wind speed information is also critical. At present, the mystery of hematite is the focus of all team members. Captain Hong, do you think it's possible on this planet? Bruno's voice came from behind Hong Fan. Before Hong Fan could answer, a noisy sound of electricity sounded in the communication channel. Because of the short distance, the signal is not greatly affected by interference. The fleet still uses the simplest electromagnetic wave communication to communicate with the surface. In less than a second, the sound of current decayed rapidly and Fong Su's voice came out from the communication channel. From the moon! Communication ends. It was so quiet inside the planetary landing vehicle that Hong Fan could even hear the beating of his own heart. Blanche! I don't know who it was, but let out a slight exclamation. Like a signal. This, Psy, instantly ignited the atmosphere in the planetary lander. It took a long time, but it was a false alarm. Right. Don't talk about Shingda. Come to steal. Come to deceive me an old comrade who is more than a hundred years old. Listening to the complaints around him, Hong Fan couldn't help but smile bitterly and shake his head. He didn't expect that the answer turned out to be the moon above his head, although he wanted to complain in his heart. As the captain, he could only suppress the impulse in his heart. He even needs to pour cold water on his teammates who let their guard down. Ahem, he coughed lightly, suppressing the complaints in the cabin. Please be quiet. Didn't you hear what Academician Fong said just now? As of now, these are just speculations, and there is no conclusive evidence to prove this speculation. Under Hong Fan's basin of cold water, the hot, 
atmosphere in the planetary lander gradually cooled down. Do we need to conduct drilling sampling now? Xiao Wani's voice came from the side. Hong Fan's face instantly became serious. Of course. He nodded. This is the highest priority task. It's just a matter of selection. Deep drilling sampling requires at least two people to complete. The atmosphere inside the planetary landing vehicle was once again stagnant. People cherished their lives. I'm in charge of the drilling rod part. As the captain, Hong Fan naturally took the lead and said, But I need someone to help me start the drilling machine. I'll go. Andrew grinned. Captain Hong, I'm familiar with this stuff. Hong Fan. The bad memories came flooding back. When searching for life on Mars, Andrew was in charge of controlling the drill. And he is naturally responsible for that part of the drilling rod. Although a little dirty and tired, the drilling rod is the most important part of the entire drilling work. Before the People's Federation was established, Hong Fan did not dare to let Andrew and others touch such important components. Of course, after the People's Federation was established and the construction of Mars City was completed, this combination was still the same. There is no other reason than that I am familiar with it. Okay. Hong Fan didn't say much. He said H. Lo and got up and walked towards the cabin behind the planetary landing vehicle. More than 10 minutes later, the hatch of the planetary landing vehicle opened again. Hong Fan and Andrew, who were fully armed, walked out carrying simple drilling equipment. The feeling of his feet stepping on the fine yellow sand raised Hong Fan's vigilance to the highest point. He glanced at the planetary landing vehicle behind him. On the roof of the car, the muzzles of two small laser cannons flashed with a slight blue light. Through the car window, Xiao Wani gave him an okay gesture. Hong Fan breathed a sigh of relief, and his tense muscles relaxed a lot. He randomly selected an area, squatted down, and assembled the drilling rod bit by bit. Different from the drilling equipment used on Mars, the current deep drilling equipment has completed several evolutions. While the body is lighter, the drilling efficiency is also greatly improved. Team Hong, what is the depth of the first drilling? Andrew asked in the team communication channel. Hong Fan pondered for a moment. The command center did not specify specific requirements. Let's try the depth of one meter first. If there are any problems, we can lengthen the drill rod. Andrew nodded, lowered his head, and started operating the drilling machine next to him. A few minutes later, drilling equipment is assembled. At Hong Fan's signal, Andrew carefully pressed the drilling button. The drilling rod rotates rapidly and sinks into the ground at a speed visible to the naked eye. Looking at the various data in front of him, a trace of surprise flashed across Andrew's face. Team Hong, there's very little drag on the drill pipe. Looking at the drilling rod that had sunk 50 centimeters into the surface, Hong Fan asked with a serious expression, What is the preliminary determination of the substance? At this time, the drill rod is still rapidly deepening. Most likely, it is fine gravel compacted by gravity. As soon as he finished speaking, the sinking speed of the drilling rod decreased rapidly. Andrew's eyes moved slightly. We should have hit the rock now. Wait, that's not right. Looking at the prompts that appeared on the monitor, Andrew's voice suddenly became excited. It's not just rocks. It's also elemental iron ore. Captain Hong, in addition to the nearby rock walls, there is probably a lot of metallic iron in the form of simple substances underground. Hong Fan also showed a little joy in his eyes. In the early stages of infrastructure construction, humankind's demand for iron ore was extremely huge. If this piece of iron ore exists in the form of a simple substance, if it is a rich ore, it will undoubtedly be great news for the current human civilization. Biff! Blop! Blop! The drilling equipment gradually stopped running and issued a short warning sound. The preset depth has been reached and drilling has been completed. Chapter 402 Soil with Distinct Layers Looking at the text on the helmet's AR display, Andrew quickly reached out and operated the drilling machine. The next moment, Driven by the motor, the drilling rod gradually exited the ground composed of thick gravel. With the cooperation of the two men, the drilling rod was lowered on the yellow sand. Then, Andrew carefully pressed a button. The samples in the drilling rod pour out from it, forming a one meter long, well-layered, color ribbon on the ground. It's completely consistent with Andrew's speculation. The first 60 centimeters of the sample is composed of countless fine sand and gravel and a little soil. Under the influence of 1.9 g gravity, a large amount of sand and gravel are combined with a scarce soil, and they fit together closely. The color of the sand and gravel ranges from light to dark, from yellow to reddish-brown. The reddish-brown part is naturally the hematite they discovered earlier. However, the strange thing is that the reddish-brown only occupies a part of the area. 
as the depth increases, the color of the sand and gravel changes back to its original yellow. After discovering this phenomenon, Hong Fan quickly squatted down, took out the measuring tool from the backpack behind him, and performed a simple measurement. Judging by the naked eye alone, the yellow area is composed of ordinary sand and gravel, mainly distributed at 0 to 11 centimeters and 44 to 61 centimeters underground. The reddish-brown area contains a large amount of hematite, mainly distributed 11 to 44 centimeters underground. Moreover, within this range, the hematite content gradually increases with increasing depth. Once it exceeds 44 centimeters, the hematite content will drop sharply and disappear quickly within 2 centimeters, leaving only ordinary sand and gravel. After exceeding 61 centimeters, there is no soil and fine gravel in the drilling rod. Only yellow hard stone remains. The depth continues to increase. More than 80 centimeters. Some silver white substances with a metallic luster appeared in the stone. As the depth increases, the content of silvery white substances increases significantly. After some simple testing, Hong Fan determined the composition of the silver white substance, elemental iron. Hong Fan didn't hesitate and sent all the collected information directly to Earth. Be prepared to use a two meter drill rod. Hong Fan greeted Andrew then reached out and grabbed the drilling rod on the ground, ready to start assembly work. Suddenly, there was a slight sound of electricity coming from the communication equipment. Hey! 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 Can you hear me? Hong Fan! Can you hear me? It was Fan Su's voice. A trace of surprise flashed in Hong Fan's eyes. He stopped what he was doing and quickly switched the communication channel. Academician Fong! I can hear you! Hong Fan! We have already seen the uploaded drilling results. Now, Fonsu paused. Let Academician Fong Yuan Liang tell you. Hello, Comrade Hong Fan. I am Fong Yuan Liang. A strange voice came from the communication channel. The main research direction is the mineral resources of the universe. Hong Fan was stunned for a moment, then hurriedly greeted him in a respectful tone. Hello, Academician Fong. Fong Yuan Liang said bluntly. At critical moments, I won't say any polite words. Next, you need to change the area and conduct drilling sampling work again. The drilling depth is still one meter. Hong Fan nodded and without asking any questions, he directly grabbed the drilling rod on the ground, waved to Andrew and walked towards the next sampling point. Earth, inside the biological laboratory. Next, we need to compile Magna's related genes again. Lu Yongchang's voice showed a little tiredness. The work in this area is relatively simple, but it is a bit cumbersome. Academicians with experience in the research and development of longevity enzymes would like to signal that this task will be left to you. I need to take a little break. Mao Xingji nodded slightly to express his understanding. Professor, I will call you after this work is completed. Lu Yongchang briefly explained the precautions in genetic compilation and then prepared to turn around and leave. Professor Lu. Suddenly, there was a burst of excited cheers in the distance. A scientific researcher ran to Lu Yongchang excitedly with a red face and said in a hurried tone, Professor, it's successful. We succeeded. What? Lu Yongchang had not yet recovered from his previous work, and couldn't help but asked in a daze, What succeeded? We successfully implanted the first gene into E. coli. The researcher excitedly explained, According to the information of the Proxima Centauri civilization, the main function of this gene is to strengthen Magna's heart muscles. The fatigue in Lu Yongchang's eyes disappeared instantly. He stretched out his hand and rubbed his stiff face, cheered up and asked, Has the corresponding hormone been detected? The scientific researchers nodded repeatedly. It has been discovered. However, it has not been purified and no biological experiments have been conducted. So it is not yet clear whether its effect meets our needs. Lu Yongchang turned to look at Mao Jingji and winked at him. Then, he raised his hand and said H, low to Mao Jingji. Let's go and take a look. If possible. We would have done the first set of experiments now. When Mao Jingji heard this, his wry smile deepened. Professor, didn't you say you wanted to rest? Lu Yongchan shrugged. Rest? Isn't this a break? Mao Jingji. Dawn Star. The distance between sampling point number two and sampling point number one is 50 meters. With their first drilling experience, Andrew and Hong Fan became more and more proficient in their operations. With the cooperation of the two, the second tube of samples soon appeared in front of everyone. Looking at the sample that was almost the same as the first two, Fong Yuliang's excited voice came from the communication device. Hong Fan, measure the corresponding data. Hong Fan quickly squatted down, took out the tools, and started measuring. 
The yellow areas are 0 to 9 centimeters and 39 to 57 centimeters respectively. Red zone, 9 to 39 centimeters. While measuring, he reported one piece of data on the public communication channel. 57 to 79 centimeters. Most of them are ordinary rocks. After 79 centimeters, the content of elemental iron increases rapidly. There was silence in the communication channel for a moment. Call. Feng Yuan Lian took a few deep breaths, suppressed the excitement in his heart, and said in a deep voice, The number of samples is currently insufficient, so continue to explore at different points. Next, we need to observe the sampling results of other or prospectors. You can just upload the relevant data directly. Hong Fan nodded, subconsciously stood up, and put his hand on the rock wall beside him. Sway, sway, sway. A fine puff of dust fell from the rock wall. This scene was completely recorded by the camera carried by Hong Fan. Chapter 403 The Storm is Coming Feng Yuan Liang, who was originally about to cut off communication, suddenly froze in place after seeing this scene. His eyes widened slightly, and he shouted urgently, Don't move! Hong Fan, who was on Dawn Star, was just about to move his left hand that was propped on the rock wall when he heard the voice coming from the communication device and his body suddenly trembled slightly. But his good personal qualities allowed him to calm down quickly. He kept his original movements, his muscles tensed, his concentration high, and he lowered his voice and said, Academician foam, what happened? As he spoke, he observed the surrounding scene with the corner of his eye. Didn't find anything unusual, except for the fine sand that suddenly slipped off the stone wall and went with the wind. Hong Fan's eyes suddenly showed some confusion. Even Fong Su on the earth, looked at Feng Yuan Yang, who was holding the microphone next to him, with a puzzled look on his face. Academician Feng? Feng Yuan Yang said softly. Hong Fan, please remove your hand first. Slower. Aim the camera at the rock wall. Faced with Feng Yuan Yang's request, Hong Fan naturally complied with it. The departure of his left hand naturally brought down a piece of fine yellow sand. Visible to the naked eye, there is a small pit full of holes on the already uneven rock wall. What a serious weathering phenomenon! Feng Yuan Yang muttered to himself in the communication device. Hong Fan suddenly breathed a sigh of relief. I thought something had happened, but it turned out to be just weathering. He waved his hand nonchalantly and said carelessly, Academician Feng, with such a strong wind on Dawn Star, it is normal for the weathering phenomenon to be serious. Unlike Hong Fan, Feng Yuan Yang's voice was extremely solemn. No! He softly denied Hong Fan's words. Such a serious weathering phenomenon is not something the current wind can handle. There was dead silence in the communication device. What? What do you mean? Hong Fan admitted that he started to panic. What do you mean it can't be done with just a little wind? Feng Yuan Liang pondered for a moment and said again. Adjust the lens to wide-angle mode and let me see the landforms near you. Hong Fan hurriedly followed suit. This mine is located in a long and narrow canyon. On both sides of the canyon are rock walls more than 10 meters high. The surface of the rock wall is filled with layers of fine and dense folds. Seeing this, Feng Yuan Liang quickly glanced at the map beside him. Before and after the canyon, there are two huge plains. Therefore, the entire canyon is like a long and narrow gap running through the uplifted mounds of earth. Hiss! With just one glance, he gasped sharply. Quick! Get back to the planetary landing vehicle! Feng Yuan Liang's voice became hoarse because he was so excited. It's very dangerous here! Hong Fan and Andrew looked at each other, without any hesitation, grabbed the drilling device beside them, and ran towards the planetary landing vehicle in the distance. With the support of exoskeleton armor, they can cover a distance of more than 3 meters with each step, but it still takes a certain amount of time to reach the planetary landing vehicle 100 meters away. Warn! A bright red message appeared on the AR display of the pair's helmet. Warning of abnormal increase in wind speed. Current wind speed, 30 kilometers per hour. Warn! Exoskeleton armor power output, 50%, 60%, 65%. Bright red numbers jumped rapidly in front of them. Every beat seemed to provoke their fragile nerves. And in Earth, a siren also sounded. Wind speed fluctuation warning. Abnormal fluctuations in wind speed near the A1 plane and A2 plane have been detected. And the original forecast plan is being adjusted. The forecast plan has been adjusted. And a large storm is expected to occur in the target area within 5 minutes. Forecast maximum wind speed, 55 kilometers per hour. There was silence in the command center. Feng Yuanliang's pupils trembled slightly. He swallowed subconsciously and murmured to himself. Quick! Run quickly! Current wind speed, 
35 km per hour. Exoskeleton armor power output, 80%. In the atmosphere, in addition to the original fine gravel, there were even some smaller rocks. The small stone hit the helmet, making a clear and loud impact. Hong Fan and Andrew were unable to move even under such strong wind. They could even clearly feel that their body's center of gravity was shaking slightly. Don't panic! Fong Su's steady voice sounded in their ears at the critical moment. There will be no problem with the helmet and spacesuit. What you have to do now is to fix your position and wait for the rescue of the planetary landing vehicle. Hong Fan glanced at the drilling equipment in his hand, and his eyes suddenly lit up. He held a drilling rod in each hand, raised it high, and then inserted it into the ground beside him. Andrew naturally followed suit and took the drilling rod handed over by Hong Fan, using it to stabilize his unstable body. In the distance, the engines of the two planetary landing vehicles roared, rushing towards the two of them against the huge storm. Chapter 404 Crisis Moment A few minutes ago, Xiao Wani breathed a sigh of relief as she listened to the exchanges coming from the communication device. Fortunately, the worst situation did not occur. Hematite comes from photomons and the probability of having advanced civilization on this planet suddenly dropped a lot. Drop! A crisp reminder also sounded in the planetary landing vehicle. Current outside wind speed, 25 kilometers per hour. Xiaowani, who was sitting in the passenger seat, was stunned. She remembered that the wind speed was still 20 kilometers per hour just now. Although she didn't know the reason, she still felt a sense of vigilance in her heart. On this dawn star, whose atmosphere is far denser than the Earth's, any change in wind speed will cause these crew members to pay great attention. Next moment, Feng Yuanliang's loud shout came from the communication device. Run! Run! Xiao Wani's body trembled suddenly, and her heart, which had been a little slack, was lifted up again. She quickly raised her head and cast her gaze at her two teammates a hundred meters away. Perhaps because of the increased wind speed, more yellow sand fell from the stone wall. In the yellow sand in the sky, two figures are looming. It could be vaguely seen that with the help of the exoskeleton armor, they quickly grabbed the drilling equipment on the ground and ran quickly towards the planetary landing vehicle. Academician foam. What happened? Before she had time to think, she turned on the communication device and asked Feng Yuan Liang. Unbuckle the seat belt of the co-pilot. Turn over and climb towards the main driver beside her. She, perhaps due to the wind and sand, the electromagnetic wave communication signal was no longer stable and bursts of electric current were also emitted from the communication device. At this time, Xiaowani was already sitting in the main driver's seat. She quickly put on her seat belt and flipped several switches on the console with great skill. Switch to long-distance communication channel. Communication protocol switched successfully. The planetary landing vehicle is starting up. Power mode switching. Several faint words appeared in the holographic projection. Earth is calling Exploration Team 19. Please answer when you receive it. Fong Su's voice came from the communication device. Academician Fong, tell me. As she said that, Xiao Wani stepped on the accelerator. The hum of the engine came from the soles of my feet. The powerful recoil instantly pinned everyone to their seats. Emergency situation. Hearing Xiao Wani's response, Fong Su breathed a sigh of relief. A storm is about to form. Pick up the team members immediately. Xiao Wani responded immediately without any hesitation. Yes. Bruno. Go to the airlock and prepare to respond. Joy. Map the map to locate the nearest shelter point. After issuing a series of orders, she pursed her lips hard and stared at the team members in the distance. Under the endless yellow sand, the two figures looked particularly weak. Current wind speed, 39 kilometers per hour. Exoskeleton armor power output, 99%. Danger. Please return to the planetary lander immediately. In the AR display of the helmet. Bright red warning text flashes continuously. Hong Fan ignored it and just crouched down, controlling the exoskeleton armor to tightly grasp the drilling rod in front of him. Quick! He looked at the planetary landing vehicle speeding toward him with splitting eyes. His face turned red, and several thick veins popped out on his neck, and he shouted in a low voice. Hurry! Warn! Current wind speed, 41 kilometers per hour. Exoskeleton armor power output, 100%. The numbers in the AR display jump again. Click! Hong Fan heard a slight sound coming from the exoskeleton armor. Andrew shout came from the communication device. Team Hong! The drilling rod can't hold it anymore! Hong Fan suddenly turned his head and looked in Andrew's direction. Perhaps due to the soil quality, Andrew's drilling rod has become slightly tilted. Moreover, 
The tilt amplitude is increasing at a speed visible to the naked eye. Hong Fan quickly glanced in the direction of the planetary landing vehicle. Due to the increase in wind speed, the forward speed of the planetary lander has been significantly reduced compared to the original. Hong Fan! Hold on for five more seconds! Xiao Wani's voice came from the communication device. Just five seconds! Through the yellow sand in the sky, Hong Fan could vaguely see that the hatch on the side of the planetary landing vehicle was already open. Captain Hong! Andrew's voice was full of panic. Hong Fan turned his head again. Countless yellow sand and fine gravel poured on the helmet like raindrops, making a ping ping pong pong sound. Although he knew that nothing would happen to the helmet, the scene in front of him still made him feel extremely frightened. Through the rain curtain of gravel and fine sand, Hong Fan saw Andrew's condition clearly. Just one glance made his heart feel as if it had sunk to the bottom of the sea. The tilt angle of the drilling rod in front of Andrew has reached the limit. In order to reduce wind resistance, Andrew lay on the ground as much as possible, with the transparent part of his helmet facing Hong Fan directly. Although he couldn't see clearly what he saw in the helmet, Hong Fan could see Andrew looking at him with great hope and eagerness. Grass! What the H? L! He gritted his teeth and cursed under his breath. The next moment, he let go of the hand holding the drilling rod and tried his best to reach out to Andrew in front. Andrew! Come! Those short and powerful words from the communication device ignited a glimmer of hope in Andrew's heart again. He raised his head and quickly observed the terrain. The wind comes from the front, which is the A2 plane. Hong Fan was behind him, and the planetary landing vehicle was behind Hong Fan, in the direction of the A1 plane. According to the current growth trend of wind speed, even if he arrives at Hong Fan's side, their exoskeleton armor will not last long. What's more, as the wind speed increases, the traveling speed of the planetary lander will decrease again. The original 5 seconds may be extended to 10 or 15 seconds. Under the circumstances, there is only a dead end waiting for them. He lowered his head and looked at the sand in front of him. And a crazy idea gradually emerged in his mind. You must not sit still and wait for death. They need to take the initiative. Captain Hong, I have an idea. Time was urgent. So he explained his thoughts quickly. Hong Fan glanced at the increasing wind speed in the AR display, then glanced at the planetary landing vehicle, which was slowing down again, and said immediately, Okay, gamble, Xiaowani, turn the planetary landing vehicle sideways. Hong Fan shouted loudly in the communication channel. Turn the hatch towards us. Chapter 405 Global Storm The words in the communication device stunned the anxious Xiaowani, but looking at the two people standing in a straight line, she instantly understood what Hong Fan meant. Academician Fong. How much lateral wind can the planetary landing vehicle withstand? She reached out and held the steering wheel and asked in a deep voice. Theoretically, there will be no problems with cross winds within 50 kilometers per hour. Fong Su's answer immediately sounded. To be on the safe side, there is absolutely no problem with cross winds within 45 kilometers per hour. Both are dawn star wind speeds. Xiao Wani's eyes moved slightly and glanced at the text on the holographic projection. 43 kilometers per hour. There's still time. After a reminder in the communication channel, she gritted her teeth and turned the steering wheel sharply. Uh-huh. Countless yellow sand rose from the ground, and the planetary landing vehicle lay across the canyon. The second planetary landing vehicle followed the same example and turned its body sideways to fill the remaining gap. Hong Fan! Hurry! After getting ready, Xiao Wani shouted in the communication channel looking at the two planetary landing vehicles not far behind him. Andrew took a deep breath. His thoughts moved slightly, and a line of bright red text instantly popped up on the AR display of the helmet. Epinephrine used confirmation? Andrew glanced at Hong Fan who stretched out his hand to show his thumb, nodded slightly, and confirmed the command a second time with the help of the brainwave reading device. A slight pain came from the thigh muscles. Adrenaline pumped into the body. It's time to fight. With the help of nanobots, Adrenaline works extremely fast. Almost immediately, Andrew felt the additional effect of adrenaline. In the chest, the heart beats extremely powerfully, pumping blood rapidly into the blood vessels throughout the body. Breathing speeds up, pupils dilate slightly, and reflexes increase significantly. It is no exaggeration to say that the next 10 minutes will be the peak of his physical fitness in the next few hours. Team Hong! Andrew greeted, slightly bent his body from the ground and then took the initiative to pull out the tilted drilling rod in front of him without hesitation. The strong wind hit, and Andrew, who had no point of strength, involuntarily stepped back. 
It's too late. It's fast. Andrew quickly raised his hand and inserted the drilling rod in his hand diagonally into the sand in front of him. With the help of the resistance of the sand, he successfully slowed down his retreat. Hong Fan also completed a series of preparations at this moment and pulled out the drilling rod in front of him. That's all. The two of them, one behind the other, quickly glided toward the planetary landing vehicle with the help of the drilling rod and the hurricane. After a few seconds, bang! Bang! Two dull collision sounds came from the planetary landing vehicle. Hong Fan and Andrew successfully fumbled into the cabin and were helped up by Bruno, who had been waiting aside. The hatch quickly closed. The planetary landing vehicle started up again, turned around, and quickly headed towards the nearest wind shelter in the direction of the wind. The pressure is balanced. The gentle female voice relaxed the tense nerves of the two of them. Hong Fan turned his head and glanced at Andrew beside him, with a weak smile on his face. It's safe. More than ten minutes later, the effects of adrenaline disappeared, and Hong Fan and Andrew, who were in a weak state, slumped in their seats half dead, swallowing hard to replenish their physical energy. Feng Yuliang's voice kept coming from the communication device. The weathering standard of these rock walls has reached level four. A strong weathering level. That's how easy it is to crush it into small pieces with your hands. Such a large-scale rock weathering phenomenon can only show that there are huge storms in this section of the canyon all year round. Speaking of this, Feng Yuliang's voice paused. Just now, the preliminary test results of soil samples from another planetary landing vehicle have come out. You might not believe it if I tell you. This canyon was formed within a hundred years. After the words fell, a burst of exclamation suddenly sounded in the planetary landing vehicle. After everyone calmed down, Feng Yuan Liang once again dropped a shocking revelation. Moreover, the cause of the formation of the canyon is most likely not due to internal forces. Based on the current wind speed, I have reason to suspect that the cause of the formation of this canyon is wind. The hurricane from the A2 plane blew a canyon on this huge mound. At this time, even Hong Fan, who was slumped in his seat, opened his eyes in surprise. In just 100 years, a canyon of this size was formed by wind power alone. The wind in this place. How terrifying is it? Feng Yuliang's voice continued. Based on these speculations, I asked Zero to do a simple simulation. The simulation results are amazing. To form such a terrain within a hundred years, the average wind speed must be at least 50 kilometers per hour. In other words, Feng Yuanliang said word by word, the wind speed you have experienced so far is probably just an appetizer. Inside the planetary landing vehicle, there was silence. Earth, the command center has lost its original calm, with scientific researchers coming in and out one after another, discussing corresponding countermeasures. Suddenly, a rush of footsteps came from outside the command center door. Academician Fong! Something big happened! This slightly sharp shout made Fong Su's heart tremble suddenly. Why did something happen again? He stretched out his hand to wipe the thin sweat on his forehead and raised his head to look at the person. The corresponding information instantly appeared in Fong Su's mind. Fan E. Bachelor of Planetary Meteorology. Majoring in Macro Control of Biosphere Climate. What happened? Fong Su asked in a deep voice. It's still a matter of dense atmosphere. Fanny looked seriously and explained in a low voice. The storm in the A2 area caused a chain reaction and affected the atmosphere in the surrounding area. Currently, the prototypes of three large storms have been discovered. Once these three storms take shape, they will affect the surrounding atmosphere. I'm afraid. Fong Su's face suddenly turned ugly. He squeezed out a few words through his teeth. Global storm. Fanny nodded quickly. Yes, it is a global storm. And, based on our simulations, these regional storms have the potential to overlap with each other. In the end, its lethality will be far beyond our imagination. Feng Yuan Liang, who was next to him, also raised his head suddenly and said with a horrified look on his face. News just came. Almost all exploration teams found extremely severe signs of weathering. One bad news after another made the atmosphere in the command center extremely heavy. No one expected that humans would encounter such a difficult problem when they first landed on Dawn Star. Tisk! Fong Su frowned and let out a soft tut. Feng Yuliang's information undoubtedly proved Fan Yi's inference. It seems that this should be a cyclical phenomenon. Fan Yi's eyes moved and he quickly said, Global storms will occur regularly on Dawn Star. It is this periodic global storm that evenly spreads the hematite from Phony on the entire planet. The timing of our landing happened to be between two global storms. Fong Su smiled bitterly. So, our luck is pretty good? 
Feng Yuan Yan and Fan Yi were silent and did not speak. Lucky? On the contrary, this is extremely bad luck. If we had discovered the signs of a global storm earlier or later, humans would not have been so eager to land on this planet. Chapter 406 Self-Controlled Experiment Dawn Star In the sky full of yellow sand, two planetary landing vehicles move forward with difficulty. The planet lands inside the vehicle. Current wind speed, 50 km per hour, along with a bright red holographic fonts that keep flashing. The alarm sounds. Drop! Abnormal wind speed warning. Please go to the nearest shelter immediately. Xiaowani grasped the steering wheel in front of her tightly with both hands, her eyes full of anxiety. Joey! How far away is the nearest shelter from the wind? Joey's voice came from the back seat. 0 0.83 kilometers. 0 0.83 kilometers. At the current speed, Xiaowani's eyes became even more anxious as she murmured to herself. Let me take a look. Hong Fan's voice came from the passenger seat, interrupting the conversation between the two. A short rest and various energy replenishing foods allowed Hong Fan to regain some energy while lying on his body. He struggled to stand up from his seat and reached out to operate the holographic image on the console in front of him. The holographic map quickly appeared in front of him. Before Hong Fan could speak, Fong Su's voice came from the long distance communication device again. This is Earth! Now conducting the first shipwide broadcast! Fong Su's voice was extremely solemn. According to the latest observation and research results, a global storm is brewing on the surface of Dawn Star. Specific information has been transmitted to the personal terminal. All teams, search for the nearest shelter immediately. Repeat. All teams, immediately find the nearest shelter and wait for rescue by the fleet. Communications cut off. The crackling sound of sand and gravel hitting the car window glass and the roar of the engine occupied everyone's eardrums. What should we do now? Xiaowani's voice broke the dead silence in the cabin. Hong Fan frowned reached out and opened the latest transfer file. And read it carefully. The chain reaction caused by the A2 and A1 plane storms is a global storm. And the maximum wind speed is expected to reach more than 70 km per hour. The ever-increasing predicted wind speed has cast a shadow on Hong Fan's heart. He knew that they must find an absolutely safe shelter immediately. Otherwise, they will only end up dead in the center of the global storm. Even the planetary landing vehicle has no resistance in the face of such a terrifying storm. He glanced at the holographic map beside him. On the map, a huge mark was flashing red. That is the exit of the canyon, which is the A1 plane area. In Joey's plan, they can use this huge mound across the A1 and A2 planes to withstand the hurricane. But now, let alone whether we can reach the A1 plane safely, during a global storm, the originally selected shelter spot is like a joke. Hong Fan's eyes flashed. He turned his attention to the extremely weathered stone wall. Turn! Hong Fan said decisively. What? Xiaowani was stunned and glanced at Hong Fan beside her in surprise. She had some doubts as to whether there was something wrong with her ears. I said. Turn. Hong Fan took a deep breath. Activate all weapons. Dig a hole in the stone wall. Xiaowani turned to look at the yellow and silver white stone wall beside her. After thinking briefly, she stepped on the brakes and slowly turned the car around. A violent tremor came from the chassis. This car can only withstand cross winds within 50 kilometers per hour. Xiaowani suddenly shouted loudly. Hong Fan glanced at the wind speed on the holographic projection. 52 kilometers per hour. 45 degrees diagonally to the right and forward. The situation was critical. And Hong Fan also shouted loudly. Bruno, you control the weapon system and shoot out all usable weapons except micro-nuclear bombs. Under Xiaowani's control, the planetary landing vehicle stopped in place with difficulty. Then. The vehicle-mounted laser cannon and the vehicle-mounted electromagnetic gun blasted at the stone wall ahead. After the second planetary landing vehicle stopped, it also activated its onboard weapon system and joined the burrowing operation. For a time, countless gravel and iron filings were flying in all directions under the strong wind. The stone wall with an extremely weathered surface cannot withstand the bombardment of secondary civilization weapons. Even though these weapons are all vehicle-mounted castrated versions, their power has been greatly reduced. In less than a minute, a huge pothole appeared in front of everyone. Thanks to the storm, most of the rocks and iron or debris were blown into the air, leaving only some large stones and iron pieces in the cave. Hong Fan didn't hesitate. Let's go! Go inside the cave! Xiaowani naturally stepped on the accelerator without hesitation. With the roar of the engine, the planetary landing vehicle rushed into the dark cave with its powerful off-road performance. Earth. 
biology laboratory, Lu Yongchang, who was immersed in the experiment, naturally did not know what was happening in the outside world. Bong Su hasn't asked for help yet, and Zero is still following Lu Yongchang's order, try not to disturb his research work. Professor, a researcher ran to Lu Yongchang excitedly and whispered, The corresponding hormone has been separated and purified. The guinea pig is ready. You can start the first experiment at any time. Lu Yongchang's eyes suddenly lit up, and he quickly stood up from his chair. What are you waiting for? Start the experiment immediately. Still a familiar controlled experiment. However, in order to eliminate the influence of individual differences of mice on the experimental results, this experiment adopted a self-control method. It's easy to understand. The so-called self-control is to compare the data of each animal before and after the experimental treatment. Lu Yongchan followed the scientific researcher and quickly walked to the specially designated test area of the biological laboratory. Hundreds of white mice were kept individually in special glass cages. Inside each glass cage, there is a mechanical hand. Breeding, experiments, carcass processing, disinfection and sterilization. Every aspect is controlled by Zero personally to ensure that no unexpected situations occur. For example, viral and bacterial infections. These are the things that must be paid attention to when conducting biological experiments in Earth. Lu Yongchan didn't want to infect all the crew members on the ship with any fatal disease for the sake of a biological experiment. After ensuring that all test data were accurate, Lu Yongchan issued the order to start the experiment. One by one, the robot hands grabbed the mice in the glass cage. Perhaps sensing the danger, these mice began to flee around the cage. But obviously, in the face of Zero's arrest, these are all in vain. The next moment, a thin needle popped out of the robot hand and accurately inserted into the vein of each mouse. Hormone Injection Chapter 407 Biosphere Climate Macro Control Technology The hormone infusion is a short process. The next second, Zero controlled the robot hand to release these weak and helpless mice and retracted to the corner. As for these mice, after regaining their freedom, they consciously stayed away from the silver-white mechanical hand. Lu Yongchang withdrew his gaze and focused on the holographic projection in front of him. Above, there are detailed vital signs of the mice. Heartbeat, breathing, body temperature. A few minutes later, Lu Yongchang, who was watching the holographic projection, raised his eyebrows slightly. There is a reaction! After hearing this, Mao Xingji hurriedly walked to Lu Yongchang and looked at the data in the holographic projection. The heart rate has begun to increase, Mao Xingji explained. It seems that the hormones are working. Lu Yongchang nodded slightly. If you want to change the original heart strength of the mice, even if you inject the purified magna heart strengthening hormone, it will probably take a lot of time. As he spoke, he glanced at the slowly increasing vital sign data beside him and murmured to himself. Probably, after another week of continuous injection, the results will be available. Right. Perhaps because the experiment had made some progress. Mao Xingji chuckled and said, That's just right. In a week, the second compilation of the Magna Visceral Omentum gene will be completed. Maybe these mice can seamlessly transition to the next experiment. Lu Yongchang was stunned. Good guy. The king of hell has to have you tattooed on his back. He smiled and shook his head. My intuition tells me that it won't be so easy. Mao Jingji shrugged and was about to say something, but was interrupted by Zero's voice. Professor, Academician Fang Su has something to ask you. A holographic projection automatically unfolded in front of Lu Yongchang. Periodic global storms have occurred on Dawn Star. With just one word, Lu Yongchang's original good mood fell to the bottom. Periodic global storms? Have the landing operations been affected? Zero responded quickly. The landing operation was a complete success. But currently, due to the impact of the storm, many exploration teams are trapped in corresponding shelter points and are waiting for fleet rescue. Among them, Team 19 is in a more critical situation. Looking at the status of each team in the holographic projection, Lu Yongchang's face darkened, and he turned and walked toward the laboratory door. Tell Fang Su that I will be there right away. Also, let that academician who is engaged in biosphere climate control wait for me at the command center. Professor, academician Fan Yi is already at the command center. Ling reminded softly. Earth, medical center, lying on the hospital bed. Bai Yishuan and Dr. Wen chatted all day long. In the windows, on the wall are extremely realistic simulated images of exterior scenes. Today's exterior scene simulation is the grassland scenery of the Earth era. Looking at the extremely vast scene, Baishwan felt relieved physically and mentally. Dr. Wen, what do you want to do most? He asked softly. 
You shouldn't want to be a doctor from the beginning. Right. Facing by Ishwan's question, Dr. Wen said with a smile, You really got it right. Ever since I was a kid, I wanted to be a doctor. Bai Ishwan turned around in surprise and glanced at Dr. Wen. Oh, why do you want to be a doctor? Dr. Wen shrugged. At first, I was just more interested in the human body. Think about the organs in the human body. Stop. Bai Ishwan's mouth twitched, interrupting Dr. Wen's words. Let's talk about it now. Now? A mysterious smile appeared on Dr. Wen's lips. Professor Liu is probably what I am most interested in. Before Bai Ishwan could speak, Dr. Wen said again, I really want to know how Professor Liu's brain grew. His brain should be unique in human history. Looking at Dr. Wen who was talking endlessly in front of him, Bai Ishwan said, he regretted bringing up the subject. Just when he was thinking about how to skip this topic, the watch on his wrist vibrated. He subconsciously raised his wrist and opened the miniature holographic image on his watch. With just one glance, his expression changed. What's wrong? Dr. Wen quickly noticed the problem and asked softly. Something happened to me. My team member. Baishwan clenched his fists and hit the hospital bed hard. Dr. Wen frowned slightly, walked up to Baishwan, and glanced at the holographic projection. Take good care of your injuries. After a moment of silence, Dr. Wen reached out and patted Baishwan's shoulder gently. I believe you're vice captain. I know that Boy Hong fan. Although he is a bit out of tune, he is still reliable when encountering big problems. Baishwan closed his eyes in pain and nodded vigorously. All he can do now is recover from his injuries. If something happened to Hong Fan and the others, he still wants to take them home. Thinking of this, Baishwan's fists clenched a little tighter again. Earth, Command Center. Lu Yongchan looked at the holographic images in front of him solemnly. Things have gone horribly wrong. Currently, the number of large storms forming on the surface of Dawn Star has reached 5. The number of large storms that are forming has reached 15. It can be said that this periodic storm has covered 25% of the surface area of Dawn Star. Not to mention rescuing the exploration team scattered on the surface of Dawn Star. With such periodic storms, it will be significantly more difficult for humans to build cities on the surface. Based on this alone, Lu Yongchang had the intention of taking action on Shugwangxing in his heart. Fan! Fan E! Right! Lu Yongchang turned and looked at Fan E aside. Is there any way to carry out macro control of this level of climate? Fan Yi's expression suddenly suffocated. What did he hear? Controlling the climate of a super planet that is far larger than Earth. Is there something wrong with his ears or Professor Lu? Looking at Lu Yongchang's serious face, he shook his head in embarrassment. It's very difficult. Currently, biosphere climate macro control technology has only been tested in closed urban agglomerations on the surface. And the technology is not mature enough. Is it effective? Lu Yongchang interrupted him. Aw? Fan Yi was stunned. Yes, it works. He nodded hurriedly. Currently, Academician Shinshuan has conducted 37 experiments, all of which have been a complete success. That's enough. Lu Yongchang's eyes flashed. Zero. Let Academician Shinshuan come to the command center. Also, start the rescue plan immediately. Lu Yongchang turned to look at Fang Su. You are responsible for this matter. While the global storm has not yet completely taken shape, airdrop robot troops go to the rescue. Remember, never give up on any human being. You want to see people alive. You want to see corpses when you're dead. Chapter 408 Fang Su In just a few minutes, Lu Yongchang issued one order after another. The command center, which was originally a mess, gradually returned to its original orderly appearance under a series of orders. Huh? Fang Su on the side breathed a sigh of relief subconsciously. Fortunately, when he realized that the situation was getting more and more serious, he chose to shake people without hesitation. Otherwise, who knows what will happen? What are you still doing here? Lu Yongchang, who had finished all the tasks, turned around and saw Fang Su still standing there blankly. He frowned and urged. Why don't you go on a rescue mission quickly? Fang Su came to his senses. He walked quickly to Lu Yongchang and said in a low voice, Yongchang, even if the robot finds these exploration team members, we can't take them away from Dawn Star. Zuan Tu is no longer able to take off normally. Hearing this, Lu Yongchang frowned even deeper. This is indeed a problem. He pondered for a moment and whispered, Go to Tao Yuda and ask him to design a simple single-person shelter as quickly as possible that can withstand the hurricane on the surface of Dawn Star. Have those robots take the shelter on a rescue mission. Okay. Fang Su nodded solemnly, turned and left the command center. 
At the same time, there was a rush of footsteps outside the command center door. Professor Liu! A familiar voice came from the door. Liu Yongchan quickly turned around and looked. He saw his old friend with a head full of gray hair rushing towards his position, with an anxious look on his face. Dawn Star. After entering the cave, the hurricane weakened rapidly. Current wind speed, 18 kilometers per hour. Although the wind speed is still quite high, compared with just now, this is simply a paradise existence. Under the high-power lighting devices equipped with the two planetary landing vehicles, the originally dark interior of the cave was as bright as day. Team Hong! Bruno's voice came from behind, with a hint of worry. Is this cave safe? I mean, it's not going to collapse. Is it? While speaking, Bruno turned his head and looked out the window. The air is still filled with countless yellow sand. Through the dust, Bruno could vaguely see patches of silver-white material distributed within the yellow rock walls. These silver-white substances reflect a dazzling metallic luster under the illumination of high-power lighting devices. Don't worry. Hong Fan slumped down in the passenger seat again and said lazily. Don't just look around. Look above your head. A trace of doubt flashed in Bruno's eyes. And he subconsciously looked above his head. Among the muddy yellow sand. Regular silver-white. Light bands flashed. That is. Bruno's eyes widened slightly, and he murmured to himself. These are elemental iron ores. So much. Hong Fan, who was slumped in the passenger seat, shrugged. Although the outer rock wall is very severely weathered, the inside, with the combination of rock and elemental iron ore, the strength of this cave is much higher than you think. So, relax. Hong Fan said as he stretched and adjusted his lying position. What we have to do now is to wait peacefully in this cave. When this storm passes, we will be rescued. Right. Hong Fan seemed to realize something. His face changed slightly. He straightened up from his seat and said, How are the medical cabin and food storage? Are there any injuries? As soon as these words came out, the atmosphere in the planetary landing vehicle suddenly became tense. The medical cabin. Each planetary landing vehicle is equipped with one. Joey in the back seat said in a difficult tone. The food reserve is quite sufficient. Conservatively. If you save some food, you should be able to last for a month. Hong Fan looked serious and thought for a moment. A month's food reserve should be enough. The only problem now is the medical bay. Next, everyone takes turns using the medical cabin to repair organ damage. Each person uses it for two hours a day. Seeing everyone nodding in agreement, Hong Fan's tone became slightly more relaxed. There should be no problem with normal activities. The difficulty lies in sleeping. When sleeping in a 1.9G gravity environment, it is inevitable that you will be uncomfortable. Everyone should overcome it. After saying that, he turned his gaze to Xiao Wani beside him. Wani, go prepare today's food. After such a long time, everyone is probably too hungry to survive. Xiao Wani nodded slightly, unbuckled her seatbelt, stood up, and walked along the aisle towards the back of the planetary landing vehicle. Half an hour later, in the planetary landing vehicle, everyone was holding their own lunch boxes, with happy and satisfied smiles on their faces although most of them are instant and compressed foods. In such an environment, it is undoubtedly a pleasant thing to stay alive and have a hot meal. Ding dong. A crisp beep sounded in the car. Earth sent a communication request and is being accessed. Above the console, the holographic projection interface automatically unfolds. Fong Su appeared in front of everyone with an anxious face. As soon as the communication was connected, Fong Su's urgent voice came from the speaker. Hong Fan. The satellite detection map shows that the wind speed near you has reached 60 kilometers per hour. You? The sound stopped suddenly. At this time, Hong Fan was busy swallowing the food in his mouth. Seeing Fong Su's weird expression, Hong Fan speeded up his swallowing movements again. Cough, cough, cough. His face turned red, and he struggled to swallow the last bit of food in his mouth. Then he picked up the water glass on the side and carefully drank a sip of water to moisten his lips. Academician Fong. He greeted Fong Su with a smile. In the holographic projection, Fong Su took a deep breath. Obviously, the scene in front of him was a bit beyond his expectation. Just now, more than a dozen exploration teams sent emergency distress signals. The reason is also very simple. Due to the storm, many exploration teams were unable to go to the nearest shelter and had to choose to take shelter on the spot. The so-called shelter in place means relying on some reinforcement tools that come with a planetary landing vehicle to fix the body. Delaying time and waiting for the arrival of the rescue team. 
This approach is not a long-term solution after all. As the wind speed increases, the planetary landing vehicle will still encounter considerable dangers. Bong Su thought that Hong Fan and others, who were in the most dangerous area, should be in a state of uncertainty about life or death at this time. But now, have you found a shelter from the wind? Fong Su looked at the peaceful scene in the planetary landing vehicle with confusion. That's not right. There should be no safe shelter from the wind near you. Where on earth are you? Hong Fan cheerfully reached out and adjusted the direction of the camera. We dug a cave into the rock wall. Fong Su. Chapter 409. Preliminary Planetary Control. Planetary Climate Macro Control Technology. A few minutes later, Fong Su completely understood the current situation of Hong Fan and others. You guys are so lucky. Fong Su's mouth twitched, and he sighed softly. Compared to you, other exploration teams have a really hard life. Upon hearing this, Hong Fan's eyes moved slightly, and he asked quickly. Academician Fong, when will the rescue start? Planetary landing vehicles are usually equipped with only one medical cabin, and not a lot of food reserves. Once the time drags on, I worry about other teams. When it came to business, Fong Su's face suddenly became serious. Rest assured. I guarantee that within three days, the first batch of rescue robots will arrive on the surface of Dawn Star and start rescue work. Only. The smile that just appeared on Hong Fan's face dissipated instantly. Just. Sun Tu is currently unable to take off. Fong Su smiled bitterly, spread his hands and said, The wind is too strong. Even if the rescue robot arrives, you can only stay on the surface of Dawn Star temporarily. Academician Tao Yuda is designing a new type of single-person shelter. You don't have to worry too much about material supply. The only thing is the duration of this storm. Speaking of this, Fong Su showed hesitation on his face. According to Zero's latest simulation calculation results, this storm will last for more than a year. What? A year? What the H? L? The moment he finished speaking, there was a burst of exclamation in the planetary landing vehicle. Hong Fan widened his eyes, looked directly at the holographic projection in front of him, and put his big face in front of the camera. Academician Fong, are you kidding? A year-long storm? Does this mean that they need to suffer in this inhospitable place for a whole year? Thinking about the quality of his life ahead, Hong Fan suddenly felt bad. Fong Su nodded slightly and said in a positive tone, This is still a conservative estimate. But? Fong Su changed the topic again. Professor Liu has already started researching climate macro control technology. So the specific time depends on the progress of his research. Hong Fan suddenly breathed a sigh of relief. And his tense expression instantly relaxed. Hey! Academician Fong. You should have said this earlier. Do you still need to worry about Professor Liu's research? When I wake up, it's another victory. Earth, Command Center. Academician Shen. I won't talk nonsense. Liu Yongchang looked solemnly at Shen Shenwen who was still out of breath in front of him. I need an accurate answer. Can biosphere climate macro control technology be used on Dawn Star? Shen Shenwen did not answer immediately, but frowned and flipped through the information in the holographic projection. For a long time, the hesitation in Shen Siwen's eyes gradually dissipated. He nodded slowly but firmly. Theoretically, it is feasible. Earth, Laboratory Number 1. Liu Yongchang sat in his seat and slowly closed his eyes. Just having a theory is not enough. In a race against time, he needs the most practical and effective solution. Thoughts moved slightly. His consciousness came to that familiar green space again. Before our eyes, the technology tree of the second level civilization has been completely formed. At the top of the technology tree, the symbol of the third level civilization, the fog near the shield technology has completely dissipated. Although the cursor is still very dim, at least he can use the technology tree system to forcibly analyze related technologies. As long as he wasn't afraid of falling into coma again. But Li Yongcheng's purpose this time was not that. His eyes swept across the luxuriant technology tree and quickly locked on a technology. Urban climate macro control technology. The cursor is bright. This is a technology that humans have already mastered. As Li Yongcheng gradually concentrated his attention, a bright white line gradually extended above the cursor. The line spread rapidly upward. Soon, we reached the top of the second level technology tree. When Liu Yongchan saw this, his eyebrows jumped slightly. Could it be said that planetary climate macro control technology is the technology of a third level civilization? Just when Liu Yongchan was feeling anxious, the bright white line stopped extending upward and outlined a new cursor. At the same time, several bright white lines extend from all over the technology tree and are connected to this new cursor. 
Lu Yongchan glanced casually. Type 2 laser weapon. Plasma bomb. Ultra long distance microwave heating technology. Super giant hydrogen bomb. Just one glance. And the corners of Lu Yongchan's eyes twitched slightly. This. Is it really reliable? Outlined by bright white thin lines. The cursor gradually takes shape. Preliminary planetary control. Planetary climate macro control technology. The next moment. A dim white thin line appeared from the cursor. Extending upward breaking through the top of the second-level technology tree in one fell swoop and rushing higher. Lu Yongchang curiously stretched his attention upward along the thin line. When he reached the top of the technology tree, a strong dizziness extinguished the flame of curiosity in his heart. Have to. His conscious mind shrugged. Just don't watch it if you don't want to. At worst, when the shield technology breaks through, he will come back to find out. Lu Yongchang muttered in his heart. While, reluctantly, retracting his gaze, and once again focused on the cursor in front of him. A familiar slight dizziness came over me. With the help of the technology tree system, Lu Yongchan felt as if his brain had been sublimated. Like, CPU overclocking is average. To him, the originally complicated questions could even be answered easily. It feels so wonderful. Thinking is like breaking away from the shackles of the body and roaming freely in the endless universe. Like fireworks exploding. Endless inspiration burst out in his mind at the same time. Call! Lu Yongchang opened his eyes suddenly and gasped hard. The overclocked status disappeared. He frowned subconsciously. For a while, he found it difficult to bear his original, rigid thinking. Fortunately, this discomfort subsided quickly. Academician Shen! Lu Yongchang adjusted his condition, stood up from his chair and shouted. On the side, Si Shenwen, who was directing the scientific researchers, to complete various preparations, quickly put down his work and trotted to Lu Yongcheng's side. Professor, you look ugly. Seeing Lu Yongcheng's face turn pale and his eyes filled with red bloodshot eyes, Shen Shenwen couldn't help but froze and pointed hesitantly at his cheek. Lu Yongcheng didn't pay much attention. After overclocking, it is normal for the body to be a little weak. According to past experience, as long as you don't touch things you shouldn't touch, you can return to normal after a few hours of rest. It's just overuse of the brain. Lu Yongchang waved his hand nonchalantly. Let's get down to business. I already have an idea for a plan for planetary climate control. Wait a moment. I will send you the rough plan. And you can lead the team to improve it. So, what about you? Shen Siwen asked blankly. Me? Lu Yongchang chuckled and walked towards his office. I want to solve the most important problem. Chaos Models of Planetary Climate. Chapter 410 Draft of Circumplanetary Climate Control Satellite Network. Shen Shenwen looked at Li Yongchang's back, opened his mouth, but couldn't say a word. He has devoted his life to the study of the artificial biosphere since the beginning of the Earth's time. In recent decades, in order to better control surface urban agglomerations, he has led his researchers to conduct research on urban climate models. Therefore, he knows very well that the so-called planetary climate chaos model and the urban climate model are two completely different things. If we have to compare, it would be like the relationship between basic operations such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division and advanced mathematics. In his personal office located in the number one shipboard laboratory, Lu Yongchan looked at the slowly rotating dawn star projection in front of him and fell into deep thought. During the overclocking process just now, he gained a deeper understanding of the planetary climate chaos model. Chaotic systems have many characteristics. Nonlinear. Quasi-random irregular, and extremely sensitive to the initial value. Therefore, the chaotic behavior in a chaotic system may seem irregular, but it also hides its unique laws. Chaotic behavior in chaotic systems follows several principles. For one, energy will always follow the path of least resistance. Second, there is always an underlying structure, often invisible, that determines the path of least resistance. Third, this underlying structure, which is always present but usually invisible, can not only be discovered, but can also be changed. These three principles control chaotic behavior all the time and affect the final output of the chaotic system. The so-called butterfly effect is the most straightforward explanation of chaotic systems. The butterfly effect roughly means that on Earth, a butterfly living in the Amazon rainforest occasionally flaps its wings, causing corresponding changes in the air system around it and generating weak airflow. And these weak air currents will cause changes in the air around it. This cycle expands. Eventually, a hurricane formed somewhere thousands of miles away. Although somewhat exaggerated, 
It accurately describes the chaotic model of planetary climate. Perhaps a butterfly is not so powerful. But the endless butterflies, that is, the planet circling climate control satellite network they are about to build, do have such capabilities. By manipulating the atmosphere of certain areas of the dawn star, it may heat up, cool down, or explode, thus causing climate changes on the entire planet. Above the desk in front of me, several huge swirling clouds had formed on the reddish brown dawn star. It can be seen from the whirlpool connection that the two giant storms on the A1 plane and the A2 plane, which are the sources of the dawn star storm, have begun preliminary integration. As for the result after the two major storms merged, according to the original model calculation, there is a 96.1% probability of strengthening. Lu Yongchang reached out and gently moved the dawn star projection in front of him and turned his attention to other areas. Under the influence of the storms in areas A1 and A2, other areas on dawn star also experience more or less abnormal conditions. The real-time satellite images in front of him continue to confirm the inspiration that Li Yongchan obtained during the overclocking process. His brows wrinkled and relaxed. As time passed, the confusion in Li Yongchang's eyes gradually dissipated, replaced by clarity. He waved his hand to turn off the dawn star projection, stretched out his hand to open a brand new holographic image, and typed out a few large characters with his hand. Planetary Climate Chaos Model At the same time, next to the office, in laboratory number one, Shin Shunwen looked at the holographic projection in front of him, with shock written all over his face. Draft Network of Circumplanetary Climate Control Satellites. Just looking at the title, it doesn't seem to be a problem. But when he opened the document and read it carefully, he realized what a crazy planet was. First, they need to deploy a satellite network surrounding the entire planet in the synchronous orbit of Dawn Star. Most of the satellite networks are various weapons systems. Hydrogen bombs, laser cannons, plasma bombs. At first glance, Shin Shunwen even thought that Li Yongchang had sent the wrong document. Isn't this the planet-circling space-based defense network played by the Proxima Centauri civilization? Then, take a closer look. Shin Shunwen said that others were immediately numb. The muzzles of these weapons are all aimed at Dawn Star. Professor Liu, is your brain going crazy? This thought suddenly flashed through Shin Shunwen's mind. To control the climate, some appropriate measures must be taken. Of course Shin Shunwen knows this stuff. But has this been done? Shin Shunwen calmed down and moved the holographic projection in front of him again. Behind is a series of rough construction plans. The plan was rough. But Shin Shunwen still saw the power of this climate control system. The simplest way to use it is to drop giant hydrogen bombs of varying yields in areas where storms or various extreme weather occur. With the help of the powerful shock wave caused by the hydrogen bomb. The original storm was torn into pieces. Of course. Such a simple and crude approach is very likely to cause other consequences, whether serious or not. Depends on luck. A more sophisticated approach is to use laser weapons and liquid nitrogen to forcefully heat or cool the atmosphere in the corresponding area for a short period of time. This approach can also reduce the power of the storm to a certain extent, or even completely eliminate the storm. To use an analogy, the formation of typhoons requires large amounts of heat and water vapor. Then, when the typhoon is moving or moving, a large amount of liquid nitrogen is put into the vicinity of the typhoon to locally cool the atmosphere for a short period of time. In this way, the power of the typhoon can be greatly reduced, and the typhoon can even be strangled in the cradle. This method is milder than the previous one. But that doesn't mean it has no disadvantages. The climate of the entire planet is a perfect and self-consistent chaotic system. The practice of containing the storm is equivalent to adding an artificial variable to this chaotic system. You may not feel anything once or twice. However, Repeated containment actions will inevitably cause a counterattack by the chaotic system, which is a more violent disaster. Once the threshold of human control is exceeded, extremely serious consequences will inevitably occur. Finally, it is the best way. With the help of various devices, the atmosphere of the entire planet can be fine-tuned by manipulating the entire chaotic system. The original results are appropriately changed. For example, with the help of laser and ultra-long-distance microwave heating devices, the atmosphere in area A is heated rapidly or slowly. Then use a small amount of liquid nitrogen to appropriately reduce the atmospheric temperature in area B. Finally, the shock wave caused by the large yield hydrogen bomb is used as an inducer, which is continuously amplified through the action of the planet's atmosphere, forming a storm in a designated area, releasing excess energy in the planet's atmosphere. Compared with the first two, this method is not blindly blocking 
but more inclined to sparse, for dawn stars, which experience periodic global storms. This approach is most needed. But, if you want to use the planetary climate control system to accomplish such a feat, you must completely control the operating rules of the chaotic system of planetary climate. This is precisely the difficulty. Thinking of this, Xin Shunwen turned his head in the direction of Lu Yongcheng's office and cast a worried look. Although he is confident in Professor Lu's scientific research ability, but I want one person to overcome such a difficult problem alone. Isn't it a little too embarrassing? But he doesn't know. At this time, the holographic projection in front of Lu Yongcheng was already filled with dense formulas. Chapter 411 The Rescue Begins After one day, in the ward, Bai Xuan looked worriedly at the simulated outdoor scene. Captain Bai, I have your communication request. Dr. Wen's voice interrupted Bai Xuan's meditation. Before he could recover, a holographic image slowly unfolded in front of him. In the holographic projection, there is Hong Fan, who looks slightly pale and has his front teeth bared. The communication ends quickly. Right. Dr. Wen shrugged and said casually, I just said that boy Hong Fan is not that stupid. You should rest in peace and recuperate. When you recover from your injuries, they will probably come back. Yes. Yes. You are right. Bai Xuan nodded repeatedly with smiles in his eyes. Three days later, Dawn Star, between the A1 plane and the A2 plane, in the cave in the Central Valley, the high-power lighting devices of the two planetary landing vehicles illuminated the interior of the cave as if it were daytime. Inside one of the planetary landing vehicles, Hong Fan's face looked a little pale, and he was half-lying on the chair. Team Hong! Andrew, whose face was equally pale, said softly, Wait a moment. Can you go to the medical cabin and rest for two hours? The adrenaline from three days ago and the strenuous exercise of extreme survival put a huge burden on their internal organs. According to the original regulations, after they were out of danger, the two of them needed to immediately undergo a deep organ repair course in the medical cabin that lasted for more than 12 hours. But, the current situation obviously does not allow this. With only two medical cabins, each of them can only be allocated two hours of medical cabin time per day. For other team members, two hours of organ repair time can barely ensure that the condition of the internal organs does not deteriorate. But for Hong Fan and Andrew, two hours of repair time was far from enough. Although Xiao Wani and others tried to let Hong Fan and Andrew receive a longer course of organ repair treatment. But, both Hong Fan and Andrew rejected the proposal. The reason is also very simple. This proposal is based on reducing the medical duration of the remaining team members. Once this is done, it will only cause the physical condition of the remaining team members to enter a state of chronic injury, whether it was due to emotion or reason. Hong Fan, as the captain, could not do such a thing. Fine. Faced with Andrew's suggestion, Hong Fan gritted his teeth and responded softly. Go in order. You go first. I can last two hours. But, seeing that Andrew still wanted to speak, Hong Fan looked solemn and interrupted him in a deep voice. This is an order. Yes. Andrew swallowed the words that came to his lips with a complicated expression. Now start broadcasting the latest weather conditions of Dawn Star. From the communication device, a familiar electronic synthesized voice came. Currently, the global storm coverage area of Dawn Star accounts for 47.06%. The four strongest storms have initially completed the integration. The highest wind level on the surface is level 10. Strong wind. Wind speed 97 km per hour located in the central valley of the A1 and A2 planes. It is expected that wind speeds in various areas will rise again in the next three days. Members of the exploration team are asked to take safety measures and wait for the rescue team. Hong Fan sighed lightly. It's been three days. I don't know about the rescue force that Academician Fong was talking about. Hearing this, Andrew glanced out the car window worriedly. It will probably take a few days. Andrew shook his head. The wind speed is increasing too fast. Under such circumstances, Zuin too cannot take off and land safely. Perhaps, we can only place our hopes on Professor Liu. For a moment, the planet landed in the car, and the atmosphere became a little heavier again. Hong Fan, who noticed this, had a trace of worry in his eyes. He took a deep breath, endured the slight pain in his abdomen, and said with a forced smile, Ouch, what are you thinking about? Cheer up. Do you have some confidence in Professor Liu? Under Hong Fan's words, the atmosphere inside the planetary landing vehicle gradually warmed up. I remember that Academician Chow and Professor Lu made a bet. Xiao Wani chuckled and said helpfully, I just don't know what the bet was. 
Hong Fan's eyes lit up. I know this. I heard that they ate the Zuand number one experimental machine alive. Ah? What the H? L? The planet landing vehicle was suddenly filled with laughter and laughter. Seeing this, Hong Fan breathed a sigh of relief and cast a grateful look at Xiao Wei beside him. This is Earth. Now conducting the 93rd shipwide broadcast. Fong Su's voice from the communication device instantly interrupted everyone's discussion. Everyone turned to look at the holographic projection above the console. In the holographic projection, Fong Su's image gradually became clearer. Everyone could clearly see the thick dark circles around Fong Su's eyes and the bloodshot eyes. The first batch of rescue robots were modified five minutes ago. The rescue operation begins now. Beside the Dawn Star, the Earth port gate slowly opened. So in two ships filed out of it and rushed straight towards the Dawn Star not far away. Under Zero's control, these Sun 2 steadily entered the Dawn Star's low Earth orbit. They are scattered seemingly haphazardly across various areas. But if you compare the location map of the exploration team, you can easily find that every three Sun 2 ships correspond to an exploration team located on the surface of Dawn Star. After completing the final positioning, all the hatches of Sun 2 suddenly opened. Cuboids with silver-white metallic luster on their surfaces slowly drove out of the cabin of Zun 2. The size of a single cuboid reaches an astonishing 10 m times 10 m times 15 m length. Width and height! These silver-white rectangular bodies have a faint blue flame at their tails. That's the light of the hull thruster. Driven by the hull thrusters, they slowly headed towards Dawn Star. The moment it penetrated the dense atmosphere, the surface of every cuboid glowed with bright fire. Accompanied by the light generated by atmospheric friction. These cuboids dive straight towards the preset location. Chapter 412 Spider Robot Dawn Star A hilly area not far from the A1 plane. A huge planetary landing vehicle lay quietly in a depression on the ground. Several thick carbon nanotube ropes extend from the top and bottom of the car body. These carbon nanotube ropes are connected to steel spikes dug deeply into the ground. Firmly binding the planetary landing vehicle to the barren ground of Dawn Star. These fixed measures can effectively withstand strong winds of no more than 80 kilometers per hour on the surface of Dawn Star. But now, warn! Current outside wind speed, 70 kilometers per hour. The planet landed in the car, and the red alarm kept flashing. Benefiting from topographic factors, these low hills significantly reduce the power of storms. In addition, there is no narrow tube effect. So the wind speed in the area where this team is located is not as terrifying as in the Central Valley. But even so, the fixed measures provided by the planetary landing vehicle have reached the edge. In the cabin, several crew members looked at the horrible scenery outside the window with pale faces. The overwhelming yellow sand poured into this vast world. At this moment, these new generations born from Proxima Centauri finally deeply realized the horror of nature. Team! Captain! A crew member looked at the slowly rising wind speed value in the holographic projection and swallowed hard. Can we still wait for rescue? The captain did not speak, but silently looked out the window at the world filled with yellow sand flying in the sky. Can you wait for rescue? He didn't know how the rescue operation mentioned by Academician Fong was achieved. But he knows. In such bad weather, I am afraid that no starship can land successfully. What about rescue? Drop! There was another familiar alarm sound. Current outside wind speed, 72 kilometers per hour. Perhaps because of the fusion of storms in the A1 and A2 planes, the wind speed in the nearby hills began to soar again. He sighed softly and shook his head in despair. That's too late. Even if the fleet has sent a rescue team, they can't wait any longer. Just when he was about to close his eyes and face the last moments calmly, a cry of surprise came from behind. Captain! Look! Heaven! There is something in the sky! Hearing the team members' exclamations, there was a trace of surprise in his eyes. Is there something in the sky? In this sky. Besides yellow sand and tiny gravels. What else is there? Starship? Do not make jokes. What kind of starship can land in such a harsh environment? He moved closer to the window. Raised his head. And cast a questioning look in the direction of the team member's finger. Just a glance. He just held his breath. In the dark yellow sky. A huge rectangular body with a silvery white body and a faint blue flame emitting from its tail can be vaguely seen. Rescue force? He raised his hand, rubbed his eyes, and murmured to himself. What type of starship is this? No one answered his words. But after a few seconds, as the height continued to decrease, the true face of the silver-white cuboid gradually emerged before his eyes. This TMD is not a starship at all. 
the captain couldn't help but curse in his heart. It is like a plus version of the coffin. Swooping towards the ground simply and crudely, the hall thruster at the bottom became more and more powerful, trying its best to slow down the speed of this large coffin. There was also a faint blue flame coming out from its side. Obviously, in order to stabilize the landing posture of this coffin, the designers even thoughtfully installed several low-power hall propulsion devices on its sides. A familiar electronic synthesized sound sounded in the planetary landing vehicle. Attention exploration team number 24. The rescue force is about to arrive at your coordinates. Please all crew members to prepare for impact immediately. Countdown to landing, 10, 9. When the rescue team arrives, why are they required to prepare for impact? A question mark slowly rose in everyone's mind. But there was no time to think about it. Listening to the urgent countdown, everyone hurriedly fastened the seat belts on their seats and turned on the anti-impact mode of the exoskeleton armor. Then, under the gaze of everyone, this huge silver-white coffin was smashed hard on the hill not far away. Good. It was simply and roughly smashed on the ground. The density of yellow sand and gravel in the air increased instantly. Violent tremors came from the ground, along the wheels, chassis, seats, and into everyone's heart. The next moment, a strong shock wave came from the landing point, and along with the creaking of the carbon nanotube ropes, alarm sounded in the planetary landing vehicle. After a few seconds, another burst of the same vibration came from the other direction. The captain suddenly turned his head and looked out the other side of the car window. Really? On the hill further away. There is also a square silver-white coffin standing. The rescue team has landed successfully. Please be patient for the rescue robot. If there are any abnormalities, please report to the Earth Command Center immediately. Accompanied by shock waves one after another, the electronic synthesized voice in the planetary landing vehicle said unhurriedly. Tens of seconds later, the view outside the car window became a little clearer. Through the car windows and through the endless yellow sand, the crew members looked at the three silver-white rectangular devices arranged in a Z-shaped shape around them with shocked expressions. Next moment, the SH. L of the rectangular device cracked several gaps and slowly unfolded in the powerful storm, revealing the rescue troops inside several large spider-shaped robots. The spider-shaped robot is similar in size to a planetary landing vehicle, but its weight is obviously much greater than that of the planetary landing vehicle. Its eight spider legs will penetrate deeply into the rocky ground of Dawn Star with every step it takes. In this way, relying on their own weight, these spider-shaped robots took extremely steady steps in the storm slowly walking towards the planetary landing vehicle in the center. In the planetary landing vehicle, the captain looked straight at the scene outside the window and murmured to himself, This, is this the rescue team? How are these robots going to save us? Before he finished speaking, these spider-shaped robots gave the answer. At the moment it approached the planetary landing vehicle, the spider-shaped robots rear two legs quickly inserted into the surface rock. Under the extremely powerful power, these two spider legs were completely submerged into the rock. Underground, where no one saw it, two piercing spider legs protruded with several barbs, tightly blocking the ground beneath their feet. Then, with the help of these two spider legs, it tilted inward at an angle of 45 degrees. The two pairs of legs on the side are connected to the surrounding spider-shaped robots in turn. A thin film made of carbine material gradually protruded from the sides of these two pairs of spider legs. These robots used their bodies to build a simple, an extremely strong airtight wall for the people in the planetary landing vehicle. As for the two spider legs in front, they are connected with the surrounding spider robots to form the top of the wall. In this way, a simple shelter appeared in front of everyone. Exploration Team Number 24 The basic shelter has been built. In the holographic projection, a line of Chinese characters jumped out. The shelter is equipped with a total of nine medical cabins, some food and drinking water, and nine single lounges. Current wind speed in the shelter, 0 km per hour. Please be patient and wait for the storm to pass. Before anyone could react, small hatches opened on the wall. That is, the abdomen of the spider-shaped robot. Obviously, the so-called single lounge is located among these hatches. Team leader! From behind, a trembling voice came. Are we saved? The captain took a deep breath, unfastened the seat belt on his seat, and said excitedly, Yes! We are saved! Walk! Put on your spacesuit and get out of the car! Chapter 413 Planetary Climate Control Earth Laboratory 1 After a few days, the door to Lu Yongcheng's office finally opened again. Under the gaze of a group of scientific researchers, 
Lu Yongchan staggered out with a pair of thick dark circles under his eyes. Shen! Where is Academician Shen? Lu Yongchan looked around and asked softly. Here! Here it is! A rush of footsteps came from the side. And Shen Shuen rushed to Lu Yongchan's side eagerly. Professor! Did you succeed? Lu Yongchan naturally responded with a faint smile. What do you think? The moment the words fell, a holographic image slowly unfolded in front of the two of them. Shen Shunwen subconsciously held his breath. In the holographic projection, there are densely packed and extremely beautiful formulas and charts. Pity! Lu Yongchang suddenly shook his head, sighed softly, and whispered. Shen Shunwen was shocked and quickly turned around and asked, What? A chaotic system is still a chaotic system after all. Even after preliminary modeling, we still can't perfectly predict the final output. Hearing this, Shen Shunwen frowned immediately. How so? If the final output result cannot be perfectly predicted, can this climate control system still play its original role? Lu Yongchan glanced at Shen Shunwen, who had a sad face, and quickly explained with a smile. Maybe you misunderstood what I meant. Although this planetary climate chaos model cannot accurately predict the final output, it can still be used in circumplanetary climate control systems. It's just that the process in the middle will be a little cumbersome. Let's use an analogy. Looking at the increasingly doubtful look in Shen Shunwen's eyes, Li Yongchang pondered for a moment and then spoke again. Suppose we now reduce the atmospheric temperature of the A1 plane through climate control satellites. While talking, Li Yongchang operated on the holographic projection. The next moment, the real-time holographic image of Dawn Star appeared in front of everyone. Among them, numerous small artillery SH. LS loaded with liquid nitrogen appeared in the sky over the A1 plane. The SH. LS rocket into the atmosphere and explode. Liquid nitrogen vaporizes rapidly and absorbs large amounts of heat from the atmosphere. Through this model, we can get the following more than a hundred possibilities. Theoretically, they are all possible, but we only need to look at the most likely ones. For example, first, 61.7%. The storm in the A1 area will attenuate, but it will cause the storm in the A2 area to intensify and the global storm formation time will be delayed by 37 hours. Second, 23.4%. The C5 regional storm intensified twice, becoming the new storm center, and the global storm formation time was delayed by 58 hours. Third, 10.9%. Lu Yongchan shrugged. The remaining ones are too unlikely to be considered and are generally not considered. A look of understanding appeared in Shen Siwen's eyes. He seemed to understand somewhat. Next, we will cool down the atmosphere in the A2 area. Quickly heat up the C1 area. Slowly and continuously heat up the E9 area. And drop a hydrogen bomb in the C8 area. On the Dawn Star model in front of them. Strange scenes appeared. A blue laser beam appeared in the sky above area C1. Over the E9 area. The satellite deployed an ultra-long distance microwave heating device. And began to continuously heat this part of the atmosphere. As for the C8 area. Huge mushroom clouds appeared. That was the scene of a giant hydrogen bomb exploding in the atmosphere of Dawn Star. After completing a series of operations, Lu Yongchang pressed the OK button. After a few seconds, the results came out. There is a 97.1% probability that the Dawn Star global storm will terminate, but it will form a super strong storm of about level 14 in the E3 area, with a wind speed of about 160 km per hour. Of course, if a small probability unexpected situation does occur, we must improve the plan in real time and make appropriate adjustments to the subsequent operations. Lu Yongchok pointed to the holographic projection in front of him with a slight smile on his face. This is just a preliminary simulation result in the office. If you want to continue to improve the probability, further calculations are needed. Zero is already doing this part of the work. Presumably, it won't be long before we can begin to precisely control Dawn Star's climate. For a long time, Shin Shunwen took his eyes back with difficulty. Professor. You really? Lu Yongchang waved his hand indifferently. Let's talk about flattery later. How is the draft of the circumplanetary climate control satellite network I gave you completed? Shen Shunwen quickly pointed to the holographic image in the distance. Professor, it's done. Making can begin at any time. A week later, a network of circumplanetary climate control satellites is finally complete. The entire Dawn Star is completely wrapped in a large network constructed of satellites. Lu Yongchang stood on the podium of the command center and pressed the virtual button in the holographic projection with a serious face. The first planetary climate control has begun. Under Zero's control, tens of thousands of satellites deployed their own weapon bays. 
aiming the various devices equipped inside at the reddish-brown planet below. Lasers, plasma bombs, hydrogen bombs, liquid nitrogen cooling bombs. These weapons are like rain, pouring towards Dawn Star. The storm clouds that originally covered more than 70% of Dawn Star quickly dissipated at a speed visible to the naked eye. The wind speed on the surface also began to decrease rapidly. A few hours later, the surface of Dawn Star returned to tranquility again. There was only one area where a strong storm gradually broke out. Chapter 414 Experiment Failed? Not at all. The scenes in the satellite images deeply shocked the hearts of all personnel in the command center. Except for some of the new generation born from Proxima Centauri. Most of the people present were the older generation of scientific researchers from Earth. The scenes that happened on Dawn Star deeply touched their hearts. If an old man with gray hair, his lips trembling slightly and his eyes filled with tears of excitement, murmured to himself, If humans had such means in the past, so many people would not have died when they fled. His words caused all the scientific researchers around him to fall into silence. Lu Yongchang clapped his hands gently. The crisp applause immediately attracted everyone's attention. Everyone be happy. The experiment was a complete success. Why are you so embarrassed? With a faint smile on his lips, Lu Yongchang said in a teasing tone. At this rate, when you master the technology to transform planets in the future, you still have to mourn for the original Earth? The humorous words instantly diluted the original gloomy atmosphere. For a moment, the air in the command center was filled with a happy atmosphere. Ding dong. A crisp reminder interrupted everyone's laughter. Lu Yongchang's eyes moved slightly and he turned his gaze to the holographic projection beside him. Zero's avatar slowly emerged. Professor, there is news from the biology shipboard laboratory. Zero's electronically synthesized voice sounded in the command center. There is a problem with the Magna Heart Enhancing Hormone Experiment. Currently, experimental mice have died on a large scale. The relaxed smile that had just appeared on Lu Yongchang's face gradually stagnated. Good. I'll be there right away. Da da da. There was a rush of footsteps in the aisle of the starship. Lu Yongchang looked solemn, frowned slightly, and hurried towards the biological shipborne laboratory. How so? His mind was filled with confusion. A few days ago, he took the time to read the experimental records of the biology laboratory. The vital signs of those mice injected with magna heart-strengthening hormone were not to mention how strong they were. The beating power of the heart far exceeds that of a normal white mouse. How so? Are these mice starting to die in large numbers? Is it a genetic problem? Thinking of this, Lu Yongchang's face tightened and he quickened his pace again. If it is really a genetic problem, then what they will face next may be a big and difficult trouble. Clatter! The rapid footsteps stopped, looking at the laboratory door slowly opening in front of him. Lu Yongchang took a deep breath, took steps again, and walked inside. There was chaos in the biology shipboard laboratory. Almost every researcher is busy with the task at hand. Obviously, the inexplicable death of the white mouse brought a certain amount of pressure to them. Professor. Next to him, Mao Jingji's voice came. What's going on? Lu Yongchang asked urgently as he walked towards the experimental platform not far away. The autopsy is still being carried out, and the specific cause has not yet been found. Mao Jingji paused. But, but what? Lu Yongchang stopped, frowned and looked at Mao Jingji beside him. If you have anything to say, say it quickly. Don't hide it. Mao Jingji smiled bitterly and touched the tip of his nose. However, according to preliminary test results, these mice all have a certain degree of internal bleeding. Internal bleeding? Lu Yongchang was stunned and instantly realized a problem. Is the heart muscle strength too high? Mao Jingji nodded hesitantly. I also suspect this is the reason. However, the autopsy results have not yet come out, and there is not enough evidence. Lu Yongchang nodded, said nothing and walked towards the experimental table again. In front of the experimental bench is an observation room separated by thick glass. In the observation room, each white mouse was imprisoned in a special glass cage. Among them, most of the glass cages are empty. Needless to say, these mice in glass cages have probably dedicated their lives to the advancement of science. Lu Yongchan looked at the white mouse in one of the glass cages with a sullen face. The white mouse lay quietly at the bottom of the glass cage its mouth slightly open. Breathing rapidly, the holographic projection on the side shows the real-time physical condition of the mouse. The numbers on the indicator glowed slightly red. The heart rate is slightly faster. The blood pressure is slightly higher than the standard. And the breathing rate is too high. Next moment, without any warning, the mouse froze up. Its blood pressure dropped rapidly. 
and its heart rate also began to decrease sharply. It only takes a few seconds. It's dead. Under Zero's control. The robot hand skillfully picked up the mouse in the glass cage and began to deal with the aftermath. Professor, the autopsy results are out. Mao Xingji's soft cry interrupted Lu Yongcheng's observation. Major aortic hemorrhage. Lu Yongcheng looked at the holographic image in front of him and raised his eyebrows slightly. It seems that the answer is already obvious. He could even imagine the death of these mice. The powerful hard muscles beat continuously, pumping streams of extremely hot blood into the aorta. But under the influence of heart-strengthening hormones, the beating force of these hearts clearly exceeds the endurance limit of the aorta. The surging blood broke through the fragile aorta wall, and gurgling blood spurted out of the body, quickly taking away the life of the mouse. Yes, it's a heart problem. Mao Jingji's eyes were full of complexity. The effect of Magna's heart-strengthening hormone seems to be beyond our imagination. Once the reason is found, the next research direction will be clear. We need to weaken the heart-enhancing hormone so that it works in mice. As soon as Mao Jingji finished speaking, Lu Yongchang shook his head. Wrong. Think differently. This shouldn't be a question of the mouse's heart or Magna's heart-enhancing hormone. Ah? Uh? Mao Jingji looked at Lu Yongchang in astonishment. It's a problem with the blood vessels of the mice. Lu Yongchang said softly. Magna's heart-enhancing hormone gave perfect performance. But this performance is not what the mouse's current body can bear. Mao Jingji's expression became strange. Although this makes sense, there is nothing wrong with it. But, it always sounds like a weird gangster thing. So, Mao Jingji cast a questioning look. So, Lu Yongchang raised the corner of his mouth and said softly, In my opinion, this experiment not only did not fail, but also achieved considerable success. It's just that we need to make simple adjustments to the experimental sequence next. Prepare all the strengthening hormones first. Then, inject all the hormones at once to fully strengthen the body of the mouse. Chapter 415 Successful Expression of Visceral Omentum Gene Lu Yongchang's proposal shocked Mao Jingji. But, shocking, shocking. He had to admit that although it was a bit simple and crude, this was the easiest experimental method to eliminate various negative situations. After all, the mouse's body is a whole. The strengthening of a single organization can easily cause a series of chain reactions. Like heart-strengthening hormones, the heart muscle is indeed greatly strengthened. But the blood vessels were not strengthened accordingly. The final result was that the aorta ruptured and the mouse died. Fortunately, this is what happened in mice. If in humans, Mao Jingji didn't even dare to think about that scene. So, after thinking for a moment, he nodded in agreement with Li Yongchang's proposal. With experience in preparing heart-strengthening hormones, the difficulty of preparing other types of hormones suddenly dropped by a notch. Therefore, Lu Yongchan continued the glorious tradition when he was on Earth. After handing over various tasks, he once again set his sights on another genetic engineering project, Magna Visceral Omentum Gene Implantation Project. Unlike hormone projects, the technical content of this project has been greatly improved. After all, they need to implant Magna's gene into an adult mouse and allow this gene to be perfectly expressed. Has the secondary compilation of the visceral omentum gene been completed? Lu Yongchang asked Mao Jingji while walking towards another experimental platform. It was just finished. Mao Jingji responded quickly. They are currently inspecting it. If nothing unexpected happens, the experiment can start immediately. Lu Yongchang nodded and quickened his pace again. Gene editing of individual adult mice is actually not difficult to achieve. As early as the Earth age, humans have initially mastered related technologies. CRISPR slash Cas gene editing system. CRISPR, a repetitive sequence in the genome of a prokaryotic organism. Viruses can integrate their genes into bacteria and use bacteria to complete gene replication. In the same way, in the face of virus invasion, bacteria have also evolved a system called CRISPR Cas9. This system can remove viral genes from the bacterial genome. This is an immune system unique to bacteria. Through research on the CRISPR Cas9 system, Humans have successfully mastered the CRISPR-slash-Cas gene editing system. Through this precise and cheap gene editing system, humans have initially achieved control over genes. Over time, as of today, this technology has become very mature. After completing a series of preparations, it can easily insert the target gene into the genome of the target organism. For example, a guinea pig. Another example is human beings. Of course, as of now, Human gene editing technology is still a restricted area of science and technology. In other words, they currently cannot use this technology on humans. But this does not prevent the experiment from proceeding. After all, the current experimental subjects are mice. 
As for what to do after the experiment is successful, Lu Yongchang has already made preparations. First, he needs to submit the proposal to the Academy of Sciences and the People's Assembly in order to ensure the safety of human civilization. This, forbidden, level of technology requires not only the permission of the Academy of Sciences, but also the consent of the Parliament. Even, when necessary, a referendum for all mankind will be held to vote. Of course, as the chief scientist, he is confident of gaining the support of the Academy of Sciences. Only, as for the Parliament, it depends on Hong Qiming's ability. Professor, all preparations have been completed. Mao Jingzi's voice interrupted Lu Yongchang's thoughts. He shook his head, throwing away some of the worries in his mind. The experiment hasn't been successful yet. So what's the use of worrying about it? Under the gaze of everyone, Tubes of silvery white nanorobots were slowly injected into the bodies of experimental mice. These hundreds of little white mice obviously don't know what's going into their bodies. After breaking free from the shackles of the robot hand, they ran to a corner of the glass cage and used food to relieve their panic. Under Zero's control, these nanorobots began their invasion behavior as soon as they entered the blood vessels. They find the epithelial tissue and connective tissue of the target organ and inject the magna visceral omentum gene carried inside into each cell. Under the action of the CRISPR slash Cas gene editing system, these foreign genes were integrated into the genome of the mice without anyone noticing. Next is the process of waiting for the visceral omentum gene to take effect. Hopefully it will work out. Mao Jingji on the side stared at the white mouse in the glass cage and murmured to himself. A few days later, as soon as Lu Yongchan entered the door of the laboratory, he heard a burst of cheers. Professor! Success! Mao Jingji excitedly ran to Lu Yongchan reached out and held his hands tightly, shook them vigorously and said, Professor, we succeeded? Lu Yongchang was stunned for a moment, then reacted. There was a hint of joy in his eyes. Is the visceral omentum gene successfully expressed? Mao Xingji nodded repeatedly and reached out to turn on the holographic projector on the side. Just now, we made a small incision in the abdomen of a white mouse and made a simple observation with the help of an endoscope. This is what the endoscope sees. As he finished speaking, a red and white image appeared in front of him. The red ones are naturally the slowly squirming internal organs of the mice. Judging from the shape, it should be its intestines, different from the normal smooth-looking intestine. The outer skin of this mouse's intestine is covered with light white meridian-like substances. These meridian-like substances are connected to each other to form a complete omentum, which perfectly wraps the intestinal tissue of the mice. This scene is exactly the same as the anatomy diagram of Magna's internal organs in the Proxima Centauri civilization information. However, the meridian-like substances on the surface of Magna's internal organs are thicker and more obvious. Considering the size of the mice, this slight difference is acceptable. How is the health of the mouse? Lu Yongchang suppressed the excitement in his heart and asked in a deep voice. Compared with the successful expression of genes, he is more concerned about the physical condition of these mice. If this gene causes abnormalities in the body of the mice, then this is obviously not a successful experiment. So far, no obvious abnormalities have been found. Mao Jingji's face turned slightly red as he spoke word by word. Chapter 416 7.1 G Equivalent Gravity Lu Yongchang's originally calm expression showed some fluctuations because of Mao Jingji's words. His physical condition has not changed yet. Although the observation time is not long. Only a few hours at best. But it's a good sign. His eyes flashed with excitement. And his speaking speed increased slightly. How does it perform in a high gravity environment? Has the capacity of the internal organs increased? Guinea pig! Listening to this series of questions, Mao Jingji couldn't help but smile bitterly. He shook his head and spread his hands helplessly. Professor, we haven't had time to conduct the experiment yet. Lu Yongchan looked suffocated and smiled to cover up his embarrassment. He seemed to be in a bit of a hurry. Cough! He coughed slightly. Then what are you waiting for? Be prepared. If all indicators are normal, start the gravity chamber test immediately. Three hours later, the mice completed various physical examinations. After confirming that the newly grown visceral omentum did not affect their physical condition, Lu Yongchan gave the order to start the experiment. In the glass cage, the mechanical hand that had been silent for a long time began to work again. A few minutes later, more than a hundred mice were sent into a small gravity chamber. Compared with the standard gravity cabin used by humans, the small gravity cabin has almost no difference in other parts except that it is smaller in size. In fact, due to the reduced size, the performance of the small gravity cabin is far better than that of the standard gravity cabin its maximum equivalent gravity can even reach a huge 10G. 
in the holographic projection. The mice that were put into the small gravity chamber were extremely panicked. Obviously, the manipulator and this new environment just now put them under tremendous pressure. They are carefully placed near the ground of the gravity chamber by robotic arms. But because the gravity cabin has not yet started, the gravity cabin at this time is the same zero gravity environment as in the laboratory. These mice instinctively try to pull their paws and move their bodies to the corners of the gravity chamber. But can a huge gravity chamber be the same as a small glass cage? In the blink of an eye, several white mice good at seeking death floated up from near the ground. Looking at the picture in the holographic projection, Lu Yong Chan gave instructions to Zero with black lines on his head. Zero, press these mice on the ground and activate the gravity cabin immediately. Try 1G equivalent gravity first. Receive. As Zero's words fell, the mechanical hand that had been retracted stretched out again, pressing the white mice floating in the air with their claws flapping randomly back to the ground. The next moment, the gravity chamber started. The equivalent gravity increases rapidly from 0.1g to 1.0g. That is the Earth's standard gravity. The mice, who had never experienced gravity since the moment they were born, were completely unfamiliar with this sensation. They lay on the ground, their bodies trembling slightly, their wet noses twitching rapidly, trying to find the source of this abnormal situation. It was obvious that everything was in vain. Lu Yongchan quickly turned his attention to the vital sign monitoring screen aside. How is your physical condition? Through the miniature camera placed in the abdominal cavity of the mouse in advance, Lu Yongchan could clearly see the squirming internal organs of the mouse under the equivalent gravity of 1G. The picture is slightly different from the zero-gravity environment. But what is certain is that there are no abnormalities in the internal organs wrapped in layers of visceral momentum. Currently, all vital signs are normal, Mao Jingji said after pondering for a moment. We can continue to increase the equivalent gravity. Lu Yongchan nodded. Zero, directly increased to 2G equivalent gravity. Driven by the motor, the rotation speed of the gravity chamber began to increase rapidly. There is almost no buffer time. And the equivalent gravity in the small gravity chamber has reached 2G. It's not that Lu Yongchan didn't give these mice time to adapt but that the relatively rough test could better test the protective effect of the visceral momentum on the internal organs. The rapid increase in equivalent gravity intensified the panic of the mice, but the equivalent gravity of 2G pinned these weak mice, who were born in a zero-gravity environment, to the ground. Although they can still complete some movements with the help of their underdeveloped muscle limbs, their overall flexibility is not as good as before. Within the camera screen, the role of the visceral momentum is already emerging. Even in a 2G gravity environment, the internal organs in the abdominal cavities of these mice only experience slight deformations. The light white meridian-like momentum is like a huge mesh bag, holding these internal organs in it. Lu Yongchan glanced at the vital sign monitoring data on the side and said calmly, Continue to increase. 3G equivalent gravity. 10 minutes later. Small gravity cabin equivalent gravity. 5G. A line of light red text flashed slowly in the holographic projection. Under the 5G gravity environment, these mice were firmly pressed to the surface of the gravity chamber and could no longer move. Lu Yongchan quickly looked at the abdominal image on the side. The internal organs were greatly deformed. However, under the protection of the visceral momentum, no visible damage was found on the surface of the mice's internal organs. Professor, do you need more? Mao Xingji looked at the vital sign data in front of him with some worry. Continuing to increase the equivalent gravity may be life-threatening. Due to their growth environment, their tolerance to high gravity is much lower than that of normal growing mice. Lu Yongchang pondered for a moment. First take out 80% of the mice, and then continue to increase the equivalent gravity. I need to know the ultimate endurance capacity of the visceral momentum. Hearing this, Mao Xingji couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief. These hundreds of genetically modified mice are all treasures. Not to mention all dead. Even if one died, he would feel distressed for most of the day. Good, he said hurriedly. After taking out most of the mice, the remaining, lucky ones, face the ultimate test. However, compared with the original, the growth rate of equivalent gravity at this time has obviously slowed down a lot. 5.1g. 5.2g. Finally, as the last mouse's internal organs ruptured, the equivalent gravity figure stopped at 7.1g. The gravity cabin slowly stopped, and Zero controlled the mechanical hands to clean up the remaining blood and internal organs in the gravity cabin in an orderly manner. The average endurance limit is 6.7G. Lu Yongchang looked at the statistics just generated and nodded thoughtfully. There is quite a bit of progress. Yes. Mao Xingji responded while integrating the data in front of him. If you give them some time to adapt, 
maybe they will perform better. In general, this genetic modification experiment is considered a success. Chapter 417 Humans Need to Evolve Be careful. Pay close attention to the physical condition of these mice. Lu Yongchang warned with some worry. Then continued to increase the number of experimental samples to ensure that there is no conflict between the visceral omentum gene and the mouse genome. After confirming that there are no abnormal reactions, the experimental subjects will be changed to monkeys and chimpanzees. Mao Xingji nodded repeatedly. Don't worry, Professor. You don't have to worry about such little things. I know it well. Lu Yongchan chuckled and stood up from his chair. Next, I have to go to the parliament. Mao Xingji's expression moved slightly, and he stopped what he was doing. He raised his head and turned his gaze to Lu Yongchan, who had a relaxed expression on his face. Human experiments? Mao Xingji spoke out four Chinese characters with a complicated expression. Lu Yongchang nodded seriously. You have to prepare in advance. As long as all animal experiments pass, we will have to consider genetic modification of humans. Is it too fast? Mao Xingji's expression became increasingly complicated. His eyes were full of confusion. And he murmured to himself. This thing is a point of no return. Lu Yongchang fell into silence. How could he not know this truth? But the current human race is too weak. If you want to survive in a dangerous universe, you must give up something. Unhappy. Lu Yongchang spoke firmly and whispered softly. Human beings need to evolve. Lu Yongchang walked alone in the Isle of Earth. The click click sound of the electromagnetic boots is particularly clear. The door in the distance opened quietly. Lu Yongchang calmed down, took a deep breath, and walked toward the open door. Sitting next to the huge conference table was a famous congressman. Hong Chiming sat on the main seat and looked quietly at Li Yongchang, who had just walked into the door. Professor Lu, Hong Chiming said seriously, You are late. The meeting should have started five minutes ago. Li Yongchang nodded absently, walked to his own seat, and sat down. Um? Hong Chiming frowned slightly, and the expression on his face became more solemn. Until now, he still doesn't know the reason why Li Yongchang applied to convene an extraordinary meeting of the People's League counselors. Lu Yongchang's performance at this time made him feel a little uneasy. Could it be? What crisis happened again? Hong Chiming frowned slightly and thought carefully. Dawnstar Climate Control System? Didn't news come out some time ago that the global storm has been completely controlled? While thinking in his heart, he stretched out his hand and made a gesture. The conference room door behind Lu Yongchang quickly closed. I declare. Hong Chiming glanced at the people around him. The 76th Extraordinary Meeting of the People's Federation begins now. After speaking, he turned his gaze to Lu Yongchang, who was standing aside. Lu Yongchang sat quietly on the chair and did not make any reaction. Time passed by, and there was slight discussion in the conference room. Hong Chiming coughed, tapped the conference table in front of him with his knuckles, and reminded him again. Professor Lu, if you have any proposals, please put them forward as soon as possible. Lu Yongchang reached out to unlock the electromagnetic adsorption device on the seat, stood up, looked around, and said in a deep voice, I apply to lift the restrictions on human genetic modification. There was an uproar in the conference room. No! A hot-tempered congressman shouted loudly. Human genetic modification is a scientific research direction that is expressly prohibited. Yes, this thing has a huge impact. Almost every congressman voiced his or her own objections. Quiet! Hong Chiming patted the conference table hard and shouted in a low voice. When the conference room became quiet again, he asked, Why? Professor Liu, as the chief scientist, you should know that human genetic modification has always been a sensitive technology. Liu Yongchang did not explain immediately, but reached out and turned on the holographic projection generator on the side. In the holographic projection, a series of experimental data from the biological laboratory appeared. This, Hong Chiming frowned and looked at the complicated numbers and charts in confusion. Let me explain briefly. Lu Yongchang stretched out his hand to drag the holographic projection and said softly, Everyone should know that due to gravity. Currently, personnel landing on Dawn Star need to wear exoskeleton armor and enter the medical cabin regularly to repair organ damage. Hong Chiming didn't speak, but nodded slightly. Lu Yongchang said again, According to the current plan of the Academy of Sciences, Phonesy will be transformed into a planet-level defense fortress to resist possible interstellar wars. After the words fell, in the holographic projection, the surface of Light Guardian was quickly covered with cold steel, and countless forts stood on the bare surface, facing directly towards the vast universe outside the Dawn Star. 
there was a sound of cold air in the conference room. Obviously, this spectacular plan shocked every congressman present. And the place where humans live will be this dawn star with a gravity as high as 1.9 g. Huge hemispherical enclosed cities quickly appeared on the originally desolate surface of dawn star. By then, all humans will live on dawn star, Li Yongchang said in a heavy tone. However, judging from the current situation, humans can only survive on dawn star by relying on exoskeletons and medical cabins. Do you like this kind of life? Hong Chiming's face was gloomy, and he shook his head subconsciously. No one likes this kind of restricted life. Next, let me briefly introduce to you the results of the biological laboratory. More than 10 minutes later, Lu Yongchang stopped his introduction and said in a firm tone, Everyone, in order to survive in the universe, humans need to evolve. Currently, we have almost complete control over the human genome. Controllable genetic modification has all the benefits and no harm. The rules from hundreds of years ago, in my opinion, should be invalidated. This time, the opposition stance of the MPs was obviously much weaker. On the one hand, it takes into account the way of life of human beings in the future. On the other hand, they were shocked by the scientific research results given by Liu Yongchang. Unheard of visceral momentum system. All around physical enhancement. Although many congressmen are interested in such technology, there are still many conservative congressmen who are firmly opposed to this radical proposal. Hong Qiming listened to the arguments of the people around him and glanced at Liu Yongchang. After seeing Liu Yongchang's determined look, he made his choice. Hong Qiming knocked on the table and said softly, I think Professor Liu is right. Human beings moving towards the universe really need to start a new evolution. Chapter 418 Regulations on Genetic Modification of Human Civilization Hong Qiming's words were like a signal, quickly suppressing the discussions among the members of the House of Representatives. The originally noisy conference room suddenly became much quieter. Several members of Congress, who had the loudest objections, looked at each other and stopped their objections. Seeing this, Liu Yongchang raised his eyebrows slightly. It seems that Hong Qiming has done a lot in the parliament during this period. At least, this prestige is much greater than when he first took office. Although to some extent, this phenomenon is not a good thing. The concentration of power is bound to have some negative consequences. However, at a time when human civilization has not completely escaped from the existential crisis, a certain degree of centralization of power is actually of great benefit to human civilization. Hong Qiming glanced around with a solemn expression seemingly seeing the hesitation on the faces of many members. He said in a deep voice, Everyone, if you have any objections, please feel free to raise them. This is Parliament, not my words. After hearing this, many conservative congressmen cheered up a little. Senior Speaker, I think there is something wrong with Professor Liu's proposal. A gray-haired congressman spoke first. Hong Chiming showed no unusual expression on his face. Congressman Antonio, tell me what you think. Antonio reached out to untie the electromagnetic adsorption device, stood up and looked at Li Yongchang beside him. Professor Liu, will there be any unexpected problems with the genetic modification technology? If an unexpected situation occurs, can the Academy of Sciences solve it? Li Yongchang pondered for a moment. Thanks to the biotechnology of the Proxima Centauri. Today, the Academy of Sciences research at the human genetic level has far exceeded what it used to be. But humans are complex individuals after all. There will be no unexpected events in the genetic modification project. Even now, I cannot make such a guarantee. After the words fell, the conference room became chaotic again. Even Hong Chiming glanced at Lu Yongchang in surprise. Then, Antonio said eagerly. Lu Yongchang chuckled. Listen to me first. Maybe you misunderstood what I meant. Like hibernating, it's not guaranteed to work for everyone. Magna's visceral momentum gene may not be suitable for all humans. The gray-haired congressman Antonio suddenly realized. I probably understand what you mean. Do you think the risks of this technology are controllable? Lu Yongchan naturally nodded in agreement without hesitation. Are you kidding? The risk is uncontrollable. What kind of research is he doing? To be on the safe side, he even took a look at the technology tree system in advance, fearing that he would accidentally click on some dangerous technology. In order to ensure the overall safety of mankind, Lu Yongchan said again, the Academy of Sciences will conduct a series of rigorous biological experiments next. Only after the experimental results are qualified, the promotion of genetic modification technology will begin. At that time, humans will be divided into 10 batches, which will be genetically modified one after another and land on Dawn Star to start a new life. 
The time span of the entire renovation project is tentatively set at 100 years. I believe this can greatly control the potential risks of genetic engineering. I have no problem. Antonio nodded thoughtfully and sat back in his seat. Ong Chiming's voice sounded again. Does any member have any questions? Professor Liu. I have another question. A young conservative congressman asked. Will this technology affect human genetics? The moment the question was raised, not only the member of the House of Representatives, but also Hong Chiming's expression became solemn. Genetic inheritance is the biggest issue that needs to be considered in human genetic modification projects. The reason is simple. If an individual is genetically modified, even if an unexpected situation occurs, it will only affect one or several generations at best. Humanity still has a chance to survive. But if the genetics is changed, what it affects is the entire human civilization. If you are not careful, humankind will fall into a crisis of extinction. As chief scientist, I can assure members of Congress that this is the case. Liu Yongchang nodded solemnly. The Academy of Sciences will not use it for human experiments without confirming whether it has an impact on genetic genes. Not just now, but also in the future. The Academy of Sciences will never use genetic modification technology on human genes. After the young conservative congressman looked at Liu Yongchang for a moment, he nodded slowly. I hope so. Do you still have any questions? Hong Chiming waited for a moment and asked again. When no one responded, he took a deep breath and reached out to press the button in front of him. Since there is no doubt, let's start the voting process. After Hong Chiming took the lead to vote in favor, there was no suspense in the voting process. The human genetic modification proposal was successfully supported by the People's Congress with 81.7% of the votes in favor. But the meeting wasn't over. Compared with human cloning technology, genetic modification technology is not a truly dangerous technology. The reason is simple. Once human cloning technology appears and is widely used, the ultimate outcome of civilization will inevitably be its demise. However, genetic modification technology will not necessarily lead to the destruction of human civilization. On the contrary, after adding various shackles to it, genetic modification technology can completely lead human civilization to a higher level. Therefore, after the genetic modification proposal was passed, after hours of discussion, Parliament added several restrictions to the Human Genetic Modification Bill. Regulations on Genetic Modification of Human Civilization 1. Human genetic modification technology must not be used to modify human genetic genes. 2. The Human Genetic Modification Project adopts a voluntary principle. No one may force individuals to undergo genetic modification. 3. Human genetic modification technology can only be used on adult individuals. Before genetic modification, germ cells must be sampled and preserved. The above three major regulations are jointly supervised by the People's Federation Academy of Sciences and the People's Federation Council. Any violation will be punished as a crime against humanity. Crimes against humanity, for bright red characters, were deeply engraved on the document, alerting everyone present. The first two regulations were proposed by members of Congress. But the third regulation was added by Liu Yongchang himself. Although there is a guarantee under the first regulation, genetic modification will not cause pollution to human reproductive genes. However, to be on the safe side, each adult individual needs to preserve his or her own reproductive cells before undergoing genetic modification. In this way, even if there is a huge crisis at the genetic level in the future, human civilization can quickly recover by relying on artificial womb technology. In this way, the harm of genetic modification technology is minimized. Chapter 419, The White Mouse That Starved to Death The conference room door slowly closed. Liu Yongchang stood at the door and took a deep breath. His eyes were full of exhaustion. These several hours of meetings felt more tiring than completing the planetary climate chaos model. But as the chief scientist, he couldn't refuse this kind of thing. Behind him, the conference room door opened again. What? Hong Chiming's voice came from beside him. Are you tired? Liu Yongchang smiled bitterly and said nothing. Seeing this, Hong Chiming reached out and patted his shoulder gently. That's what the parliament is like. Used to it. President, if this vote fails, Liu Yongchang asked softly. Don't worry. As long as I'm here, there won't be any problems in the parliament. Hong Chiming interrupted Liu Yongchang's words calmly. The voice is very soft, but there is great confidence in it. Liu Yongchang turned to look at Hong Chiming who is much more stable than before. At this moment, he seemed to see the figure of the old council president. There was emotion in his eyes, and he was about to say something, when Zero's avatar appeared next to him. 
Professor. There is news from the biology laboratory. Magna body strengthening hormone has been fully prepared. You can start biological experiments at any time. Next to him. Hong Chiming's chuckle came. Go ahead. Your time shouldn't be wasted here. Shipboard Biological Laboratory. Lu Yong Chan stood in front of the experimental table and watched the movements of the robot hand. The white mouse that fled in a hurry was easily caught in the palm of the robot's hand. Then, a slender needle protruded from the fingers of the robot hand. After a little aiming, the needle accurately penetrated the mouse's vein. The fully equipped magna body enhancing hormone was continuously fed into the bodies of the mice. More than 10 seconds later, the needle slowly withdraws. The guinea pig regains its freedom. Just like before, they pull their limbs and use strength on the glass cage to stay as far away from the robot hand as possible. How long will it take for it to take effect? Lu Yongchang turned to look at Mao Xingji and asked softly. Mao Xingji thought for a moment and gave the answer. About 10 hours. After 10 hours, the physical condition of these mice should have undergone major changes. The muscle fibers throughout the body are thicker and the blood vessel walls are thickened. Mao Xingji joked with a relaxed expression. Generally speaking, under the influence of Magna's body strengthening hormone, these mice will become the first batch of Superman mice. Lu Yongcha chuckled. How long will it take to completely complete the body strengthening? It may take a little longer. Mao Xingji frowned. Because there is no experimental data, we cannot give an accurate answer, but the approximate time should be about 10 days. He shrugged. After all, muscle growth also takes time. Right? Lu Yongchan nodded to express his understanding. Let's rest first. In 10 hours, we will come back to see these mice. Hopefully, they can bring us some surprises. Inside the office, Lu Yongchan took off his electromagnetic boots, got into the sleeping bag skillfully, and reached out to turn on the electromagnetic absorption switch on the side of the sleeping bag. Clatter. A clear voice sounded. The sleeping bag was firmly attached to a raised surface. This is his bed. Very simple, yet very practical. In order to ensure the progress of various researches, not only him, but almost all academicians adopt this sleeping method. Just fell asleep not long ago. He was awakened by a piercing siren. He opened his eyes reflexively and turned to look at the holographic projection beside the bed. Zero. What's going on? Professor. The experimental rat's physical condition is abnormal. Ling reports in concise words. Hearing this, Lu Yongchang's expression changed slightly, and he struggled to get out of the sleeping bag. How long have I been asleep? Four hours and 31 minutes. Professor. Lu Yongchang's expression became serious again. Four hours and 31 minutes. That means that after being injected with magna body enhancing hormone, the mice developed abnormalities only five hours later. Although it is not clear what the reason was, this result was obviously beyond expectations and made Lu Yongchang's heart twitch. Have you notified Mao Xingji? He asked while getting dressed. Zero. All academicians have been notified. At present, academician Mao Xingji has arrived at the biological laboratory. Li Yongchang sped up his movements. Okay. Tell Mao Xingji. I will be there soon. The door to the biology laboratory opens. What happened? As soon as he walked through the gate, Lu Yongchang grabbed a passing scientific researcher and asked loudly, Where is Mao Xingji? Academician Mao is over there at the experimental table. The young researcher who was grabbed saw Lu Yongchang and said hurriedly, Some of the mice have died, and Academician Mao and the others are looking for the reason. Lu Yongchang's expression darkened. He let go of his hand and strode towards the experimental platform. Death occurred so quickly. This is not good news. In front of the experimental table, Mao Xingji and several Academicians looked solemnly at the holographic projection in front of them. Hearing the footsteps coming from behind, Mao Xingji quickly looked back. Professor Lu, you are here. Lu Yongchang asked bluntly. Have you found any reason? Mao Xingji nodded strangely. I just found out the reason. Side effects of hormones? Lu Yongchang quickly walked to the holographic projection and looked at the autopsy report. No. Mao Xingji shook his head and said hesitantly. It's extremely severe malnutrition. In layman's terms, they starve to death. Lu Yongchang paused suddenly, and then looked at Mao Jingji in shock. Starved to death? Is there something wrong with the food supply system? Or did you not prepare enough nutritious food? Faced with the accusation, Mao Jingji shook his head repeatedly. No, no, no. When we first injected heart-strengthening hormones, we found that the food intake of the mice would increase rapidly after the hormone was injected. Therefore, 
we specially prepared several times the amount of highly nutritious food before injecting systemic strengthening hormones. But, Mao Jingji pointed to the observation room not far away. When they had the accident, they did not eat the highly nutritious food we prepared. We even found a lot of food residue in the stomachs of dead mice. You mean? Lu Yongchang suddenly realized the problem. The mouse's digestive system has no time to complete digestion and absorption? I think this is the only possibility. Mao Jingji spread his hands helplessly. Lu Yongchang walked towards the observation room dumbfounded. No one could have imagined that the experiment would fail for this reason. Looking at the dying mice in the glass cage, he sighed softly. Get ready for the next experiment. This time, Lu Yongcha paused. Use the medical cabin to directly inject high concentration nutrient solution. Chapter 420 Normal Survival Limit 3.5G Equivalent Gravity Regarding Lu Yongchang's request, Mao Jingji naturally nodded in agreement. According to the situation of the first experiment, direct injection of high concentration nutrient solution is undoubtedly the best choice. Especially in the medical bay. Medical nanorobots can monitor the physical condition of each mouse in real time and accurately deliver nutrients to target areas to ensure adequate nutrient supply for each organ. Although the cost is several times higher than before, it can undoubtedly ensure the survival rate of the mice. As for the issue of cost control after this technology comes out of the laboratory, that is not within Lu Yongchang's consideration. Two weeks later, Lu Yongchang frowned slightly and stared at the more than 10 holographic projections in front of him. In the holographic projection, there are images inside the cabins of each small gravity cabin. This is the second gravity chamber experiment. Different from the first gravity chamber experiment. The subjects of this experiment were a group of mice whose bodies had been fully strengthened. Yes, as early as a week ago, the Magna Body Strengthening Hormone Experiment was successful. The combination of the medical cabin and high concentration nutrient solution perfectly meets the physical needs of these energy consumers. Of course, in order to keep these mice safely in the medical cabin and receive reinforcement. Lu Yongchan directly gave them sedatives. Then, during a week of slumber, these mice's bodies were strengthened in all aspects. After various inspections and tests, the comprehensive physical fitness of these enhanced mice is more than double that of normal mice. Then, these lucky ones were forced to accept the next experiment genetic modification of Magna's visceral momentum. After the two transformations were completed, these mice became the ideal experimental subjects in Lu Yongchang's mind. Let's start the second gravity chamber test. At that time, Lu Yongchang's eyes were full of smiles. I believe they can definitely adapt to life in a high gravity environment. In Lu Yongchang's view, the results of the first gravity chamber experiment were not perfect enough. On the one hand, the experimental subjects only completed genetic modification of the visceral momentum. This leads to a phenomenon. In a high gravity environment, the cause of death of many mice is not internal rupture. Although the death time and circumstances of each mouse are different, the cause of death is still similar. First, in a high-gravity environment, the mouse's heart lacks blood supply capacity, resulting in brain hypoxia. Second, the high gravity caused a large number of capillaries in the mice to rupture, eventually causing widespread bleeding. Although there are other causes of death, these two conditions are the autopsy results of the vast majority of dead mice. On the other hand, in order to test the internal organs of the modified mice as quickly as possible. Lu Yongchan accelerated the gravity lift of the gravity chamber. The experimental data obtained in this way are not consistent with the future living environment of human beings. In simple terms, the first experiment only obtained the highest endurance capacity of the visceral momentum, but ignored its performance in a long-term high-gravity environment. The latter is precisely the most important data in this experiment. Even normal humans can withstand equivalent gravity exceeding 5G in a short period of time. If you lie flat and take various protective measures, ordinary people can withstand more than 10G of gravity in a short period of time. But if the time is extended, various joints and even organs in the human body will be severely damaged due to the huge gravity. The end result is, of course, death. Because of the above two factors, Lu Yongchang ordered the second gravity chamber experiment to be started. The second experiment was larger. In order to make the experimental results more consistent with the real situation, all the mice were divided into more than 10 groups and placed in different small gravity chambers. The equivalent gravity of the small gravity cabin is evenly distributed in the range of 2G to 5G. The entire experiment lasted for one week. Now, the second gravity chamber experiment has come to an end. The mice in the holographic projection will soon regain their freedom. Of course, the mice behave completely differently in different gravity chambers. 
in the gravity chamber with an equivalent gravity of 2G. The mice were in good spirits. Run, jump, just like living on Earth. Such a scene is undoubtedly what Li Yongchang wants to see the most. As the equivalent gravity increases, the mental condition of the mice gradually deteriorates. Even in the gravity chamber with an equivalent gravity of 5G, the mice lay motionless on the ground. Only the slight rise and fall of their chests proves that they are still alive. Prepare to stop the gravity chamber. After observing for a moment, Lu Yongchang issued an order. After the gravity chamber stops operating, check the physical condition of each mouse immediately. Mao Jingji on the side nodded quickly, and the look on his face became more solemn. The fruits of labor in the biology laboratory during this period are about to be tested. The rotation speed of the gravity chamber slowly decreased. The mice that were originally on the ground floated into the air involuntarily. Perhaps because they are accustomed to the gravity environment. They were particularly unfamiliar with the zero-gravity environment at first. The mice living in the 2G gravity chamber were the first to recover and remember their original lifestyle. They pull on surrounding objects to maintain their balance as much as possible. Time passed by minute by minute. The mice that withstood the equivalent gravity of more than 4G still did not move at all. Seeing this, Lu Yongchang frowned slightly. Let's take a look at the physical condition of these mice first. As soon as the words fell, the big mechanical hand quickly grabbed them and grabbed them out of the gravity chamber. To save time, they were thrown directly into the medical bay. Silver-white nanorobots were injected into their bodies. A new holographic projection quickly unfolded. The brain was severely damaged and I was blind. Lu Yongchan looked at the data that appeared one by one in the holographic projection and murmured to himself. It seems that there is still a problem with the blood supply to the heart. On the side, Mao Xingji was not idle either. He and a group of scientific researchers quickly checked and counted the physical data of the remaining mice. Professor, look! He stretched out his hand and dragged the holographic projection aside. According to the current data, the internal organs of the mice that lived in a 3.6G equivalent gravity environment for a long time suffered some damage. Although it is not fatal, it is a real injury. If the testing time continues to be increased, the damage may become more severe. The equivalent gravity of 3.8G will cause slight deformation of their joints. Taken together, the survival limit of these mice should be within the equivalent gravity of 3.5G. Lu Yongchang glanced at the data dragged by Mao Xingji and nodded lightly. 3.5G is more than enough for Dawn Star. The next phase of the experiment will be left to you. Chapter 421 80 Year Promise Mao Xingji was not surprised at all by Lu Yongchang's words. He even relaxed a little. Is this familiar scene finally coming? Then, Professor, get ready. Mao Xingji asked curiously. Lu Yongchang glanced at Mao Xingji with a half smile. Have you forgotten the starship of the Rothor civilization that was captured earlier? I have to research magnetic field shield technology. Mao Xingji's expression suddenly became solemn. Excuse me, Professor. You are busy with your work. I won't worry about you in the biology laboratory. Lu Yongchang was amused by Mao Xingji's reaction. He smiled and shook his head. And while walking towards the laboratory door, he said, Remember to inform me before the human genetic modification project is implemented. Be careful. It is as important to human civilization as magnetic field shield technology. Looking at Lu Yongchang's back, Mao Xingji nodded solemnly. Immediately, he turned to look at the scientific researchers who were watching the show on the side. What are you doing standing still? Why don't you prepare for the next experiment soon? Who is that? Go and check whether there is any problem with the genetics of the mice. Professor, the appointed time has come. Zero's avatar suddenly appeared next to Lu Yongchang and reminded him softly. Promise? What agreement? Lu Yongchang frowned and asked subconsciously. The agreed communication time with the human civilization of Proxima Centauri. Zero quickly opened a holographic projection. It is October 13th. Earth calendar 2381. It's been exactly 80 years since the last communication. As agreed, the first communication will be initiated by the People's League. Of course, according to the agreement, you can postpone the communication for 20 years at your discretion. Zero reminded thoughtfully, looking at the recorded matters in the holographic projection. Lu Yongchang's eyes showed a sudden look. I remembered. After solving the Rothor civilization, he conducted a technical exchange with the human civilization of Proxima Centauri. How is the development of the social welfare system over at Proxima Centauri? Lu Yongchang asked Ling with great interest. I remember asking you to provide them with computing power support? Zero's avatar shook his head. Professor, according to the order at the time, 
I do not have permission to observe the internal development of human civilization on Proxima Centauri. In the process of promoting the public welfare system, I only provided computing power support. Is it necessary to lift the restrictions and observe human civilization on Proxima Centauri? Lu Yongchang waved his hand quickly. Forget it. I'll just ask myself later. Although he can let Zero peek into the development of human civilization on Proxima Centauri. However, he had already made a promise at that time. And as the chief scientist of the People's Federation, he would not do such a thing that would renege on his promise and ruin his character. However, Zero added again, Since 40 years ago, I have not received calculation requests from the human civilization of Proxima Centauri. Hearing this, Lu Yongchang raised his eyebrows sharply. 40 years ago, that is the year 2341. At that time, the human fleet should still be sailing. As for why Zero didn't remind him, it's quite normal. On the one hand, compared with the human fleet, the information priority of the human civilization of Proxima Centauri is not high, and it can even be said to be at the bottom. On the other hand, the disappearance of computing requests without clear help information is not necessarily a bad thing. Is it possible that humans on Proxima Centauri have completed this social change? Okay, I understand. Lu Yongchang quickened his pace and walked towards his office. A bad premonition arose in his heart. Zero, send a communication request to the human civilization on Proxima Centauri. Lu Yongchang sat behind his desk and said in a deep voice. Above the desk, the holographic projection quickly unfolded, sending communication request. A few minutes later, communication request failed. Professor, there is no answer. Zero's reminder came from the speaker on the side. Lu Yongchang's face turned ugly again. Could it be said that Ren Feng and the others failed? But even if the restructuring fails, it won't stop receiving communications. Right? Keep trying to connect. Lu Yongchang slowly closed his eyes, leaned on the back of the chair, and waited quietly. That line of faint words kept popping up in my mind. Communication request failed. He sighed softly. Eighty years. A dozen light years away. There are too many variables in the middle. No one knows what has happened to the other party in the past 80 years. This may be the ruthlessness of the universe. Ding dong. I don't know how long it took. But a clear reminder suddenly sounded in Li Yongchang's ears. Communication connection successful. Li Yongchang suddenly opened his eyes. With a bit of excitement in his eyes. Looking straight at the holographic image in front of him. The scene that caught his eye made him freeze on the spot. The background hasn't changed. And neither has the person. In the picture, there is still a pure white minimalist laboratory background. And there are still two people. Ren Feng and Zhang Zhengqing. What has changed is the temperament of the two of them. Eighty years ago, when they last communicated, Ren Feng and Zhang Zhengqing were full of vitality. Only eighty years later, both of them already have white hair and a gloomy aura all over their bodies. Li Yongchang opened his mouth, but did not say a word. Professor Lu, we meet again. Ren Feng smiled bitterly and was the first to say H, Lo. You? You? Lu Yongchang's pupils trembled slightly, and he asked in a serious tone. What happened? Why have you changed so much? Is there something wrong with life extension technology? At the first moment, Lu Yongchang thought of the improved longevity enzyme technology provided by Zhang Zhengqing. Zhang Zhengqing quickly shook his head. Professor, there is no problem with the longevity enzyme technology. Then you... Lu Yongchang already had a guess in his mind. Did the restructuring fail? Ren Feng took a deep breath, closed his eyes in pain, and nodded. Right. We failed. Currently, the human civilization population of Proxima Centauri is only one million. Lu Yongchang's pupils suddenly shrank. He put his hands on the desk in front of him, straightened up, and asked with a look of horror on his face. How could this happen? Even if the restructuring fails, it won't be at this point. Right. What happened in the past 80 years? One million people. Lu Yongchan never expected that the human civilization on Proxima Centauri would only have a population of one million. What does that mean? It means that this civilization has completely lost its development potential and has even reached the edge of extinction. Facing Lu Yongchan's questions, Ren Feng and Zhang Zhengqing lowered their heads. Silence. There was a long silence. Lu Yongchan didn't urge him. He just sat on the chair and waited quietly for the two people's reply. Chapter 422 Proxima 3 City Central Nursing Center Professor, after a long time, Ren Feng slowly raised his head and said with regret, Is my problem. I was too eager to get things done. After the words fell, before Li Yongchan could speak, 
Zhang Zhengqing, who was beside Ren Feng, suddenly raised his head and said repeatedly, No! 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 It's my problem! I am also responsible for how this matter develops! Seeing the two of them arguing over the blame in front of him, Lu Yongchang coughed quickly and interrupted the argument between the two. Ahem! One of you is the chief of the Proxima Academy of Science, and the other is the president of the Proxima People's Federation. Both of you must be responsible for the failure of the restructuring. So, don't rush to take the blame yet. It's meaningless. Lu Yongchang narrowed his eyes slightly and stared directly at the holographic projection in front of him. The most urgent task is to tell me what kind of event can reduce the population of human civilization on Proxima Centauri to such a small number. Is it a natural disaster or a man-made disaster? Is the technology itself defective? Or is it caused by the war? Lu Yongchun's words made the two people stop. Sharing the pot. A trace of sadness flashed in Renfeng's eyes. That's right. No matter how the pot is divided. As leaders of the parliament and the academy of sciences, both of them have inescapable responsibilities. Then, he took a deep breath and recounted in detail. Zhang Zhengqing on the side would add a few words from time to time. Earth calendar year 2340. The third city on the surface of Proxima Centauri. A piece of news is playing in every corner of the city streets. In the holographic screen, an announcer with a festive face spoke passionately in fluent and standard Mandarin. Warm congratulations on the great success of the restructuring of Proxima social public care system. According to the latest statistics, after more than 30 years of hard work, the population of Proxima Centauri has finally exceeded the 100 million mark. The 100 million Proxima human was born in the Central Nurturing Center in City 5. To commemorate this historic moment, Congressman Ren Feng will personally name this lucky girl. It really should be something to be excited about. After the implementation of the public welfare system, it took only 30 years for the population of Proxima Centauri to soar from about 3 million to the 100 million mark. It can be said that the problems that have troubled human civilization on Proxima Centauri for hundreds of years are solved at this moment. However, this news did not attract too many people's attention. Pedestrians on the street are still in a hurry, and few people stop for this. But, there are always exceptions to everything. Next to a holographic projection, a tall man stood there blankly, focusing on the holographic projection in front of him. Judging from the physical appearance, the man has reached adulthood, but judging from his temperament, he is just like an inexperienced kid. The man's name is Xuan Wenqing. And he is a public supporter who was born from an artificial womb. Speaking of which, the term publicly raised person is actually a contemptuous term relative to natural person. Unlike others, Xuan Wenqing looked at the holographic projection in front of him longingly. The camera switched and a familiar picture appeared in the holographic projection. Maybe others don't know. But as a public caregiver, Zhuang Wenqing naturally knows very well that what is in the picture is the city's central care center. That's where he was born and where he grew up. However, unlike the girl in the news, he was born in the Proxima Centauri City Central Fostering Center. He was not the so-called 100 millionth Proxima human being. And he did not enjoy the special treatment of being named by the council chairman himself. Just a few hours ago, he passed a series of tests and successfully left the area where he was born and raised. Only, Although he has undergone comprehensive socialization training, Shuang Wenqing still feels a little uncomfortable when he just walked out of the central care center. He frowned slightly. I always felt that some pedestrians on the road had a strange attitude towards him. Maybe it's because he is still wearing the uniform of the central child care center? He attributed the reason to his clothing. He vaguely remembered that during the socialization training, the teacher once said that people rely on clothes and Buddhas rely on gold. Clothing is something that everyone must pay attention to in society. He didn't quite understand it at the time. But now, after seeing the colorful world outside, he seemed to have a slight understanding of this knowledge point. Cut! Isn't it just a public parent who came out of an artificial womb and has no parents? Is it necessary to do so many stunts? Next to him, there was a slight curse. Zhuang Wenqing subconsciously turned his head and looked in the direction of the sound. He is a middle-aged man in a suit and tie. According to the teachings of the teachers in the socialization training course, Men dressed in this way generally have a higher social status. Except for a few special circumstances. Zhuang Wenqing frowned slightly and carefully recalled what the teacher said. He was carrying a briefcase and was walking in a hurry. The leather shoes under his feet were very old. It seems that the man in front of me falls into one of those special situations. What are you looking at? The man in a suit and ties turned his head sensitively, staring straight at Zhuang Wenqing with a pair of dead fish eyes. 
Zhuang Wenxing subconsciously took two steps back. This bad feeling I've never felt before is here again. Ai. He opened his mouth and tried to explain. Ha. Huh. The man in the suit sneered when he saw Zhuang Wenxing's clothes and said with absolute certainty, The cub just came out of the central breeding center. Right. Zhuang Wenxing frowned. Little cub. This word doesn't seem so polite. He took a deep breath and plucked up the courage to step forward. Sir, your words are very impolite. Please. The man in the suit let out a weird laugh. Ha! Huh. Another idiot from the foster care center. I said at that time, these public raised people who have no father or mother to teach them can do nothing but the most humble profession. As he spoke, he glanced at Zhuang Wenching with a mocking look, held his head high, and turned to leave. Zhuang Wenching wanted to step forward and stop the man who offended him. But the content of the last lesson came to mind. In my memory, the teacher in charge of the socialization training course said with a gentle face, After leaving the social care center, each of you will go through an adjustment period of several days, or even dozens of days. During this adaptation period, try to be tolerant of others as much as possible. Of course, you can report the unfair treatment you encountered to the city management center afterwards, and the city management center will help you. Think about it now. Those eyes and expressions should not fall into the category of gentleness. Perhaps, it should be more about mercy. Zhuang Wenqing clenched his fists hard and tried hard to swallow the gloomy air in his chest. Chapter 423 The Child Care Center Was Wrong In the holographic projection, the image data began to be replayed. The host once again announced the same news in a passionate tone. This time, Zhuang Wenqing withdrew his gaze. He cast his gaze towards the office building in the distance, his eyes gradually changing from confusion to determination. After leaving the care center, he can enjoy temporary housing for a month. In the temporary residence, he does not need to worry about food and drink. But after all, it was only a month's time limit. Within this month, he needs to find a job that suits him as soon as possible. As for those publicly supported people who have not found jobs, unless they encounter major changes, such as physical injuries such as disability. They will be driven away by the staff. There is no emotion at all. Those public servants who cannot find a job will be kicked out by the staff. After being kicked out, they will face a five-day final assessment. During the five-day assessment period, they will receive interviews from different units. Once they pass the interview, they are forced to go to that job whether they want to or not. As for the defective products that did not pass the assessment period, will be uniformly sent to the city management center, responsible for the dirtiest and most tiring jobs. The public servants, who have been reduced to this stage, will be dispatched to positions that no one cares about unless there are unexpected circumstances. For example, mining outside the city, for example, construction outside the city. For the human civilization of Proxima Centauri, the importance of these positions is self-evident. But because of the high risk involved, almost no normal person would consider such a job. At first glance, such a rule may seem a little impersonal, but it has to be said that it does a good job of avoiding the labor surplus scenario caused by a large number of births. It even allowed the human civilization of Proxima Centauri to enter a stage of rapid development. In front of the office building, Zhuang Wenqing subconsciously slowed down his pace. There was an uneasy look in his eyes. He stretched out his hand and wiped it vigorously on his clothes, then took steps towards the door of the office building. The door opens automatically. Welcome. An electronically synthesized female voice sounded automatically, and a robot slowly approached. Excuse me. Do you need anything? Hello. Zhuang Wenqing greeted the robot in front of him with a reserved look, and said why he was there. I'm here to apply for a job. A holographic projection quickly unfolded. Apply. Please go. The robot introduced the route with a slightly stiff electronic synthesized voice. Zhuang Wenqing nodded repeatedly, and tried his best to memorize the somewhat complicated route. The Human Resources Department. Zhuang Wenqing stopped and looked at the house number in front of him. With a bit of joy in his eyes, he reached out and wiped it on his clothes again. Then, there was a gentle knock on the door. Enter. A faint voice came from inside the door. Zhuang Wenqing opened the door softly and squeezed in through the crack in the door. A huge and exquisite desk comes into view. Behind the desk is a woman with a somewhat arrogant look. Beside the desk, there were several smiling women sitting. It seemed that they were chatting just now. Zhuang Wenqing, who noticed this, became more reserved. No, sorry to bother you. I'm here to apply. Um, the woman behind the desk raised her eyes 
and glanced at Zhuang Wenqing. Public supporter? Zhuang Wenqing looked stunned. I don't know why, but he has an instinctive aversion to this word. If, if you mean my place of birth, I was indeed born in the social care center of City 3, he said in a weak voice. Ah. The woman sneered and nodded. Yes, that's what I mean. Bring over your ID card and let me take a look at your resume. Upon hearing this, Zhuang Wenqing hurriedly took out a thin card from his pocket and handed it to the woman in front of him with both hands. That's his ID card. The most useful document in human society on Proxima Centauri. None of them. This card records every moment of his life from birth to the present. The education he received, the mistakes he made, and the commendations he received are all in this thin card. The woman took the card carelessly and placed it on the reader in front of her. The holographic projection unfolded quickly. One item of information appeared before the woman's eyes. Zhuang Wenqing subconsciously held his breath. He had never been so nervous since he was born. Not bad resume, the woman said in a calm tone. What kind of job do you want to do? Zhuang Wenqing happily reported the name of a position. The atmosphere was stagnant. The woman said nothing and looked at Zhuang Wenqing with extremely surprised and strange eyes. Sorry, you are not suitable for this job. The woman's voice was as calm as ever. You can go. Boom. Zhuang Wenqing felt his mind go blank. Why? Why? No reason. It's just not suitable. The woman waved her hand impatiently and threw his ID card on the ground in front of him. Go and ask someone else. Zhuang Wenqing nodded silently, bent down to pick up the ID card, and carefully put it into his pocket. Then, once again, he swallowed the gloomy air in his chest and turned to leave. The moment the door closed, he vaguely heard laughter in the room. A public servant wants to work in a building. What a joke. The female voice was sharp, piercing deeply into his heart. There are basically natural people in the building. If a public servant comes in, I will lose my job. Zhuang Wenqing froze on the spot. This, this is different from what the care center teaches. He clearly remembered what the teacher at the care center once said. Whether they are natural persons or they, they all belong to Proxima Centauri humans. They all have the same rights, can do the same work, and contribute their part to the development of Proxima Centauri human civilization. But now, Zhuang Wenqing's eyes dimmed, and he left the office building with his head lowered. The day ended quickly. He didn't find a job. Zhuang Wenqing returned to his dormitory dejectedly. The roommate, Shou Sheng, is an old fritter who moved in more than half a month ago. Seeing Zhuang Wenqing's appearance, he smiled and patted Zhuang Wenqing on the shoulder. What's wrong? The interview didn't go well? Zhuang Wenqing sat silently on the chair and whispered what happened today. The atmosphere in the dormitory gradually became heavy. Compared with Zhuang Wenqing, Zhou Sheng learned a lot about social life for more than half a month. Hey! He sighed softly and patted Zhuang Wenqing's shoulder again. You're looking in the wrong place. Those companies are all companies formed by natural persons. You can't get in. Zhuang Wenqing's eyes widened and he looked at Zhou Sheng doubtfully. Yes, but... Zhou Sheng spread his hands and said with a wry smile, The care center made a mistake. Chapter 424 The Hidden Truth Zhou Sheng's words made Zhuang Wenqing's eyes widen suddenly. Fu, did the foster care center make a mistake? This, how is this possible? Shouldn't we have the same rights as natural persons? The highest law of human civilization in Proxima Centauri clearly states this. Zhuang Wenqing's face turned slightly red, and he defended in a hurried tone. Do they dare to openly resist the supreme law of human civilization on Proxima Centauri? Zhou Sheng shook his head calmly. No, of course they don't dare. So as long as you report this matter to the city management center, those natural persons will be punished and warned accordingly. Even with the help of the city management center, you can get a job at any company that rejects you because of this. Zhuang Wenqing froze on the spot. Then, there was some light again in his confused eyes. Zhuang Wenqing stood up suddenly and said excitedly, Then I will report it to the city management center now. Don't worry. Facing the extremely excited Zhuang Wenqing, Zhou Sheng sighed again, waved his hand indifferently, and motioned for him to sit down again. Listen to me first. Seeing this, Zhuang Wenqing stopped, returned to where he was before and sat down with doubts in his heart. Even if you get into those companies, it doesn't make any sense. Zhou Shang's words made Zhuang Wenqing more and more confused. He smiled self-deprecatingly and explained softly, after the staff of the city management center leave, you will be fired for various reasons. Of course, the most likely reason is that my own abilities are not up to par. As long as they don't blatantly show discrimination against public servants, the city management center can't do anything to them. 
Zhuang Wenqing's eyes were shocked, and he murmured to himself, You? How did you know? Zhou Sheng sneered again, because this is what I experienced a week ago. Hearing this, Zhuang Wenqing couldn't help but become silent. For a long time, Zhuang Wenqing spoke again. He asked Zhou Sheng beside him in a hoarse voice, Why is this happening? I don't think we did anything wrong. Even, according to the nurturing center, we have made a great contribution to the rapid development of Proxima Centauri civilization. Zhuang Wenqing's question made Zhou Sheng also fall into silence. After thinking for a moment, Zhou Sheng slowly spoke. This question. I also thought about it at the time and asked many public servants who have been working for a long time, getting a lot of different answers. But almost everyone's answers have one thing in common. What? Zhuang Wenqing asked subconsciously. Our population is growing too fast. Zhou Sheng looked at the wall in front of him blankly. Have you seen the latest demographic data? Zhuang Wenqing was stunned and shook his head. I only know that the total population of Proxima Centauri has reached 100 million. Not the total population. Zhou Sheng interrupted Zhuang Wenqing's answer. It's a proportion of the population. The latest statistics show that over the past 30 years, the proportion of natural people in the human civilization of Proxima Centauri has plummeted from 100% to 15%. This is still the consequence of many natural people's retaliatory procreation. Otherwise, this proportion will fall below 10%. Revenge birth? Zhuang Wenqing expressed doubts about this strange term. What does it mean? Zhou Sheng explained softly. You should know that the promoters of the social welfare system are in Feng, the chairman of the Proxima Civilization, and Zhang Zhengqing, the chief scientist. Right? Zhuang Wenqing nodded quickly. This is what is taught in the first lesson of school. So he naturally knows it. At the beginning of the reform, the social support system encountered huge opposition. Zhou Sheng said calmly, but with the simultaneous promotion of the chairman of the parliament and the chief scientist, the social support system was successfully implemented. In order to appease those conservatives, they chose to give in half a step. The content of this half step is about the reproductive rights of natural persons. While the public welfare system is being implemented, natural persons can also get married and have children as before. Zhuang Wenqing subconsciously held his breath. He suddenly realized, It seems that I am getting closer to a truth hidden in history books. But? Zhou Shang's expression gradually became distorted. That's the problem. Although they are all conceived in 10 months. How can the fertility efficiency of natural people be compared with that of social care centers? There are a large number of reproductive cells from sperm banks and egg banks in the social care center. With the help of technology, the pregnancy success rate is almost 100%. What's the probability of natural conception? Zhou Sheng smiled bitterly, not to mention the thousands of artificial wombs. As a result, more than 20 years after the implementation of the public pension system, a large number of public pensioners have entered society. When those natural people reacted, the proportion of natural people in the population structure had dropped to 50%. This scene is said to be what Chief Scientist Zhang Zhengqing expected. In the opinion of Chief Scientist Zhang Zhengqing, as long as public pensioners quickly occupy the dominant position in society, the public welfare system will be successful. After all, the education received by public servants and natural persons is different. In our concept, there is no urgent need for reproduction. The initial concession was nothing more than boiling a frog in warm water. Of course, there is no evidence to support this view. However, you can think about the education you received in the past. Zhuang Wenqing's face changed slightly. If you think about it carefully, it is indeed the case. Including him. Every public supporter has no idea of giving birth to the next generation in their subconscious mind. After all, the social care center will do all this work. They only need to think about their future work and life. Perhaps, driven by their genes, they will choose to get married. However, with today's technology, contraception is not difficult. It can be said that for the public raised people, the probability of natural childbirth has been reduced to the extreme. Then, Zhou Sheng's voice sounded again. Some natural people belatedly realized this problem. What happens when a race faces extinction? Zhuang Wenqing breathed rapidly, and his pupils trembled slightly. Yes, it is a revenge birth. A sarcastic smile appeared on Zhou Sheng's lips. In the following time, natural people engaged in large-scale retaliatory childbearing behavior. It is precisely this kind of behavior that has caused the natural population to increase significantly. It's ridiculous to say that the problem of natural fertility rate before the implementation of the social support system would be solved in this way. I don't know if this result was expected by the chief scientist. Chapter 425 
getting carried away. Then what? Zhuang Wenqing asked softly with a trembling tone. Why do they hate us so much? Zhou Shen slowly shook his head. Actually, at the beginning of the reform, the relationship between natural persons and public servants was not as rigid as it is now, especially under the propaganda of the parliament. Many natural persons have great Google towards well-educated public servants. But this situation changed after natural persons started working. Under the education of the social care center, the average ability of public raised people is slightly higher than that of natural people. So, public workers are quickly taking over the jobs of a large number of natural workers. The unemployment wave has made many natural people change their views on public support. Zhuang Wenqing suddenly realized. But this is just the beginning, Zhou Sheng continued. After all, the foundation of public education is still shallow. So almost all jobs are held by grassroots employees. In the early days, the management was basically natural persons. It is normal for natural persons living in city number three to have relatives and old friends. So the fire of hatred gradually spread to the company's management. Many management employees have begun to suppress government employees intentionally or unintentionally. Zhou Shang's words caused Zhuang Wenqing to fall into silence. Is this the reason why the personnel departments don't choose us? He sighed softly and asked in a low voice. Zhou Sheng retracted his dull gaze from the window and glanced at Zhuang Wenqing. Not really. The management's deliberate suppression did not suppress the public servants for too long. After all, the human civilization of Proxima Centauri has a complete promotion system. For people with high enough abilities, promotion is not a difficult task. When the first public servant stepped into the company's management, the situation deteriorated again. When all natural people discovered that their jobs would be lost sooner or later, they chose to stick together for warmth. Hold together? Zhuang Wenqing's expression moved slightly. He had heard this word just now. You mean? Zhou Sheng nodded and said in a positive tone. It's the companies you went to interview with. Public education has been developing for a short period of time. Although it has an advantage in population, it does not have much advantage in terms of social resources. Therefore, when all natural persons unite to form very large companies, companies built by public servants have no room for survival. Fortunately, the Academy of Sciences discovered this in time. President Ren Fong and Chief Scientist Zhang Zhengqing introduced a regulation in a timely manner. Every unit, or every company, must have a certain scale of public servants. Speaking of this, Zhou Sheng smiled bitterly and shook his head again. The Tao is as high as the devil. After the regulations are introduced, companies where natural persons work together will relax restrictions on the most basic employees. Public employees can apply for the most basic positions, but if they want to be promoted, they can also apply for management positions. Sorry. No way. That's what you get during the day. Zhuang Wenqing stared blankly at Zhou Sheng in front of him. Then, what should I do next? Zhou Sheng chuckled lightly. Choose a company with public employees and a team. You can be promoted there. But the company is small and will be suppressed by large companies. There was a strong look of unwillingness in Zhuang Wenqing's eyes. Then when can we? Zhou Sheng naturally knew what Zhuang Wenqing meant. He sighed softly. Perhaps. We have to wait until the public servants enter the parliament and the academy of sciences. However, the situation of grouping there is more serious than that of enterprises. The council chairman and others are powerless to deal with this situation. Shuang Wenqing was silent for a while and sighed softly. Then, let's wait. A few days later, when Zhuang Wenqing was looking for a job, a piece of news came. In city number five, a public servant had a conflict with several natural persons. The public servant was seriously injured and was sent to the city central hospital. His life and death are still unknown. And those natural persons even insulted all public servants in the street, threatening that public servants were only qualified to do the lowest level of work. As soon as the news came out, the entire Proxima Centauri was in an uproar because the influence was so bad. It even attracted the attention of Council Chairman Ren Fong. Several natural persons were quickly arrested and sentenced to death for crimes against humanity. The resolute actions of the parliament immediately suppressed the noisy voices in Proxima society. But vaguely, you can still feel that the atmosphere of gunpowder between public servants and natural people is getting stronger. Lu Yongchang raised his eyebrows slightly and looked at Ren Fong and Zhang Zhengqing in the holographic projection. So, what did you do next? It could lead to such a serious war? By this point in the chat, he already knew the reason why human civilization on Proxima Centauri had declined to this day. War. The war between natural persons and public persons. In Liu Yongchang's view, although the two have deep conflicts, 
They are not yet ready for a war of such a scale. In fact, as long as it is guided, this antagonism will gradually improve over time as long as there are public servants in the parliament and the Academy of Sciences to balance the strength of the two parties. Rinfone sighed forcefully. I was too impatient. That incident of blatant confrontation was a wake-up call for me. I don't want the human civilization of Proxima Centauri to follow the same path of Proxima Centauri civilization. I wanted to quickly resolve the dispute between public servants and natural persons. So I issued an order. I banned natural procreation. Rinfeng whispered a shocking news. Suddenly, a look of astonishment flashed across Lu Yongcheng's face. What the H, L? What happened next? Lu Yongcheng asked in a deep voice. Where's Zero? Haven't you ever conducted simulations with Zero? Later, Renfeng's eyes were full of pain. Initially, there was a lot of opposition to this proposal. The last successful experience made us get carried away. We did not take into account the objections of others. Nor did we use zeros to simulate and force the proposal of. Okay. Dot. With parliamentary oversight, the proposals were successfully implemented. Natural fertility is disappearing on Proxima Centauri. But what followed was an increasingly serious differentiation. This time, it's no longer within companies, businesses, or parliaments, but between cities. City number four has gradually become a gathering place for natural people. Number two. Number three. Number five. These cities have gradually become the residences of public servants. Because of the successful implementation of the proposal, we are not paying attention to this phenomenon. After all, we only need to wait for a while. And when people age naturally, the disputes between natural people and public servants will naturally disappear. But, one day, City 3 declared independence and declared war on all natural persons. Chapter 426 The Eve of War Ren Feng's voice echoed in Lu Yongchang's office through the loudspeaker. Different from the age of the earth, human beings currently have more powerful weapons of destruction. In the event of a civil war, these weapons would cause far more damage than in earth's time. What's more, both the Proxima humans and the human fleet now live in closed cities on the surface. Once the city's outer wall is destroyed, the outside environment is enough to kill all humans in a city without using any weapons. So, even Li Yongchang held his breath at this moment. What was the outcome of the war? He looked at Ren Feng and Zhang Zhengqing in the holographic screen. Did the natural man win? Ren Feng nodded, then shook his head. The whole war lasted for more than ten years. In the beginning, both natural persons and public servants retained their final sanity. There was only some slight friction on both sides. The Parliament and the Academy of Sciences are also trying their best to promote reconciliation between the two groups. After all, human civilization on Proxima Centauri cannot withstand a civil war. The natural person and the public person maintain a strange balance. Until the eve of total war. Earth Calendar Year 2353. Proxima 3 City. This is a city of public servants. At the same time, it is also the capital in the minds of public servants. The reason is simple. The first public counselor was born in this city. This war was also promoted by this public member. In the eyes of all public servants, he is a ray of light in the endless night. However, it is obvious that the natural person group does not view him in this way. Zhuang Wenqing walked on the busy street, looked at the busy people around him, and let out a long sigh of relief. More than ten years later, he finally entered his dream job. In the past ten years or so, City number three has not stopped developing because of the declaration of war. The urban care center continuously provides the city with fresh blood. Compared with more than 10 years ago, the total population of city three has increased several times. The originally empty city seemed to have returned to its appearance hundreds of years ago at this moment. That was the pastoral era when the human fleet had not yet left. Yes, in everyone's minds. The era before the people's fleet left Proxima Centauri has become an idyllic era in various works of art. At that time, people had no disputes and no worries about food and clothing. And today's number three city, with its population increasing year by year, has a vague flavor. At least, people are coming and going on the streets. And the smell of fireworks in the city is getting stronger. However, compared with the pastoral era, the human touch in number three city at this time was not maintained by blood relations. But the so-called birth batch, when passing by a snack bar, Zhuang Wenqing's ears twitched slightly. Hey! Boss! Which batch were you born in? Me? Good morning. Batch 3A231610. Brother? Which batch were you born in? Hey! Fellow fellow! I'm from batch 3A231612. 
Maybe we met each other two hours ago. Ha ha! What a coincidence. It's quite a coincidence. How about it being cheaper? Okay. 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 Hey! That's not right. Why do I remember that you didn't say that in the store next door last time? Huh? Brother. Must you have remembered it wrong? No matter what you say today. I was born in batch 3A231612. Listening to this familiar conversation, Shuang Wenxing had a faint smile on his face. 3A231610 and 3A231612. The meaning of these two numbers is actually very simple. The first digit is actually the city number. City number 3 is 3. City number 5 is 5. As for A, that refers to area A of the city's child care center. The urban child care center is very large and is divided into more than 10 areas. Distinguished by letters. Next is the time of birth. 231,610. Which means he was born in October 2316 in the Earth calendar. This kind of faint human touch is not as solid as blood relationship. But to a certain extent, it is more suitable for today's human beings. At least, compared with decades ago, corruption has basically disappeared in city number three at this time. Although, there was no such phenomenon in the pastoral era. But that was an environment that only existed under Zero's strong supervision. And now, it is a good environment that has formed spontaneously. Therefore, since the declaration of war, Every city with public support has embarked on a rapid development mode after a short period of adaptation. To a certain extent, this just confirms the correctness of the public welfare system. On the other hand, in natural cities, due to the closure of the care centers, the total population growth rate is not fast. In fact, under the vague threat of war, there is a trend of slowing down year by year. As one goes and the other goes, the gap in strength between the public supporter group and the natural person group is rapidly widening. Perhaps, under ideal circumstances, the public servants only need to wait for a while, and they can naturally declare victory in this war. Winching! A familiar female voice came from the front. Zhuang Winching retracted his wandering thoughts and turned his gaze to the direction from which the sound came. It's his wife, Gong Shan Shan. Shan Shan! Zhuang Winching showed a faint smile and walked quickly towards the woman. Let's go home! Among the public raised people, the concept of childbearing has been reduced to almost zero. But this does not mean that genetic impulses can be suppressed. For the sake of stability, the Council of City Number 3 chose to stick to the original marriage system. However, marriage at this time is more like a cooperative and mutual help relationship. On the way home, Gong Shanshan beside her suddenly sighed softly. What's wrong? Shuang Wenching asked softly. Tell me, when will this war end? Facing Gong Shanshan's inquiry, Zhuang Wenqing thought for a moment and murmured to himself. It's about time. Although they hardly feel the sense of urgency brought by the war. Every time they hear news about the disputes between natural persons and public servants, they will feel more or less slightly worried in their hearts. What will war be like? Dong Shanshan asked again. Zhuang Wenqing looked slightly suffocated. He shook his head. I don't know. Don't think it's him who has this problem. Come to think of it, even the council chairman of city number three doesn't know the answer. Compared with the natural population, public servants' understanding of war is almost zero. They don't have any experience. All knowledge comes from the teaching materials in the care center. But that textbook was originally written by natural persons. That's exactly what it is. The public supporter group has a procrastinating attitude towards the development of the war. As long as I survive you all, I will win. Chapter 427 The Beginning is the End Just as Zhuang Wenqing was thinking there, the holographic images on both sides of the street suddenly paused. Before he could react, every holographic image automatically switched channels. The background is bright red with a warning tone. The next moment, a familiar figure appeared in the holographic projection. According to the latest intelligence, city number two was attacked by large weapons five minutes ago. Currently, there is slight damage to the outer wall of city number two. The number of casualties is still being counted. Everyone, the war has begun. Zhuang Wenqing froze on the spot, staring blankly at the holographic projection in front of him. The war started like this? A natural person fired the first shot? Although he didn't know the exact reason, Zhuang Wenqing knew in his heart that to a certain extent, this was almost inevitable. Watching the public support group gradually grow, the natural person group will never be willing to die slowly. He lowered his eyes, sighed deeply, and reached out to take the palm of the person next to him. Let's go home. There was a murmur from beside him. Hopefully, everything will be over as soon as possible. 
Proxima Force City. Snapped. What? Ren Feng's expression changed drastically. He reached out and slapped the desk hard, stood up from the chair, and said angrily, Who gave the order to attack? I... I don't know. Looking at the furious Ren Feng, the congressman subconsciously took a step back and responded in a low voice. It should be a spontaneous attack by some extreme people. Before Ren Feng could speak, the office door suddenly opened. Before anyone arrives, the sound comes first. Zhang Xingqing's angry voice came from outside the door. Ren Feng! What's going on? Why is city number two under attack? Because he was too angry. Zhang Zhengqing didn't even care about others and called Ren Feng by his name. Faced with the question, Ren Feng responded gloomily. Zhang Qing, calm down. I don't know about this either. It should be a small-scale attack organized by extremists themselves. Small-scale? Zhang Zhengqing laughed angrily. You told me this is small-scale? The next moment, he raised his hand and pressed a few buttons on the watch. A holographic image appeared in front of everyone. In the dim sky, there is a star that emits a faint light. That's their home star, Proxima Centauri. After absorbing most of the energy, the Star Eater has long since left, and this Proxima Centauri star has also entered its final years as a red dwarf star. Although it is the last years, it will take a lot of time to see it truly turn into a black dwarf star. Proxima Centauri, which is entering its final years, emits a faint light, no different from the moon in the Earth's era. Therefore, except for the closed city powered by a large nuclear fusion reactor, the entire Proxima Centauri B has entered an endless and dense night. The originally thick atmosphere has become extremely thin. The original atmosphere has solidified due to the low temperature, turning into pieces of magnificent crystals, lying quietly on the surface of Proxima Centauri B. And in the endless darkness, there are several areas that release light that reaches the sky. The source of the light is the closed cities on the ground. As the camera zoomed in, a silver-white city came into view in the light. Hiss! Ren Feng took a sharp breath. The reason is simple. A big black hole suddenly appeared in the outer wall of this silver-white city. The inside of the cave entrance has been blocked urgently. Outside, many people wearing heavy spacesuits can be vaguely seen carrying out maintenance operations. Do you know what weapon caused this? Zhang Zhengqing pointed at the holographic image in front of him and said in a strong tone. This is the damage that can only be caused by a large electromagnetic gun. You tell me, this is a small-scale attack? Ren Feng looked at the holographic image in front of him with a pale face. And only a few big words flashed in his mind. Something big happened. Due to lack of experience, Ren Feng's mind went blank at this time. After finally coming back to his senses, he hurriedly said, We have to get in touch with city number three as soon as possible and explain. No need to explain. Zhang Zhengqing sat down on the chair and sighed, as if accepting his fate. It's useless. It's happened. No matter who did it. Our original plan has been completely ruined. Get ready for war. Whether it is Ren Feng or Zhang Zhengqing, as pioneers in promoting the social welfare system, they do not resent the original stalemate. After all, everyone can see the development speed of public education. As long as they are given enough time, the restructuring will eventually succeed. Therefore, both of them worked hard to suppress the extreme people in City 4. As long as there is no large-scale war, victory will come sooner or later. But now, their dreams are shattered. Report. The office door opens again. It has been detected that city number 5 has activated the electromagnetic gun around the city. Upon hearing this, Zhang Zhengqing, who was slumped in his chair, jumped up. Are they crazy? Can that weapon be used casually? Quick. Prepare to defend. The moment the war completely began, it entered a white-hot stage. Because they had no war-related experience. The Donglong people directly used the most lethal weapons at their disposal at the beginning of the war. Ring City Railgun and Ring City Laser Cannon. The so-called random punches killed the master. And the chaotic attack rhythm suppressed the four city in a short time. It even caused a lot of damage to the outer walls of City 4. Faced with life and death threats, Ren Feng and Zhang Zhengqing were unable to suppress everyone's resistance. The counterattack began. When natural people began to use space-based weapons, the war completely got out of control. Huge electromagnetic gun projectiles fell from the sky and bombarded cities. The flames of the explosion soared into the sky. The city was destroyed. People die. The general process is like this. As if confessing his guilt, Ren Feng lowered his head again. The natural man side barely won the victory with the help of space-based weapons. But there were countless casualties. In the following time, 
We tried our best to repair city number four and rescue the public servants who survived the war. Currently, in the entire Proxima Centauri, only city four is still operating normally. Lu Yongchang fell into silence. Even he found it difficult to imagine the scene at that time. Among them, public servants and natural persons account for 50% each. Zhang Zhangqing added from the side. Due to the war, currently in city number four, natural persons and public servants do not live in harmony. There's still a deep divide. Chapter 428 half a step away. Lu Yongchang frowned slightly. He flexed his knuckles and tapped the desk in front of him. Ren Feng and Zhang Zhangqing looked at each other and subconsciously held their breath. They all saw the tangled look on Lu Yongcheng's face. Da da da. A crisp voice echoed in the office. At this moment, Lu Yongcheng was thinking about the next countermeasures. Should we choose to significantly interfere with human civilization on Proxima Centauri and help them rebuild civilization? Or, let human civilization develop freely on Proxima Centauri? As the chief scientist, Lu Yongchan naturally knows that the current human civilization on Proxima Centauri has entered an extremely dangerous area. It can be said that it is only half a step away from complete destruction. Sure, he could lend a helping hand, but to some extent, that's not a good thing for human civilization on Proxima Centauri. Perhaps, with the remote help of the human fleet, human civilization on Proxima Centauri can overcome this difficulty and once again embark on the path of smooth development. But what about the future? He cannot always be online like a robot, answering inquiries from more than 10 or dozens of light years away. What's more, from the narratives of Ren Feng and Zhang Zhangqing, Lu Yongchang was keenly aware of the huge problems hidden within the human civilization of Proxima Centauri. Too little background. Because most of the people left behind are the new generation. The humans of Proxima Centauri have no experience in the Earth era. And they are extremely unfamiliar with the solutions to various problems. For an interstellar civilization, this is fatal. This is true for natural people, let alone people raised by the public. Compared with the natural people of Proxima Centauri, the public supporter group is like a pure blank sheet of paper. Nowadays, it is almost impossible for them to successfully take over the human civilization of Proxima Centauri. Thinking of this, Lu Yongchang's face gradually became firmer. Clatter! Lu Yongchang stopped tapping on his desk and asked softly, What are you going to do next? First of all, I want you to understand something. Don't place your hopes on the human fleet. We won't give you much help. And we can't give you much help. You two should understand this truth. Hearing this, Ren Feng's eyes dimmed slightly. But he still nodded solemnly. After all, Proxima Centauri humans are still an independent civilization. Not an affiliated civilization of the human fleet. If you want to reach Nirvana and become a true interstellar civilization, you can only overcome these setbacks and difficulties by relying on your own strength. After pondering for a moment, Ren Feng turned to look at Zhang Zhangqing and said in a deep voice, Professor, we don't need the help of the human fleet. Next, we will make a final attempt. If, Ren Feng's voice paused, and his expression became tragic. If you still don't succeed, then you will think that the human civilization of Proxima Centauri has perished. Lu Yongchang fell into silence again. For a long time, he sighed softly. I will let the relevant personnel of the Academy of Sciences contact you. If you have any questions, you can ask them. However, I don't want you to copy the model of the human fleet. This is the only help I can give you. Thank you. Ren Feng lowered his head slightly and thanked him in a low voice. Next, we will abide by our commitment and transmit all the data on the social welfare system over the past 80 years to the human fleet. Hope. Our failure will allow the human fleet to go further. May the glory of mankind last forever. The communication is over. The holographic projection slowly dissipated in the air. Sitting behind his desk, Lu Yongchan closed his eyes and sighed again. In his view, unless a miracle happens, human civilization on Proxima Centauri is doomed. Let's not talk about how likely Ren Feng's last attempt is. Even the death spiral of technological decline and technological decline caused by the sharp decline in the population base and the war is not something they can easily break out of. After clearing up his complicated mood, Lu Yongchan reached out and unlocked the electromagnetic adsorption device on the seat, stood up and walked towards the office door. The human civilization of Proxima Centauri once again sounded the alarm for him. The human fleet is not out of danger yet. In the vast universe, a mere second-level civilization is not enough to protect itself. Under the constraints of resources, interstellar civilization is like sailing against the current. If it does not advance, it will retreat. 
Zero. Let Chao Lian Kai and the others come to laboratory number one. The moment he walked out of the office door, Lu Yongchang said in a deep voice, Tell them it's time to start researching magnetic field shield technology. Earth, laboratory number one. As the main laboratory inside the Earth, laboratory one is capable of undertaking extremely high precision experimental tasks. Before Chao Lian Kai and others arrived at the laboratory, Lu Yongchang took the lead in making preparations. Zero. Drag out a secondary flagship of the later civilization. Lu Yongchang reached out and turned on the holographic projection switch and gave the order. Send the robot and prepare to start the dismantling work. Professor. Currently, the spaceport is still under construction. Zero's reminder came from the speaker. Lu Yongchang frowned slightly. Because the construction focus is on the surface cities of Dawn Star. The construction efficiency of the spaceport has been reduced a lot. How much more time will it take? At the current speed, it will take more than three months. Do we need to adjust the construction plan? Zero's answer made Lu Yongchang's face darken. Three months? This is too long. Forget it. There is no need for a spaceport. Lu Yongchang's eyes flashed. Add simple power modules to your robots. And we will complete the disassembly work directly in space. Receive. At the rear of the fleet, a battleship with a very different style from the human fleet emitted a faint blue light. Under Zero's control, the battleship slowly accelerated and headed towards the vicinity of Earth. At the same time, the Earth port hatch slowly opened. Soon two ships filed out of it one after another, waiting quietly at the predetermined location. And the robots inside also began to install various functional modules. Professor, along with the sound of the laboratory door opening, came Taoyuda's excited voice. Are we finally going to start studying magnetic field shields? Before Li Yongchang could reply, Chao Liangsai's voice rang out. Ouch! Professor, you are in a big battle. Obviously, he saw the picture in the holographic projection in front of Lu Yongchang. The Zuan twos were waiting in full formation. And in the distance was a secondary flagship of the Rothor civilization that was gradually approaching. Hearing the voice of an old acquaintance, Lu Yongchang's originally depressed mood relaxed a lot. He retracted his gaze, turned to look at the scientific researchers who entered the laboratory one after another, and responded with a smile. Certainly. It's time for human civilization to enter the third level of civilization. Chapter 429 Magnetic Field Shield Generation Unit Have to say, the warships of the Rothor civilization made this research and development work a lot smoother. Lu Yongchang and others completed the analysis of the basic principles of magnetic field shields in just one week. Two weeks later, Lu Yongchang's voice sounded from the loudspeaker in the laboratory. Attention all units! The first magnetic field shield experiment is about to begin. Good. With the help of Latour civilization, Lu Yongchang and others copied the first prototype in just two weeks. Rather than saying it is a prototype, it is better to call it a magnetic field shield generating unit. Similar to the Hall propulsion unit, a complete magnetic field shield requires the cooperation of a large number of magnetic field shield generating units to produce it. Judging from its appearance, it is very similar to the magnetic field shield generating device of the Raider civilization, a completely black hemisphere. The diameter of the hemisphere reaches 10 meters. By then, these hemispheres will be installed on the surface of the ship. Just like the Rothor civilization, compared with the magnetic field shield generating unit on the Rothor secondary flagship, the human-made magnetic field shield generating unit is still slightly smaller. But this is not a technical problem, but a limitation of the experimental site. After all, the shipboard laboratory only has so much space. For safety reasons, the magnetic field shield generation unit was placed in a specially designed large isolation room after reducing power consumption. In front of the experimental bench, Lu Yongchan looked at the picture in the holographic projection. A touch of excitement flashed in his eyes. Start the experiment! Activate the magnetic field shield generation unit! A slight buzzing sound came from all around. The energy of the fusion reactor quickly passes through the normal temperature superconducting wire and converges towards the black hemisphere. Next moment. The magnetic field strength data in the holographic projection soared rapidly in a straight line. A large amount of data flows quickly in front of everyone like running water. Lu Yongchang frowned slightly and stared at the data stream in the holographic projection. A long while, his frown relaxed, and a satisfied smile appeared on his face. It seems that the first experiment will be successful. On the side, Chao Liangkai and Tao Yuda cast surprised and strange looks at Lu Yongchang. Teach, Professor. Tao Yuda swallowed and asked in a low voice, Can you really keep up with these data? Before he finished speaking, he closed his mouth with a wry smile. 
What on earth is he asking? That's Lu Yongchang. Professor Lu. By asking this, aren't you humiliating yourself? Sure enough. The next second, the buzzing gradually subsided. And Zero's voice quickly sounded. The magnetic field shield has been successfully generated. In the holographic image, an image of the simulated magnetic field from Zero also appears. Outside the hemisphere, there is a ring of extremely strong magnetic field. Just like the Earth's geomagnetic field. However, compared with the geomagnetic field, the magnetic field generated by the magnetic field shield generation unit is more regular and easier to control. The shield has been successfully generated. So the next step is to test the strength of the shield. Prepare to attempt an ion beam weapon attack. Lu Yongchang reached out and pressed a few buttons in the holographic image. In the isolation room, a small ion beam generator was quickly activated and launched its own attack forward. Whether it is an ion beam or a magnetic field shield, they are invisible to the human eye. Therefore, Lu Yongchang and others can only rely on zero real-time calculation simulation images to understand the scenes happening in the isolation room. In the simulation screen, I saw a slender, yellow beam, shooting straight towards the translucent magnetic field shield in the distance. With almost no reaction time, the beam hit the shield hard. At the same time, the output power of the magnetic field shield generation unit instantly increases. And that yellow beam, under the influence of a strong magnetic field, easily slid through an extremely natural and beautiful arc, bypassing the target shield generation unit, and hit the extremely high intensity in the isolation room. On the wall, ion beam weapon, interception successful. Zero quickly gave the answer to the first experiment. Good. Seeing the scene, Chao Liangsai's eyes were full of excitement, and he couldn't help shouting in a low voice. Lu Yongchan nodded with satisfaction. Due to space limitations, he could not test the limits of the magnetic shield generation device. So he directly started the second test. Continue to experiment with the next weapon. Plasma bomb preparation. Five seconds countdown. Emission. Unlike ion beam weapons, plasma bombs can be observed with the naked eye. I saw a ball of high temperature blue plasma with a golden arc flashing on the surface, quickly hitting the shield. Boom. At the moment of impact, the output power of the shield generating unit once again climbed at a speed visible to the naked eye. At the same time, blocked by the strong magnetic field. The plasma bomb dispersed out of thin air. The high temperature plasma in it slid to both sides along the direction of the magnetic field and outlined the general shape of the magnetic field shield. Interception successful. Ling's calm voice sounded again. After a brief silence, there was a burst of cheers in the laboratory. It's not over yet. Liu Yongchang's eyes were full of smiles. But he still said, Try electromagnetic gun attack. The powerful magnetic field shield also has a certain deflection effect on the projectiles of the electromagnetic gun. This has been confirmed in the war with the Rothor civilization. Therefore, in that battle of unequal strength, only laser weapons could cause damage to warships equipped with magnetic field shields. Even for a flagship equipped with a gravitational field shield, the laser weapons of the human fleet have little effect. Warn! Just when Li Yongchang was about to press the launch button, Zero sounded the alarm. The calculation results show that the shield generating device is not powerful enough to intercept type 2 electromagnetic gun projectiles. Do you want to continue firing? Lu Yongchan looked as usual, obviously expecting this result. Confirm launch. Turn up the shield generating unit power to maximum. Ion beam weapons and plasma weapons are too powerful to conduct further experiments in the laboratory. But the electromagnetic gun is different. Even if the type 2 electromagnetic gun is out of control, as long as it fires the most ordinary SH. LS, it will not cause much damage to Earth. In order to more accurately detect the data of the shield generation unit, this risk is still worth taking. After a short wait, the small electromagnetic gun was fully charged and fired at SH. L forward. Boom! Bip! Blop! Blop! With a loud noise, a piercing alarm sounded in the laboratory. Interception failed. The shield generating device has been damaged. The cause is being analyzed. Lu Yongchang shrugged helplessly and turned to look at the analysis interface aside. What else could be the reason? It's nothing more than a lack of power. The analysis report given by Zero also confirmed this. The magnetic field shield did deflect the flight trajectory of the electromagnetic gun projectile. But due to insufficient power, it still hit the SH. L of the shield generation unit. Chapter 430 Promotion Level 3 Civilization Laboratory 1 Liu Yongchang and a group of scientific researchers stood in front of the huge holographic projection. 
quietly looking at the constantly changing charts and data. In the picture on the side, under Zero's control, several robots have entered the isolation room in an orderly manner and begun the aftermath work the shield generation unit destroyed by the electromagnetic gun projectiles needs to be cleaned up. Compile the data and prepare to start the next study. Lu Yongchang withdrew his gaze, with a little excitement in his eyes, and issued the order. According to the research plan, after the single shield generation unit experiment is successful, they need to study how to make multiple shield generation units work together. Although there are ready-made algorithms on the battleships of the Rothor civilization, the structures of the battleships of the two civilizations are completely different, so it is obviously inappropriate to copy them mechanically. Facing Lu Yongchang's order, Chao Liangkai naturally agreed repeatedly and turned around to start processing various data generated during the experiment. In the original plan, Lu Yongchang would definitely be involved in such an important task of sorting out experimental data. But at the moment when the experiment was successful, he noticed something strange coming from the depths of his mind. This familiar feeling. The technology tree has been promoted. Thinking of all the brand new technologies of the third level civilization, Lu Yongchang couldn't hold himself back. So, he took a deep breath suppressed the excitement in his heart, and said in as calm a tone as possible, I'm going to rest for a while. If you have any questions, ask Zero to call me. Hearing this, Tao Yuda, who was immersed in processing data, couldn't help but froze, and a trace of surprise flashed in his eyes. Professor Lu actually chose to rest at this time? It's a rare thing. Maybe it's because I was too tired during this period. He looked at the thick dark circles around Lu Yongchang's eyes, and thought to himself. The next moment, Tao Yudal retracted his thoughts, nodded, and responded softly, Don't worry, Professor. It's just some basic data compilation work. I could admission Chow, and I can handle it. Uh-huh. The office door suddenly opened. Lu Yongchan walked into the office in a hurry. The moment he entered the office, Lu Yongchan could no longer contain his excitement. His face turned slightly red, and he gave the order in a hurried tone. Zero, close the door. No one is allowed in without permission. As he said that, he walked quickly towards his seat. As time goes by, the strange feeling in my mind becomes stronger. Seeing the office door closed, he breathed a long sigh of relief and sat down on the chair with relief. Click! The moment the electromagnetic adsorption device sounded, he couldn't wait to close his eyes. With a slight movement of consciousness, he entered the fluorescent green space with great skill. Just like promotion to the second level civilization, a series of great changes are taking place in the technology tree space at this time. A bright white line extended from the top of the technology tree, rushing straight towards the dim icon directly above. At the same time, his perspective quickly moved up. Boom! A strong shot came from the depths of my mind. Breakthrough. Breakthrough. The barrier between the second level civilization and the third level civilization was easily broken through. Magnetic field control. Primary shield technology. As the bright white thin line spreads, the originally dim cursor now becomes extremely bright. The originally leafy technology tree has disappeared, replaced by the familiar and complicated dim cursor. At the bottom is the primary shield technology that is the symbol of the third level civilization. Within the entire field of vision, it was the only one still emitting a soft and bright white light. What was originally top-notch technology has become today's cornerstone technology. From bottom to top, the brightness of the cursor gradually dims, and the topmost part, like before, is shrouded in a fog, making it difficult to see clearly. A trace of regret flashed through Lu Yongchang's heart. It's a pity that the necessary technology to advance to the fourth level of civilization is not visible. Thinking about it, it must be related to gravity. Without any time to think about it, he quickly raised his head and observed this brand new technology tree. A thin, dim line slowly extends upward from the bright cursor at the bottom. Magnetic field control, plasma shield. Subsequently, several thin thin lines extended from the secondary technology tree further down, and several new dim cursors expanded in sequence. Magnetic field control, plasma cannon, type 3 laser weapon, planet transformation technology. Lu Yong Chang moved his. The cursor was extremely dim, and only a few handwritings could be vaguely discerned. Materials technology, antimatter. Lu Yong Chang withdrew his gaze without hesitation. Just the name alone. These technologies already made him extremely excited. But, the rice must be eaten one bite at a time. And the technological tree must be climbed bit by bit. The consequence of being anxious is to return to the familiar ward again and face the familiar doctor one. Thinking of this very likely scenario, 
Lu Yongcheng's consciousness shuddered violently. He quickly focused his attention on the second brightest cursor. Magnetic field control, plasma shield. What kind of technology is this? Lu Yongcheng looked at the more than half-bright cursor with some confusion. Could it be the upgraded technology of magnetic field shield? So why didn't Rothor civilization master it? But when he thought about the strange social structure and technological system of the Rothor civilization, he felt relieved. Lu Yongchang stopped thinking wildly and focused his attention on the dim cursor. The next second, a familiar feeling of dizziness hit. After the dizziness disappeared, my originally muddled brain instantly became clear. Every bit of the shield technology emerged in his mind one by one. Some problems that he had not noticed before were also discovered by Lu Yongchang at this moment. After reviewing the knowledge already mastered, the speed of brain operation soared, and electrical signals were transmitted rapidly between neurons. More than 10 minutes later, the sense of transparency brought about by overclocking slowly disappeared, replaced by a sense of chaos that was stronger than before. Lu Yongchang, who was already familiar with this process, reached out and grabbed the packaging bag on the side. After opening the straw, he took a strong sip of the high concentration nutrient solution in the packaging bag. A few minutes later, call! After ingesting the high concentration nutrient solution, the chaos in the brain was reduced. But what followed was an extremely intense tiredness. Zero. How long will it take Chao Liankai and the others to complete the data compilation work? He steeled himself and asked. The holographic projection unfolded quickly. And the picture showed a busy scene in the laboratory. At the current rate, it will take another three to five hours. Hearing this, Lu Yongchang glanced at the holographic image. And then closed his eyes again. Wait until they finish compiling the data before calling me. Receive. The moment the words fell, the office lights automatically turned off, and the indoor temperature was automatically adjusted to the most comfortable range for the human body. Chapter 431 Precision Magnetic Field Shield and Plasma Shield Perhaps because of his successful promotion to the third-level civilization, the sense of urgency in Li Yongchang's heart was slightly reduced. This sleep was particularly sweet. Professor! Professor! In his sleep, Lu Yongchang heard Zero's call. The data collection work has been completed. Lu Yongchang, who was still a little confused at first, suddenly opened his eyes when he heard these words. He rubbed his cheeks vigorously, and after dispelling the remaining sleepiness, he unlocked the electromagnetic adsorption device on the seat. Okay, I'll be there right away. Because of the success of the experiment, the atmosphere in laboratory number one was very relaxed. Almost every researcher has a happy smile on his face. Professor, hearing the footsteps behind him, Chao Liankai quickly turned around with a smile on his face. How was your rest? Lu Yongchang naturally smiled and nodded. Not bad. Thanks to this sleep. I have new ideas about shield technology. As soon as he said this, the scientific researchers around him stopped their work and cast curious glances at him. We will wait until the shield generation unit collaboration algorithm is completed. Lu Yongchang smiled and pointed to the holographic projection on the side. No matter how good the idea is, it cannot be realized by relying on a separate shield generation unit. Zero made the greatest contribution in the research on the shield generation unit cooperation algorithm. It can be said that it has completed at least 90% of the work by itself. Looking at the huge magnetic field shield generated by five shield generation units in the isolation room, Chao Liang I couldn't help but sigh in a low voice. Professor, many times I feel that Zero is not a technology that humans should master. Liu Yongcheng's heart skipped a beat and he asked calmly. Why do you say that? Look! Chao Liankai nuzzled at the holographic projection responsible for monitoring the status of the shield generation unit. Not just research. The rapid development of the entire human fleet almost relies on zero. Without zero, I guess we wouldn't even be able to escape the earth. Liu Yongchang sighed softly in his heart. No need to estimate. That's the truth. Without zero, humanity would never have survived that disaster. Although he thought so, he still smiled and patted Chao Liang Kai on the shoulder. What are you thinking about? Don't forget, I typed out the core code of zero line by line on the computer. Chao Liang Kai smiled and scratched his head to cover up his embarrassment. Okay, don't sigh about this. Liu Yongchang changed the subject calmly. The next precision shield technology is where zero can truly exert its power. Precision shield technology? As expected, the attention of Chao Liang Kai and Tao Yuda was quickly attracted. What do you mean? Is it different from the magnetic field shield of the later civilization? Precision shield technology. This is a shield plan that Li Yongchang came up with during the process of overclocking his brain. 
compared with the magnetic field shield that covers the entire ship of the Rothor civilization. The precision magnetic field shield has higher endurance and smaller energy loss. The so-called precision shield technology refers to accurately judging the type of attack at the moment before being attacked, and using this to generate a corresponding magnetic field shield. Simply put, for example, face the impact of a high-energy ion beam. The response of the Rothor civilization battleship was to activate the magnetic field shield of the entire ship and use the powerful magnetic field to deflect the ion beam to avoid damage. During the battle with the human fleet, this technology showed its special drawbacks. The magnetic field shield consumes a lot of energy, and in areas that are not attacked, that energy is wasted. In fact, because it has to support the magnetic field shield that wraps the entire ship, the overall strength of the shield has dropped a lot. It is also true that in the face of the concentrated fire of the human fleet, the magnetic shield generation unit of the secondary flagship will be quickly overloaded. The precise magnetic field shield proposed by Lu Yongchang is hugely different from the former. First, zero requires precise analysis of the incoming attack, weapon type, attack power, attack target, and impact range, because the magnetic field shield can only block low speed weapons such as high energy ion beams, plasma weapons, and electromagnetic guns. It is completely feasible to analyze the attack type in advance. After comprehensive analysis, Zero can control the magnetic field shield generation unit in the hit area to generate a just-right shield. Both the shield strength and the shield area can be controlled to be slightly higher than the attack range. There is no doubt that this method of shield generation not only greatly reduces energy consumption, but also greatly enhances the strength of the shield. Hiss. After listening to Lu Yongchang's explanation, Chao Liang couldn't help but gasped. Professor, are you sure that Zero's current computing power can support a task of this level? Tao Yudao on the side also nodded with worry in his eyes. Contrary to Lu Yongchang, the two of them are not very optimistic about this technology. The battlefield is changing rapidly. And if you want to accurately control every attack, this requires zero computing power. Which is extremely exaggerated. Regarding Chao Liang Kai and Tao Yudao's doubts, Lu Yongchang chuckled. I just looked at Mo Ziyang's research progress. If nothing else happens, a new generation of optical quantum computers will be released. By then, Zero's computing power will have increased significantly. Although the specific value is not yet clear, a calculation task of this level should not be difficult for Zero. Still have any questions? Chao Liangkai and Tao Yudao looked at each other. O dot o dot o. No. No more. Chao Liangkai shook his head repeatedly. Professor, is this the new idea you mentioned a few days ago? Yes. But not entirely. Lu Yongchang's answer made the two of them confused again. Plasma shield. Lu Yongchang reached out and dragged a holographic projection over and said, You can understand it as an enhanced version of the magnetic field shield. For kinetic energy weapons, there is a stronger interception effect. Following Lu Yongchang's words, a simulation of a golden crow battleship appeared on the holographic screen. A translucent film appeared around the golden crow battleship. The film wrapped the entire golden crow in it. It is not difficult to guess that this is the magnetic field shield they have just completed. The plasma shield can only be realized when the magnetic field shield is operating at full power. Lu Yongchang said solemnly. In a sense, it is a life-saving means. When attacked by a large number of kinetic energy weapons, the ship body actively releases high-temperature plasma. By controlling the magnetic field shield generation unit, high-temperature plasma is allowed to move at high speed around the ship body under the constraints of the magnetic field. Use flowing plasma to destroy and block incoming kinetic energy weapons. Chapter 432 Home Ship Number 279 Six months later Human Fleet Home Ship Number 279 The starship that had been silent for a long time once again lit up with bright and soft lights. Under Zero's control, rows of hibernating cabins were pushed out in an orderly manner. The wake-up procedure begins. Hope! Welcome to the Glee's 555 star system. It is July 27, 2382 in the Earth calendar. Based on your contribution to the People's Alliance on Proxima Centauri B, you were selected as the first batch of awakened people. Hope struggled to open her eyes. The discomfort of hibernating for a long time came. And next to my ears, there was the sound of a broadcast that was not very real. A robot slowly came to him and handed him a bulging packaging bag. Fortunately, he had the experience of hibernating for a long time. After a brief daze, he reached out and took the silver-white packaging bag. With slightly trembling hands, he opened the seal on the packaging bag, brought it to his mouth, 
and took a deep breath. The sweet and sour taste instantly activated his taste buds. After ingesting a large amount of high concentration nutrient solution, my originally groggy brain became much more awake. He turned to look at the holographic image on the side. I, are we at Glee's 555? Zero's response came. Yes, Mr. Hope. Next, let me give you a brief introduction. After the words fell, an unfamiliar star system image appeared in the holographic projection. The Glee's 555 star system consists of a red dwarf star and 10 planets. Among them, four are gas giant planets and six are Earth-like planets. The human fleet is on the sixth planet Dawn Star. Currently, the construction of Dawn Star's first surface closed city has been completed. Hope stared blankly at the holographic image in front of him, a hint of disappointment flashing in his eyes. Is this the residence that the human fleet has found across more than ten light years? Not to mention compared with the Earth. From the appearance alone, it is not even comparable to Proxima Centauri B. He sighed softly and suppressed the complicated emotions in his heart. Forget it. Be content. At least, humans now have a place to settle. He had just woken up from a long hibernation and knew nothing about his surroundings. At this point, the best way is to ask Zero for help. What should I do now? Hope asked Zero in a familiar manner. According to the regulations for the placement of awakened personnel, you can now visit the home ship number 279. The recommended tour route has been synchronized to your personal terminal. Please check it. After hearing this, Hope immediately raised his wrist and started his watch. A small holographic image then appeared in front of him. Observation deck. Dining room. Gravity chamber. Bedroom. Looking at the locations marked on the route. Hope frowned. Zero. When can we land? On Dawn Star. Since the surface gravity of Dawn Star is 1.9 G. In order to ensure your safety, you need to complete a series of gravity chamber training and be proficient in wearing exoskeleton armor before you can enter the urban life of Dawn Star 1. Hope's eyes moved slightly. He quickly captured the essence of this sentence. He can easily understand the 1.9 G gravity and gravity chamber training. But exoskeleton armor. Since when did humans have this thing? Thinking of all the scenes he had seen in movies before. Hope's breathing suddenly became heavy. Especially after seeing the highly technological armor in the holographic projection. His eyes completely changed. Zero. Arrange a training session for me immediately. Hope said without hesitation. Feel sorry. To ensure your safety, you need to undergo rehabilitation exercises in the gravity chamber for a week before starting relevant training. Hope's face froze, and he nodded with a grimace. Fine. At worst, wait another week. Suddenly, he seemed to remember something and asked again. By the way, how is my mineral exploration ship? Sorry. Before arriving in the Glee's 555 star system, the human fleet had an encounter with a later civilization and your mineral exploration ship was seriously damaged. Hearing this, Hope's expression suddenly changed. What the H, L? His ship. His ship is gone. It was not only his job of eating, but also his old companion who had been with him for decades. Before he could speak, Zero quickly added, In order to compensate for your losses, the Alliance Starship Manufacturing Factory will provide you with a latest model mineral exploration ship, and you can continue your work on Proxima B. Hope who was still a little confused at first, suddenly had a bright smile on his face when he heard the second half of the sentence. Free replacement? Marvelous. He has long disliked that old mineral exploration ship. The size of Dawn Star is much larger than that of Proxima Centauri B. And you can complete more exploration tasks. Please note that Area X of Dawn Star is a high-risk location with super strong hurricanes all year round. Please do not go there without permission. Hurricane? There was an imperceptible complex look in Hope's eyes. To this day, he still can't forget the hurricane he experienced as a child. And the Zuin number two broke through the violent storm and came to him like a god descending. I still remember that at that time. His wish was to become a scientist like Professor Liu. But, due to his limited talent, he eventually became a mineral prospector of the People's Federation. Although he is not as good as those battleship pilots fighting on the front line, he still made his best contribution to the development of the People's Federation. Pity! thinking of his lofty ambitions as a child. A hint of loss flashed in Hope's eyes. As a mineral prospector, he is undoubtedly among the best. Pity. Just a mineral prospector. There is still a huge gap between him and his dream. I wonder if he will have the opportunity to contact the Academy of Sciences in his future life journey. Mr. Hope, we have detected that your mood fluctuates significantly. Do you need medical cabin treatment? No. 
No need. Hope took a deep breath, shook her head and said, I just remembered what happened when I was a child. Zero didn't reply. Half an hour later, Hope walked down the aisle of the home ship wearing a light, close-fitting space suit. His first stop was the observation deck set up at the rear of the home ship. The overall shape of the observation deck is a hemisphere protruding from the ship's hull and is wrapped in fully transparent glass. In terms of strength, although it is not as good as the hull made of carbide material, as a home ship, this small observation deck will not have much impact on the strength of the hull unless it is involved in combat. Hope stood in the center of the observation deck, looking out at the vast universe outside. First of all, the huge reddish-brown planet comes into view. It is also his future residence Dawn Star. Chapter 433 Experimental, Golden Crow, Battleship. Suddenly, a small reddish-brown planet caught his attention. Zero, what is that? Hope pointed to a planet in the distance. A satellite of Dawn Star? The holographic projection quickly unfolded. Lightsat, the only satellite of Dawn Star. Looking at the detailed information in the holographic screen, Hope murmured to himself. It looks a bit like the Earth-Moon system. A flash of light interrupted his recollection. He looked into the distance. A second flash occurred. Zero. Zoom in on this area. After confirming that he had read correctly, Hope said in a deep voice, the holographic projection screen changes rapidly. Looking at the familiar but slightly unfamiliar battleship in the picture, Hope subconsciously narrowed his eyes. Golden Crow Battleship? He murmured to himself. That's not right. There are no such bumps on the surface of the Golden Crow Battleship. Zero quickly explained. Experiments related to shield technology are ongoing in the target area. This Golden Crow battleship is an experimental model and is equipped with magnetic field shields and plasma shields. Shield technology? Hope suddenly widened his eyes. Is it the shield technology in his impression? Soon, the picture in the holographic projection told him the answer. High energy ion beam. First salvo. Liu Yongchang's voice came from the Earth number no. one shipboard laboratory. The moment the words fell, dozens of surrounding Golden Crow, battleships simultaneously activated high-energy ion beam weapons. Due to the precharged energy, there was almost no waiting time. The powerful ion beams rushed straight towards the target battleship A, Golden Crow, battleship with a large number of hemispherical devices evenly distributed on the surface. Facing such a large number of ion beams, if it were a normal Golden Crow battleship, there would be one and only one ending. That is the destruction of the machine and the death of people. But obviously, the Golden Crow battleship located in the bullseye is not an ordinary battleship. One second, two seconds. According to calculations, the high-energy ion beam has already reached the target area and caused tons of damage to the target warship. But now, the experimental Golden Crow still stays quietly in the vast universe. Based on naked eye observation, it seems that it has not been attacked in any way. But under high-precision observation equipment, it is a different picture. Dozens of high-energy ion beams rush towards Golden Crow from all angles at extremely high speeds. But just when it was about to hit, scattered strong magnetic fields appeared on the surface of Golden Crow. Then, the high-energy particle beam hit these strong magnetic fields. Under the influence of the strong magnetic field, the high-energy particle beam was deflected and passed over the Golden Crow battleship in a beautiful arc. Attention all units! Change the angle! High-energy particle beam! Second salvo. Third salvo. The test results appeared in the holographic projection. A total of 1,000 high-energy ion beams are launched. And the interception success rate is 100%. Switch weapons. Prepare plasma bombs. The first phase of testing was quickly completed. Just by looking at the smiles on the faces of the scientific researchers, you can see the performance of the precision magnetic shield. Professor, compared with the magnetic field shield of the Raider civilization, the strength of our magnetic field shield has been increased by 50%. On the side, Chao Liangkai looked at the experimental data in front of him and said to Lu Yongchang with a happy face. Lu Yongchang nodded with satisfaction. Get ready and test the plasma shield next. Attention all units. There is a countdown to the launch of the electromagnetic gun. 10, 9, 8. Emission. Unlike high energy particle beams and plasma bombs, the testing process of electromagnetic guns is more violent. In real battlefields, electromagnetic gun attacks often appear in the form of metal storms. Therefore, the experimental Golden Crow battleship faced a huge metal storm. Dozens of Golden Crow 
battleships tilted tens of thousands of enhanced projectiles towards the target in just a few seconds. The so-called enhanced projectiles are a combination of plasma bombs and electromagnetic gun projectiles. When the projectile hits, the high-temperature plasma inside will also spurt out, causing secondary damage to the target. The metal storm has taken shape, but the experimental Golden Crow battleship did not move at all and just stayed in place quietly. It's like giving up resistance. After a period of waiting, the low-speed flying metal storm finally arrived at the target area. When the distance between the first projectile and the ship shortened to 5,000 meters, the Golden Crow moved. I saw its tail hatch suddenly opened. A large amount of high-temperature plasma flashing with golden-yellow light spewed out from it. The next moment, these faint blue plasmas quickly flowed. In a very short period of time, they wrapped the entire Golden Crow battleship in layers. It is different from the magnetic field shield that is invisible to the naked eye. From the outside, the plasma shield looks almost the same as a scene in a science fiction movie, a layer of light blue film distributed in an ellipsoidal shape. It doesn't look like much, but its average temperature reaches more than 3,000 degrees Celsius. While the shield was forming, the electromagnetic gun projectiles from afar also successfully hit it. At extremely high temperatures, these electromagnetic gun pellets are rapidly melted. Explosive flames immediately appeared on the surface of the shield. After the projectile exploded, the high-temperature plasma inside spewed out, trying to cause secondary damage to the ship. However, under the limitations of strong magnetic fields, these high-temperature plasmas have become the best supplement for plasma shields. As the number of electromagnetic cannon projectiles increases, the color of the plasma shield becomes darker and darker. In the laboratory, Lu Yongchang and others looked at the holographic screen in front of them with strange expressions. This scene obviously exceeded everyone's expectations. Their electromagnetic gun projectiles are not only unable to penetrate the plasma shield, they can even increase the power of the plasma shield in disguise. But obviously, this growth is not unlimited. At least, after enduring this round of metal storms, many high-temperature plasmas have broken free from the constraints of the magnetic field and escaped into the surrounding space. This is a sign of insufficient magnetic field strength. Although some unexpected situations occurred, at least the result is good. Tao Yudah stretched out his hand to drag a holographic projection and said with a strange expression, Professor, according to the latest data, the plasma shield perfectly withstood this metal storm. It's just that. Some of the magnetic field shield generating units are overloaded. Next, in order to deal with this passive increase in shield power, we need to increase the power of the magnetic shield generation unit as much as possible. No, there's one more question. Lu Yong Chang frowned and whispered. When the plasma shield was activated, Golden Crow basically lost its ability to attack. Chapter 434 Loopholes in the Magnetic Field Shield of Raider Civilization The shield technology still needs to be improved. Hearing Lu Yongchang's words, Tao Yuda and Chao Liankai looked at each other helplessly. Professor, I think this question is acceptable. Tao Yuda thought about it and said again. At this stage, the plasma shield has extremely high defensive power. You also said that it is a last resort to save life. Yes, Professor. Chao Liankai also advised from the side. If it comes to the point where you need to activate the plasma shield to save your life, it doesn't matter whether you can fight back or not. Facing the joint persuasion of Tao Yuda and Chao Liankai, Lu Yongchang still shook his head firmly. No, it is true that plasma shields are a means of saving lives. But imagine it. Suppose you participate in an interstellar war and face the siege of many enemy ships and you activate the plasma shield at the last moment. But you don't have any means to fight back. I can only watch helplessly as the shield-generating units are overloaded and destroyed one by one under the strong enemy fire. How do you feel when you encounter this situation? Tao Yuda and Chao Liangtai's expressions changed slightly. They looked at each other again, and both saw the guilt in the other's eyes. Remember, Lu Yongchang's tone slowed down as if he noticed the changes in the expressions on their faces. This is technology used in interstellar warfare. Even if we can increase the survival rate by 0.01%, we must improve it as much as possible. But, Professor, our current weapons cannot penetrate this plasma shield. Chao Liangai spread his hands helplessly. Unless we imitate the approach of Latour's flagship. The flagship of the Rothor civilization? Lu Yongchang frowned. Memories gradually came back to me. During the confrontation with the later civilization flagship, the magical gravitational film briefly cracked a gap. With the help of this gap, the flagship wrapped in a gravity shield can launch attacks on the outside world. 
He suddenly realized. You mean? Control the plasma shield to temporarily shut down the area. Chao Liankai nodded quickly and said. Yes. This technology is not difficult to implement. Controlling a single or several magnetic field shield generating units. The precise magnetic field shield is realized based on this technology. It's just, there's a downside to that. Liu Yongchang's face darkened and he answered. It has an impact on the overall defense of the plasma shield. Unlike gravitational shields, flowing plasma is not easy to control. Rushly adjusting the magnetic field shield generation unit may even cause the plasma shield to become unstable. Even if we overcome the above difficulties, plasma flow will take time, which will greatly increase the shutdown time and recovery time of the plasma shield. Chao Liankai shook his head with a grimace. Losing a lot of defensive performance for a little attack power is not worth the gain. He also didn't expect that Li Yongchang could find so many disadvantages in a short period of time. However, it is normal. One is a gravitational shield, and the other is a plasma shield. The two are naturally not comparable. He sighed softly. If this happens, it will be troublesome. Li Yongchang did not speak, but frowned and looked at the Golden Crow battleship covered with light blue shields in the holographic screen. Why can't we start with weapons? Tao Yuda's voice came from the side. Weapon! Chao Liankai retorted subconsciously. Are you kidding? What weapon can pass through this layer of plasma unharmed? Of course it's a weapon with a magnetic field shield. Tao Yuda responded without hesitation. A weapon with a magnetic field shield? Are you kidding? As he spoke, Chao Liangtai's voice gradually became softer. Lu Yongchang frowned and fell into deep thought. You mean to add a miniaturized magnetic field shield generation unit to the electromagnetic gun projectile? Yes. Tao Yuda responded in a short and powerful voice. Theoretically. Lu Yongchang's eyes became brighter and brighter. This is feasible. Both he and Chao Liangkai fell into blind spots in their thinking. Why must the plasma shield give way to the weapon? As long as the weapon can pass through the plasma shield. Isn't that all? Suddenly, Lu Yongchang's expression froze, and he stood there blankly. He seems to have discovered the flaws in the magnetic field shield and plasma shield. No. To be precise. It is a flaw in the magnetic field shield mastered by the Rothor civilization. There is almost no change in the strong magnetic field generated by the shield generating unit of the Rothor civilization. And all magnetic fields run in the same direction. During the development process, the Golden Crow battleship made extensive reference to the Rothor battleship and naturally inherited this feature. Therefore, the enemy only needs to make a few tentative attacks to decipher the direction of the magnetic field shield and then it can create corresponding weapons to attack the human fleet. Professor? What's wrong with you? Tao Yudan noticed the change in Lu Yongchang's expression and hurriedly asked. Are there any loopholes in this plan? No. It's not a problem with the plan. Thinking of the scenarios that might happen in the future battlefield, Lu Yongchang turned pale and shook his head repeatedly. The plan is very good. There are no problems. Then, Tao Yudan's eyes became even more confused. It's a problem with the magnetic field shield and plasma shield, Lu Yongchang said in shock. They have huge design flaws. As soon as these words came out, the laboratory where there was some light discussion suddenly became extremely quiet. Everyone turned their attention to Lu Yongchang in front of the experimental table, facing everyone's looks. Lu Yongchang calmed down and briefly explained his thoughts. Everyone present here is an elite of the Academy of Sciences. So naturally they quickly understood Lu Yongchang's words. Next moment. The expressions of all the scientific researchers changed. If what Li Yongchang said really happens on the battlefield, then the human fleet will face a real disaster. Then why does the later civilization still use this kind of shield technology with obvious loopholes? A researcher asked the question that everyone was wondering. Li Yongchang's eyes twitched, and he said with some embarrassment, This question, you might as well take a look at the history of the later civilization. Most of their wars were fought against low-level civilizations such as second-level or first-level civilizations. How do these civilizations have any experience in dealing with magnetic field shields? As for the few combat experiences of level 3 and level 4 civilizations, they are basically based on the opponent being severely damaged. What's more, the Rothor civilization has almost no R&D capabilities of its own. So the occurrence of such major problems is an inevitable result. Chapter 435 One Bullet One Code Fortunately, we discovered the problem in time. Speaking of this, Lu Yongchang breathed a long sigh of relief. This problem is not difficult to solve. Before Lu Yongchang could speak, a look of surprise appeared in Tao Yuda's eyes. Professor, do you mean to make the magnetic field move? Not bad. 
Lu Yongchang nodded with satisfaction and continued. By adjusting the algorithm, we can make the magnetic field generated by the shield generation unit undergo specific changes. This change is mainly reflected in the direction of the magnetic field. As a result, the magnetic field that constructs the magnetic field shield will continue to change. Unless the enemy cracks our magnetic field shield algorithm, their weapons can only rely on brute force to break through. At the same time, we can synchronize this algorithm into a small shield generating device inside the railgun projectile. Just like the verification code, give the electromagnetic gun projectile a one bullet, one code function. In this way, it will neither affect the shield strength nor the battleship's counterattack capability. He does not believe that so-called level 3 or level 4 civilizations have the ability to crack the zero-encrypted magnetic field shield generation algorithm. Perhaps, in future interstellar wars, a large part of the energy will be spent on deciphering the opponent's shield generation rules. Lu Yongchan looked thoughtfully at the several Golden Crow battleships that were going home in the holographic screen and murmured to himself. One month later, inside the number 3 gravity cabin in the home ship number 279, Hope, wearing exoskeleton armor, skillfully completed one test after another. Drop! Test completion rate 99.13%. Congratulations, Mr. Hope. You have successfully passed the test. The unchanging electronic synthesized sound made Hope excited. He asked urgently. Then, can I go to Dawn Star? As a human from the Earth era, he would naturally prefer to live on the surface of the planet than on a starship. Even the gravity chamber inside the starship can simulate the Earth's gravity very well. But that's not real gravity after all. Of course. Mr. Hope. Zero's electronic synthesized voice sounded again. If you need to apply to go to Dawn City Number 1, you need to complete the signing of the following documents. The moment he finished speaking, a holographic projection quickly unfolded in front of him. On the screen are electronic documents. Application form for surface residents on Dawn Star. Notification of risks of living on the surface of Dawn Star. Looking at the dense documents, Hope felt the corners of his eyes twitch wildly. Yes. Is it necessary? He looked through the risk notification sheet and subconsciously asked. Certainly. The gravity of Dawn will cause lasting and massive damage to human internal organs. To relieve this symptom, you need to be in the medical bay for more than five hours a day to repair your internal organs. Hope interrupted Zero helplessly. Of course I know this. It's just, sleeping in the medical cabin every night is a bit too uncomfortable. Does the Academy have any solution to this? Currently, the Biological Laboratory of the Academy of Sciences is conducting relevant research. Is there any progress then? Hope's eyes lit up, and he asked again. Sorry, you don't have enough permissions to view this information. Zero responded without mercy. The light in Hope's eyes gradually dissipated. He shook his head with a wry smile, raised his hand, and signed his name on the document in the holographic projection. Fine. He took a deep breath and turned to look at the planet outside the porthole. Zero, send me to Dawn Star. The gate of the home ship port slowly opened. A Zwim number two sailed out of it and flew straight towards the Dawn Star. Hope turned her head and looked toward the porthole curiously. Through the porthole, he could see the nearby home ships number 278 and number 280. Like home ship number 279. The port doors of these two home ships are also open. He could even see a Zuin 2 flying out of the port of home ship number 280. Looking at the faint blue light at the tail of the Zuin number 2, Hope's mood improved a lot. There should be many residents in City 1 of Dawn Star. Right? Maybe he can even meet old friends he hasn't seen for many years. Thinking of this, Hope's eyes filled with anticipation. As time went by, the yellow-brown surface of the porthole gradually occupied the entire porthole. But Hope's attention is not on this desolate planet. He stared at the side of Dawn Star. It was an extremely large facility of planetary spaceport. With the help of the telescope equipped on Zuin 2, he could even clearly see the starships parked in the spaceport. It was an extremely familiar starship with a strange shape. Isn't this the Golden Crow equipped with shield technology? Hope murmured to himself. Is this another transformation? Next moment, the strange-looking, Golden Crow battleship emitted faint blue flames from its tail and slowly left the spaceport, just when Hope was feeling regretful that he couldn't see the Golden Crow battleship. His attention was attracted by some little black spots ahead. These densely packed small black spots surround the entire Dawn Star. What is that? Hope murmured softly, reaching out to adjust the angle of the telescope. The picture gradually becomes clearer. He subconsciously held his breath. They are all satellites. That's a satellite network all over the Dawn Star. Dear passengers, 
arriving at the station ahead. Dawn Star. Some stiff electronic synthesis sound sounded, and Hope knew that it was the sound of one. Before humans arrived, Dawn's surface was permeated by periodic global storms. The storm was extremely powerful. To alleviate this situation, under the leadership of Professor Lu Yongchang, the Academy of Sciences has mastered planetary climate control technology. Those satellites you see are planetary climate control satellites. With the help of these satellites, global storms are confined to the Dawn Star X region. Remind us again that Area X is a high-risk area. No one is allowed to go to this area without permission. Otherwise, you will be responsible for the consequences. Hope stared at the satellite network getting closer and closer, swallowing subconsciously. Is today's Academy of Sciences already so awesome? Take control of planetary climate. The next step should be to transform the environment of the entire planet. Right? Hope speculated in her mind. Maybe one day, this extremely desolate planet can become like the Earth? Thinking of this, Hope felt like a fire was lit in his heart. At this moment, his admiration for the Academy of Sciences reached an unprecedented level. Chapter 436 Plasma Cannon Dear passengers, please take note. The starship is about to enter the atmosphere of Dawn Star. During this period, the starship's hull will experience strong turbulence. This is a normal phenomenon. Please do not panic. After hearing the broadcast, Hope's expression suddenly became serious. He immediately checked the seat belt on his seat. Although planetary landing technology is very mature, there is basically no possibility of accidents. But thinking that this is a super-Earth with a denser atmosphere and stronger gravity, Hope still subconsciously felt a little uneasy. As it turned out, his uneasiness was unfounded. Perhaps because of the enhanced performance of the starship. The bumps that Hope felt were not strong. Even in Hope's subjective feeling, landing on Dawn Star seems to be easier and simpler than landing on Proxima B and Ross 154. After entering the atmosphere, Zuin 2's flight trajectory gradually stabilized. Hope, who specially chose a seat by the porthole, naturally put his head to the porthole curiously and looked around. There are countless deep or shallow gullies on the yellow-brown land. He can see all kinds of terrain. Mountains, plains, volcanoes, etc. Volcano? He quickly looked back, looking at the crater spewing gurgling red magma under the side of Zuin 2. Hope couldn't help but be ecstatic. That is a place where minerals gather. I wonder what fresh mineral resources this alien planet's volcanoes can bring. Hope thought as she cast her gaze into the distance. The next moment, his attention was attracted by that flash of blue on the vast yellow-brown land. There is actually a piece of blue water. The water area is not large. But it still makes Hope excited. It seems that this planet is not so bad. Maybe he will have a chance to see the sea view. Thinking of this, the corners of Hope's mouth raised slightly and a somewhat satisfied smile appeared in his eyes. So end number two flew straight towards the water. As time passed, a small, bright white hemispherical building reflected in Hope's eyes. That's a closed city on the surface built by humans. Looking at the extremely familiar building, Hope became more and more excited. His mind couldn't help but start imagining scenes in the city. Is the city layout still the same as before? Where will the house he was assigned be located? Is there a food court next to it? Questions popped up in Hope's mind involuntarily. Standing at the hatch of Zun 2, Hope took a deep breath. Finally reached. His consciousness stirred slightly. With almost no delay, the exoskeleton armor on his body drove his body to move. Boom. 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 With the sound of heavy footsteps, Hope walked out of Zun number 2. Earth number 1 shipboard laboratory. Professor, the test results of the new generation magnetic field shield and plasma shield are perfect. Tao Yuda excitedly reported to Lu Yongchang the results of a series of tests recently conducted. Lu Yongchang nodded with satisfaction. But soon, he raised his eyebrows and asked, Where is the weapon system? How effective are the newly modified electromagnetic gun projectiles? Tao Yuda turned his attention to Chao Liangkai, who was standing aside. That is the project that academician Chao Liangkai is responsible for. It's perfect. Facing the questioning looks of Lu Yongchang and Tao Yuda, Chao Liangkai quickly came to his senses and stretched out his hand to drag a holographic image. Currently, electromagnetic gun projectiles can easily enter and exit the magnetic field shield and plasma operating at full power. Shield. Furthermore, according to your idea, Professor, we have added a function to the electromagnetic gun projectile. After launch, we can remotely control the magnetic field shield generation unit inside the projectile which can generate small magnetic field shields of different strengths and directions. It's just, 
The actual combat effect is unknown. Chao Liangkai spread his hands helplessly. If we can't crack the opponent's shield algorithm, this function actually has no effect. Lu Yongchan didn't pay much attention. Regarding this additional function, his attitude has always been, I can use it, but I can't live without it. What's more, cracking the enemy shield algorithm is not a trivial function. If used properly, it can be a trump card for the human fleet to determine the outcome of a battle. Okay. Lu Yongchan clapped his hands and reached out to open a brand new holographic image. Let's throw the shield technology aside. Next, it's time to consider developing new weapon systems. Chao Liangkai. Tao Yuda. The two of them couldn't help but froze on the spot. Tao Yuda even reached out and took out his ears. As if he couldn't believe what he heard. Professor. The new weapon system. Is it too fast? According to the civilization level classification mechanism you gave before. We have just entered the third level civilization. Isn't this too hasty? Chao Liangkai also helped. Yes. Professor. The surface construction of Dawn Star has just begun. Should our focus be on planetary transformation? There are still many people waiting to wake up from hibernation. Lu Yongchan did not speak, but turned to look at the porthole in the distance. Tao Yuda and Chao Liangkai looked at each other and followed Lu Yongchan's gaze with doubts on their faces. Outside the porthole is the empty universe. If you observe carefully, you will find that there are a group of small light spots in the empty and deep background of the universe. These light spots kept a certain distance from the Earth and followed the human fleet step by step. Dimensional strike ship. Tao Yuda's voice suddenly dropped. Don't forget. Lu Yong Chong sighed softly. The core of the painting is still close to us. We don't know when the pastoral pie it talks about will appear in front of us. We don't even know what kind of attitude the so-called pastoralists have towards us. In this kind of environment, without powerful weapons as a guarantee, how can we develop other technologies with peace of mind? Tao Yuda and Chao Liang Kai, after a brief silence, turned around and looked seriously at the holographic projection in front of them. However, the helplessness and pain in their eyes were so intense that they were about to overflow. As for Lu Yongchang, he sighed in his heart and said in a deep voice, The magnetic field shield generation unit brought me some inspiration for new weapons. Historically, our plasma weapons have only existed in the form of plasma bombs. For a second level civilization, its power is powerful enough. But for a third level civilization, it is obviously not enough. These days are different. Thanks to precise control of the magnetic field, the further development of plasma weapons can finally be put on the research and development agenda. Plasma Cannon A close range and powerful shield breaking weapon. Chapter 437 Starship Battering Ram Plasma Cannon Looking at the huge muzzle in the holographic projection, Chao Liangsai's eyes went straight. Professor, let me first ask, what is the size of this thing? He swallowed and said with difficulty. Size? Lu Yongchang shrugged and reached out to operate the holographic projection again. A hundred meter diameter muzzle? Chao Liangsai's face twisted and he exclaimed loudly. Are you hacking kidding me? As soon as the words came out of his mouth, he realized the problem. He smiled and apologized to Lu Yongchang. Ahem. Professor, that's not what I meant. As for Tao Yuda on the side, he had a similar reaction, but he suppressed the urge to swear. Lu Yongchang, on the other hand, looked at the two people's reactions with a smile. To be honest, he was not surprised by such a reaction. When he saw this extremely violent weapon in the technology tree system, he had the same reaction. What kind of cannon is this? It's just like a small starship. Tao Yuda complained in a low voice. Isn't it almost as big as Zuan number two? More than that. Chao Liangkai looked at the size on it and did a quick mental calculation. It's far more than Zuan number two. Lu Yongchan raised his eyebrows sharply. Hey! How do you know that I designed a starship for this cannon? Tao Yuda. Chao Liangkai. What shocking speech. A starship specially designed for a cannon? Before the two of them could react. Lu Yongchan reached out and slid the holographic image in front of him. In the holographic screen. A 3D simulation of a new type of warship appeared. The starship is in the shape of a slender cylinder as a whole, with a length of 500 meters and a diameter of about 150 meters. Compared with other starships, it is considered mini, but compared with other weapons, it is a veritable big brother. The eyes of Tao Yuda and the two men quickly focused on the head of the starship. The cannon muzzle with a diameter of 100 meters almost completely occupied the head space of the starship. I named it the Battering Ram. As the name suggests, Li Yongchang said excitedly. 
Its main function is to violently crack the magnetic field shield or plasma shield of the enemy's secondary flagship and flagship. The cracking principle is simple. With extremely powerful instantaneous output power, the enemy ship's shield generating device can be quickly overloaded. Therefore, the entire starship has only one weapon, the plasma cannon. The remaining components, apart from the starship SH, L, are probably the only remaining components are the large fusion reactor and the hull thruster nozzle. Speaking of this, Liu Yongchang shook his head with some regret. Unfortunately, according to Zero's simulation test, this starship will most likely only have one chance to attack in actual combat, so it can only be controlled by Zero. Tao Yudal looked at the seriously unbalanced starship in the picture, and the corners of his mouth twitched wildly. Can this be called designing a starship? It's better to describe it differently. We ingeniously installed an engine on the cannon, so that it can fly freely in the universe. This statement may be more appropriate. Tao Yudal complained crazily in his heart about what Li Yongchang had done. So, what is the working principle of this plasma cannon? Tao Yudal took a deep breath and changed the topic to another direction. Is it still a plasma bomb? Of course not. As if he felt questioned, Liu Yongchang's tone of voice was obviously raised by a degree. Are you kidding me? I didn't build such a big thing just to launch a few pitiful, weak plasma bombs. Seeing the confused looks in Chao Liankai and Tao Yudo's eyes, Liu Yongchang slowed down his tone and explained. Cannon. The ratio of barrel length to caliber is large. Overall, its barrel is thin and long. As soon as these words came out, Chao Liankai and Tao Yudo's expression suddenly became strange. The two of them turned their attention to the holographic screen in front of them. You call a barrel with a diameter of 100 meters thin? Moreover, they didn't see how long the so-called barrel was? Professor, this barrel is different from what you said. Chao Liankai said with an embarrassed look. Did you say it wrong? Chao Liankai's question made the excitement on Liu Yongchang's face increase again. He waved his hand. Who said the barrel isn't long? The holographic screen switches instantly. The entire barrel is composed of a continuous magnetic field. The overall length can reach more than 100 kilometers. What you see is just the base of the cannon. Numb. Chao Liankai and Tao Yuda said they were completely numb. What kind of wild idea is this? Liu Yongchang obviously did not give the two people any buffer time and continued to introduce. The plasma cannon. As the name suggests, its ammunition is extremely powerful plasma, which is a high temperature plasma flow. The gun barrel composed of a magnetic field can smoothly restrain these plasma flows and even provide them with a steady stream of acceleration, allowing them to exit the barrel faster. As he spoke, the holographic projection screen changed again. A translucent gun barrel gradually extends outward from the turret. In the blink of an eye, the length of this so-called gun barrel reached 100 kilometers. In comparison, the turret at the end of the barrel has become a black spot the size of a sesame seed. Now, as Liu Yongchang said, the ratio of barrel length to caliber is indeed large. Tao Yuda put his hand on his forehead. He felt that his worldview had been severely impacted. He spoke with difficulty. Professor, how are you going to make such a long magnetic field gun barrel? Our magnetic field shield generation unit cannot be effective at such a long distance. Good question. Liu Yongchang shouted and slid the holographic image again. Remember our old drone swarm? With only a few modifications, they can become mobile magnetic field shield generating units. To put it simply, these drone swarms are our gun barrels. Tao Yuda's pupils trembled slightly, and he swallowed hard. This, this is crazy. Yes, crazy. This is the only adjective in the minds of Tao Yuda and Chao Liankai. Liu Yongchang shrugged and said noncommittally. Maybe this weapon is a little crazy, but its power can definitely satisfy our imagination. For now, its only disadvantage is its short range. Even if the drone's magnetic field is used to form the barrel, its maximum range will only be about 100 kilometers. As a result, its scope of application is extremely limited. However, in a sense, it fits the name I gave it. Chao Liankai and Tao Yudo were stunned. Battering ram, as the name suggests, it should indeed be a close-range shield-breaking weapon. Chapter 438 Is there a possibility that my exploration ship also has a problem? The number one city on the surface of Dawn Star. The familiar road layout and familiar street trees made Hope feel in a trance. If it weren't for the exoskeleton armor he was wearing and the slight swelling feeling in his abdomen, he would have thought he was still living in Ross 154. He followed his memory and found his own house. Standing at the door of the room, he took a deep breath and reached out to hold the door handle. A holographic image quickly unfolded. 
Biometric authentication in progress. Paw print. Confirmed. Iris. Confirmed. Face recognition. Confirmed. Welcome home. Mr. Hope. The familiar gentle electronically synthesized female voice made Hope feel her heart tremble slightly. That's his home smart butler. Like E. They both belong to weak artificial intelligence and are under the jurisdiction of Zero. Is this built by Zero? He asked with a slightly trembling voice. As soon as he finished speaking, he came back to his senses. What are you talking about? Who else could have built this city but Zero? He quickly changed his words and said, I mean, the layout of Dawn Star City 1 seems to be similar to Ross 154 City 1? Yes. Mr. Hope. The home smart butler responded quickly. For the sake of convenience and to give people a better sense of belonging. The drawings of Ross 154 were directly used when building this city. Only the Academy of Sciences and some important places have been redesigned. Hope suddenly realized. Understood. The main thing is to save trouble. That's right. Having just arrived in his new home and faced with the heavy construction tasks. Zero's computing power must be very tight. Hey! Hope! Just as Hope was standing at the gate thinking wildly, a familiar voice interrupted his thoughts. He turned around sharply and looked in the direction of the sound. I saw a blonde man standing not far away, smiling and waving to him. Onset? Your boy is here too! Hope was surprised and happy to see his old friend. And he hurriedly waved and shouted loudly. Obviously, the man named Hans Ant was not very satisfied with Hope's reaction. He immediately turned down his face and pretended to be angry. Hope! Are you treating an old comrade you haven't seen in a hundred years like this? What do you mean I'm here too? In terms of contribution value, I'm not lower than you. Why can't I be among the first to wake up? Listening to this familiar accent, a smile suddenly appeared on Hope's face. He apologized repeatedly. Sorry. Sorry. It was just an accident. Then, he waved to Hanson. Come to my house and have a chat. Strictly speaking, we haven't seen each other for a hundred years. Are there many people in city number one now? Hope reached out to take the teacup handed by the robot and asked softly. It seems like how many days have it been since you arrived? Hearing this, Hanset raised his head and nodded with dignity. Of course, I have passed a series of tests on the exoskeleton armor. Probably, we entered city number one a week ago. Hope smiled and nodded in agreement with Hanset. As an old comrade who has been with him for decades, Hope naturally knows Hanset's character very well. Although his personality is a bit flamboyant, he is still reliable when encountering big problems. As for people, after showing off, Hansen returned to the topic and shrugged helplessly. Actually, there aren't many people. You should have realized when you came here just now that there were almost no people on the street. After all, only a small number of people have been revived now. Besides, there are still many awakened personnel who have not passed the test of exoskeleton armor. Hope nodded. Not much surprised by the answer. Don't worry. Cities 2 and 3 are already under construction. He patted Hansen on the shoulder and comforted softly. When the second and third batches of people wake up, the city will become lively. Hansen shrugged nonchalantly, as if he didn't seem to care much about the city's population. The next moment, he put his head next to Hope, his face full of encouragement, and whispered, Let's not talk about the city's population problem. How about it? Are you interested in going out for a walk? You should have seen it when you came. Right. There are many active volcanoes on this planet. While there are not many people around now. Let's strike first and try to cover the surrounding area. Hearing this, Hope felt his heart skip a beat. Seemingly seeing the agitated expression on Hope's face. Hanset moved closer again. Don't miss this opportunity. And you will never get it again. Don't forget. This is a brand new planet. Do you want to waste your precious time on the deserted streets? snapped. Hope reached out and slapped the coffee table in front of her. Stop talking. I go. Time? Tomorrow. The corners of Hansen's mouth rose quickly. And he knew that. Like him, Hope was not an easygoing person. As he spoke, he opened his watch and clicked a few times on the small holographic projection. I have already declared it to the city management center. It's 1021 in the morning now. And the results are expected to be available this afternoon. I've already thought about it. Our first stop is to go to the crater. Thinking of the huge crater he saw on Zuin 2, Hope gradually became excited. He quickly opened his watch and submitted an application to leave the city to the city management center with great skill. The reason is, of course, to go out and explore for minerals. As grassroots employees of grassroots institutions under the Academy of Sciences, 
The city management center will generally not reject their applications. Right. Han said suddenly thought of something and asked casually. Your mineral exploration ship should still be there. Right. I heard that when the human fleet went to the Glee's 555 star system, it encountered a star pirate civilization. A big war broke out at that time, and many star ships suffered unreasonable disasters. The smile on Hope's face suddenly stiffened. Seemingly. Possible. Is his starship one of them? Hey, hey, hey. Brother. Isn't it? Seeing Hope's expression, Han said panicked. Calm down. Doesn't this still belong to you? Hope twitched the corner of his mouth, waved his hand nonchalantly and said, I'll just take your mineral exploration ship tomorrow. Is there a possibility that there is something wrong with my exploration ship? Hansen said in a faint tone. Otherwise, why do you think I stayed here for a whole week? Hope. Mr. Hope. The voice of the family's smart butler broke the slightly stiff atmosphere between the two. Message from the Alliance Starship Manufacturing Factory. Your Type 6 mineral exploration ship has arrived at Dock 6. City 1. Dawn Star. Please go check it out. Chapter 439. Central Volcano in Dawn Star A2 Plane. Hope breathed a sigh of relief. Then, he raised his eyebrows at Han said beside him. Now, we have a boat. After a short silence. No, this is not scientific. Why did your ship arrive before mine? And it's the latest Type 6 exploration ship. Hope smiled broadly and shrugged. Who knows? Maybe Zero likes me and puts my order in front of you. After saying that, he turned around and walked towards the door. He wanted to go out and relax in the next moment. Behind him, Hanson's shrill wail came. The next day, a small starship with a length of only 50 meters slowly left the Dawn Star City number one. Hey bro, wrong route. Hanson's shouting voice came from the side. The volcano is on the other side. You are going the wrong way. Hope glanced at the satellite map and said with a smile. It's not the wrong way. Before prospecting, I want to go and see the water area next to city number one. The mineral exploration ship slowly landed on a huge reef. Reefs like this can be seen everywhere near the shore of the water. Huge rocks divide this area of water into small lakes. Although it is a lake, its average depth is more than 50 meters. As for the central area of the water, the maximum depth there even exceeds 500 meters, which can be called a small ocean. Laugh! With the sound of air tightness, the hatch of the mineral exploration ship slowly opened. Hope, wearing a spacesuit, carefully jumped off the exploration ship, walked to the edge of the reef, and stared at the blue water below. He raised his head, looked at the huge moon above his head, and said softly, It seems that I have to take back my original opinion. What? Hansen's voice came from the team's communication channel. This planet is quite beautiful. Hope leaned down, sat on the rock, and reached out to turn on the radio function of the helmet. The sounds from the outside world were transmitted to his ears through sensors and circuits. The sound of the waves and the gentle wind made his eyes trance for a while, looking at the blue water in front of him. Long-standing memories once again appeared in his mind. That was not a good memory. Call! Hope stood up, turned his head, and glanced at the water behind him with a complicated expression, and whispered, Let's go to the crater! A two-plane central volcano, as its name suggests, is located in the central area of a two-plane. It was like a bulging pustule, standing extremely abruptly on the vast plain. Gurgling lava slowly flows out of the crater, brazenly showing to others how active the planet's core is. A mineral exploration ship drew a graceful curve and landed on its mountainside. According to Hansen, they should land directly near the crater, which is the most efficient approach, but Hope refused the offer without hesitation. According to information provided by the Academy of Sciences, this is an active volcano with the possibility of erupting at any time, this can be seen from the continuous gush of lava from the crater. He didn't want this new spaceship to challenge the power of nature. Then, the two men drove a mineral exploration vehicle, starting from the mountainside and heading towards the crater. The composition of magma is slightly different from that of the Earth. Hansen skillfully operated the instruments in the car and completed the sampling inspection work. It's just the same. It's basically composed of silicate. The heavy metal content is slightly higher. This should be considered good news. Hansen said with a smile. After such a long time, there should be some heavy metal minerals near this volcano. Hope nodded and carefully operated the mechanical arm to grab a yellow solid. Sulfur. Hansen glanced at it and said again. It seems that there are quite a lot of reserves. The Academy of Sciences should be quite interested in these. Hope rigorously analyzed the composition of the yellow solid. It's not just sulfur. 
there's also some chloride and sulfide. These volcanoes can provide the human league with a lot of industrial supplies. The two took samples while driving the vehicle along the path of the magma flow. Etc. Hope's eyes lit up, and he hit the brakes. Before Hansen could speak, he controlled the manipulator again to complete a series of samples. Copper, nickel, and a little bit of gold. Get ready to detect the reserves. I have a hunch that this is a big guy. Earth. Perhaps it was because the plan proposed by Lu Yongchang inspired Tao Yudo. In the next few days, Tao Yudo kept frowning, seeming to be thinking about something. Lu Yongchang was happy to see such a scene. He is only one person after all. Even with the help of the technology tree system, he can only bring the most cutting-edge technological progress to human civilization. As for other various branch technologies, they have to be completed by other scientists. Plasma cannons are not difficult to make, with several key technologies being solved. The first-generation plasma cannon was quickly produced. Naturally, the new starship carrying the plasma cannon was also formed at the same time. After being assembled, the new battleship named Battering Ram came to the weapons testing site under Zero's control. It is said to be a weapons testing site, but it is actually in space far away from the human fleet and Dawn Star. The experimental target was naturally the Golden Crow battleship that was equipped with magnetic field shields and plasma shields. In front of the Golden Crow battleship, which is more than 1,500 meters in size. The battering ram, which is only 500 meters long, seems inconspicuous. At least, at first glance, the two do not belong to the same magnitude. Let the experiment begin. Lu Yongchang stood in front of the holographic projection and issued the order. The battering ram releases the drone swarm. For huge holes suddenly opened on the side of the cylinders, battering ram. That was the port for the battering ram. Countless small drones equipped with magnetic field shield generating units swarmed out of it. Under Zero's control, these drones quickly headed towards the front of the battering ram. Due to their small size and unmanned driving, the maneuverability of these drone swarms has been improved to the extreme. It only took a few seconds for a small number of drones to arrive at their locations. The next moment, the magnetic field shield generation unit starts. An invisible barrel composed of a strong magnetic field appeared in front of the battering ram. As for the other drones, they activated their magnetic field shields and slowly circled around the battering ram and the barrel. Their main function is to provide some of the only defense for this warrior with high attack and low defense. In addition, they can also replenish the loss of the barrel under enemy attack at any time. Chapter 440 The Power of Battering Ram The battering ram is not used to attack those scattered magnetic field shields. From the beginning of its design, it has been positioned as a strategic weapon that can win or lose with one strike. Therefore, facing the coming attack, Lu Yongchan directly issued the order without any hesitation. Golden Crow activates the plasma shield. As the words fell, the light of the hall thruster at the rear of the Golden Crow battleship dimmed instantly. A large amount of energy is quickly transferred to the magnetic field generating unit. At the same time, its rear hatch quickly opened, and blue high-temperature plasma spurted out from it under the influence of the magnetic field. This plasma enveloped the entire Golden Crow battleship like a layer of H, LS. Got up. This is the strongest defensive state of the Golden Crow battleship. Before the battering ram appeared, even the human fleet itself needed a lot of effort to break this. Turtle SH. L. Professor. The battering ram is ready and ready to attack. Zero's reminder sounded in the office. Start attacking. Li Yongchang said in a deep voice. As Li Yongchang's order was issued, a dazzling light lit up in the dark and deep universe. Inside the battering ram, a large number of nuclear fusion reactors that are enough to drive three Golden Crow battleships are at full power at this moment. All the energy generated rushes toward the front muzzle of the battering ram. A faint blue light began to appear at the muzzle. Next moment, before anyone could react, endless plasma spurted out from the muzzle. Under the strong magnetic field channel constructed by the drone, these plasmas continue to accelerate. 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 A hundred kilometers of accelerating tubes allow these high-temperature plasmas to reach an incredible speed. Like a flash of blue lightning, this blue plasma column with a diameter of 100 meters spurts out from the mouth of the invisible barrel constructed by the magnetic field. At the same time, the light of the hull propulsion device at the tail of the battering ram gradually extinguished. The part of the hull near the gun muzzle has even been slightly deformed. Part of the remaining blue plasma, carrying a golden electric glow, slowly seeped out from the surface of the ship's hull. 
destroying the already weak ship's hull. It was scrapped. Under such overloaded operation, it could only send out this only one bombardment in its life. But no one cares about this. Everyone's attention is on the swan song. It emits. In an instant, a faint blue lightning struck the light blue plasma shield near the Golden Crow battleship. At first, due to the impact of a large amount of external plasma, the color of the plasma shield suddenly became a lot darker. From the original light blue, it turned into an overloaded dark blue. Of course, this is just a short moment. In the next moment, the overloaded magnetic field shield generating units chose to strike collectively they were overloaded. The plasma that initially circled around the Golden Crow lost the restraint of the magnetic field and was thrown out in a tangential direction in all directions. Against the background of the deep, dark universe, these plasmas form an extremely brilliant picture. At this time, the Golden Crow battleship is like a hedgehog with explosive hair. However, unlike normal hedgehogs, the spikes on the body of this large hedgehog are filled with extremely powerful plasma. This is far from over. There is even more than half of the powerful plasma column from the battering ram left after the magnetic field shield generation unit went off. The remaining plasma columns rushed straight towards the Golden Crow battleship. Without a magnetic field shield, Golden Crow could only pin its hopes on its thick armor. Obviously, for a plasma column with a diameter of 100 meters, this thick armor is no different from paper. The blue plasma column barely stagnated and sank directly into the head of the Golden Crow battleship. After a short wait, a small amount of plasma spurted out from the tail of Golden Crow. Penetrating injury. A powerful explosion of fire appeared in the dim universe. Instant kill. Although the battering ram only launched one attack. The power of this attack deeply shocked the hearts of everyone in the laboratory. His. Tao Yuda, who was standing next to Lu Yongchang, took a deep breath. How's it going? Isn't it powerful? Lu Yongchang turned his head and said with a smile. Yes, it's pretty good. Tao Yuda responded with a somewhat difficult tone and nodded. Unfortunately, it can only attack once. Speaking of this, Tao Yuda glanced at the battering ram that had turned into a large piece of scrap metal with some regret. If we can have more powerful materials, maybe we can. No need, Lu Yongchang said softly. What? Tao Yuda was stunned, unable to react for a while. During the construction process of the battering ram, I specially reduced its armor thickness and hull strength. Lu Yongchang shrugged and said nonchalantly. In the design, it is a disposable weapon. This will not change even with stronger, stronger materials. Why? Why? Tao Yuda couldn't accept this statement. At the beginning, he thought all this was in pursuit of higher attack power. But Lu Yongchang's statement completely rejected his speculation. Why? Lu Yongchang chuckled. Do you think that in a real interstellar war, the other side would let this thing fire a second shot? Even with the protection of the drone swarm, the energy storage time of several seconds is enough for the Golden Crow battleship to tear it into pieces. Tao Yuda's face was filled with astonishment. Seem. Makes sense? He looked thoughtfully at the wreckage in the holographic projection, seeming to get some inspiration from such a weapon design. Professor, do you know about ball lightning? Tao Yuda's eyes showed some excitement, and he murmured to himself. Huh? Lu Yongchang was stunned. Ball lightning? That kind of strange physical phenomenon in the Earth Age? A little distant memory came to his mind. It was a thunderstorm. An orange-red fireball traveled against the wind in the sky. It drew a strange and beautiful curve and got into the room of the Institute through the window gap. Boom. After a loud bang, the fireball exploded. That accident caused the Institute to suffer considerable losses. Of course I know. Lu Yongchang said with some nostalgia. I remember that many people were studying this magical natural phenomenon at that time. Now it seems that it is somewhat similar to our plasma weapons. Yes. Yes. Tao Yuda nodded repeatedly. It's like a plasma ball wrapped in a strong magnetic field. If we can treat the battering ram as a disposable weapon, why can't we treat the drone it carries as a disposable weapon? No. It's not just a battering ram. It can be used on every battleship. Lu Yongchang's expression moved slightly. He seemed to understand the meaning of Tao Yuda's words. You mean to design the drone as a disposable plasma cannon? No, it's not a cannonball. The expression on Tao Yuda's face became more and more excited. To be precise, it should be a missile. Under Zero's control, these plasma encapsulated drones can achieve full guidance and carry out precise strikes on targets. 
Chapter 441 Ball Lightning Li Yongchan quickly deduced it briefly in his mind. Theoretically. He nodded calmly. This is feasible. The transformation is not difficult. After passing the test, it can be used as one of the standing weapons of the human fleet. Professor. Zero's holographic image appeared aside. There is news about you from the biology laboratory. Hearing this, Lu Yongcheng's expression suddenly became serious. He pondered for a moment and said to Tao Yuda, You will be responsible for this research project. I have to go to the biology lab. It is estimated that the human enhancement project has made a breakthrough. Earth. The door to the biology shipboard laboratory suddenly opened, revealing the scene inside. The first thing that catches the eye are five huge transparent cylindrical containers. The cylindrical container is approximately two meters high and is large enough to fit an adult human inside. The container is filled with a light yellow solution. As expected, it should be a highly concentrated nutrient solution. It seems that the experiment has reached the final step. Lu Yongcheng's eyes flashed with joy and he stepped into the biology laboratory. Professor, this way. Thanks to Ling's reminder, Mao Xingji immediately discovered Lu Yongcheng who entered the laboratory. He quickly put down the less important work in his hands and trotted towards Lu Yongcheng. Ready to start human experiments? Lu Yongcheng raised his chin and motioned to the five large jars next to him calmly. Have all the animal experiments passed? Mao Xingji nodded quickly and reached out to summon a holographic projection. Rat. Monkey. Chimpanzee. For safety reasons. All possible experiments have been done. It works very well. And so far we haven't noticed any unusual reactions. Where are the genes? Lu Yongcheng asked quickly. The genetic genes of every experimental animal are not contaminated. Mao Xingji said with joy. That's why I decided to start human experiments. After all, cities number two and number three on the surface of Dawn Star are under construction. Naturally, the sooner the human body enhancement project can be carried out, the better. Have you found the experimental subject? Lu Yongcheng asked softly as he walked towards the experimental table. Certainly. Mao Xingji subconsciously lowered his voice. They are all death row prisoners who have committed crimes against humanity. They were deprived of all the rights that humans have. During Ross 154, they were forced into hibernation in order to cope with experimental projects that may be needed in the future. Lu Yongchan nodded to express his understanding. He also heard about the crimes committed by this group of people. It's nothing more than an attempt to send some inappropriate message to the painting. But they obviously forgot one thing. All electronic equipment in the human fleet is under zero surveillance. Then, without any surprise, they were arrested just as they were about to put their ideas into action. These capitulationists will not regret dying. Lu Yongcha narrowed his eyes in disgust. Let's start the experiment. Mao Xingji nodded and gestured to the scientific researchers in the distance. Looking at the experimental scene not far away, Lu Yongcha frowned. After the experiment is over and all tests are completed, let them live in peace. Don't leave any consequences. Human civilization does not need this kind of scum. Mao Xingji nodded solemnly. Don't worry. Guaranteed nothing will go wrong. A few days later. Professor. Look. Mao Xingji stood in front of a cylindrical container and unfolded the holographic image responsible for monitoring vital signs. According to the inspection data sent back by the nanorobot, omentum has appeared on the surface of some of their internal organs. Not only that, but their muscle strength is also greatly enhanced. Conservative estimates suggest that at present, their physical fitness should be more than doubled. Lu Yongchang carefully observed the data on the holographic projection and nodded silently. Judging from the data, the success of the human enhancement experiment should be a matter of time. But biological experiments are always full of surprises. Therefore, until the last second, Lu Yongchang did not dare to let go of his high heart. How much time will it take until the strengthening is completed? Mao Xingji glanced at the experimental records. Just got my fourth dose of booster hormone this morning. If we look at experimental data from chimpanzees and monkeys, it will take about three days. Three days flew by. While waiting for the results of the experiment, good news came from laboratory number one. Tao Yuda successfully completed the modification of the drone and passed a series of tests. Plasma missiles have also become one of the common weapons of the human fleet. To commemorate it, Tao Yuda named it Ball Lightning. True to its name, the modified drone, after releasing a large amount of plasma, does indeed look like ball lightning from the Earth's age. However, it is larger, lasts longer, and is more powerful. Moreover, under Zero's control, the flight trajectories of these large ball lightnings were even more bizarre. 
the extremely high mobility is destined to be the main output weapon in the interstellar battlefield. Only, war consumes more resources. Regardless of whether it is ball lightning or battering ram, they are all disposable consumables. This means that once the human fleet encounters an interstellar war, Zero will face an extremely severe productivity test. Fortunately, Academician Imo Zayong's new generation of optical quantum computers has passed preliminary tests. It is estimated that it will not be long before the productivity level of human civilization will climb several levels again. Professor, one of the experimenters is awake and has been sent to a separate gravity chamber. Mao Jingzi's words interrupted Lu Yongchang's thoughts. Let's go and have a look. Lu Yongchang's eyes lit up. The wait is finally here. He quickly unlocked the electromagnetic adsorption device on his seat and followed Mao Jingji towards the experimental platform. In the giant holographic projection, the scene in the gravity cabin is projected. Chapter 442 Freeman Freeman, born from Proxima B, Mao Jingji's introduction voice came from the side. He was the mastermind of that incident. My physical fitness is pretty good. I completed all the strengthening programs so quickly. Liu Yongchang raised his eyebrows and asked casually, What are you going to test next? Will he cooperate with this experiment? Mao Jingji was silent for a moment, then nodded. I believe he will cooperate. Before the experiment, I told them that as long as the experiment was successful, they would be acquitted. Although this sentence is not very credible, and they probably don't believe it very much. When faced with the only way to survive, any living being will strive to pursue it. This is an instinct engraved in genes and cannot be escaped. Li Yongchang said nothing and turned to look at the holographic screen in front of him. The gravity chamber rotates slowly. Equivalent gravity, 0.5 g. In the picture, the man named Freeman lay motionless in the gravity chamber with his eyes closed. For this experiment, Mao Xingji even asked Zero to make a special gravity chamber. Similar to the gravity chamber used for experimental animals, this gravity chamber can achieve an equivalent gravity of up to 7 g. Unlike the large gravity cabins equipped on starships, due to material problems, the internal space of this gravity cabin is not large. It can only accommodate one person at a time. And there are not many facilities inside. Just from the appearance, it is impossible to tell that this is a criminal who has committed serious crimes against humanity. He was injected with a large amount of sedatives. Mao Jingji's explanation came from the side. After the strengthening was completed, his physical fitness was much higher than before. This was also done to prevent accidents. Lu Yongchang nodded to express his understanding. Indeed, for this group of powerless researchers in the laboratory. Freeman, who has completed all the strengthening work, is undoubtedly a dangerous existence. Although they are protected by zero-sum robots. If there is any accident, neither Li Yongchang nor Mao Jingji can accept it. Prepare to start experiments. All units should pay attention. Mao Jingji turned on the microphone and gave the order in a deep voice. Prepare to wake up the experimental subjects. After the words fell, a silver-white mechanical hand slowly reached out to Freeman. The needle penetrated his vein with precision. A few minutes later, Freeman opened his eyes with difficulty. He did not stand up immediately, but rolled his eyes to look at the completely unfamiliar environment. The next moment, he seemed to be aware of the existence of gravity. He gently raised his hand and tested it. After several confirmations, his muscles tensed up and he tried to stand up from the ground. Boom! A loud noise came through the microphone into the biology laboratory. That was the sound of Freeman hitting the ceiling of the gravity chamber. Hiss. This impact was obviously not light. Freeman grinned and rubbed his shoulders, carefully controlling his body to return to the ground. Record. Mao Xingji looked at the picture in the holographic projection seriously. Body control has dropped significantly. Then, he reached for the microphone on the side and turned on the switch. Do you remember who you are? The moment the voice came out, Freeman's expression changed drastically. Mao Xingji. Freeman looked at the camera on the side as if facing a powerful enemy, and shouted loudly, What did you do to me? Have you forgotten? Mao Jingji raised his eyebrows and continued to ask. Freeman was silent for a moment, lowered his head and looked at his body. Perhaps he was shocked by the slender muscles on his body, but his face was filled with extremely complicated expressions. Shocked, confused, confused, worried. After a long time, his tense body relaxed a little. Is this the human enhancement experiment you are talking about? As he spoke, he waved his fist. It feels good. It is indeed much stronger than before. Record. Consciousness is clear. And memory is in good condition. Mao Jingji turned his head and said to the scientific researchers on the side. Hey! 
Apparently, Freeman also heard Mao Xingji's words. He shouted with some dissatisfaction. What on earth do you want me to do? Don't forget what you told me back then. As long as I complete this experiment. I can. Acquitted. Mao Xingji interrupted Freeman. Of course I remember. Provided you cooperate with our next test. How should I trust you? Freeman, who knew that he had completed the body enhancement experiment, raised the corners of his mouth slightly, sat down on the ground and asked calmly, Watch your attitude. You are not qualified to negotiate terms with us now. Mao Jingji frowned and shouted sharply. Freeman curled his lips, obviously not taking Mao Jingji's scolding to heart. He looked at his surroundings again. Where is my companion? They haven't completed their human enhancement experiments yet? Mao Jingji said nothing. Freeman got the answer from the silence and raised the corner of his mouth again. In other words, I am now the only experimenter who has completed human enhancement? You don't have any backup options besides me? Mao Jingji's frown deepened. This scene was somewhat beyond his expectations. Of course there are other options. Lu Yongchang reached out to take the microphone from Mao Jingji's hand and said in a deep voice, Besides you, there are two other people who have completed human enhancement experiments. You have two options now. One, being thrown out of the starship and becoming a piece of space junk. Two, follow our orders and complete all tests. A trace of astonishment flashed across Freeman's face. Who are you? Where is Mao Jingji? After completing the test, can I be released without charge? Does what you say count? Lu Yongchang's tone became more severe. Correct your attitude. You just need to tell me your choice. Silence. In the picture, Freeman fell silent. From his frown, Lu Yongchang could tell that he was constantly considering the situation in the outside world. Ten seconds. Lu Yongchang shouted sharply again without any hesitation. Tell me your choice. Zero. Be prepared. If he doesn't answer after ten seconds, throw him out of Earth. Copy that. Zero's electronic synthesized voice sounded in the laboratory and gravity chamber. Nine. Eight. Seven. Wait. Are you Lu Yongchang? Freeman suddenly figured out something. His eyes widened. And he shouted loudly. Three, two. The only response he got was a cold countdown from zero. Two. I choose two. Seeing the silver white mechanical hand grabbing at him, Freeman's eyes were full of horror, and he shouted loudly. The robot hand stopped only 10 centimeters away from him. Chapter 443 The Human Body Enhancement Experiment was successful. Very good. Lu Yongchang nodded with satisfaction, turned his head, and said to Mao Jingji beside him, Get ready to start the experiment. Wait. Wait. Freeman's voice came again. You, are you Professor Lu Yongchang? So what? Lu Yongchang responded in a cold tone. Then can you guarantee it? Unlike before, there was a bit of pleading in Freeman's voice at this time. Academician Mao Jingji once promised me that as long as I complete the test, I will be pardoned. Lu Yongchang looked at the holographic image in front of him again and said word by word. Remember, you do not enjoy any rights that humans should have now. You are not qualified to let me deceive you specifically. I will think about it once the testing is complete. In the picture, Freeman lowered his head and fell into silence. Judging from his clenched fists, Freeman was obviously not in a calm mood. Start testing. Lu Yongchang ignored it and gave the order bluntly. Professor. Mao Xingji turned off the microphone and looked at the holographic projection with some worry. If you do this, will Freeman. On the contrary. Lu Yongchang shook his head. I said this, so he would cooperate with the test. Seeing the confusion in Mao Jingji's eyes, Lu Yongchang explained softly. Don't you see? He never believed that he could be acquitted. In that case, I don't need to lie to him. Just let's talk. You see? Compared to just now, his desire to survive is obviously much stronger now. Lu Yongchang shook his head with emotion. Human. That's it. I didn't make any promises to him. But he would subconsciously deceive himself. Mao Jingji shuddered slightly as he looked at Freeman whose mental condition was gradually improving in the picture. The gravity chamber began to slowly accelerate. The equivalent gravity value in the holographic screen quickly reached 1.5 G. Freeman, how do you feel? Mao Jingji asked seriously. At this time, Freeman seemed extremely submissive driven by his desire to survive. After feeling it carefully, he frowned and said, I don't feel anything else. Just that my body is a little heavier. By the way, I'm a little dizzy. Does that count? The corners of Mao Jingji's mouth twitched. Ever since the beginning of the experiment, he had never seen Freeman so talkative. Dizziness is normal. The motion sickness medicine is in your pocket. 
Just take it, and you'll be fine. A few hours later. Equivalent gravity, 2.5 G. In the holographic screen. Freeman frowned, holding his knees with both hands. His body hunched and breathing heavily. How does it feel? There is an obvious feeling of distension in the abdomen. The body is very heavy, and I can't stand up. Keep going. Equivalent gravity, 3 G. Duration, 1 hour. At this time, Freeman was already sitting on the ground of the gravity chamber. His face was slightly pale, but the skin on his hands and feet was particularly rosy. It was obvious that under the strong gravity, the blood flow in his body had been disrupted. Can you still hold on? Mao Jingji asked softly. It's not bad, Freeman said with difficulty. It's a little difficult to breathe and my vision is a little blurry. Can I lie down? Academician Mao? No respond. After struggling for a moment, Freeman lay directly on the ground. Call. After distributing the pressure, he breathed a sigh of relief. As for Mao Jingji, after observing the data sent back by the nanorobot, he turned off the microphone directly. Keep accelerating. Extreme testing. The gravity chamber began to accelerate again. 3.1 G. 3.2 G. Freeman in the holographic screen had a normal expression at first. But he soon realized the problem. Compared with just now, the acceleration of the gravity cabin is extremely rapid at this time. But at this time, he had lost the ability to resist. The increasingly powerful equivalent gravity pressed him firmly to the floor. In the picture, Freeman's face turned red and his mouth opened and closed as if he was roaring something. 48 hours later, the first experiment was declared over. In the holographic screen, the robot is cleaning the dirt in the gravity cabin. What was the result of the experiment? Lu Yongchang withdrew his gaze and calmly asked Mao Jingji beside him. The effect is outstanding, Mao Jingji said excitedly. During the test, Freeman's internal organs showed some abnormalities only under the equivalent gravity of 2G. As he spoke, he dragged the small holographic screen on the side in front of Lu Yongchang. Professor, look, only when the equivalent gravity exceeds 3G, Freeman's internal organs undergo substantial deformation. But with the support of the visceral momentum, it can still work normally. Only when the equivalent gravity exceeded 3.5G did Freeman's internal organs suffer serious damage. As for the muscles, the strengthened muscles are enough to support normal life in a 2.5G gravity environment. Speaking of this, Mao Jingji became more and more excited. Professor, the experiment was successful. Enhanced humans can live normally on the surface of Dawn Star. Not only that, the performance of the manned starship can also be further unleashed. Lu Yongchang carefully looked at the data and charts in the holographic screen, trying to find possible flaws in them. A few minutes later, a smile finally appeared on his originally solemn face. Very good. The next few experimenters don't need to perform extreme tests. Zero. Give them a large gravity chamber and adjust the equivalent gravity to 2G. Let them live in it for five years. If nothing unexpected happens, I will apply to Parliament to launch a human enhancement program. Half year later. Dawn Star. City number one. Institute of Human Resources and Social Sciences. Mineral Resources Management Division. Mr. Hope. The credit points and contribution points have been transferred. Thank you for your contribution to the construction of the People's Federation. A gentle female voice sounded in Hope's ears. He raised his wrist, opened his watch and confirmed, okay. The next moment, an extremely bright smile appeared on his face. How's it going? Han said next to him, bumped him lightly with his shoulder. I didn't lie to you. Did I? The early bird catches the worm. In the past six months, we have completed the exploration of the nearby area. The boys who woke up in the second batch are probably going to explore for minerals further away. Thinking of the livid faces of the second batch of resuscitated personnel, Han said couldn't help laughing. Keep a low profile. Hope shook her head helplessly. Thankfully there's no one around now. Otherwise, with your arrogance, TSK, 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 TCH, Han said said angrily. Did you hear that? He looked around, and after making sure no one was there, he came close to Hope and said in a low voice. I heard people say that the construction of the surface city on Dawn Star may be suspended. Chapter 444 Planet Control Earth-like Planet Transformation Technology What? Hope's eyes widened, and she exclaimed loudly. Hansen's words gave him an extremely strong impact. Suspension of the surface city construction plan of Dawn Star? No. This is impossible. As of now, including the surface cities under construction, there are only six large closed cities on Dawn Star. This cannot accommodate 6 billion humans who are still hibernating. 
Could it be? Is human civilization in crisis again? For a moment, Hope's face turned pale, and there were buzzing sounds in his mind, and his vision became blurred. As for Hansen on the side, he was obviously taken aback by Hope's extremely violent reaction. His expression changed slightly, and he quickly looked to the left and right. When he saw some staff members in the distance casting doubtful glances at them, he quickly reached out and pulled Hope's arm hard. Hey! Bro! Calm down! Hope turned her absent eyes to Hansent. Looking at his companion, who had not yet regained consciousness, Hansent reached out and patted his smooth forehead. Oh my god! You should listen to what I say! Snapped. The crisp sound of the contact between the palm and the forehead brought Hope back to reality. What? What do you mean? Hope frowned. A bad thought flashing through his mind. He suspected that he had been deceived and had ample evidence. Hansen sneered and scratched his head in embarrassment. Believe me, I definitely didn't lie to you. In recent times, the Academy of Sciences has indeed significantly slowed down the construction of surface cities and may suspend the construction of surface cities in the future. Hope shook her head repeatedly. No, 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 absolutely impossible. Only build six closed cities. Where will the six billion hibernating people live when they wake up? Is it possible to let them live in a tent in the open air? The corners of Hansen's mouth gradually rose, revealing a meaningful and mysterious smile. Wait, wait, what do you mean? Hope's eyes gradually widened and her breathing became heavier. As you think, Hansen lowered his voice. The Academy of Sciences is studying planetary transformation technology. Professor Liu is planning to build Dawn Star into Earth too. Boom. Hope only felt a loud noise coming from the depths of his mind. Crazy. This was the first thought that came to his mind after hearing the news. Terraforming? Transform Dawn Star into a second Earth? When did humans have such technology? But the next moment, he remembered the scene he saw when he first came to Dawn Star more than half a year ago, a dense network of planet-circling climate control satellites. Don't forget, that's Professor Liu. Perhaps sensing the thoughts flashing through his companion's mind, Hansen spoke quietly. Hope had a rude awakening. Yes, that is Liu Yongchang. Professor Liu, perhaps? Is all this really possible? As soon as this idea appeared, it took root and sprouted crazily in his mind, and quickly grew into a towering tree. We, Hope swallowed hard, and the muscles on both sides of her cheeks trembled slightly. You mean, it's possible for us to get out of this greenhouse and live under the real blue sky and white clouds? Hansen dragged Hope out of the door of the Mineral Resources Management Office and shrugged. I just heard about it. Hope took a deep breath. Not only did the fire in his heart not diminish at all because of these words, it even grew stronger. As the saying goes, I could have endured the darkness if I had never seen the light. Dawn Star City Number 1 Headquarters of the Institute of Humanities and Sciences Several Chinese characters were clearly displayed on the huge holographic projection in the conference room. Earth-like Planet Transformation Technology Liu Yongcheng's voice was clearly transmitted to everyone's ears through the loudspeaker. Since entering the third level civilization, we have achieved great success in terms of weapons technology. Bite off more than you can chew. For the stable development of the human fleet, I suggest that planetary transformation technology be listed as a key target to conquer. On the one hand, it can significantly improve the quality of life. On the other hand, it can reduce the computational burden of zero. Zero has been operating at full capacity since the beginning of the big construction era. The large number of surface city construction tasks makes it difficult for Zero to take into account the manufacturing progress of star ships and weapons. Around the conference table, researchers nodded one after another in agreement. Indeed, as Liu Yongchang said, during this period, Zero's main focus was on building surface cities. All of this is to minimize the population pressure that human civilization may face in the future. Population has always been the fundamental factor that determines interstellar civilization for the population to continue to grow. A suitable environment for survival is a necessary condition. But here's the problem. If you want to build a surface urban agglomeration that can accommodate 6 billion or even tens of billions of people, even if it is zero, it is impossible to do it in a short time. Therefore, it is foreseeable that if we choose to build a large number of surface cities, human civilization will face the dilemma of insufficient productivity for a long time. Without sufficient weapons and starships, human civilization will fall into the abyss again once it encounters a crisis. Do you have any objections? After deciding on the future research direction, Lu Yongchang glanced around and asked softly. Obviously, no one in the Academy of Sciences would object to this. Very good. 
Lu Yongchan nodded with satisfaction. Bon Su, the design and verification of the new starship will be left to you and Chao Liangkai. Tao Yuda, continue to improve the weapon system. Emo Ziyang. Lu Yongchan arranged a research work in an orderly manner. Finally, he set his sights on the two scientific researchers not far away. Cixin One, Fan Yi, you guys come with me. Prepare to conquer Earth like planet transformation technology. After the meeting, Lu Yongchan controlled the mechanical exoskeleton armor and walked hurriedly on the way to Dawn Star Number One Laboratory. The memories of the past few days resurfaced in his mind. Planet Control, Earth like planet transformation technology. As an advanced technology of preliminary planetary control, planetary climate macro control technology. It is a more difficult technology among level 3 civilizations. In order to get human civilization back on track as soon as possible, Lu Yongchang had to take a small risk to forcefully analyze this technology. Perhaps it was because the technology tree system had strengthened his brain for a long time. Or perhaps because he had mastered the prerequisite technology sufficiently. This time he did not fall into a long coma. After spending several hours of dizziness, he managed to get a lot of inspiration. Chapter 445 Comet, Nero. Dawn Star. Laboratory Number 1. Academician Shen. I think the atmospheric problem should be solved first. Lu Yongchang heard Fan Yi's voice as soon as he entered the laboratory. Sound. Seemingly arguing? Lu Yongchang subconsciously slowed down and looked towards the direction of the sound with interest. Sure enough, the next moment, Shen Shunwen's voice also sounded. No. 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 Water resources are the most important issue. Water resources are too scarce on Dawn Star. Sufficient water resources are the basic condition for transforming Earth-like planets. The water resource problem is too difficult to solve. Faced with Shinshinwen's words, Fanny quickly retorted, The atmosphere of Dawn Star is not difficult to modify. As long as the oxygen content reaches the standard, humans can take off their masks and live easily in the outside world. He, he. Shinshinwen sneered with a mocking look on his face. Have you forgotten how high the pressure in the outside world is? You? Fan Yi's face turned red. Then have you forgotten the human enhancement project in the biological laboratory? Hey! You little baby! Shen Siwen said angrily. When I was studying biosphere technology, you were not born yet! Cough! Seeing that the argument between the two was about to escalate further, Lu Yongchang hurriedly coughed lightly, interrupting the friendly exchange between the two. The voices of argument stopped abruptly. Shin Shinwen and Fan Yi slowly turned around. And when they saw Lu Yongchang, they both had expressions of hopelessness on their faces. Professor, why are you here? Shin Shinwen asked awkwardly. Hearing this, Lu Yongchang's expression became strange. He slowly made a question mark in his mind and gave his own evaluation. Six. As if he realized that he had said something stupid, Shin Shinwen's expression became more and more embarrassed. The discussion was quite good. Lu Yongchang glanced at Shin Shinwen with a half smile. How is it? Do you have any ideas for reform? Currently, it's not determined yet, Shin Shinwen said with some trepidation. I think we should increase Dawn Star's water reserves first. But Fan Yi doesn't agree with my plan. Changing the composition of the atmosphere directly. Right? Lu Yongchan took over, smiled and shook his head. The consumption is too great. We don't have that many resources. What a joke. According to the size of the Dawn Star, directly transforming its atmospheric composition into an environment similar to that of the Earth would consume resources that he might as well build a surface city cluster. Hearing this, Shin Shinwen instantly became energetic. Professor, do you also think that we should transport water resources from other planets and then slowly transform the Dawn Star environment through plants? I have seen the detector data. Shin Shinwen hurriedly opened a holographic image. On the 8th planet of the Glee's 555 star system, there is a large amount of water in solid form. As long as we put it. After introducing his plan, Shin Shinwen looked at Lu Yongchang in front of him expectantly. Lu Yongchang pondered for a moment, nodded, and then shook his head. The general direction is fine. Just some details need to be changed. He reached out and dragged the holographic projection in front of Shin Shinwen. Why waste manpower transporting water resources to other planets? It's such a waste. As he spoke, Lu Yongchang ruthlessly made a big cross on the holographic projection. This, seeing this, Shin Shinwen couldn't help but froze on the spot. If we don't do this, where will we get water resources? Lu Yongchang waved to the camera. Zero. Open the satellite image. A photo with a strange angle appeared in front of everyone. I didn't do my homework carefully enough. Lu Yongchang joked with Shin Siwen with a smile. 
and pointed at the upper right corner of the image. Did you see it? Shin Shunwen looked at the picture blankly and murmured to himself. Comet, comet! Under the light of the main star. A comet dragging a long tail flies straight towards the direction of the main star. Nero! Lu Yongchang explained softly. The name of this comet. According to the latest observational data, 90% of its material components are solid ice, as well as some ammonia, methane, and interstellar dust. Unlike ordinary comets, this comet is very large. The radius reaches 300 kilometers, and the water resources contained in it are enough to make Dawn Star a water-rich planet. According to calculations, it will approach Dawn in one year. Shin Shunwen looked at the holographic screen and murmured to himself. So, Professor, do you want to capture this comet? Lu Yongchang smiled and nodded, making a little joke. Thank you for the gifts of nature. Lu Yongchang opened the already edited information and introduced it in detail. From now on, the Academy of Sciences will dispatch 100 Tao Tai ships to Comet Nero. Don't you wait for it to come on its own? Shin Siwen asked in surprise. I want to, but the situation doesn't allow it. Lu Yongchang shrugged helplessly. According to observations, it is constantly approaching the main star of Gliese 555. You should know it clearly by looking at the huge comet tail. Every moment, it's losing a lot of mass to radiation from its host star. This is not okay. Those are precious water resources on the future dawn star. As soon as he finished speaking, there was a burst of laughter in the laboratory. After arriving near the comet, Zero will control the robot to cover the surface of the comet with a layer of black cloth dot. Lu Yongchan continued, not caring about the laughter of the crowd. Black cloth made of carbon nanotubes can be effective isolate the radiation from the host star and preserve the comet's mass as much as possible. At the same time, the robot will sample and analyze its ingredients. After confirming that it is harmless, 100 Tautai ships will use carbon nanotube nets to slow them down for up to half a year. At last, when it arrives near Dawn Star, it will be captured by Dawn Star's gravity. Speaking of this, Li Yongchang made an explosive gesture. When it enters the Dawn Star's atmosphere, we will completely crush it to reduce its impact on the ground. When a large number of rivers, lakes, and oceans appear on the surface of Dawn Star, we can start the second step of the plan. Under Zero's control, the holographic screen switched quickly. Ross 154 nitrogen-fixing cyanobacteria. Compared with nitrogen-fixing plants on Earth, the nitrogen-fixing cyanobacteria on Ross 154 has stronger nitrogen-fixing abilities and shorter growth cycles. Through genetic modification, we can also give it the ability to photosynthesize while converting part of the carbon dioxide into oxygen. It also absorbs a large amount of nitrogen in the atmosphere, thereby greatly reducing the pressure of Dawn Star and improving the composition of Dawn Star's atmosphere. Chapter 446 Anomalies Found in the Target Area Professor, although a high-pressure environment can significantly improve the body's absorption efficiency of oxygen, but, according to testing, the concentration of carbon dioxide in Dawn Star's atmosphere is 1.14%. Even if all of it is converted into oxygen, the oxygen concentration is not enough to support normal human activities. Fanny frowned and said, I think that in addition to relying on biological effects, large-scale atmospheric modification work is still essential, even if it requires a lot of resources. This is a step that cannot be skipped. The corners of Li Yongchang's mouth raised slightly, and a mysterious smile appeared on his face. Have you forgotten the layer of hematite covering the surface of Dawn Star? Fanny couldn't help but be stunned. Suddenly, he seemed to realize something, and his expression suddenly became excited. He clasped his hands together and murmured excitedly. Yes, yes, there is hematite. Carbon and iron oxide react in a high-temperature environment to produce elemental iron and carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide produced is then converted into oxygen through the photosynthesis of Ross 154 nitrogen-fixing cyanobacteria. Fanny suddenly raised his head and looked at Li Yongchang in front of him with burning eyes. This, this is simply a perfect cycle. Correct answer, Li Yongchang said with a smile. In this way, planetary transformation will not only not slow down our development speed, but will even have a certain promoting effect. When various infrastructure constructions are completed, the atmospheric composition of Dawn Star will slowly approach the Earth, and we just have to pay a certain amount of waiting time. Speaking of this, Li Yongchang shrugged. Of course, the whole process is definitely not that simple. The process of transforming the entire planet's surface environment will involve a large number of uncertain factors. Next, our main job is to build a complete planetary model, make all preparations, and wait for Nero's arrival. 
As for the transformation of nitrogen-fixing cyanobacteria, the biological laboratory is already working on it. The central region of the Milky Way. Just like hundreds of years ago, the artificial planets belonging to the sweeper civilization still remain motionless. No rotation. No revolution. No gravity. There is no way to observe the existence of this planet except by observing it with the naked eye. It is like a virtual projection, staying quietly in the center of the Milky Way, declaring its sovereignty to the surroundings. Inside the artificial planet, there is a bizarre scene. Pieces of light curtains flashed, presenting information from all corners of the galaxy. Cleaner 9527, surrounded by light curtains, sat lazily on a chair. Sir, the detector found anomalies in the target area. An obscure voice sounded inside the artificial planet. What? Cleaner 9527's visual organs quickly looked in the direction of the sound. A black dwarf star. The obscure voice sounded again. Oh! A look of surprise flashed across the face of Cleaner 9527, who was originally slumped in a seat. He straightened up and waved his tentacles to control the light curtain in front of him. Black dwarf. Have you searched it? Is it in our astral database? No. After a moment of silence, the subordinate reported again in an extremely obscure tone. In the star database, there are no black dwarfs in this area. The voice paused and then sounded again. At least, there are no black dwarfs recorded within a thousand light years. Sweeper 9527's tentacles waved in the air subconsciously. It was his way of expressing excitement. Finally can't hide it anymore. He quickly moved the light curtain in front of him with his tentacles and murmured to himself. A black dwarf appeared out of thin air. Are you ready to absorb energy and fight to the death? Sir, what do you mean? There was a hint of doubt in the subordinate's voice. Is this painting made? Sweeper 9527 did not answer, but the amplitude of his tentacle waving became wider and wider. Obviously, the information on the light screen made him more and more excited. Found it. Case QXD 771. A red dwarf star has an estimated remaining life of 1.5 trillion years. Sweeper 9527 murmured in a low voice while dancing. Sir? His subordinates became more and more confused. Extracting and utilizing stellar energy should be a necessary technology for a 6th level civilization. Although the Milky Way is a bit remote, there are still some level 6 civilizations. How are you sure this is the act of painting? The movement of Sweeper 9527's tentacles slowed down a bit. He turned his head and looked at his subordinates with a strange expression. Are you sure that the technology mastered by a sixth level civilization can turn a red dwarf star into a black dwarf star within 200 years? Let alone a sixth level civilization. Even a star devourer would have a hard time accomplishing this. 200 years? The subordinate was stunned and exclaimed. How is this possible? Cleaner 9527's tentacles moved slightly and dragged a light curtain in front of his subordinate. The last time the detector observed the star KZQXD 771 was 200 years ago. At that time, it was still an extremely young and healthy red dwarf star. In 200 years, completely drained the energy of a red dwarf star. The parent civilization's large-scale mass energy conversion device can easily do this. But it's at our warehouse. Except for painting. I can't think of any other civilization in the galaxy that has such power. But, the subordinate said hesitantly, why would it do this? I mean, it could be absorbing energy secretly. Not so blatantly. Cleaner 9527 looked a little gloomier. That's a good guess. Perhaps it was too seriously injured and needs a lot of energy to repair itself. Or maybe it has recovered from its injuries and is fully preparing for battle. No matter which one it is, it is what we expect. After waiting for so long, this war can finally come to an end. Having said this, Cleaner 9527 stood up from a seat, and his tentacles once again crossed a screen of light. Order. All detectors within a thousand light years from the star KZQXD 771 have entered a state of curvature. I need to get all the data about the black dwarf star in the shortest possible time. Sweeper 9527 pondered for a moment and said again, Activate the planetary fortress and prepare for war. As soon as the words fell, the atmosphere in the artificial planet suddenly became solemn. Yes! At the same time, the man-made planet that was originally stationary in the universe began to rotate slowly. Chapter 447 Triangulum Galaxy Virgo Supercluster Local Group of Galaxies Triangulum Galaxy As the third largest galaxy in the local galaxy group, the Triangulum Galaxy has a diameter of 60,000 light-years and has given birth to many civilizations. 
the two-dimensional creature painting as one of the best followed the outsiders billions of years ago embarked on the galaxy bridge and embarked on the road away from home the so-called galaxy bridge is a long bridge built between the triangulum galaxy and the andromeda galaxy built from clumps of neutral hydrogen atoms the lactic bridge appeared five billion years ago the reason for its formation is unclear it is initially speculated that it is a means of high-level civilization and its purpose is unknown recently galaxy bridge has been flickering abnormally for unknown reasons the above content is excerpted from the chronicle of the triangulum galaxy near the central black hole of the triangulum galaxy a group of threads seems to have its own consciousness twisting randomly in the empty space of the universe the huge gravitational pull of the central black hole seems to have no effect on it the thread is extremely long the diameter of the silk thread even reaches a huge amount of one light year if a civilization uses a detection instrument to detect this ball of silk thread then they will be surprised to find that this ball of silk thread has no so-called height and width in it there is only the concept of length it is even impossible to find the starting point and end point of this thread as if it is an infinitely extending thin line an obscure wave came from infinite distance making the twisting movement of the silk thread freeze for a moment in the cosmic space next to the silk thread a shadow appeared a wave of the same nature came from the shadow see do you feel it the next moment the twisted silk thread also sent out a burst of equally obscure fluctuations feel the painting is dead and our power is once again weakened the sweeper civilization is too powerful even in remote areas like the milky way it is so powerful the message said by c was full of frustration and helplessness we may fail no feel it carefully another message came from the shadow the painting has encrypted the message after a period of silence the thread began to twist again yes you are right the painting is not dead this time silk s message was filled with joy it's carrying out its plan yes the obscure fluctuations in the shadow became more intense perhaps we won't have to huddle in this small corner soon the twisting amplitude of the silk thread became larger wait and hope the next moment the shadow dissipated and the twisting amplitude of the thread gradually decreased the black hole region in the center of the triangulum galaxy has once again returned to its original silence milky way or iron arm ross 154 star system a spherical detector suddenly appeared outside the star system the entire body of the detector is dark gray and smooth with no gaps or gaps on the surface probe number 912133165 has escaped from the curvature state and successfully arrived at the destination a message is transmitted to the center of the milky way at faster than the speed of light without any power source visible to the naked eye the spherical detector suddenly accelerated to 10 percent of the speed of light and flew straight in the direction of ross 154 it is said to be a star system but it is not ross 154 which became a black dwarf lost most of its mass and was no longer able to maintain the existence of the original star system there is only one solitary black dwarf left in the entire star system the dark gray spherical detector quickly arrived at its destination it quickly rotated around the black dwarf star for several times seeming to be sizing up the long dead star no trace of the target has been found preparing to start the dimensional analysis device another message reaches the central region of the milky way the next moment a gap opened on the side of the spherical detector hundreds of small detectors were drilled into the gaps these small probes quickly flew towards ross 154 and wrapped it then each small detector emitted a bright green light these green lights are connected with each other to form a huge cube in the cube is ross 154 which has turned into a black dwarf star drop dimensional analysis device starts space curvature detection dimension stability testing warn the current regional dimension stability is abnormal the central region of the milky way inside the sweeper artificial planet sir an abnormality has been detected in the dimensional stability the phenomenon of dimensionality lifting and lowering has occurred in this area the subordinate's voice was full of excitement you are right it is the behavior of painting cleaner 9527 had already sat up straight his visual organs staring at the light screens in front of him his tentacles danced rapidly operating all the light screens in front of him at the same time it has been confirmed that the phenomenon of dimensionality expansion has occurred near the black dwarf star when cleaner 9527 said this 
He couldn't help but be stunned. Dimension Ascending Phenomenon? How could it be Dimension Ascending Phenomenon? He looked at the data on the light screen in disbelief and muttered to himself. The subordinates on the side also looked at the detection data on the light screen in surprise. Dimension Enhancement? Isn't the painting a two-dimensional creature? How could there be a phenomenon of dimensionality expansion? Cleaner 9527 was silent for a moment and struggled to squeeze out a sentence. Of course, there will be a dimension upgrade. Since the development of the universe, the third dimension, as the most stable dimension, has an extremely powerful assimilation effect on other dimensions. This is also the most uncomfortable thing about dimensional civilization. They need to expend a lot of energy to resist the assimilation of the macrocosm and maintain their own dimensions. That's why they think about restoring the universe to the pastoral era all day long. The subordinate suddenly realized something. His tentacles stiffened, and he exclaimed, You? You mean? Yes. Cleaner 9527 slowly closed his visual organs. The painting is dead. A dead painting is unable to maintain its two-dimensional state. Only in this way can the phenomenon of dimensionality occur here. Cleaner 9527 was filled with confusion. Painting is dead. What about his mission? The mother civilization is making every effort to conquer two-dimensional technology and is just waiting to analyze the painted body. How should he report to his mother civilization? Two-dimensional creature painting. Dead? Cause of death unknown? What a joke. No! I don't believe it! He growled. How could a two-dimensional creature with a seventh-level civilization die so simply? Tear this black dwarf apart for me and examine it. I want to know the specific time when the dimensionality phenomenon occurred. Chapter 448 Carbon Atom Nebula Or Iron Arm of the Milky Way Galaxy Ross 154 As a message came from the center of the Milky Way, an extremely strong flash of light occurred near this unknown black dwarf star. The source of the light is the small detectors released by the sweeper detectors. The moment the light appeared, irregular black cracks resembling spider web shapes appeared in the cubic net, composed of these small detectors. Viewed from the side, it looks like a complete mirror that was smashed by a high-speed flying object. However, it is slightly different from the cracking of the mirror. The cracks that appear in the surrounding network are three-dimensional. They appear from the vicinity of every small detector and spread towards the center of the black dwarf star at extremely high speeds. Like a black hole, the crack swallows up the faint starlight in the background of the universe. There was no resistance. And in just a moment, the dark cracks easily split the black dwarf into countless three-dimensional fragments. The light emitted by the detector is getting stronger and stronger. An indescribable vibration came from the black dwarf area. That's a tremor originating from three-dimensional space. The next moment, the light from the small detector slowly dissipated, and the dark cracks and vibrations gradually disappeared. However, the originally integrated black dwarf star has turned into a loose interstellar dust composed of carbon atoms. Ross 154 as Sweeper 9527 said, was completely shattered on the physical level. At the beginning, under the influence of inertia, this cloud of interstellar dust still retained the shape of Ross 154 as sphere, with the unscrupulous detection behavior of small detectors. Its appearance quickly became irregular. It is foreseeable that if there are no accidents, this loose interstellar dust will eventually form an alternative nebula. Unlike normally formed nebulae, which are mainly composed of hydrogen and helium, its composition is mainly carbon atoms from black dwarf stars. Sir, the time when the dimensionality phenomenon will occur has been determined. The subordinate's tentacles move slightly, sending a light curtain in front of Sweeper 9527. About a hundred years ago. It was a long time ago, and the detection error was very large. Cleaner 9527 looked a little ugly when he heard this. The error is very large, which means that the difficulty of the subsequent search will be increased by several levels. He didn't speak, just glanced at the time in the screen, then turned around and opened another light screen. KZQXD 771 star system. The last observation was 200 years ago. The indicator light on the external memory storage device flashes rapidly. Import specific parameters of the star system. Preparing to rebuild a simulated star system. Sweeper 9527 quickly operated the light curtain in front of him. Soon, a virtual star system appeared in front of him. That was the Ross 154 star system observed by the detector 200 years ago. Compared with the carbon atom nebula today, the two are simply worlds apart. At that time, it was still a healthy and long-lived red dwarf star. Planets orbit around it in an orderly manner. Sweeper 9527 looked at the star system in front of him with an indifferent expression. 
It's so barren. It doesn't even have basic life. I didn't expect that, Hua, would choose to hide in a place like this. A subordinate's voice full of disgust came from the side. In their opinion, even the intact Ross 154 is not as good as the smelly ditch on the roadside. There are still some lives and resources in the stinking ditch. What does Ross 154 have? Apart from an energy-scarce red dwarf star, there are almost no useful resources. Of course, this is for sweeper civilization and painting. Cleaner 9527 responded calmly. But this is indeed the best choice. There are too many such star systems in the Orion arm of the Milky Way. Even we don't have the resources to check these ordinary star systems one by one. That's why we haven't been able to find the painting. As he spoke, Cleaner 9527 stretched out his tentacles and lightly clicked on the light screen in front of him. Time has sped up. The Ross 154 star system in the picture is moving rapidly. One month. One year. Ten years. One hundred years. In just a short moment, the Ross 154 star system simulated in the light curtain reached a critical point in time, the period when the dimensionality phenomenon occurred. Track all the stars in the star system and calculate their next trajectory. Let other detectors follow all possible paths to find it. Upon hearing this, the subordinate's movements paused slightly. Sir, what do you mean? The painting could have been a suspended animation that left the star system via planet? Cleaner 9527 did not reply but silently looked at the picture in the light screen. He wasn't sure either, but he couldn't believe that a 7th level civilization could die on such a remote star. The subordinates, who received no answer silently conveyed the instructions to the outside world. The artificial planet gradually stopped spinning and returned to its original appearance. January 19th, 2384 in the Earth calendar. Hope is wearing a spacesuit and sitting by the water near City 1. He had picked up this habit since his first exploration mission. Whenever he is free, he will come to the water next to city number one, sit on the rocks on the shore, and quietly watch this peaceful scenery. Although the water area is not large, the sound of the gentle waves and the slight sea breeze always remind him of memories from the Earth's time. As usual, he turned on the radio function on his helmet. The sound of waves and wind filled his helmet again. Suddenly, a burst of heavy footsteps came from behind. He subconsciously turned his head and looked behind him. Hope! I knew you were here again! A familiar voice came from the team radio channel. Onset? Hope was stunned, stretched out his hands on the ground, and stood up from the rock. How did you come? Unlike him, Onset is not a regular visitor here. At first, perhaps because he was worried about his teammate's mental condition, Onset stayed with him a few times. But after a few times, Onset found that his teammate's mental state was extremely stable. So he chose the comfortable number one city. There's news! Onset said bluntly. Didn't you see the message I sent you? Hope was stunned for a moment, then raised his watch and checked it. Really, dozens of messages were neatly arranged in this small holographic projection. Excuse me. Hope canceled the mute function with some embarrassment. I am used to turning on mute at this time. Hansett waved his hand indifferently. After so many years together, he has long been accustomed to Hope's bad habits. So, Hope asked casually while checking the unread messages in the watch's red. What news made you come to me specifically? Hansen took a deep breath, with a bit of excitement in his eyes. The Planetary Transformation Plan has officially started. Chapter 449 Planetary Transformation Begins. Noah's Ark Project. Hope's finger swiping the holographic projection suddenly paused. What did you say? He couldn't tell whether he was excited or surprised. Extremely complex emotions surged crazily in his heart. The Planetary Transformation Preparatory Plan started half a year ago. So fast? Has the terraforming been completed? What is the Academy of Sciences going to do next? Hope asked his teammates somewhat incoherently. Hansen did not speak, but raised his wrist and turned on the holographic projection function of the watch. After entering a few keywords, he reached out and made a gesture. The holographic screen flips. The Academy of Humanities and Sciences announced today that it has officially launched the Planetary Transformation Plan. Comet Nero has been successfully captured and will arrive at Dawn Star in six months. The surface terraforming project of Dawn Star has been completed. Let us wait for the arrival of Nero. Hope stared blankly at the news on the holographic screen. He was just muted for a few hours. Why did it feel like he had traveled through time? He didn't have time to ask. So he quickly reached out and clicked on the information. Checking it carefully. Six months ago, Dawn Star City number 6 was officially completed. But to everyone's surprise, 
The construction plan for city number seven has not appeared for a long time. Amid everyone's questions, the People's Academy of Sciences released a plan without haste. Planet Transformation Preliminary Plan Under the long-term publicity of the holographic theater, even the new generation born from Proxima Centauri is full of expectations and fantasies about the legendary Earth Age, not to mention the older generation from Earth. The moment I learned that Dawn Star might become the second Earth in the future, and that humans might once again live under the blue sky and white clouds, the six surface cities were completely boiling. All young people of appropriate age voluntarily went to the City Administration Bureau to apply to participate in this renovation plan. Hope and Han's aunt are no exception. Naturally, they continued their old business prospecting for ores. When they have time, they will also drive mineral exploration ships to help transport supplies. Although it cannot match the efficiency of robots, there is great power in numbers, and the labor of hundreds of millions of people has greatly accelerated the completion of pre-planning. In just half a year, canals and lakes of various sizes appeared on Dawn Star. Of course, they are all dry at the moment. Not only that, high dams and various drainage facilities have also been built near the six surface cities. At that time, the Academy of Sciences did not clearly explain the purpose of these facilities, which also caused many people to wonder. After all, there is not enough water on Dawn Star. The water area not far from city number one is only the size of the Mediterranean Sea. Although there are several water areas further away, the scales are similar. The so-called dams and drainage facilities were just decorations at the time. Therefore, many people speculate that the Academy of Sciences is preparing to transport water resources from the 8th planet of Gliese 555. Even Hope and Hansen thought so. But now it seems, they are still too young. No one thought that the Academy of Sciences would go all the way to capture an icy comet with a radius of 300 kilometers without saying a word. Hope looked at the picture in the holographic projection excitedly. With the cooperation of countless robots, a huge black curtain was covered on the surface of the comet. A black curtain made of carbon nanotubes blocks a large amount of radiation from Gliese 555. The comet's tail, which originally stretched for hundreds of millions of kilometers, completely disappeared at this moment. Then, driven by a hundred Tautai material reserve ships. The comet began to slow down slowly and changed its course it no longer flew towards Gliese 555, but flew straight towards the Dawn Star. In order to reduce the loss of the comet as much as possible, the farther away from Gliese 555, the better. According to data given by the Academy of Sciences, Comet Nero will intersect with Dawn Star in six months and be captured by Dawn Star's gravity. Such a huge icy comet merges into the Dawn Star. A conservative estimate is that it was a very large rainfall that affected the entire Dawn Star. Hack. After reading the news, thousands of words in Hope's mind merged into one simple word. No wonder. No wonder we have to build dams and drainage facilities. Professor Liu is awesome. His body trembled slightly. His face flushed and he shouted in a low voice. Hodson, who was standing in front of him, shrugged and closed the holographic screen. Although he had the same reaction the moment he saw the news. But now, I said, Brother, can you be calmer like me? Be calmer? Hope. He didn't pay attention to Hansen's words. At this time, he was quickly opening his watch, preparing to continue searching for relevant information. Okay, no need to search anymore. That's almost all the useful information. Hansen stretched out his hand to interrupt Hope's movements. Huh? Hope was stunned. What happened after the comet arrived? Didn't the Academy of Sciences say anything? I didn't say that. Hansen rolled his eyes angrily. You also know the temper of the Academy of Sciences. It is estimated that these plans will not be disclosed until the last minute. Hope's mouth twitched, and he turned to look in the direction of the water. This time, his eyes did not stop at the small pond in front of him, but directly towards the blue-purple sky. Six months. In just six months, Dawn Star will be reborn. July 29th, 2384 in the Earth calendar. There are still three days until Nero reaches its scheduled orbit. As the alarm sounded, all humans on the surface of Dawn Star returned to the six surface cities. City number one on Dawn Star. Headquarters of the Academy of Humanities and Sciences. Zero. One final confirmation. Liu Yongchang's voice sounded in the command hall. Confirming. Zero's voice then sounded and a rapidly beating progress bar appeared in the huge holographic projection directly in front. After a few seconds, it has been confirmed that there are no people stranded outside Dawn Star. Liu Yongchan nodded seriously, and gave the order. 
Lose the city! The port gates connecting the six surface cities to the outside world made a rumbling sound driven by hydraulic devices. Under everyone's gaze, the port gates slowly closed. The Noah's Ark project is officially launched. The first step of the Dawn Star Surface Environment Transformation Plan. Noah's Ark. Similar to Noah's Ark in the Bible. Humans at this time also hid in six surface cities in order to avoid the subsequent global rain. When the rain ends and the floods recede, humans who step out of the surface cities will have a brand new home. 